talking about Mercury is in retrograde. I don't even know what the fuck that means, but check this out. Back, back, back it up. Retrograde like Mercury. Do your little dance and I'm top of bottom jeans. But they out of season. If you got a man, why you text me on the weekend? Yeah, yeah, uh, ay, praying to the give me something to believe in. Play this for my fam, they gon' say that I need Jesus. Turn up with my demons, it's already too late, baby. By the time you read this, yeah, yeah, ay, but I'm strong, yeah. This tequila got me in my feelings. Your butt in the head, yeah, like my name was Breeders. Throwing out the speakers, fuck a noise can play. To police, yeah, yeah. Back, back, back it up. Retrograde like Mercury. Do your little dance and I'm apple bottom jeans. But they out of season. If you got a man, why you text me on the week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Club too crowded, this shit be. You hungry? Make the Uber drive through Mickey D's. 20 piece, please. Back, back, back to the crib. Shit, throw it back like TBT. Things we blind on DVD. And that brand was Ivy Lee. Come see me, Keegan Michael. She got the key. Trip expensive, love is free. She got the bag off PPP. On it sex, call it Sunny D. Not a joke with his tongue in cheek. Make plans emoji next to the peach. Yeah, blah blah blah. You know what I mean. Back, back, back it up. Retrograde like Mercury. Do your little dance in an apple bottom jeans. But they out of season. If you got a man, why you text me on the week? Good morning, good morning. Hello, hello. Hang on. Let me see. I was trying to hurry up. I made a couple new. Okay, you guys are hearing me out of my AirPods. I only have one in. Let me know. Is that loud enough? If not, I'll grab the other one. But sometimes when the streams get a little long, like they don't keep a charge that long. So I've gotten used to just wearing one and I don't have my microphone and all of that. So you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? <laughs> right. I was trying to load, um, I got some new emojis that I made, some popsicles, some bomb pops. I even got us a chalkboard with timeline on it, but I wasn't quick enough to get that done. So I was trying to get that all in and I didn't have time. So next stream we'll have all new emojis. Well, not all new, I'm gonna keep some of the old ones, but um okay let me drop a link so i don't have because if i pin it i don't have to do it later it makes it so much easier gotta let it move past the heart the stupid heart man it's just like it's annoying upon these weird ass circus sideshow motherfucking streets oh my gosh scott age have nailed it these streets are wild y'all oh they're wild. Let me go back. Hey, true Texans are ready to side eye. Sniff, snorts, farts, poops, appropriate adult conversations to be happening. All the adult conversations, Jenny. Like, this is wild. This is wild. Good morning, Donna. Uh, sex talk or body talk? That's no, it's not okay. Well, I mean, if it's if it's okay, if you're doing it by yourself, then yeah, that's absolutely okay to have those conversations. BNB coming in with the popcorn like always. Good to see you, BNB. Uh, Sarah Mead, the number one OG. Happy Sunday, Sarah. Hope it's good where you are. Oh my gosh. Hey, Queen Bella. Hey, Captain Obby. Thank you perfectly. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Just a little bit. It's wild. It's wild. Hey, Remy. How's it going? Thank you, Three Mics. K Brace. Cutie Pie, Steph B, AMAC, 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 and SoFlo have a channel called, um, excuse me, I am sick and so like my brain is fried, but it's like the Real Housewives of YouTube, I think. I don't know. But if someone could grab that link and drop it, that'd be great. If not, I will get it later and make sure it's dropped. But they're pretty funny chicks. Pretty funny chicks. So you guys have to check it out. I love it. Hey, Green. 
That was a pretty interesting. Hey, Laura, hope you're doing good. Pixie. Oh, Carol Clark. Hey, 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 hey. Just getting down here to the bottom. You chatty Cathy's in here chatting it up. Hey, Mal, I am feeling like who? <laughs> She's. I just saw it as I was scrolling quickly. You asked how I was, and I was like, not the best. I'm going to tell you, I felt, I started feeling really icky on Friday. And so I am the type of person who can operate off of four or five hours of sleep a day, like, and be great. Even three, there it is. I knew I saw it. And I think I've probably slept 24 hours in the last 48. Like I'm just drained and I have like a major head cold. I think that's what it is. Yeah, we're gonna have some popsicles and everything. Hey, Dynamite, how's it going, Cat's Eye? Deets on the mother fucking street, she says. <laughs> hey, Tracy Ann, eight months, look at you. Okay, Laura, enjoy. I thank God I'm not on camera today. I seriously look like a Mac Char kidney. Oh, I feel it too. I feel it in my bones. Like I'm getting old. Farts and body parts. That could be the title of a live stream. Pixie. Farts and body parts around here, let me tell you. Holy cow. Welcome to the streets, Lacey Ann. Although you've been out there on them, so you know what's up. <laughs> I've seen you around. Yes, Real Housewives of YouTube. Thank you, Stephanie. That's great. And thank you for donating memberships. That's so sweet of you, Lacey. Yeah, you didn't have to do that. Um, I did. Ah, so that is something that will be coming up. Keep an eye out for it this week. We don't donate 100% of our membership revenue to a charity, and it will be on our members only community tab. And I just got sick. And so I have to take a screenshot of that receipt and put it on our tab. But you guys will see it there. And your money is going. I mean, the only reason we do memberships is because Grandma freaking Sherry. Grandma freaking Sherry wanted emojis. And so Grandma freaking Sherry gets them. And I thought, well, if we're going to be making something, let's do something good with it. It is something's going around. I know. So my daughter said she got home from work this morning. She's like, it's just crazy out there. And foot and mouth. Oh, that's no good. I think mine's just a head cold, like my head's all, it feels like, my head feels as big as Texas, that's how big it feels, and then I was running a fever yesterday, and you can ask the girls, I'm like, it was like, what, 9.30, I went to bed, I put criminality in my ear, and fell asleep to her telling me about all things Delphi, which, by the way, Delphi is insane right now, is anybody following Delphi, like, Throw an emoji or your hand up or something in chat. I want to know who else is following all things Delphi. It's always grandma's fault, always, but we still love her. <laughs> I yelled excitedly. She farted on stream. <laughs> she shit her pants on stream as I went to the timestamp to pull up the audio. I realized it's not what I had realized. I quietly retreated to the back. <laughs> Jerry, I don't even know what you're talking about when it cracked me out. I, I thought it could be allergies, but not with the fever. I knew it was something a little more like a head cold. It's, it's, cr I see Jenny over there and tease and uh, a couple other of the Delphi channels that I follow. It's crazy, Jenny Mal. Yeah, she has been kicking ass and taking names. And she said, forget about y'all. I'm moving on up. Moving on up. Oh, yeah, I won't sing. I can't. I promise. I just step out of. Delphi Karen's kit. Oh my gosh, Lacey Ann. So that's what made me think of it. Anybody who talks to me behind the scenes knows that my favorite thing to do is talk true crime and look into cases. And so, which, but like, Girls in Jones's Discord just told me about a case I had never heard of, and I don't even know how I'd never heard of it. And we spent like, what, four hours digging into that thing. I just, I just love talking about true crime cases. And it was a hella interesting case. But anyway, Nanya came to me it's like Thursday or Friday night. And she's like, okay, I need you to explain Karen Reed's case to me like I'm a five-year-old. And so I did. And it was so good. And I loved just like going through the timeline with her and everything and just explaining it to her in slow detail. And I'm like, I don't know why I can't do that on a stream. I think it's the questions that she fires back that made it a lot easier. 
Everybody's following Delphi. It is such a sad case, Patty. That's the thing. It's so heartbreaking. These two girls. These two. I'm going to put up a poll because, okay, with so many following, I just got to know. Let me open up my YouTube here. I want to know if you got who, if you guys think Richard Allen is the guy. So let's do a poll. I, I didn't come live to talk about Delphi, but now I'm just curious, you know. So let me see here. Uh, okay, I'm just doing, is Richard Allen guilty? I'm just curious what you all think about it. She is great at asking questions. Really great. I said five-year-old, I think I meant like fifth grader. I explained it to her like she was a fifth grader, you know. Hey, Johnson. I'm just walking through everything. And a lot of things in Karen's case really clicked for me this week. So that made it a lot easier to explain. Don't forget about it. Right? She is. Like, she's hanging out with like big time people now. She's hanging out with the, the defense attorneys and all the cool people. Like, don't forget us, T. Don't forget us, little people. No, she would never. She's such a doll. You think so? Even with a fever? It could be. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought, I haven't been live in over a week. Let me come live and talk about some of the things I caught this week on YouTube. And Because I feel bad, like, not doing videos at all anymore. So, like, I feel like I owe you guys at least a once a week or... Spud, where's Spud? Did you see Spudler? I missed her. There she is, Spudler. Look at you, beautiful girl. Good to see you. Good to see you. It, it's hard emotionally. I'm actually really close uh, geographically to the case. I'm only about two hours away. And so right now they're doing these court proceedings and stuff and there's, they're not allowing cameras. Um, they're not allowing, I guess, anything inside. No audio, nothing. And so... Uh, Sloopy Goosey had compiled a bunch of notes, like combined them together. She did an amazing job, like she always does, compiling everybody's notes that was in court, in attendance, and kind of piecing together what went down at that court hearing or that, you know, that day, because so many don't know, because they, they're just not allowing anything in. And so that was amazing. So I let her know, I'm like, hey, you guys need anyone to go over and take some notes? The, the issue is, is, you know, the more the merrier, you know, so person A might not catch what person B did. So if you can get everybody's notes and compile them. But I think they're working on trying to get the transcript, too. I'm curious how they cleared the other guy who... <sighs> Are you talking about Click or Elvis? Wait, no, Click's the detective. I mean, Elvis, right? You're talking about Elvis. See, I don't know all things Delphi, and I don't even pretend to know or understand all things Delphi. I told T and Sleuthy, I'm like, y'all need to get together and do like a Delphi for Dummies class. Start at the beginning and work your way up. Because I feel like a lot of us jumped in and they're already on like season seven, episode 32. And I'm so lost. <laughs> Can you put an unsure? Yeah, I should have. I guess I should have. I swear to he's guilty only with the down the hill video, but his rights have abs his rights have been violated, Lacey. And I agree with that. I do agree with that as well. Um, and I and I've stood on that since I started listening to Delphi. And Michelle After Dark does really good coverage of Delphi too. That's nice, short bites, easy to understand. But um, yeah, I, and I do think that he'll get off on reasonable doubt. But I'm, I am curious, so my poll still stands, like, if you think he's the guy or not. I don't know. I don't know what I think. I don't think they have enough evidence to find him guilty of anything. I'll say that. I don't think he could have done it alone either, Tracy. I really don't. Not my KDB. Hmm. Um... 
Yeah, she can get a fever with them. Weird, didn't know it until I didn't know that either. I didn't think you could get a fever with a sinus. And oh, hey, it could be that. God, I hope it is. That'd be a lot easier to get over Elvis. Yep. I'm about the same distance from Delphi. I've thought about it. Yeah. I think I will eventually. I thought about going over for a little bit of the trial, not to do like any JLR streaming or anything, but just to go over and and listen in a day or two on my own. Like, oh, it's crazy. The Odin stuff is crazy. It is, Fuddler. But like, I started rereading the Frank's motion. And the one thing that I always hear people, because I listen to a bunch of Delphi channels now, and the one thing that I always hear, the, the ones that are like, because, okay, I'm going to go on a little rant here. So in the Delphi community, there's there's two sides, right? And it, And it's not like guilty versus innocent side there's the the prosecution side and the defense side it's like you're you're either team defense or you're team prosecution and that's what it has to be and this team prosecution side the they always go like the own bs the own bs that that bullshit odin theory and i'm like do they forget that the odin theory comes from the prosecution like what like do it's, it's not like they just went and fabricated a whole defense out of thin hair. They found it in the discovery from the prosecutors, from the state side. I don't know. That's just my little rant for the day. I went through it all with Gray, but then he wasn't into the conspiracy. See, and I don't think it's a conspiracy. I don't think it's a conspiracy. Now, I do think that, but what I think it is, and this is just my completely uneducated opinion that is worth less than two cents, you're going to get like, this is a one cent opinion, is that it is, um, what are they, North something, Odinist, I think it's people pretending to, or who have like a, a limited understanding of what an Odist is and they're like trying to break into this thing or something. And, but I don't think it's like a, I don't know if I'm trying to, if I'm explaining what I think here properly. I don't think it's someone who's like very deep into this religion or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Oh. It's not a coincidence a pedo is involved, but conveniently not involved in the death, right? Right, Lazy Ann. I think he's usually right, Psycho Count, too. Um, and unlike those that yell, he's real true crime, he's real true crime, I've never watched a fucking show he's ever done. I actually have watched a lot of Gray, but I do think that he is completely, he's very invested in the state side, and I think that that comes from his relationship with the family and that's just my personal opinion but he's got a lot of really good stuff really good stuff when it comes to delphi yeah it would mean that stuff it would norse pay okay thank you i'm like wait i know it's something my brain's not operating yes i, I think it's just people playing in that if that's the right word not that they are actually, I don't know, Norse pagan, even like, and it's not a common thing, yeah. But I was so surprised to be learning out, learning just how many active Odinists there are. It's something I had never even heard of until that Frank's motion. I never even heard of an Odinist. But I mean, go do the research on your own, separate even from Delphi. You have to. Like, if you just put in, like, Odin or Odinus, put in Odinus, you have to go back, like, four or five pages, because the first four or five pages on Google is going to be all dealt by stuff. But then get behind that and start looking at it. It's very interesting. Very interesting. And I had never, never ever heard of such a thing. Cosplay Odinus, that's a thing, yeah. Uh-uh-uh. With a hint of white supremacy rights, Butler, because that's what they're, that was their big thing that they were talking about in court was the going to the Trump rallies and stuff. But I don't know. That's what I'm saying, T Tia. Delphi for dummies. That's what we need. I told her that. I said, we need a Delphi for dummies and like pictures. They don't have to be in crown, but pick, you know, like 
graphs and stuff, that's helpful too. Cause I feel like we are, woo, we're out of our league on this one. So he is the gal to do it. Where's our, okay, let me see. Where's our poll sit? Oh, uh, I mean, we're at 58% think he did it and 42 say no. So pretty close to 50, 50, pretty close. I'm curious. Where do the, yeah, and where do the clients come into all that? I don't know. Maybe they have nothing to do with it. A lot of people, I, which is the thing I think that Gray is stuck on, because he does think that the clients are still involved. And that's, it's like he's adamant that Richard Allen is the guy because of the shell casing and um, because of the confessions in his mind. That's, he's, that's it. That's his man. But I know listening to him, he struggles with with the client situation. Like, where does that fit into the narrative? So ruins are a type of divination. Oh. Ruins means different things. So you have to, sorry, look into that too. See, it's so interesting. It's so interesting, the different aspects of it all. And then if you start following some of these creators over in the Delphi community, you quickly learn that it's just like every other freaking community on YouTube, full of drama, full of chaos. Oh my God, they had a freaking court date last week, y'all, where YouTubers were fighting in court. YouTubers in court fighting. Like, fisticuffs, fisticuffs, y'all. That's wild. So like, it's a crazy community over there. and. But it's like when I'm just like peeking, I'm side eyeing it, side eyeing it from the bushes. That's for sure, because it's crazy. It is insane. <gasps> hey, Bendy. I'm gonna leave that one to the professionals. I don't. You don't have to like her. That's okay. He was rude for me asking what is going on. He said I was. He said you were alive. <laughs> The sad thing is, is I can picture it too. Like I can hear him say it back too. I never chat in his chat. I just listen to him. I think I've chatted in there a couple of times. I know I can't get my brain wrapped around a motive too, but then I have to remember, you don't have to have a motive, right? You know, we don't need to know or understand it, but it makes a lot more sense to us if we can put together an understanding in our brains of a motive. But that's probably why a lot of us are drawn to true, true crime is just wanting to try to understand and know that base need we have. It is so bizarre. There's, you're right, Je Jenny. You know, I've seen some people that say that, that yeah, there's so much more going to come out. There's this one guy I like listening to. Man, his voice is smooth like butter. I've listened to him on a couple other um, true crime stuff too, but like. He has the complete opposite opinion that I do, but I, I like listening to him and he's very adamant that there's so much more is going to come out. So much more is going to come out. I don't think that much more is going to come out, honestly. Pertaining to the case, I don't. I don't think Odinus would have sacrificed two girls, then left their symbology all around them to be found out. If those were really Odinus symbols, someone was trying to frame them. Harley, that's a great thought, right? And I always kind of wondered that, like, with the Odinus in the prison, you know, when everybody's screaming that, you know, Richard is being treated a certain way by Odinus guards and stuff. And, and you can't deny that there is a connection or there is something there. But it's like, why would why would Odinus be so blatantly fragrant or flagrant with it? Not fragrant, flagrant with it if it truly was Odinus, you know, it's just bizarre. It's a very bizarre case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, a lot of us will. I bet. I need to do that, like, 23 and me and figure out where I'm from. You used to read runes? I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. 70 days. But I know. 70 days worth of footage gone. There's one. <laughs> Pacob, Pacob, she's like, I'll throw hands with a couple of these bitches around here. Just wait. <laughs> but in a courthouse, I don't remember if it, it might have been outside the courthouse. Either way, come on. It was insane. YouTubers literally fighting like, over a case. 
over a case that they're not in active well they they were involved i guess at that point but this is wild i used to like giggle, giggling to a savage gray but i'm not showing myself <laughs> right i'm not either like i i laugh at some of these things but yeah i don't blame you i don't blame you there's a guy in this community that was arrested for harassing the family and being a troll Danny, in this community which you know okay that's one of the points we kind of got off on a little delphi side thing which is what happens in delphi like just even bringing it up you get lost in delphi for years it feels like but anyway um one of the things i was going to talk about was like community i listened to a little bit of laura's stream and she was talking about different communities and i'm like she named off a bunch of people who she considered in the Krama community. I'm like, I don't watch over half those people. So like, who's your, who's, my opinion is that your community is, is your, the people you pick, the, the channels that you choose to watch and engage with and go to. And that could be completely separate from mine, completely separate from Lacey Ann's and Psycho Kinds and Hakobs, like, Everybody's community is different. Hey, Scott. Good to see you in here. Yeah. Good to see you in here, Scott. It seems like a, you can say murder in the chat. A murder for murder's sake, which I know happens. But yeah. Two girls, though. Two girls. you got to think that it's a, more than just a murder for murder's sake, Bendy. I just can't believe it's just a murder for murder's sake. I don't, well, I, I can, I can't wrap my head around it. How about that? I just can't wrap my head around it. Mm -mm -mm. No, this is a side eye Sunday stream. Shenanigans, we left those in last week. Our last night. shenanigans are reserved for Saturdays around here. Today we are simply side eyeing the community. Hey, Marshall Dove, my favorite name on YouTube. Uh, could be a setup of Odinus, could be, but also who would choose it? I don't know why. There's a very intentional scene, Tracy, that's for sure. That's for sure. Not only that, if there were more than one person or several people and it was a sacrifice, then lays on the ground would have been disturbed really bad around those people. You would think so, Truth. You would think. Are you the same Truth Exposed that used to have a Marvin the Martian? Because you totally changed your avatar. I thought you were a dude. My bad. Nice to meet you. Uh, you wish you wouldn't have? Yeah, the YouTubers are fighting. The YouTubers are fighting. Go check it. Hey, Bluey Goosey. We were just talking about your your territory, which is all things Delphi. Those I finished listening to T this morning, and your notes compiling all those notes. You did a really great job on that. No, they don't. But there had to be a reason. But we might not know what that reason is. It, it was very purposeful for the person or persons who did it. But that doesn't mean that it is um, purposeful towards Odinism, right? Never in a courthouse, though. <laughs> I know. I just can't believe it when they start talking about, like, the YouTubers going at it. Like, over what? I don't like the way he covered Delphi. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. I made up a whole scenario in my head. It was very reminiscent of a cartoon. That's all I got to say. I think a while ago you covered a story in Oregon when I talked to you in Glares. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to see you, wrestler mo wrestler's mom. Yeah, the possible serial killer in Oregon. But that's not even, I don't even think that that's happening. The guy that they arrested and kind of thought it was him, he's about to get out, actually. So I don't even know. And I know there's a connection between him and at least three of the girls. So I don't know what's going on with that one. I need to check back into it. Be good. That, speaking of the story in Oregon, there's Belly Ray. Good to see you, Belly. Hope you're doing well. Some people, Melissa, they be side, side eye and Sunday through Sunday around here. I don't blame them. Just Mike was the Delphi troll here, asked the parents of the girl. Oh, I don't know if he did, but that's horrible. 
What's all the... Mm -hmm. So that's your community? Yeah. Um, from the best of my understanding from T, they, they or no, actually I got it from Bob at Defense Diaries. They, they added some and took some away and basically they're just making it the appropriate uh, count, the appropriate charges that are supposed to be on him. And they still have to meet this, the defense still has to meet the exact same burden of proof. So like nothing really, or well, sorry, the state has to meet the burden of proof, but the defense is still defending the same thing. So nothing really changed. They just shuffled some of the charges around us the easiest way I think to explain that. At least that's what I took away from it. And that's why I wouldn't post myself instead of more. <laughs> I thought you were a guy, I'm sorry. Uh, I find your quick wit in chat to be man like I guess. <laughs> My apologies, nice abs. <laughs> yeah, she's, all, she's everywhere. The fifth grader is here, yeah. For sure, always, always. I watch KJ for Doug and Sister Wise. Oh, see, so your your community involves KJ, where I think a lot of people around here probably are like, eh, not a fan. Hey, Karma is a bitch. Before these murder, these local murders involving police as the perps, I never was a YouTuber in true crime. I think that's how a lot of people get into, you know, find themselves into the true crime community on YouTube, as well as like subsectors of true crime and tend to call ourselves crama around here, but is a case brings them to YouTube. But, you know, Scott, you're the people that you watch. That's your community. That's the people you go to and who you engage with. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same as mine. And that's kind of what I was thinking when she's like, this person and that person. I'm like, that's not my community. <laughs> I think the they were messages meant for someone or several someones, and only those folks will know what the message was. Like a warning? You think it was a warning? Let me see what our poll's at. Oh, okay. We're definitely more thinking guilty. 64% think guilty and 36 say not guilty. Interesting. Interesting, we're leaning the other direction. <laughs> you're killing me, Trip. you're killing me. Holy cow, Amac in the building. Hey, MK, good to see you, good to see you. You're over there in the Delphi area a lot, I see you in chats. Hey, be real. Did she drop a new one? Oh my gosh. Let me tell you guys, if you want to get caught up, unless you're, you know, having me walk you through the slow walk you through the timeline like Nanya, let me tell you, these are some really good uh, podcasts here on Karen Reed. She did five hours ago. Okay, let me grab her link. You guys can check these out for yourselves. She does the conspiracy in Canton, and she doesn't. She does a good job at it. She does a very good job at it. I'll just say that this is Brandy. Church well. She has a podcast too, but I've watched her YouTube videos. And they're good. They're very good. He had two counts of intentional murder. So basically at trial, if they can't prove intent, the jury can still convict on felony murder. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Boston Bridget. I don't even, who are you? Who are you? I don't even know you. I don't even think you go here. I'm just giving her shit because she said that on a live to me once. Like, I don't even know who that deep is. Deep, I'm deep on the motherfucking streets. Come on, Bridget, you know this. Oh, just here one. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of that lately, Scott. I need to get back to it. I love talking to your crowd, though. Love talking it. Love digging into it. I watch way too. I watch too many yarn videos. That's for sure for me. Oh my goodness. Hey, Granny. Your mother's a whore. I can't even do it. I shouldn't even try. It's not even. 
It doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. It doesn't. I know what I'm about. I know what I'm about. I think I got punished for my... Who's your panel guest? What did you get punished for? I go, me too, Patty. That's the best way to be. Hey, legendary CEO. Granny Bassmaster. Thank you. Today it sounds all stuffy, in my opinion. Even 99% guilty to one not guilty still equals no. That's true. That's true. That's very true. I only need one, right? I feel like our community is the people we chat with the most, but I don't feel like I am in any way or in. Uh, rewind let me start over i feel like our community is the people we chat with the most but i don't feel like i am in any one community or part of one pixie i, I hook up i agree but pixie i agree too i wish the trial was streamed or at least the audio that'd be nice that'd be real nice It's audio on, um, yeah, yeah, on Brandy Church World, uh, actually. Make some money. The hard part about Karen Reed is most people are telling you facts of the case from only one side. In my opinion, I'm slow walking through both sides and all possible theories. No one has that right now, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, we tried, we tried, we started to do that. And I could, I was trying that with you, Nanya, but I think the problem with Karen's case is you get to a certain point where even if you are just laying out the facts of the case, you start to feel a certain type of way about it. And you're like, and it just becomes blatantly obvious, you know? But that's just my opinion. But there, there are a lot of people, though, that. Are, they're not putting out the facts and they're not talking about the facts or they're not understanding what's being told about the facts. That's the crazy, that's the crazy, crazy part. Yes, covering Sebastian the Creator and panel guests managed to completely manipulate Smiley's interview with Chris and Katie to turn people against the parents and make them believe they murdered Sebastian. That's the one I wanna talk about today. That's a good way for a newbie to, yes, she is. Yes, she is. And that's what it shouldn't do, Captain Obvious. Like if you are if you're covering a case, whether you know, whether you're a true crime channel or a crime channel, if you're really covering it to try to throw shade at, at another creator, then you're not doing you're not benefiting the case. I won't, I promise. I promise not to ever do that again. It was horrible. I told you, it's bad. I can't. I know my limits. Yeah, I, and, I, and I've got that a lot. I know a lot of people prefer to see someone, even if it's just talking to them like that. Sorry, I am not on camp today. I'm just not up for it today. I came to YouTube for the coloring. Is there a coloring community, cutie pie? I was telling the girls I found, I downloaded some videos to listen to on our flight home a couple weeks ago. And one of them was knitting drama. I legit found the knitting drama, y'all. I found the knitting drama community. I ain't ever turning back. It's freaking hilarious. I don't even knit. It's so funny. And they were fighting over some uh, pottery mugs. There was pottery drama between two TikTokers over in, I think, Australia or the UK. I'm not for sure. But I have found the craft drama. It's insane. Yeah, you put your clothes back on. <laughs> I was just, I was, when I popped it up earlier, I'm like, wait, who is this with abs on my screen? <laughs> oh. Yes, that case is, that, that case was hella interesting. Hella interesting. Ugh. Hang on. I don't know. No, no, put, can you put her name in chat? Because I'm going to spell it wrong and then I'll highlight it so people can look into that. That was a crazy case. Yeah, I think they have too. Sebastian Roger. Okay, so before we get to Sebastian, let's go to the first thing on my 
title today, which is Sniffgate, y'all. I know this, okay, so I didn't know whether it's Sniffgate 2024, is it, hey Shambles, good to see ya. Okay, we'll see, uh, I'll catch up with you later. So I don't know, is it Sniffgate 2024? Is it Sniffgate 2023? Because the video in question goes back to 2023, I don't know. So we're just going with Sniffgate. Um, hang on, let me go to my history. Did anybody watch Willow's stream where Laura, at the very end, Willow was saying bye, and Laura and Whispy were like, nope, not today, we got something to settle. So they hop up to settle Sniffgate. Well, it wasn't Sniffgate at that point, just to settle their beef. And uh, they didn't really get it settled, but what came out was what originally started it was Sniffgate. The sniff heard around the Krama community. I'm just being dramatic. Where's that stinking video? I know I watched it yesterday, but I watched a lot of the stuff apparently. Holy cow, there's a little stream, so it's after that. Okay, here it is. Found it. All right, let me scroll and see what you guys are saying. TikTok. That's a lot of the craft stuff was TikTok drama. Creators and panels should put out facts of cases, not lie, and manipulate what parents said to make them believe how you believe and let the viewers decide to be factual. I agree with that, Petra, but there's a lot. I mean, when you're up here and you're talking about a case and people's opinions are flying through the chat, it, it's it's hard to control all of that. I will share the craft drama and knitting drama with you all. You want me to share that video with you guys? I will. Oh, it was insane. Yes, you know, since I am a super secret agent man and I apparently going on several tropical vacations mean something nefarious leading towards that. Yes, that was what I was. Jenny, my mind is blown. Did we steal the title, Karama, or did the craft community steal it? I feel like that could be something right there. Like, we're gonna have to get to the bottom of that. We're gonna have to timeline that. Chalkboards out and figure that one out for sure. Don't trust the knitting drama, sharp knitting needles and all. Uh, I'm also in the RV and camping videos. The community has drama too. I think every community probably has has drama. The sniff gate was absurd. You debunked that last night. I debunked it too. I'm gonna play it. It's revisiting, it's revisiting Sniffgate 2023. I'll wait for this. Okay, let me pull up, let me also pull up Willow's stream and I'll show you guys that one first. Mm. Okay, so Willow has a live um, titled drama. If the crime doesn't get you, the creators will. So at the very end, Laura and Wispy from Forgotten Whisper Whispers hop up and they're kind of going back and forth. And I was kind of the mindset that these two were just like tit for tat. For a while now i think a lot of people were of that mindset but i didn't realize well none of us ever realized where did it start where did it start so wispy is like oh, i'll i'll let you know where it started she made this video of laura like seven months before that and so she's playing it for laura and she claims that she put out this i didn't remember what that was snortopalooza was the name of the video and um insinuates some stuff here. I'll let you guys listen to this. I know Willow won't mind and I'll drop his link for you. Like, no, maybe the, 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 the butt good. comment. Okay, cool, gotcha. All right. No, I, I never talked about her fucking kid's butt. Like seriously. All right. um, I'll even read it for you here. It says the following is Laura's live with Molly that is now on private, deleted or members only. These clips are from the last week or two. 
Because most 35, 36 year olds beat up people. Turn it up, everybody. Okay. That's something to be proud of. Okay, right there, you hear a little bit of scraping. Okay. Let me back that up again. Turn it up, people. Okay. Listen. That's something to be proud of. Bitch, you're fucking delusional. Hey, this is the thing. I, I just would rather. You can hear like. I am twisted. Like, no, like noises. Okay. Okay. Listen, here it's coming up. Six year olds beat up people at a grocery store. Okay. That's something to be proud of. Hey, this is the thing. I just would rather the way that we were raised. There, right there. Okay. If I play it again, so let's keep listening. But that's not me. But it's fucking fake. Okay. Okay. Okay, so they go back and forth for a while on this. On was it a vape? Was it snorting? Did did Laura do drugs on her wife? Even though some claim they weren't insinuating that that's what they were insinuating. Like it just went. It went wild. It was back and forth. Um, hang on, my son's snapping me. He's a goober. Okay, so I. I couldn't find the video originally, but then I did. It's not deleted. It's still up. So I went and listened to it. And if you go back, and what I had thought happened was that it sounded like somebody was eating food. That's just what it sounded like to me, that clunking around. And then somebody who had the sniffles was eating food. So I started, and what am I always telling you guys? When even clips, even my stuff, anything I'm telling you, go to the original source and look before it and after it and take everything into context. So that's what I went and did. Yeah, there was like scraping apparently. She thought it was a little bit of scraping and chopping. And so it sounded like, yeah. So I went and listened and I went 10 minutes before. And what do you know? So this is, and I'll drop this link. This is Laura's live from uh seven months ago when creators become obsessed with other creators and this ch what they're talking about it doesn't matter it's not important to the point listen to what you hear laura doing is is the point but <laughs> he wanted it jesus is trying to make a profit he's working in right now <laughs> it's crazy crazy oh, crazy God. God bless him. So this isn't the part that Wispy clipped, but all the way back here, because I'll get to the part because you can hear exactly what was on Wispy's clip about the 35 year on the grocery store or whatever, but you can hear Laura eating and sniffing the whole way through this stream. She's eating something with a plastic container. You can hear it clunking around. She's also sniffing and vaping. She's just making normal noises. Listen. But now he's very into it. I think that that's, I think it's so cool that it wasn't just like a phase. That it wasn't what? That it wasn't a phase, you know, how like mm. there's little weeks. Definitely you know? not. He got baptized last week. Oh my goodness. He did. Were you there? Yeah, of course. Oh. Wow. You must be so proud of them. I'm very proud they, of him for they the man really he's good. becoming. Absolutely. Remember, not, your children speak volumes of you. Uh, no, not really. They do. Oh, of course they do. Of course they do. It's what you've present, what you've said. This is what it's like. You're imagine you're the chef. And your children are the dish, and people are coming into your restaurant. That's not disgusting. This is yeah, but I've only hold on. But I've only guided my children. I've never raised them. I've raised them to be their own individual people, which is why all three of them are so different. But I've raised them to to follow their own paths. I just guided them on the right ones. That's all. 
hear that container again? She's just eating, y'all. But let me go to the timestamp. It was right around here, I think, of when it act the clip for She better fight. She needs to answer. Oh. Let's go. Tell Betty to get her shit together. And she better fight. She needs to answer. And she needs to do it right. Oh. Oh, she read she read it to me today. She read it to me today. This morning, hey, Jenny. She beat the crap out of someone at the grocery store. Cause that's what most 30 something year olds do. That just further proves what I say about her. Year old. Okay. So there's the sniff that's in the clip. You can it's not a vape. Sorry. I'm gonna put my other earphone headphone in. I don't think it's a vape. I think it's absolutely just a sniff while she's eating food and she's eating it for like the past 20 minutes on the damn stream. So I just die and laughing at this one. She read it to me today, this morning. She beat the crap out of someone at the grocery store. Cause that's what most 30 something year olds do. That I will say that that sniff there does not sound like the one in the video though. But this is from her live. Laura's actual live, you guys can see that. Oh, oh, she read, she read it to me today. She read it to me today, this morning. She beat the crap out of someone at the grocery store. Cause that's what most 30 something year olds do. I mean, that was a really quick snort. I was trying to see, do I have it sped up? Nope, normal speed, normal playback. It's really quick snort or sniff. So it's not even a snort. She read it to me today, this morning. She beat the crap out of someone at the grocery store. Cause that's what most 30 something year old. Yeah, so so what is she saying? Is she saying that that happens between her words there? Okay, so let's go back and remember how we heard it over here. To be proud of. Okay, right there you hear a little bit of scraping, okay? Let me back that up again. What Turn it up, scraping? people. Okay. Listen. That's something to be proud of. Bitch, you're fucking delusional. Hey, this is the thing. I just would rather. You can hear like, like no, like noises. Okay. Okay. Listen, here it's coming up. Six-year-olds beat up people at a grocery store. Okay. That's something to be proud of. Hey, this is the thing. I just would rather. I'm just saying, here's here's the uh, Laura's stream again. You guys can go check it out for yourself. Um, the uh, time stamp, stamp with the alleged sniff is around uh, 2.04 and some change. Or like 10 minutes before, you can still hear her eating and sniffing the whole way through. Yeah, this is crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't think it was anything nefarious. I think it was definitely just a sniff while eating some food out of some plastic container that you can hear for a while. Oh, yeah, she has. She has called out others for that. Mm -hmm. and you're right, it doesn't. I so lost my. Uh, yeah. And I, I like Wispy too, though, so there's no no hater shade against her. I just found this really funny that I think she's just eating something and has the sniffles. It was a very disappointing snort gate for me. Very disappointing snip gate. Very disappointing snip gate for me. I don't know about you all, but I was kind of, I felt a little let down with that one. A little bit let down with that one. Okay, what else do we got? What about... The expose, the jerks expose on Ziggy. Now I know that Granny did a stream on it yesterday and it looked like a really long stream. I haven't got a chance to listen to it. I heard that it was really good, so I definitely need to. But did anybody else listen to the jerks expose Ziggy with the 
with the person that came up on our panel pretending to be connected to the Wells boys foster parents. Oh, that would suck. No Zyrtec in two days, no gift shop, not even a, I don't know what BC is. Oh, that would suck. Alleged sniff. Yeah, I don't think it was a sniff. Just my opinion. Hey, Simone. <laughs> Who's a 36-year-old throwing hands in a grocery store? They're actually talking about going to be in that little section. Uh, Laura and Molly were. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it was anything at all. Well, I don't know that she set you up, but she definitely did clip it in context. Because like I said, you can go for the 10 minutes before that, maybe even farther. I only went 10 minutes before to 154. So you could possibly go even further before that. And you can just hear you eating and sniffing the whole dang time. It sounded like you were having a snack and had kind of like what I have right now, which is a head cold. Yeah, we're going to mark that one debunked for sure. Yeah, <laughs> MK, around here, that's a possibility. What's next? You got a pot of boiling water in the background and now you're running a meth lab? Yeah, could be. Around here, you never know what's going to happen. Wild, isn't it? Wild, wild, wild. Let me get back here and close our pool out. View your channel. Sixty-six percent think Richard Allen's guilty. So interesting. That one's definitely interesting. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. I am gonna keep pushing T to do us a Delphi for dummy stream. Catch us all up on it. But I wonder if she could do that before court starts. You didn't watch it? Okay, some people watched it. The expose of the, uh, what was she? Close, consider, she said she was close to the foster parents. Some of us had no idea or understanding of the significance of the expose and needed a cliff notes version. Maybe I'll give that no, no. <laughs> you did. I'm new to Krava, so this channel and channel bashing is, it's, it's ridiculous, Scott. It's everywhere. It's ridiculous. Um, I think you get to a point where all you can do is laugh at it. She said that she didn't enhance it. Yeah, that is true. Um, something was done to it. That's for sure. Because like I said, I dropped the link a couple of different times. You can go listen to the original and it's a very quick sniff while you're eating. You've been bored at work. <laughs> Why is this a big deal? Sin? And that's a, a great, yes. Uh, I don't know if you're talking about the Wells stuff or the Ziggy stuff or the sniff gate. It was very underwhelming. We're going to give that a, a two up. Uh, 2.1 stars on our Yelp review. We will not be visiting that one again. Pretty underwhelming. I agree, Scott H. You're right. It's not shady. It's not okay to insinuate. I'm going to take that. It's not okay to insinuate or a snorting drug. Nope. Uh, it's definitely not okay. It's not okay to insinuate someone's doing drugs. That has some serious implications. Who knows about my math lab? Who said that? <laughs> For those only listening, I'm quoting a quote on the screen here. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I have math lab. Yeah, you have to put that. I think anybody would be, Laura, anybody would be furious if they spread that they were snorting drugs on a live. Hey, Titanium Bill. Ziggy's response to lying was all I needed. See, I, okay, I don't know what her response was. I haven't watched it yet. I feel bad that I haven't. Yes, the jerks, in my opinion, did a good job. I was so glad it was finally called out. Well, see, I don't know that it was her top mod at the time, though, Granny. Uh, some of us have been trying to timeline that. 
we don't know if Lady CG was around at that time or if she was talking to Ziggy at that time. But it definitely was Lady CG. I'll go play there. Let me go to their um, page here real quick. The jerks. They're so jerkish. But we love them. All right, let's see here. So they made this short little video for the nice clip notes version. And they heard a clip. So the jerks uh, originate from Ziggy's channel. For those that are around here from the Summerwells community, you know exactly what Zig Ziggy's channel is. A lot of people landed on her channel and, and throughout various points in the case. Ziggy came to the true crime community and started her channel. Her very first live stream is her going over some CPS reports about the Wells children, um, which I did re-listen to some of that. And I'm like, holy shit, how did anybody believe that? It's completely bupkis. That's not how, that's not how the CPS, anyway, but people believe that. It's a, it's a lot of things that we cover here is that People like to lie around cases just for the sake of lying, and it's so freaking bizarre. I don't know what they get from it, but I will figure it out one of these days. And how far is too far in these cases? Well, that's something, you know, we've talked over at, at Melissa Jade's channel. I talked about it here before, like with the trolling. How far is too far? This was too far. So... Anyway, she started her channel off of this false CPS report. About 13 lives later, she has this woman come into her chat and she said her name, her name in the chat was Erica A. And she claimed that she had a connection to um, the Wells boys foster parents now, said she was friends with their current foster parents. And she gets up there on the panel and she tells, she basically confirms confirms the CBS report that was leaked on Ziggy's channel. So you have this Erica A that shows up out of nowhere, spilling all the details as the foster parents' friends. And what she is doing is confirming the leaked CPS report. Well, the jerks hear a clip last week or whenever, I don't know when they heard it, last week or the week before, and they put together, wait a freaking second, that's Lady CG. Now, some of you might be asking, who the hell is Lady CG? <laughs> Lady CG, AKA Lolita, AKA mm, probably Erica A, was a mod for Ziggy. And she was one of her top mods. And Ziggy replied and said it wasn't her. Well, then Ziggy's tone deaf, because that's just ridiculous. It's her. Um, there's too many other tells besides her voice. It, it's definitely Lady CG. So she was very close with Z. She even like co-signed for her on her, or was going to on her house or something. She, she helped by going to court with her and all this stuff. Now, I don't know that Ziggy knew Lady CG at this time at all. So I'm not going to throw that claim out there, but listen and just tell me if you think these voices are the same. And mute so you guys can hear. There's nothing right now, by the way. So you're not muted right now. There's just no words happening. They literally asked me if you were using the bathroom on live. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm laying in bed. <laughs> no, you were running with some kind of water or something earlier. And I guess like it's. Oh, I was probably when I was rinsing my sink out. Oh, because I had iced tea in a cup and I dumped it and I wanted to rinse it so it wouldn't be sticky. If my cats go in the sink and they get paw prints on them. Am I using the bathroom <laughs> during a dawn? They literally asked me if you were using the bathroom on live. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm laying in bed. <laughs> No, you were running with some kind of water or something earlier. And I guess like it's. Oh, I was probably when I was rinsing my sink out. Oh. Because I had iced tea in a cup and I dumped it and I wanted to rinse it so it wouldn't be sticky. If my cats go in the sink and they get paw prints all over. 
I yeah. use in the bathroom <laughs> during the dawn. Uh, let me go back and read those for those that are just listening. Hang on. It says, still not sure. Maybe a couple of other clips could give context. This first one is a recorded phone call played through StreamYard. The quality is lower, but we wanted to use a source people could find online. You buy your payer, but those things are really, I know they end up being really expensive. Yes. I'd rather not They're do convenient, that. They're convenient, though, because yeah. sometimes, but they have warranties, too. So if you get a car that turns out to be like a lemon, like there's like, you know, you can get a lot of the stuff fixed on warranty because they're afraid of people not paying the loans back. Yeah, there's one. So thing. like, what money you do have, it might be better to use as a down payment on like a better car yeah. instead of just buying out. Right. Like thinking but, of doing like I could get like yeah. a pretty nice car, but I'm gonna probably end up paying double over the long run. Um, yeah, we, we, I think you pay weekly because my son, his very first car, he got a, a buy here, pay here thing. I don't, I've like never it, tried that before. Like, so they don't go by your, but see, like, nope. I've, I always have had issues with those because I'm a, I work from home. So they always give yeah. me such a hard time. That's what started the whole thing, catnip, the whole freaking rant was because it was said to her a year into this you're in the exact same place you started asking strangers on the internet for large sums of money to get by it's time to wrap it up and get a job they literally asked me if you were using the bathroom on live <laughs> who <laughs> yeah i'm laying in bed <laughs> No, you were running with some kind of water or something earlier. And I guess like it's. Oh, I was probably when I was rinsing my sink out. Oh, because I had iced tea in a cup and I dumped it and I wanted to rinse it so it wouldn't be sticky. Because my cats go in the sink and they get paw prints all over. I use in the bathroom <laughs> during a dawn. Okay, so. That was the, the voices, and, and they gave two other examples of her voice to help make it crystal clear. It is absolutely her voice. Forgotten Whispers, I saw your comment. I will get back to that in a second. I'm just going to finish going through the Summerwell stuff I'm talking about, and then I will definitely, I start this to come back to. Um, so it's definitely Lady CG's voice, in my opinion, and I highlighted a couple people commenting saying like a 5,000% that's Lady CG. Those are people that we're around her at that time. We're around her for several times, you know, a long time afterwards. It's absolutely 110% her voice. Um, oh, have fun at work, Patrish. I sound like, yeah. So anyway, the, the point of that was, is that kind of like Tracy put the summary in the chat. So this child goes missing. Ziggy starts her channel giving this CPS report from, and she quotes, and I listened to it, like I said, I listened to part of it again this morning or last night, and it starts out with her her source that she verified. And But when she's talking about verifying the source, all she's doing is talking about the person's job and how hard it is to become a social worker and how much schooling goes into it. So I don't know. Like, did she actually verif verify that person that was speaking with her? I don't think so, or else she probably would have realized. I don't think it was an actual CPS person that gave her all that shit. Anyway, so then, like I said, 13, 14 lives later, this Erica A. pops out, and she is a, allegedly a friend of the current foster parent for the Wells boys. And what the jerks exposed is that that voice is no other than lady cg because it's not just the voice and you could hear that you know it's very hard to hide her accent whatever it is it's very hard to hide but there's also some other tells like lady cg would always be washing her freaking dishes on on live streams and when she was on audio so you could hear that you could hear her squeaky kitchen door you could hear that you could hear that in the call with ziggy so there were some other things too, but it was just obvious. And so I think the question now is, um, 
was Lady CG the source of the CPS report or did she just play off of that CPS report and pretend to have this information around the Wells kids? And so it is just, it's tragic. How far is too far in these cases? That, that is too freaking far, y'all. It's just continually going way too far in these cases and not vetting the information given to us. Now, let me grab their link for their live that they did on this because they go into great detail about it. Great, great detail. That's just a summary of it. All right, so I'm behind in chat because I wanted to stay a little bit behind. Let me look ahead and see if we're talking about the war drama still in chat or if we're still talking about the wills. Let me see. <sighs> okay, so we're talking about the so I stayed behind so I could keep this stuff. So Wispy came in, and again, please don't bash any of them in my life. Y'all are allowed to feel how you feel about each other, and uh, people are, and have your opinions. You can have your opinions, but please don't bash either of these creators. Uh, Forgotten Whisper says that video is not enhanced. It didn't need to be. I may have turned up the volume, but not edited it in any way. Something's different about it, and I'll play it again for you here so you can hear it. Um, hang on, I gotta go back to the two streams I was on. I think believe it'll be a lot earlier in my history now. And you guys can decide if... One, hang on, let me pull the other one up. Oh, please. Okay. the way that we were raised there all right so let me go back a little bit on this one all right so here is forgotten whispers playing it on willows the other night clips are from the last week or two because most 35, 36 year olds beat up people. Turn it up, everybody. Store. Okay. That's something to be proud of. Okay, right there, you hear a little bit of scraping. Okay. Let me back that up again. What Turn it up, scraping? people. Okay. Listen. That's something to be proud of. Bitch, you're fucking delusional. Hey, this is a thing. I, I just would rather. You can hear like, like no, like noises. Okay, okay. Listen, here it's coming up. Six-year-olds beat up people at a grocery store. Okay, that's something to be proud of. Hey, this is a thing. I, I just would rather the way that we were raised. There, there that. right. That is not, that right there that we just listened to, that big old sniff right there, is not on the original one. And I'll play that in just a second, but listen to this sniff again. Right here. Hey, this is a thing. I just would rather the way that we were raised. There, right there. Okay. So let's go over to this tab. That just further proves what I say about her. Because most 35, 36 year olds beat up people at a grocery store. Okay. That's something to be proud of. Hey, this is a thing. I just would rather the way that we were raised than all this new mom bullshit. That one is on there. So I did not go far enough. But so my apologies, Wispy, you did not edit that. I just hadn't gone far enough. But if you go back, like I said earlier, and listen beforehand, you can hear this going on for at least 10 minutes beforehand. It would be a scene worshiper. The food and that the scraping very... and the sniffing. I'm mute. What I was saying is that Dayton made me order him. 
See, she, well, see right there. She's sniffing. She's sniffing the whole damn thing. I'm sorry. I was on a uh, mute. What I was saying is that Dayton made me order him these ridiculously overpriced God shirts and God shorts. It's so overpriced, but <laughs> he wanted it. Jesus is trying to make a profit. He's working in right now. <laughs> it's cool. blessing. But now he's very into it. I think that that's, I think it's so cool that it wasn't just like a phase. That it wasn't what? That it wasn't a phase. You know how like mm. there's over weeks? Definitely you know? not. He got baptized last week. Oh my goodness! He did. Were you there? Yeah, of course. Oh. Wow, you must be so proud of them. I'm very proud they, of him for the man he's good. becoming. Absolutely. Remember, your children speak volumes of you. Uh, no, not really. They do. Oh, of course they do. Of course they do. It's what you've present, what you've said. This is what it's like. You're imagine you're the chef and your children are the dish, and people are coming into your restaurant. That's not disgusting. This is yeah, but I've only hold on, but I've only guided my children, I've never raised them. I've raised them to be their own individual people, which is why all three of them are so different. But I've raised them to to follow their own paths. I just guided them on the right ones. That's all. See, you can hear the container and the snipping uh, multiple times throughout the stream. Multiple, multiple times throughout the stream. So I, I don't believe that she's, you know, sniffing the entire damn stream. Uh, not, not drugs anyway. She's sniffing throughout and um, eating something. I doubt you would remember that far back. The hard part for me is I don't know Ziggy's voice and it all kind of sounds the same to me, but I trust the people who spent listening to it for the past two. Yeah. And, and Pet, yeah, Pearl did a great job giving other clues in the water and the door solidified it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ziggy wasn't the only one that started a channel on false crap. I can literally off the top of my head. Think of 10 other channels that were started around summer and false narratives. That's that's so sad. That's so sad. And it was a bad fake Southern accent, that's for sure. Like, I can't do accents. So, again, I'm not judging, but that one was horrific. Have some boundaries when you cover victims and tragedies in their content. Just a little respect goes a long way. Well, so that snip. So I, I do, I do retract that, which I know I'm ten minutes behind. So you guys probably already changed your argument. But so that crackle is there, but I don't think that was a snip. That was a crackle there at the end. But what Laura does, and I have learned um, from having her on panels, is she. I don't know what it is about her mic, but she has to mute while others are talking, or there's this horrible echo. So when when she's communicating with someone else, like Molly up there on the panel, and Molly starts over talking before she hits that mute button. There's some feedback there as well. So you're getting a little bit of that in there. You're getting a little bit of the sniff and whatever she was eating. Um, but I don't think it was a vape and I don't think it was drugs. Uh, see, everybody has a different, it's called something different everywhere. Yep. Nikki V, you're right. It was, and I didn't realize that was her first. And that's another thing that, you know, we've talked about around these streets over the past couple of weeks is that you land here and you, you know, <clears throat> you know, a channel, you know, the community, the people that you interact with and land on from the moment you get there. And you don't typically go back and research all the junk prior to that. Um, at least I didn't. And I'm sure several others don't as well, because you don't know that you need to. So you take what they're telling you. Um, I took it at face value, but some people might take it as 100% gospel. And so that becomes part of the problem is not going back. Oh. 
her son lost his father shortly before also because of an addiction. Yeah, that was, that's heartbreaking. It's interesting for me from what I've heard. Maybe Lolita had such a, yeah, I don't know about that, Nanya. She also, um, I've been sent a lot of stuff and I, I don't know if I've been, uh, I haven't discussed about putting it out or anything yet, but um, she was involved in some cases before this. Not the same ones that Stacy Slay, the big fed, were involved in, but she was definitely involved in at least one prior to this. So there could have been others. And I'm just curious, like, what's the motive there? What's the agenda? Why the lies? Kind of like Dot over there in Idaho 4. Like, why add to the, why add to an already horrific and messy situation? Why make it worse? What's with you going through? I'm going through MS. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. And I'm very sorry about Lord's cancer as well. Everybody's going through something, y'all, in these streets. It's horrible. Oh. Okay. It's very wild to me that some of y'all hate others just because someone else hates them. You have no actual experience to hate them for. We, we see that a lot. You see that a lot? Like, sometimes I want to ask people, like, why do you even hate me? Do you know why you hate me? Are you even aware of why you hate me? And if if the reason you hate me is actually true or not. Do you, I just wonder sometimes, you know, when people who are listening, I wonder this about subs and creators alike, you know, when they are repeating something that they heard about a case from a different creator. And I'm like, did you even take the time to go bet what that creator was saying was actually legit? Oh, and I think the same thing with subs, you know, sometimes subs will come in like the Erica A and hop up on panel and she's this, oh my God, the friend of the foster parents. Like, wait, is that ever even vetted? Like, okay, you couldn't vet it in real time, but did you vet it afterwards and realize, oh, this is bubkis and take it down? No. So that's peculiar. <sighs> yes, they would. Absolutely, Captain Obvious. Absolutely would. Once went on a live with Cromwell and Gavel and swept my floor. It sounded like I had a massive emotion. You did. I remember that. I remember that. That's good. That's the best way to be, Nikki. That's the best way to be. And has passed to Polly. If she watched the middleman leave, or the, do you mean mailman? And he never stopped his car. She knows the middleman didn't do it. That's how she's able to pass it. Mm -hmm. I missed what Bear said. Sorry, y'all. My problem is wanting to read everything in my chat. Oh, well. I'll go back to that one later. Laura was apparently slamming rails, but she wasn't. She was eating something and sniffing. She had the sniffles. Hey, TPE. Good to see ya. I don't hate anyone. No, you don't, Shady. Shady's got a big heart. Just the way that some of you guys word your stuff. Like, why is everyone so obsessed with Laura do a blow? Who cares? She didn't do a blow. Quit it. Stop spreading that. Uh, there's a vape. She says it was a vape. I think it was just a sniff. Okay, a sniff is not a sniff. I'm using them interchangeably. Please forgive me if I'm not saying the right one. <sighs> do you believe, Wispy, I'm curious, do you still think she was doing drugs on her? Sorry, you didn't word it as that. Do you still believe that it was something more than just a vape or sniffles and obviously eating food. I'm just curious if that's what you still think or if you've realized that, oh yeah, it's been there for 10 minutes throughout the stream, it wasn't that. I mean, you can have your opinion on it, of course. I'm just curious what your opinion still is to this day. I think this, this was before her cancer. I got the sniffles today, don't I? Please don't, please don't clip me, man. I got the sniffles big time. 
And I got nothing on this desk except for Mr. Pib and my cell phone. Mr. Pib and my seaside roommate container, because it has to be Pib out of a can. You can't drink Pib out of anything else. And we get a runny nose while you're eating or just after you eat, especially if it's related to certain foods, your provider will likely diagnose you with gastritis. <laughs> I can't even say the words. Oh my goodness. Vapes don't always crackle. Yeah, actually, none you didn't know until my very last live, live stream that I vape. This chick talks to me every single day on the phone. I have vaped in her ear thousands of times. I hit it just now. She never once heard it. Not all, not all vapes crackle. Mine's a disposable though, that's why it doesn't. Coke heads are way more paranoid about anyone hearing them sniffling. She wouldn't make it so overwhelmingly obvious people need to get over. You're like my boss. I'm a horrible accent. I'm horrible at all accents. It is, Booberry. It is. I can't be. I don't know. I'm all for calling some stuff out, but that, I didn't get it. my opinion, I don't think speculation and opinion should be on an open case. Well, Kim, I, I, I disagree with that first part of your opinion. She says, stick to the facts. The speculation and opinion seem to spread faster than the truth. So I, I, yes and no. I think that we have to be absolutely careful with our speculation. That's why with active cases, open investigations, et cetera. I'm very, very choosy with the words that I use on my live stream. Like I have this platform and you know, okay, maybe there's only 400 people watching, but that's still 400 people that I said something to that could be spread out to others. So especially active cases, especially children's active cases, we have to be really freaking careful with our words and our speculation. And if our speculation isn't based in fact, then it's a conspiracy. It's not a speculation. That was just a flat out conspiracy then. Welcome to Hotel California. I think we should, uh, yeah. You guys, I promise you next time we're here, the, the emojis are gonna be all new. And we're just coming up with so many good ones now. It's seriously crazy to me that people want Laura to get grace as she gives it and talks about people daily. I've been chronically ill for years and don't expect people to treat me differently. I don't either, Nicole Um And I do think that there is something a little different to creator to creator than just subject creator I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I did. I fixed that. I hadn't gone far enough. It is not edited. It's just definitely a large crackle. Um, I don't think it's a snort or a sniff of anything nefarious. Melina and Stacey's life got softer. Damn it. I don't, I don't know. That could, that could be. Wow. If you think someone has a problem and you can't reach out, not talking about Lord, um, don't make a video with snowflakes and accusations. <laughs> I think with doing drugs, like there's just a lot of things like doing drugs, being a pedophile, things like that without like some concrete proof. I, I, I think it's very risky to call that out. Yes, it is there. Yep, it is there. It is not edited. And my apologies to Wispy for that. I thought, uh, and maybe she clipped out some dead air because I've done that in clips too, where, you know, you're going through the stream and there's, you know, three, four, five second gaps of dead air. We clip those out. It's not a big deal at all. It's dead air. And so I thought it came right after Laura spoke because that's how it was in her clip, but it's not. It's right before Molly uh, speaks that second time. Does that make sense? <sighs> Mm 
Yeah, I would say Sniffgate has been debunked. I don't know if the battle is over. I'm going to go with debunked on this one. We've definitely debunked Sniffgate. It is, see, look at me, I'm sniffing there. I promise it's just my head cold. Sniffgate, debunked. We need that as an emoji too. Thank you, Cammie. Um, I think, I don't know what to call it. We, I don't think they debunked. They debunked the having a relationship with the foster parents, that's for sure. But that was definitely an expose. One source is not you being knowledgeable. Absolutely. I like them both too, Angel. I like them both too. And that's okay. You can like them both. And I think they'll both be fine with that. Oh, yeah. He... He's absolutely a hypocrite a lot of the times. So Iris, I think he knows that. Oh, hang on a second, Laura. Let me grab an overlay. Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Okay, just making sure. I'm not operating on all cylinders today, but I'm trying to get through this chat. How's it going? <laughs> You're way behind. Mm. So I know. I'm, I'm good. I just I wanted to clear up a couple things that in comments that you highlighted and because you're behind mm -hmm. it was easy to just bump up here jump up here bump up here it was easy to just well, jump up you. but nicole b says oh i talk about people daily and i'm expecting blah 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 i'm not expecting anybody to not talk about me if i do something crazy or if i do something fucked up but i don't talk about people daily i will respond to people coming after me and even then, 99% of the time, I ignore them. So to, for someone to have this twisted motion, how I go after people daily is completely, totally wrong. And very, very few people will I even comment about unless it's something that I'm like, whoa. So that brings me to the next comment that you highlighted. Or maybe someone said in chat, but Miss Robin said, oh, I th will throw jabs at Betty once in a while, even though Betty never, ever talks about me. And that is true. But when Betty sits there and blatantly lies about a case or has the most fucked up thumbnails that are a blatant lie, yeah, that does need to be called out. And so that's why I'll throw jabs at her here and there. I don't throw jabs at her looks. I don't throw jabs at her, you know, personal life. I don't throw jabs at hi past history, but I will throw a jab when she's blatantly lying about a case. Then I will throw a jab. So I just wanted to clear that up. I wanted to okay. also thank you. And, but I really don't believe it was a sniff. My kids will tell you. If they like, if they have a cold or we're in a car and they're like, I'm like, oh my God, get a fucking tissue and blow your nose. Oh, like, you're sniffing throughout that stream, girl. Like, like I said, go back 10 minutes before. I don't know. Maybe you were eating something spicy, but you are sniffing throughout it. So that's why I'm I thought it was you, sniff, it Maybe it's our, your vape. It might be your vape. Maybe. I mean, but I can hear I in my voice that I do sound like I might be getting over a cold or whatever, but it's just not me to constantly sniff. That's why I'm convinced that it was a vape, that it was my vape, mm. because I, I just, nothing irks me more. Even your own kid, when like, I'm like, oh my God, blow your fucking nose. Mm. So that's why I just, I'm convinced it was my vape. It could have been, it could have been. <laughs> sniff gate, go home, you're drunk. But I kind of <laughs> thought, okay, so... I, I do actually do need to run upstairs for one second, so I'm glad you're here. But I want to ask you a question. I kind of thought, can I try? Can I try to be a peacemaker? Not really. I'm not the best peacemaker, apparently. Yeah. But my question is, I thought you and Whiskey had came to an agreement, and Whiskey kind of mentioned it in the chat. Like you guys were up on Willow's panel. You kind of figured, hey, we're gonna lay off, and then you did your live on her yesterday, and so now she's like. She's like game back on. So what what the heck happened there? Can you tell me while I mute and run upstairs? Yeah. What's, what's, my what's, live my live originally yesterday had absolutely nothing to do with her. It wasn't about her. I wasn't talking about her. And then people were telling me that JP went live about it and this one went live about it and all these people are talking about it. 
So my subscribers wanted to hear from me. They, a lot of them didn't see it. I mean, it did happen at 430 in the morning and a lot of them didn't see it. And a lot of them had no idea what transpired. So they asked me to play it. Well, I'm certainly not going to say, well, go over to JP and watch it. And I did give Willow's link, but they wanted to hear, you know, my expression. They wanted to, it was me, Willow and uh, Desperate Whispers video. So, I, I mean, Wis uh, Willow's video, but, you know, they wanted to hear my reaction to my video. So that's why I played it. That was, I didn't discuss anything other than what was in that video. And Did you go hard at her or anything? Um, Take jabs? No harder than any other reaction video where someone's painting you to be this drug addict and, you know, accusing you and slandering you. Yeah, I went a little hard. I could have gone a lot harder. I was just kind of reacting to yeah. that. But I didn't bring up anything else from previously or anything in the past. I just, I focused strictly on that video. Mm -hmm. hmm. And so now, oh, and here is Wispy. All right, give me one second. It probably is her, but just in case we've had some peen bombers running around. Is that you, Wispy? Hello. Paging Wispy to the front desk. Is that you on Deeds panel? <laughs> yes, it's me. I have no okay. penis. You're all good. <laughs> all right. Good deal. Just making sure. So you <laughs> felt like, because like I said, you all left it with, I was just going to poke a little bit of fun at the snort gate thing and move on from it. But I thought you had all left it at, we're doing our thing or, and we're not going to attack each other. And you took her stream yesterday of her reviewing that live as her coming, like doing the tit for tat again. And you're like game back on. Um, I, well, why not? Like Laura, I, she didn't even last 24 hours without going up and talking about me. And Laura, you did come at me very fucking hard. You were calling me names. You were fucking, oh, you were up and down all over me. You even said that you wanted to fucking punch me or fucking hit me. Like, are you kidding? What? Like, what I said was. We made a deal. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you said. You can twist it all you want, Laura. You said you wanted to fucking hit me. No, I said if you, you said, were in if front I, of me, I would in front smack of me you right now. I, I would smack her in the fucking face. That's, like, I didn't say not stop. I in the face. Stop. And how would you say, say what did you I say said, exactly, Laura? I forgot I what traps brought, brought it up. And I said if if this bitch was standing in fucking in front of me, I would smack her in the fucking head. That's what I said. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. That shows your maturity right there. Like honestly. Thank you. You couldn't even wait a day, Laura. Okay. I went to bed last night and I went to bed that night and I was saying to myself, honestly, I'm going to wake up to Laura talking shit about me. And what the fuck did I do? Wake up and you're online talking shit about me. Like you couldn't even fucking you go begged, and you fucking beg for somebody to talk about you. I begged for somebody to talk about me. Okay. When did I do that? Yeah, Laura, I don't think anybody did. begs for people to talk about them on here. Oh, See you how did. you, you twist things. The words that you use are really, really kind of, you know, chosen very, very carefully. When did I ever beg for people to talk about me? You said you never even negate anything that I go live about. Yes. And you don't respond to anything that I go live about. Uh, about yeah. yeah, I did. That's and the reason why I said that, the reason why I said that is because when I talk about you, I'm actually reviewing footage of you. I am showing shit that I am talking about. You never show anything. You just come online and you start fucking attacking. No, I just ignore you. Wishing people being raped, wishing people dead, wishing, like, you do such horrible things. Okay. I'm such so a So that's why I said that. That's not me begging for people to, I, what I was saying, that I was trying to make a point. 
is that when I talk about you, I'm reviewing videos. I'm reviewing your own words. When you talk about me, you're just splurting out, saying whatever the hell you think is happening, and then attacking me for it. If you want to talk about me, fair is fair. Go to my videos. Review what I do. I have no have desire I. to talk about you. None. You have no desire. Okay, but you spent two hours yesterday. More than two hours, actually, because you did two lives. So you spent more than two hours yesterday talking about me, but you'd have no desire to talk about me. That's you a little contradiction. Do you know what the true meaning of a hypocrite is? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Show me where, show me how I've been a hypocrite. For starters, uh -huh. it's interesting to me that you will always want the opportunity to explain everything. You always need to explain everything. That I'm you very feel transparent. justified that you want, that you want to explain things, but when it comes to someone else like myself, mm -hmm. I don't get that opportunity with you. You just you say what you say. What, what do you mean you don't? Doesn't matter. What, you want no explanation be, in front of anything. You want no explanation of why I may have said X, Y, and Z. You just run with it. But when it comes no, to you, your word. you, you I need the your opportunity word. to explain it when in you detail. Say, when That's you say X, Y, Z, when you say X, Y, Z, I play those words out of your own mouth. And then I comment on it. You okay, don't even not, play my words. Okay, you just go off with what your chat is saying and you're not attack me. You're just not understanding. No, I am understanding. But you said not. that you do you said that I don't want you to have a chance when I when have you I talked to you twice yesterday and today so what how what chance do you want Laura do you want to come up on my panel to have a chance no. to explain things do you no. want to make videos to have a chance to explain things do you want to no. review my lives to have a chance to explain no. things okay no. well then what are you asking for I just want you to realize what a hypocrite you are. How am I a hypocrite? I just told you how. Because you want to said, place all this judgment on okay, things I please, say. Please, it's not making sense to me. Maybe Deeds can figure it out. I don't know. I'm actually a little lost too. So you were saying, Laura, that you want her to get stuff in the full context and she's basically that's kind of the summary of what you said but she's saying that's what i do that's why i review your whole stream instead of just grabbing a little clip or something what what we played was a clip but typically now um wispy does just review your entire stream so that gives it the full context and so that's kind of where i'm lost on the hypocrite because she does do what you're saying she's not taking it out of context so I'm a little lost on how you think she's a hypocrite. So, so hit me with it again. All right, I'll explain it easier. It's I'm not talking about her reviewing my stream. I'm talking about something mm -hmm. she just said. How I wish rape upon people. That nothing did. could be further from the truth. Excuse but me. Because, I have a clip, Laura. Here we go with another clip. Do you know the backstory behind that? What backstory could give you any reason to wish rape on people? Do you know I the don't, backstory? I don't know any backstory that would make that okay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You want the opportunity to have to tell the whole story, but you will automatically judge someone else based on a small clip. That's a hypocrite. That's what I'm talking okay. about. So she's saying it's not your it's not your reviewing. Hang on, we got any. It's not your right. reviewing of her current streams. It's that you're taking some of your jabs or some of your quips towards her from these clips, and she's saying those clips are out of context. Okay, thank you. Is that you, Nanya? Even even Randy Randy and um one when did the other day clip oh you God. when you were talking you about somebody. And the first initial thought that you had was, you guys deserve to be raped, or I mean robbed, by burnt toast. Nobody made you say that, Laura. You said that all first on your all, own. That was a what? fucking misspoke. What are you talking wait. about? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, pause. No, no, so no, 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 no. 
That, yeah, absolutely. Okay, misspoke. I have it's never like misspoke the, the word, word rape. And, I'm sorry. Yeah. I've never misspoke the word rape. I, I, I have hated people before and never in my life have I ever thought, you know, I thought you fucking bitch, you're going to, you know, like whatever all stuff. I've never in my life thought, oh, you, you need to be right. Like, are you kidding? No. You are you told told there's no explanation for something that. out of complete context. Complete well, there context. Are only, there are only two letters apart. I could, I, I'm with you. I've, that's that's you. I've never misspoke. I've never hard. misspoke the word rape either. But like, if she meant to say yeah. rob and rape kit, like, I feel like that is very no, close. No, I mean, come on. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't know. I haven't heard it, but I'm like, this rape is, is the definite, is, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a I definite choice. And if I did, I You also wished, you, you said okay, that. Okay, so now you you're in my brain. Language exactly right now, but I said, how I Sapphire say, Jewels. I thinking, you Sapphire and, Jewels that you want to you, be brutally God. raped up the ass. With me and Laura. Both me, every with me. Hey, Laura, I Laura, I, I, Laura, pause for a second. So both of you. So Laura does have that mic issue. So when you guys are talking over each other, it just becomes a giant echo and we can't hear what either one of you are saying. Right, so I understand that. Just take, t try to take some turns because when you guys are trying to speak over each other, and I understand why you're doing it, but we can't hear what you're saying at all. So we can't understand. Um, just take take a breath in between if you can. Well, what were you saying, Laura? I, can I say something real quick? Yes. Well, one thing hi, I wanted morning. to say is, hi, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, one thing I wanted to say is, Laura, I, I think it's impossible for you to deny that you've ever said those things. But I also think, Wispy, it's unfair to say that Laura does this when that's something Laura has done. And it, it was wrong to do even back then. I don't care what context it's under at all. There's never going to be any context in my mind that is like, oh, yeah, I can understand you saying they should be raped. Like, no, there's no context that was taken out for you to have said that. Like, that that doesn't make a difference to me. I don't think that would ever change for me personally. I didn't say that. You did, Laura. I've heard you. I've heard that video. I've heard that video. And to me, that's why I understand her personal, like, why she constantly covers you and constantly goes where you are hated. I get it. Because if you said that about me, I, I don't know how I would feel. So I understand, like, her dislike of you. Um, but But I think it's also unfair to say that, like, you just go around saying that to everyone or like you currently in this moment, you just say that to everyone. And that is not true. So I think that with me, like where you're saying, like she does this, well, she doesn't do this. She has done this. There's a difference. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. I can absolutely the way that, it, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I haven't I, heard this video, so I feel I, I can't have a good opinion on this, I but I, I, I can do, you, you know, that. So they were saying, saying says, in the, didn't mean in it literally. The, well, they were saying literally that, when you wish rape on someone. I don't understand the, like the, the standing up for her. I, I think that her friends are going to stand no, up. But I think what I think what Sarah Mee is talking about here is the, the rape versus uh, Rob comment misspeaking which i have heard some or i'm reading the chat and some people said she corrected it right there in real time so i, th I think we're kind of moving past that one um, yeah she, she definitely previous I, I, situation yeah yeah i heard her say that one and to me that was like that was just her like mixing up her words kind of a thing that's how i took mm -hmm. it but i also understand what wispy is saying is like that's not a word i would there's very like there's just certain words that like I, aren't they're just not in my vocabulary enough to okay. be mixed into it accidentally. And so mm -hmm. I understand like what Wispy is saying as far as the mix up, but I also do know that like, cause Laura corrected herself like, oh, not, not raped, I mean Rob. Like she does correct herself she literally it. right it really after she says yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I get that and I'm glad that she did that, but I also think that like that was done because she knows that she said it before and she's been called out on it. And I get that, I, I I'm glad so. that she changed it. Laura, Laura <laughs> is, you know, say what you want about her, but Laura stands on the shit that she says. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any kind of like hide, hiding her words or like, that's not her forte. Like, I mean, 
I've never seen her like hide the fact that she has said something to that extent or like to try and like twist her words into, oh, I didn't say this. I said this. Like she pretty much stands by the shit no. that she says I as know. wild as it can be. I might, I'm going to have to disagree with that. I, d I definitely agree that Laura has no problem admitting that she can be vile and she can be, um, you know, just so disgusting to people. I get that. But she will twist things and she will deny that she said things. She absolutely I will. I will never deny that I said something. Will it, could it be that I don't remember? Absolutely. But if someone points well, it out to me, I'm like, yeah, I said it. Okay, well then perhaps you as a person should decide like to try not to say things like that because if you don't remember them, then coming at people who say things or talk about them is, is not fair because you did say these things. You do do these things. With you speed, are you very every right. What was that? I missed okay, that. Listen to me. You have every right to have that opinion. You have every right not to like me. You have every right to talk about me. Here's what I don't understand, though. If I'm so vile and I'm such a horrible person and I am the worst person that ever hit YouTube, why do you fucking watch me? Don't watch me. If you okay, my I, morals I, don't align with yours, don't watch me. But you okay, expect I, okay. me to change for your moral compass, which is absolutely ludicrous. No. It's, it's I, your I, I, choice to watch me or not. Don't try don't, to tell me what I should and shouldn't do or how I should and shouldn't think or how I should and shouldn't speak. You're a grown woman. Don't fucking watch me. And then you don't have to worry about getting upset if I say something. And you don't have to worry about getting upset if your morals don't align with mine. Don't watch me. It's that simple. Well, well okay, to be fair, though, like, if that's you know. the of Laura, that feels a little bit unreasonable. But also, like, you don't have to listen or watch her content either if she's reviewing you. Exactly. Like, and you, you don't, don't have the right to tell ways. me what to do or how to feel. Or you don't have to tell me what to, the right to. Like, everything that you just said to me, it, 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 I can take right back to you. So well, why I don't you know? you. That's the difference. I, I don't want you. I don't think Laura does. I think no. I think it's just like how a lot of us other creators get information around here. Someone will send us a clip or tell us this was said. And yeah. so you know that that person's talking about you. And I agree with Unsupervised Maniacs here. She's like, here's what I don't understand. Another creator can tell a the victim, a uh, domestic violence survivor to go get beat. And that's okay after an apology. But Laura can't correct herself and it be okay after an apology and we all move on. Like, I agree. Where, what's the threshold here? What's the okay, rules like, that we're all playing by? Unsupervised maniacs. I would ask from that, like whoever, like whoever said that it was okay that Queen said that, yeah, because I sure didn't. But you certainly don't go on and on about it. I I did talk about it. I did say that it was wrong. I did say that I didn't yeah. agree with it. Where's your videos of it? Where's Sapphire Jules' videos of it? Where's, where's Lauren's videos of it? Well, well here's here's the here's where I think the difference is though. And I don't think it does need thrown out there over and over again after if if she genuinely apologized to the woman, I don't think it needs drug up and thrown out there over and over again because it's hurting that person. But the same goes for Laura. If if she has and I don't know if she like I said, I don't know about this rape video. So I'm going off of just what I'm hearing here now. If she has apologized or, or done something since then and we've moved on from it it's not something that needs to be continually brought up and thrown out over and over that's my point with what I, I don't know if that's what unsupervised was trying to get across but that's that's what i took from it is like why do we have to keep dragging it back up if, if it's already been addressed yes and this and this sniff thing laura brought it up not me i get <laughs> i made the video but i haven't talked about it for so fucking long a video mm -hmm. was made like 11 months ago, I think it was. Well, no, Laura did bring it up. We, we It got brought up on Willow's panel when we asked where this all started from. Like, how did we get well, it? Yeah, and you right. said that's it right. was the video. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Here. Okay, yeah. I'll take that back. I'm, I'm sorry. So, about no, that. nobody nobody else drugged that up. I just know I didn't. Just, <laughs> no, you did, and neither. N neither one of you drugged that back up. <laughs> I just thought it was funny going back and listening to the original audio. You can hear her eating and sniffing and vaping. So, even if it wasn't a sniff or it wasn't 
it, or if it was vape, like you can hear that and you can hear the clunking around of whatever food container she's using for at least 10 minutes beforehand. So it, it goes on throughout. But and that's why up on purpose. people can have their opinions. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Nicole is, um, well, this Deets panel, of course, and Laura, good on you, and me, yes, Wispy is up here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I, I don't you? want a huge fight. Like, my channel is what my channel is. I have many videos on Betty as well. I have many videos on Molly as well. I have, you know what I mean? Laura is not the only one that I talk about. Do I talk about? It? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody around here could probably say that Laura is very talkable about you know and she's very clippable she puts she does put things out there for people to talk about that's the way it is like i get that she doesn't like it i, I of course who wants you like to be talked about but this is youtube mm -hmm. this is the way that it is you know it's just uh, i don't do I, it i, I get know. what you're saying you're reviewing her because she's just a, a, tr a person that you have picked to to review is, is your argument and angel that's what happened on willow's panel that's how we have this Sniffgate 2023 slash 24 is because um, we asked where it all started and Wispy explained to us that it all started with her. She was uh, originally clipping Molly back then. And one day while she was watching Molly on Laura's panel seven months ago, she caught that uh, moment in time that she felt like it was more than just a sniff or eating or whatnot. And so she clipped it. And she, that's where uh, Forgotten Whispers thinks that it all started from was that clip. Right. See, and people are asking, like, why don't I call this person out? Why don't I call it? Well, there's only so much time in a day. Yeah. Like, yeah. It I takes hate that. hours and hours to be able to, like, mm -hmm. clip just one person, you know? Like, mm -hmm. maybe I'll move on to other people, but this yeah. is where I uh, happen to be at this time, at now, you know what I mean? And last night, I was serious, you know, or the other, the other night. I was serious. I was, <laughs> you know, when I said that I wasn't going to talk about Laura, I wasn't going to talk about Laura. You know, yeah, and to be I, fair, I, like you know? everybody agreed that night that like nobody is talking about the other, like it, we're gonna temporarily yeah. put it on hold, kind of a thing. And you also explained that like your content is because that's what your audience engages with. And you know, after the temporary truce was over, then you would lift that and go back to that content. And everybody had agreed to that. So I do understand that Laura's crew wanted to watch it, and so she was streaming it. I just think that you could have streamed it without having to throw jabs or, you know, um, uh, give the semi commentary that was just a little extra from there, from what I've heard. I haven't watched it for myself, so I'm just saying from what I heard, like it, that to me is like, Laura, that's you breaking, breaking that truce that you had just come to or agreed to, just in my opinion. Okay. Can I speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nanya, I get what you're saying. But oh, Deets, if you yeah. could take a poll. Yeah. Of I just ended the other one. Of everybody, because I hear this a lot. If that was me, I would go after them. If if that happened to me, I would do this. If that happened to me, there's no holds barred. Someone goes after my kids, I'm going to do this. I ignore yeah. about 95% of all the shit that people say about me. And I don't watch it. I don't, I've never watched the Sapphire Jewels video. None of it. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. And this is where people don't understand. Defamation, constant slander, constant lies, constant manipulation, come after me come after my kids, come after my life, come after my business, come after everything. And again, 95% of it, I ignore it. But when it finally gets to be too much and I snap the fuck out, all of a sudden I'm the bad one. All of a sudden I'm so wrong and they're so hurt. And all of a sudden they're the victim. When mm -hmm. there is not a creator on this platform, with the exception of maybe Natasha Cooper and a couple of others that could ever put up with the shit that I've put up with and the lies that I've put up with and the manipulation and the CPS calls and you name it for five years. <laughs> I think I'm doing pretty damn good. 
if they can't handle name calling, they can't handle that I go low after I finally reach a breaking point, then don't fucking talk about me because it's only going to get worse. And if you can't handle that, then ignore me. Because if you don't talk about me, I don't draw first blood. And that's another thing that people seem to forget. Every single vile thing you hear me say is a reaction. Every, I don't randomly just pick someone and be like, well, I'm going to do reaction videos on them and find out how vile they are and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to repeat all their vile shit, even if they apologize, even if they, no, no. Nobody does that. Nobody thinks what action caused the reaction. So it's extremely Ooh. frustrating when, and no offense to you, you, Nunya, I know you're trying to do the right thing, but it's extremely frustrating from my end because you may hear me snap out once as compared to 30 videos or 50 different places they were or you know different chats talking shit about me or, you know, defaming my business, defaming my character, defaming, you know, just slander to the highest degree. And then one day you're going to see me fucking boil up and snap out. But then I'm the, then they're the victim. No, it don't work like that. So, one well, I, I don't know. I don't know what oh, you wanted me to do oh. out of that, but I'm happy to. But I do agree. I don't know if that's the case with Wispy, um, but I do agree that like when people poke and poke and poke at you and you explode, the person who explodes ends up being the bad guy, so to speak, when uh -huh. people don't take into account all the freaking poking. I, I get what you're saying there, but <laughs> I, I don't know if that is is the case here because i have heard wispy and and besides this um video which i i don't agree with sorry wispy i don't i think that that, that is not fair to do to someone um especially someone whose income is youtube but everything else i don't think she has gone hard in i know mm, I shouldn't say, I do know that you guys have had the back and forth with the MS and the cancer stuff, but when I've listened to Wispy review, she's been very, the I don't want to say kind, but, you she, know, she's not hard, is what I'm saying. She did, this video. Hard. she did this video and I ignored it, so, you know, last yeah. year or whatever. <laughs> then when she not. went around yeah. saying how I'm fake and cancer, or I'm lying about cancer, I said them, bitch, prove that you yeah. have MS. If you're going to tell me I need to prove to you that I have cancer, then prove to me you have MS. That's it, that's simple. I never asked I wasn't you for going proof back. More. I went live about that. I never asked live. you for proof. Well, and you said in your opinion that you felt like she was lying about having it. But, I mean, so I, I think for me, Laura, I do understand the poking, 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 and then you respond, and all of a sudden, like, you're the yeah. monster. That part I do understand. I, I do get yeah. that. But I also feel like, um, like, she has every right, it, it, and to me, it's not defamation if it's the truth. If she's played your own words and played it back and given commentary on that, to me, that's not defamation, you know, in my opinion, but I'm no, you know, legal person. But... I also feel like if she chooses to cover every live stream you ever do, like she's a creator, she has every right to do that. But on the flip side, if she chooses to do that content, she has to understand who you are and how you get down. Mm -hmm. And when you clap back at her, like she can't be like, oh, like poor me, I got clapped back at. Like you literally are, you know, now don't get me wrong. I, I don't agree. I've told both of you, I don't agree with the health shit. I don't think anybody's health shit should be involved in it at all. I also don't think your health shit gives you grace for saying foul or vile things or questioning other people's health shit either. That's just my opinion. But I think that if she reviews you moving forward, Laura, like if you kind of opened the door yesterday doing your stream and, you know, saying what you said, but if she reviews you moving forward, like it's her page, she can do that. And if you review her or you talk shit about but her, none, you have to understand maybe, that that's maybe I wasn't clear enough. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. My issue isn't her reviewing my streams. I don't watch her to care. It's her little well, you know like she did 
with the rain comment, with that comment of how I must have meant it. Those are the things that drive me insane. I know she can she review me all day long. Me. I don't trust okay. her. I don't no, trust her. Again, not that let I agree with you. Let, let me interject. Please, please let me interject. Laura, mm -hmm. you with anger in your voice said about sapphire jewels. The only you because you call her pick up jewels, pick up jewels, or pull up jewels. Sorry, Dude, pull up jewels. Four years ago, I said you it. Said, no, four years ago. Please let me talk. Please let me talk. Please let me talk. You said with anger in your voice, the only thing that bitch is going to pull up is her pants after she gets brutally raped up the ass. So, and then yeah. you would say, and then you say to people, oh, I didn't mean it. What? That was two thousand. Shit in a nigger's food, curb stomp, a nigger baby in front of his mother, feed a nigger his own penis, cut a nigger a thousand times until his skin turns red. What's happening right now? I don't even know what's happening. Yeah, it's just I didn't know who it was, so that's why I had the screen up the whole time. But then it just was you. That was two thousand. Little does he know we. You're just an idiot, but whatever. Not you, not you guys. That that trucker Dan. So that was the thing to me though. Is it? Here's my thing, right? I, I, I strongly, I like, I understand 100% why Sapphire Jules, after saying that to her, why she has a dislike, a strong dislike, maybe even hatred for Laura to this day, because that was completely wrong. And I don't know if Laura's ever apologized, but I also don't think don't the Lord's ever apologized that. for forever, right? I don't, I don't remember, remember saying that. that. I remember saying you know me. I really don't I, don't I, don't I would have that. no reason. Have excuse. I know that I heard the video. I watched the video and 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 a little bit before, a little bit after. And even if she was talking shit about everything in the world before that, it still wouldn't constitute you saying that to her. And I have seen that video. I assure you. And if if you need me to, like, I could send the video to you so you can hear it for yourself too. But like to me. I understand that that's what she did, but like, maybe she, you know, maybe she regrets doing that. Maybe she's trying to do better. I don't fucking know. But okay, like, for me, for me, it's the deflection and the never the taking deflection. responsibility. Like we just heard her say, "No, they did this to me, so I did that." People attack me. People do this. People that's are cool. on me, and then I blow up. Well. Uh -huh. There are like, there's always an excuse for you, Laura. Why? What, you, where do you hear an excuse for deflection? Please tell well, me where you, you hear you an excuse for deflection. You just, so what she's saying is when you're saying that people poke and poke and poke at you and then you blow up and then people are like, oh, Laura, yeah. how scary. She's saying that you saying they poke and poke and poke at me and then I blow up. She's saying that seems like an excuse. Like you excuse your behavior when you do blow up instead of owning like shit, I blew up. I shouldn't have done that. Like whatever it is, what it is. But instead of you doing that, it's like, well, they shouldn't have poked and poked and poked. That's what she's saying. She sees that in her opinion, those are excuses for you to blow up. And that's and, not an excuse at all. That's a fact. It's also and like if people, that, are always attacking your business, people are always attacking you. People are always attacking your kids. That's people true. are always attacking. Like, that's a fact. People, people don't then show it. Like, I would like just one quick, just one. Who, att who attacks your business? Well, I've seen a lot of people attack her business. Are you serious? Like, with the whole like, exploding. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, I've seen yeah. that. That's yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then that that answers my question. That's fine. No, that, I mean, that no. one. I, I don't know about the others. Um, I haven't heard anyone talk about her kids, but again, I don't know about all the. I I don't know all your past beefs with everyone either, but I have heard the the business stuff for sure. Yeah. Like like attacking her business or like talking about it? oh oh like defaming it and like Attack. posting pictures and yeah i mean it's flat out like saying her candles exploded and right. and that's right. like the whole joke and everything so yeah jonesen talked about her business once she sure did and yeah. ended up apologizing okay. for it so yeah All right. okay that's fine that's fine that's good well not good but you know what i mean thank you for answering that it actually happened because that um, man never talked about my business right wispy the fuck out of here. Well, to be fair, Laura, I mean, well, no. I, I, let, let's try to get, I mean, right now, the, the beef is between, you know, you and Wispy, so maybe let's try and keep it there, because 
the more you bring other people into it. Like she's well, not them and they're not her either. But I, don't, I think I, she's just she's explaining that, yeah, that creator has attacked her business or spoke poorly on her business. That's what I took from what she was saying there. Thank you. Not Amanda, that she's like you're, trying you're, to drag somebody you're, else you in. You really are. Sorry. You're, you're just so rude, Amanda, honestly. You seriously are. Who? Amanda oh, T. Yeah, just, I, I keep Amanda. trying to tell people to be adults in chat, but like... Oh. Yeah, it's not stopping um, out just either. Just yeah, 1K either a month. Was, I never said I wanted to make 1K a month. I said I wanted to make $1,000 one time off of YouTube. That was just a goal of mine, and I did it. Now, okay. big deal. I don't talk about it. I don't say it. It was just something that I wanted to do, and I did. And how did you do it? You talked and about me. People saying, oh. people saying it's about who? money for me. It's about this. It's about that. Come into my streams and see how much I get, like, super chats and stuff like that. I'm very grateful for every single one of them that comes in. But they're not rolling in, Laura, okay? Yeah, they're not rolling know. in. This month, I, I will know. tell you, this month, we just got paid. I made $367, okay? So it's not all about the money for me at all. I hate when people say that. It drives me I mean, insane. True. It, it is annoying. But I don't yeah. feel like... I would say 95% of the creators here in this sector aren't doing it for money because the money's peanut. I agree. There yeah. are 5% maybe that are, but yeah. I don't think you. Okay. But, well, I think it's pretty well, well established. I appreciate you talking about you. Well, so and do you think know, that though? Okay. As 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 you can. So I know like maybe... I know that she reviewed the stream and you felt like that that was digging back in, but maybe we could just start first because it. it's like you had a great idea. You know, you both had a great idea to just kind of set this aside for a while. And so, I did. And you did. And so maybe we can just start back over and. And I invite anybody to go watch that aside. live. Yeah. I invite anybody to go watch that live and come back to me and let me know if that live was not all about me. Because she insulted me, she called me names. She it it was all about me, nothing else. I watched it and I clipped it too. So please go over and watch it. If I'm wrong that she was just reviewing a live, like she said, because her subs wanted it, that in my opinion puts blame on your subs. But um, please go watch it and let me know if that bot if that live was not all about me. Okay, enough with the self promoting. Um, but oh yeah, she's, she's she's the Lord. here's the problem oh with the deal. Okay, here's the problem. Yeah, of course. With it. Here's I excuse. have no problem not talking about her, mm -hmm. but where this becomes iffy is nobody that I hang out with, you know, like creators, would bother talking about her, but she's got very close knit people that go live about me all the time. So if she's in their chats and she's, you know, uh, along with them, I'm not allowed to talk about it because I can't, I'm not supposed to talk about her. That's no, no, no. the problem. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, don't I, think, the, I, well, I don't think that she's that. close to those people. I was in Sweetie Pie and Sour Puss's chat. Mm -hmm. I hopped in there. The, 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 they were talking about this. I said, no, I'm talking about JP. No, no, no. Let me, let me finish. Cause you want to twist it around. Like I'm out there in people's chats talking shit about you, but I wasn't, I hopped into their chat. People were asking me questions. I answered maybe about 10 questions. And then I decided to leave that chat because we made a deal not to talk about each other. And I knew that it would just keep going and going and going and going. So I decided to leave that chat so that I would keep my word. So don't twist it around being like, oh, and if other people are talking about it, that's not my fault. Sinner I said, control it, other people. okay, hypocrite. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's not your fault that people were talking about it. That's the exact same thing that happened in my own stream yesterday, except it was on my panel. It's mm -hmm. Exactly mm -hmm. what happened. That people, my Thanks. subs were asking about it and it's not my fault. That they were asking me okay. about it and they wanted you're to hear the my one, side. You're the one that made that deal. You're the one that made that deal. So you That's should be the one to decide mm -hmm. and make the decision. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to show it. You guys can go see it somewhere else. 
because I okay made it. Like, and I'm going to say questions. But you decided to actually go and show it oh and then God. attack me again. Okay, Wispy. So there's no excuse. There really isn't. Uh, no, it's so what do you what do you what do you want from here, uh, Wispy? Do you think that just a question? I don't want and, nothing. And, I don't want nothing. So let, I let just me finish the question. To talk about my MS. That's it. I don't care. She can call me all no, the I fucking names in the book. I that looks bad on. That's that's no, my. You never talked about my MS. Okay, let me finish the question. Let me finish the okay, question I'm I was going to ask. No, no, no. I, I was just going to ask. Ahead. Like, you, you were upset that she broke the truce, and understandably so. And I do agree with Wispy that it was broken um, in, in that review. What would you like to see going forward? Are you going to continue reviewing Laura, or are you, you still sticking to, to the truce and being hopeful that she does starting over as well? Like, we... I'm just curious, like, where do we go from here? No, and I'm not too sure. Okay, that's fair. Sure. That's a fair answer. I said, it's an honest answer. I appreciate. I got it. people coming at me from all sides saying, um, you know, stick to your stick to your truth. Or I got other mm -hmm. people coming at me. Fuck that, Laura. Fucking broke it. That's it. She's fair game. Go at her or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, I mean, I just, I, I don't, I just don't know. I mean. I'm just it's exhausting. I'm, I'm never, sure. Like I understand that. No. I understand when you get it from all sides, and you're like, "Oh, what the crap do I even do?" I get it. It's an I honest know, answer. I am just curious. But we all do. That's the thing, though, Laura. As creators, we all do. Maybe you don't. Maybe we don't see how it's. It is. Ha it happens to every last one of us. Different ways. Different people. Different situations. But it does like like wispy sitting here explaining like she's getting shit from all sides you know and you might not ever seen one second of that you're probably getting a lot of shit that the rest of us never even see as creators it is insane the amount of shit that we get from all sides y'all every which way and i don't think that that changes I, I think it happens for every creator, every last creator around here, no matter what you're covering, you get a comment. You're it's like a push and pull from everyone and you don't, it gets frustrating. It gets old. And so I do believe her when she says that she's, you know, getting shit. And I believe you absolutely when you say you're getting shit. So maybe we could just have a little more understanding for one another. I just, I just wish that she didn't get up the very next morning. And the first thing she does on her channel is bring up that live and start fucking talking about me and all that. I just, I don't understand why she did that. I mean, I guess I do because Laura's known for things like that, like just known for not, you know, known for just saying things and, and shutting people up for the moment and then just going on with whatever she wants to do. I mean, it's known for that. And she has all the right to do that, I guess. And like, that's her own personal thing. But I just, and honestly, I mean, it just mm -hmm. almost proves my point. It, it really does. So anyways, but I, I just, I'm going to go yeah. because I really did not mean to just derail your chat. I really, really didn't. No, you're fine. Um, you're fine. Babe, before you go, I just want to say this. For your own sanity, and I really mean this, for your own sanity, since I bother you so much, you're probably best off just not even watching me. Because it seems like I trigger you so badly and no. you want me to be a different type of person, and you're so offended that I'm this type of person. Don't yeah, watch this is the for me part that I'm talking about. Keep you'd going. Probably on. be a happier person if you just don't watch me at all. I'm I'm fine, happy. I, I'm I'm a happy person. I'm one probably one of the most happy people on here in this drama community. One of them, anyways. You know, I have um I have great streams. I I laugh on my streams. We have fun. We I have. I'm not, I'm not uh, triggered. This is YouTube. This is what I do. I review videos. I review people. You happen to be one of them. It's yeah, not, you are not, I'm not obsessed with you, Laura. I don't love you, Laura. Okay. I feel the same way about you as that I, I do Betty. You're just somebody here on YouTube that I review, that I see do fuck shit things. And I talk about it. So don't make it so... Uh, personally about you yourself like it, it, it that's not what it is oh, my sanity okay. is my happiness is fine i'm not lonely um all the things that you say about me not i never said you were lonely 
Oh, I'm sorry, you did it one time anyways. Um, I, I, and I do invite you. Maybe you should go watch my lives. No, because thanks. I do try to respect people. I don't call people names. When I talk about you, I say Laura. Okay. I don't call you fucking any, I don't call you any names. None. Okay. Maybe I might call you a bitch. I will give her credit for that. Is that she does, but that's other like than, other than the house stuff. Her, but I yeah, don't I, the house I, stuff, forgotten doesn't call you any names. She doesn't say vile things about you or to you. No, she just calls me a drug outside addict. Of the, yeah, no, I was out of that. I mean, that was a month ago. Hold up, The shit she brings up is four years ago, but the, you had yeah, no problem. Yes. Yes. You know why I did that, Laura? I'll explain that. I saw you saying that a couple of times before that thing. I, I, the reason why I did that was because I did a couple of lives where I was showing patterns of behavior. And your pattern of behavior on here on YouTube has been the exact same since you started the drama. It's been the exact same. People are attacking your business. People are attacking your kids. People say lies about you. People, it's it's been the exact same narrative. For how long have you been on here? 13 years almost. So maybe 10 years of those, I, I'll give 10 years, whatever. You, you exactly. 13 narrative. years. I've been on well, here. Well, that's why I've been an account, but it's not how long I've been on YouTube. Well, you started your channel in 2011, didn't you? Yeah, to watch YouTube, but I wasn't like on okay, YouTube. Well, I'm just saying you've you've been on. Well, okay. <laughs> I happened to look one day when you started your channel. It was 2011, so that is like 13 years ago. That's why I'm saying that. So, anyways, uh, I think I think she said previously it was during the making a murder stuff, right? Is when you yeah she started out with making a murder. Yeah, so like the first year. That she was on here, I think year, two years, maybe. I don't, I'm not quite sure. You're not um, obsessed with me, not me. at all. What the fuck? What you got to do is just go look through your channel, Laura. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's not obsessed. I don't know the first thing that, 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 that is kind of odd. Like, See, this I'm is the stuff I can't See, handle. And I, don't, I don't think it's odd either because it's like if you're going to review someone at and obviously she does know. review you a lot. Yeah. She's knowing what she knows. Yeah. So I, I, I see a lot of people saying it's creepy though. I, but I, I, I mean, it's not like she looked her up or anything. She just looked no, at, I've never she went on, to the, yeah, yeah she, she just went and looked and seen when the crit. I've never went on to Google and put in Laura perplexed ever. I don't no. even know her. I don't even know her last name. I, I really, really don't like anything that I look it's on YouTube. That's it. I've never yeah. Googled anybody's name on, on YouTube. And you can check my history of Google, whatever. Never once have I ever Googled anybody's name on here. I don't do, I don't do stuff like that. I, I, I will do what I see you know. and I will talk about it. Yeah. So I anyway. that's what you did. That's why I said, I just don't think, I don't think it's that weird. No one winner channel was created. Cause like if you're reviewing that person's, although I couldn't tell you some of the, uh, I don't know, but I, I don't think it's a bizarre thing. If you did a little bit of research no, on a channel or something and you figured it out. Yeah. I don't feel like that's anyways. Uh, I understand like seeing who people who really are shorty. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's really nice of you to say. Laura's wispy's cash cow. She doesn't make much in super chat. Oh my God. You guys are just so, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I don't you got to ignore I, the I actually looked because people have said that I actually looked and I took some screenshots. Um, I went over like, and looked at like, I don't know, five or six videos that I had did of Laura, lives of that did of Laura. One of them I made 89 cents. I took screenshots. One of them I made 89 cents. One of them, another one was like six, nothing over a dollar. So if people want to say it's like about yeah, money, Laura's my cap. I mean, come on. Broke covering you, Laura. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you want to like keep it up a little bit because I, you know, I mean, like honestly, when people say, oh, work, money, 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 no, not at all. No. I will. I, I'll show those. I will post those screenshots. It's gonna happen because people keep saying that I'm fucking using her for money. Even Laura making money off of me. No, Laura, I am not. I am not. I am not. Yeah, and I think I'll show that's. Them. I think that's the typical yeah. clap back whenever you cover anyone. Like, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'll get that yeah, in every stream. Absolutely. So like, it, it sucks. People do that. It, it is. But that's there. like a Molly move. That's a Betty move. That's a. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want to be, you know, classified in, in, in 
categories with with those two, especially, you know, like I, I don't know. It's just I don't know. See, Shane, I heard somebody you say you don't, you don't want to be ahead. categories with them, but you categorize me with them, and you have no problem with that. I I can't with this girl. I just can't. I didn't categorize you. I just said that that's what it reminds that that's like that's like a Laura, that's like a Molly, and that's like a Betty, and, and they do do that. They do stuff like that all the time. Laura, I mean uh, Molly, always said that. People are making money off me. People, Betty always says that. So I'm just putting a comparison out there of what, you know, of what I see. That's it. Don't twist words around. I, me, I, I will <laughs> say, though, that people did make a lot of money off of me. <laughs> like, a lot. Absolutely. Just uh, Absolutely. lots of channels and lots of clips and lots of coverage ever. So I, I will agree with that. And definitely. Yeah. Um, welcome back, Shambles. Perfect timing. I was oh, not see that she's not herself right now. Why do this when she's in treatment? Everyone back off Alicia, but Laura can't have grace. I'm just another troll. I I get that. And I will say to you, I'm in treatment. I'm in treatment as well. I go every three weeks for my treatments and I will do that for the rest of my life. So throwing the treatment card out there is not going to work with me. For sure. I think both of you, I think both Both, of you should move past the health stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think that going with at the health stuff at each other is just low. And I think both of you are way better than that. You shouldn't. Um, I I thought we made a truce, but no, Laura had to go on and talk about me. Anyways, I'm going to get off deets. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wispy. Um, I honestly am so sorry that um, your, your live was over now. I, I apologize for that. I think no, you guys were both the topic at one point. You know, I, I reviewed that a little bit. So <laughs> you absolutely did not derail it. We can get back to the other stuff. And I appreciate you, you hopping um, up and giving your side. I'll drop your link again. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, also, thank Nanya, you. Um, thank you so much. I don't know how you're always around, but you are at the right places at the right time. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I appreciate you coming up here. Um, we're, we're going to start calling you like teacher, teacher Nanya or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, no, <laughs> sensei. No. Sensei. Nanya. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Sensei, counselor, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't know. Crazy, crazy. Um, Shorty says, I love you with Speed Stays Dark. Well, thank you. But, you know, Laura's not. And with me, I do. I, I just want to say, like, I understand you are in a very, very peculiar place right now that, you know, you're, you're kind of stuck on all sides. So. I do yeah, get no. it, like, and I respect it. That that's the reason why, you know, just like I said Friday, like if you were viewing my stream, mm-hmm. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like your commentary is your yeah. commentary. I don't care about that. But... Okay, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you well, so much, uh, you guys, and I wish you all a, a, a all a good day. It's sunny and beautiful here, so I hope it's sunny and beautiful for you guys. No, it's freaking cold and rainy here. Oh, unfortunately, shit, no, sorry. I know. Um, I'll send something. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Miss V. All a right. Thank you guys. All right. Bye, everyone. Deets, before I jump down, what's your next subject that you're going into? Um, one you had I here. had I had the uh, Ziggy stuff, but we kind of touched on that. And then the crossing the line in cases. This I was going to touch a little bit on the Sebastian Rogers stuff and then send people over to Jonesons because I think she's getting ready to go live covering those YouTubers as well. I got a question about that, and then I'm gonna yeah, what's up? Itself, but I and thank you. I dropped your link in chat too. I just wanted you to know that. So I, I got both of you. I think it was on my stream on one of my streams yesterday that JLR went to Sebastian's father, and he said, "You're gonna have to pay me because there's no way you're gonna make like ten thousand dollars on my interview and me get nothing." Did you, did you guys hear this? I did not hear that. That would be yeah. that and would be I was like, I don't, go dad. I oh no no no. So the stepdad, okay, I get what you're saying. I did hear this. So jail are the stepfather was in uh Smiley's world on, up on his live panel, and he was telling people like if you're going to use me for in she kept wanting uh what's his name Jones and what's the stepdad's name I keep forgetting it um 
Chris, it's Chris. I got it. So Chris was saying like, if people are going to keep using us for interviews and stuff, cause Smiley was wanting him to go to JLR and give an interview. She kept praising JLR and wanting him to go to there. And Chris was like, yeah, I'm willing to pop up on anyone's panel as long as they donate their entire stream, like send your money to charity, not to him personally. He was just saying like, put it towards uh, the search and rescue teams that are out there, put it towards, you know, a good charity, Nick something. He was just saying like, I'm, uh, you guys aren't going to be making money off me anymore is what he was good saying. For him. And, yeah. And that was the step that I said that. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Saying like, yeah, if you think you're going to keep using us for interviews and, and he said he had dug into who JLR was and he wasn't going to be doing an interview with him unless that's what he agreed to. Oh, Shit, I'll, do a, thank you, I'll do an interview with him and donate everything. <laughs> I'll donate on the spot. Yeah. I think that it was, it was really good. Oh, none you fell down. But I'm I think that's what he was getting at. Him. I know, I know. I, but unfortunately, that's kind of what we're going to talk a little bit about is that, yeah, he wants the money to go towards flyers and billboards, et cetera, a good charity, something like that. Um, but right now, there is just so much division in that case already. It's, you know, I, I, I don't, don't know, know how long he's been missing. I know, I was going to do a stream kind of going over all the interviews, but kind of got derailed with other things. but. It's just, it, it's very similar to so many other missing kids cases, but just the fact that this kid just seemed to disappear out of nowhere. And as we know, people don't just vanish. So something is there. And so what people are doing right now is they are breaking down all of these interviews because all three parents, mom, bio mom, bio dad, and stepdad have been everywhere. I think I have 20, now 21 interviews that I put together in my notes of these individuals speaking out. So they are just going everywhere and people have picked it apart word for word for word for word. And unfortunately what I see right now, this is just Deet's opinion and nobody else's is what some creators are doing is trying to pit mom and stepdad against bio dad. And they are trying to cause this huge divide there and make it seem like stepdad who was in another side of the state or well, another portion of the state when this when he went missing. Now they're trying to make it seem like he had something to do with it. They they took a picture and are claiming that the scratches on his arm weeks later are from the stepson. And I don't know. It just seems like a hot mess already. And it kind of makes me not even want to review all the interviews because it's already just people going back and forth. People but isn't and forth. I don't. I haven't followed it at all, but I see it everywhere. Wasn't he a teenager? Mm -hmm. He's 15, but he's on the spectrum. Um, it, the way that mom and dad have both described it, extremely high functioning autism, but he is on the spectrum. And so it just seems like a lot. How old was he? I do believe 15. I think that is the number. If someone please correct us and chat if we're wrong. Perfectly must have took a break. We're going to have to dox her a popsicle because she's typically the one who's good at She always drops that info in chats, and I love that about her. So. Yeah, 15. Thank you, Melissa. All right. So he's 15. Hey, Melissa. So he's 15, and mm -hmm. I heard speculation. I forgot where. that He did he admit to spanking him with a belt. Yep. Okay, so is that why they think that the parents did it? Because I, I heard think, the situation. So I've only watched out of all of those 21 interviews, and this is why I was kind of good. I was going to kind of do it live in real time. I've only watched the very first one that they that the step parents did, not the step parents, but the stepdad and the mom did on Duchess's. And then I watched the one that Jones and was reviewing the other day, which was one of the last ones on Smiley Store stories world and that's where it came out that he spanked him he he said he popped him in the butt with a belt over the clothes i do not agree with spanking but it does seem that the tide has people did not like how aggressive and how direct the stepdad is and he does seem to speak for his wife quite a bit in the two clips that i've seen and people were getting very frustrated with that but when it came out that he popped him in the butt his words not mine that seems to be a shift in the tide of thinking that this man has something to do with it. And I think 
like I said, it's okay to speculate if we have all the information, but it just seems like there's, there's a lot to that mentality of going along with the crowd. And I, I, if the man was in another section of the state and law enforcement had that info, I don't know. I think today is a good day for you to play all 21. That's what I think. <laughs> well, I mean, why not? We've already been here two and a half hours. We'll see who wants to stick around and go through them. There was a lot. He had a different disability. I do because I got work to do. So you just want to hear me play to listen to. We can do that. Exactly. I'm okay with that. I haven't gone through it. Like I said, I've only listened to the first one and I was just going to take some notes and stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of where I was going to end to seeing if, you know, our, I was just going to get the pulse of what people thought. Do you think that the, you know, we're going too far with the allegation towards the step parents or you think they're justified? Like how far is too far in these cases is a topic that we're constantly talking about. And I'm just kind of curious what people's thoughts were on it. I think we need all 21 audio. All 21. <laughs> and I think I'm going to jump down so you can get started on that. And that's it. So thank you so much. All right. Thank Thanks. So yeah, I'll, I have be that I'll be listening because, I mean, like I said, I hear about this case everywhere. And I just haven't taken the time to look at it because I've been doing other stuff. But, yeah, I'm, oh. I'm here all afternoon. I got a cricket stuff. I got a candle stuff. So, yeah, I got nothing. All right. Else. So here we go. All right. All right. Have really a good later. one. Thanks all for right. hopping up. <laughs> With all the people can cover and call out whoever they want. They can't. Anyone can make a channel and call out the people they think should be called out. Personally, I cover who I want to cover. Right. That's something TPE hit, hit it right there. It's very exhausting as a creator to say, oh, you're not calling out this person and you're calling out that person. And it's like, we can't call. I can I personally cannot call out everyone. TBE cannot personally call out every single person. And they might not see something wrong with what others see something wrong. But if you think somebody should be called out, chances are there probably already is somebody out there calling them out. Um just a, a high probability. I got nothing to do to you guys, but you guys want to go through these interviews? I can do that. Mom said he went to bed and he was gone in the morning. That's what mom, I know. I was going to get the old trusty pen and paper out because that's how I like doing it. Take notes and, and keep a record of what's going on. Oh, my goodness. All oh, the Real Housewives of YouTube have showed up fashionably late as always, but we are here for it. Thank you for gracing us. Us candle makers when it jumped on me. Need something to listen to. <laughs> Wants to set and enforce her rules for everyone except her son. Well, I think that's a lot of people. Can you cricket, bro? Are something sucks with the parents? Duh. Does that give us a right to dive into their personal lives and nitpick the hell out of them and spread rumors? I'm just curious. Is, is it even justified? Is it even justified? The speculation. And it's a serious question because I don't know. Um, it's a very... Interesting case. Oh, we got Granny Bassmaster up here. Hey, Granny. Hey, baby. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm hanging in like a rusty nail. I, I was going to say <laughs> that his fault, well, his stepdad, Chris. Yes, he's hostile. I, I understand mm. that. Is the he hostile boy? or is he a, is he a very I, aggressive, sure man? I think he is, I shouldn't have said hostile. He is mm -hmm. very defended. Very you know, he's defensive. having to defend himself. And uh, I don't think he did anything to that little boy. He might have spanked him with the belt, but I don't think he's got nothing to do with him coming up missing. I just don't. That, I don't. That's a very controversial topic, though, the spanking. Like, I know I don't. I know my kids aren't going to spank their children, but I do know some people that do. And oh, hell, it's, it's, they, I see, like, I grew up, I got a spank, I got a spanking, I got a yeah. spanking with a switch. That doesn't mean it's right, though, either. But that also doesn't mean that someone did something to their child. Yeah, and it doesn't mean lots. it's absolutely wrong. It, mm -hmm. There's a fine line there. I didn't beat mine, but 
But yeah, mm -hmm. that got a spanking. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you. My son at age 14, 15, I think he was 15, he got in my face and it was mm -hmm. on. This four foot and a half granny about whooped his butt. I mean, we were rolling. I think that we were face. we were in Jones's when she was reviewing that stream at Smiley's, and you know, so I said my my son has never been aggressive or anything like that towards me. One time he said he just popped off of the mouth and said something snippy, which is really out of character for Marshall. And all it took was a stern, you know, look from his father and in a firm voice, you will not speak to my wife that way. And he's never disrespected me ever again. So, I, but I do know that that, you know, is spanking with a belt. It, I don't know. Yeah, well, some people, some people do think it is. Like I said, that is such, that spanking is definitely a hot topic uh conversation a lot of people do consider it beauty you I know like my, yeah. i spanked mine one time with my shoe uh that's the only <laughs> thing i had in my hand i was saying i got uh, i think i got a pop with a fly swatter one time from my granny so oh yeah. shoot oh hell <laughs> it's just i mean they they don't hurt them it makes them walk a chalk line my daughter uh, I was talking to her one time, trying to explain to her what she had done at age 14. And she turned around and walked off from me while I was talking. And that she come across, right across the back of her head. Mm -hmm. I threw it. I'm a dead eye with a she. But uh, <laughs> you just, I, I'm, I demand respect yeah. I, on my children, my grandchildren. And they're they're so respectful now. My grandchildren mm -hmm. are. I've never spanked any of my grandchildren. I don't they're think you dead. would ever be need to. Grandbabies well, are just perfect little angels sent from heaven, and they never do anything wrong. Well, they I don't do anything so. wrong in my mm -hmm. eyes. Right, exactly. You know, they're and like I told Daniel, and uh, my my son and my daughter. Don't spank them here in front of me. Carry them mm -hmm. home, like I always did. I just, I, I, I don't want to see them get spanked. They are my, they are angels, and in my opinion, the uh, the mm -hmm. grandkids don't do anything wrong. That's just me. Uh, but you know, now his his stepdad. Did he have anything to do with it? I don't think so. You don't think is, so, Granny? Nah. Is is Chris an asshole? Yeah, he's an asshole. <laughs> Granny says Chris is an asshole, but had nothing to do with it. She's standing you know, on that one. That does not make him a murderer or anything like that. It it just well, don't. And we don't even. I mean, we know what statistics tell us, but we don't even know that Sebastian is no longer on this earth either so that's just something we have to keep in but mind you know, too let me tell you this at 14 i was 14 my old my sister above me was 15. we went mm -hmm. out a window we had our little backpack of clothes we squeezed through that window and it took them three months to find us but we had fun oh, oh my goodness so, I think that so chasing said she got spanked with legit anything her mom could find that is abuse a spanking with a belt is an abuse in Tracy's opinion I don't spank period but my son is super smart and gets the rules I think that's how it is with my kids they just got it um so I I don't know and I think I'm against it and the reason for what somebody else mentioned I think it was Misty and I highlighted it I think when you were when you were spanked as a child you're just like I'm not doing that to my kiddos and uh, I like what Nanya has to say. I think people have such different opinions and feelings for that. Their personal experiences seem to drive those opinions. And you hit the nail on the head there, Nanya, because it is my personal experience of getting, you know, a pop on the butt from my parents as to why I would not be doing that towards my kids. So, you know, it, well, hey, I guess I'm just terrible because I, I believe in uh, thinking. See, you I know, don't think I, you're terrible. I think it's just different experiences for different people, you know. You know, my kids, I guess I'm stupid. I, I got spanked. I guess I'm not smart enough not to get spanked. 
and my daughter and his son, they must be stupid because they did some things that they got spanked for. As for instance, when my son was 14 years old, man, he, uh, we were at work. I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. We were at work and uh, we came home and my husband's truck was totaled in the front yard. Oh my. And uh, Daniel tried to tell me that he backed it up and hit a tree. And me and Tom was looking at it. I looked at him and I said, Daniel, you got to tell me the truth. You did not just run into a tree. Where did you ditch this truck? Well, he kept sticking with his story. And uh, I went to the other boy's house and talked to him and found out where they ditched it. And uh, I carried him in my car to show him I knew the spot. God, I was mad at him. <laughs> I mean, he totaled his truck, not to mention. I'd have been frustrated have, too. He could have killed himself and somebody else. Yeah. yeah, he got his ass tore up. Oh. I mean, tore up. So, I, I y'all must have really, really, really good children. You no, know, well, see, and I, you know, I've had my kids do some things that were off the wall, but I think we just handled it differently, and that's that's the thing. I think that they're. Like someone said earlier in the comments, like, I'm not the parenting police and neither am I. I'm not policing or I'm not going to go around and tell people how they should or shouldn't parent their children. Um, just we decided to do something different for our family and something that, you know, completely different from how we were raised. So yeah. I think that that's OK, too, is that everybody has different styles. Yeah, my grandson is 11. And he has severe, and I mean severe autism. He's nonverbal. He's 11 years old. And honey, he's still in diapers. Mm. So, you know, I, I know that Sebastian probably had little quirks about him. Uh, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, Dylan has to have structure. If he doesn't have structure... He gets upset. Everything has to be a routine, you know. So they need that. They need that daily routine. Yes, to they do. Drive. I've heard Tracy speak on that too. So I, I get that. Like there's a. So and I feel like I am lacking in this case because I, I don't know what it's like to have or raise an autistic child. So I feel like there's a lot of nuances that come with that that i like i said i'm just lacking in that arena so oh but dylan's a joy so i mean he comes oh, and good. he'll he'll grab me and hug me and kiss me you know he's mm -hmm. he's such a sweet boy he can speak with his eyes and not even say a word so i mean we're all good with it we understand mm -hmm. that it's gonna be like that but it's okay but that's that Chris, I'm not so sure he did anything to that boy. Like I said, he's an asshole, yes. <laughs> See, and I, I, like I said, I only watched the first one and then the one that Jones and was streaming. So we'll go through them and we'll see what we feel afterwards. But um, I want to say tragedy says I was, I was spanked on my bum, but not with objects and not very often. And see, I always heard different that it was better to use a wooden spoon or something because if you use your hand, then the child connects that violence with the person giving. I don't know. And I, that's why I was just like, this is all too much. We're just not spanking. And so we did it. Oh, heck. Because I, I just both. feel like there's so many different I've used a, I've used a shoe, a wooden spoon, a spatula. You know. Granny kept her soldiers in line. You had to with him too. Yeah. You had to. I'm and and maybe you. that's it too. I, I have, you know, I have some friends who have some pretty rowdy kids too. And well, I know you, that sometimes you have to employ different tactics. That's for sure. I'm not going to hang Chris. Not quite yet. Okay. Because uh, like I said, me and my sister, we hid for three months. They couldn't find us. We were, street, we were street smart. Oh, yeah. 
How old were you? I was 14 and she was 15. Yeah. 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 And and I don't. We ran away for discipline. Uh, We had been locked in a room and uh, we could come out to eat or to get a shower. And uh, after that third day, I said, she, uh uh-uh, we got to go. And we got our stuff up in a little knapsack and we hauled butt. You know, and it took them, it took them a while. And if we hadn't wanted them to find us, they wouldn't have never found us, period. So, don't, uh, don't, he may have just run off. Don't underestimate kids these days. Don't. No, I, that's, you absolutely shouldn't. And I have heard them kind of underestimating him with him, uh, underestimating him being able to get online. I, I don't think they should have, un- should underestimate him in that arena either. No, no, they shouldn't. All right, I'm gonna hop down, but all right. Well, thank you. Y'all don't hate me because I spank. We don't I'll, hate you, Granny. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. So I'm gonna start a poll. Should we start a new stream to go through these interviews or just stay here? And I can timestamp it afterwards. What do you guys think? That was a lot of little things going around. I think we kind of got to the bottom of Sniffgate that it in most people's opinion, it wasn't wasn't doing lines of coke or anything like that and um that she was just eating some food and sniffing and vaping and we talked about the ziggy stuff briefly which i hear let me grab granny's watching stream while you guys uh vote on that poll but granny i hear granny had a really good live on it yesterday from what some friends said and i did not get to watch it yet but i will be I want to drop that. You guys can go check that. Here's Granny's stream with, they really went over Summer's case and everything. Well, not her case, but went over the, the bad actors, the tragedy of pimps, if you will, online in that case yesterday is what I heard, so definitely a good one i don't think a pop is spanking i feel like this is going to continue to be a a hot topic issue for sure this the spanking portion but we can see there's a lot of quirks but it depends on the level and the surrounding different for all of and that's what i heard too that like the spectrum is so vast so vast so even your experience with autism can be a completely different than you know dozens or hundreds of other mothers' experiences. We found out my grandkids. We found out my grandparents whooped them with the wind spin a lot. Yeah, I'll be wrong with too. Wrong with too. Mm, I have four of the two. I was hardest on. Gave me a run for my money. The next two came much later, and I was so much more relaxed. And so were they. Yeah. You're fine, Kels. You're fine. Don't even think a second thought about it. I'm not even going to highlight it so that I don't want to just, I hope you're good. I hope you're good. Never hit them with your hand. There are, there are training methods. Be creative. If you haven't had to have at least one therapy session as an adult over your childhood, I'm side-eyeing you and sending the FBI to watch you. No one's childhood is perfect. Nope. No, God, no. My childhood was definitely not perfect at all. And I had to... oh, I had some crazy parents, that's for sure. Lots of stuff. I'm not, sorry. I saw that you were talking about your dogs. And I'm like, what? On your kid? No, she's not talking about on her kids. People she's talking about on her dogs. Without shoes, though, that is the peculiar one. Could he have taken a pair of shoes that maybe his mom didn't know about? Who is, who done it? Yeah, we don't even know where he is. Yeah, how can we determine who did it? Top find my southern sentences. <laughs> Y'all don't hate me because of that. <laughs> She's so cute, isn't she? Is this? I just got to it. Leaves and missing sounds. Okay, I'll read that later. 
I spanked my son once and then had an endearing conversation about choices and consequences. Yeah. My nephew, I have uh, two older nephews in between my two kids. I have lots of nieces and nephews, but two that are around the same ages, exact, like they're six months apart from my kids. Man, they were some aliens. They were some aliens. So I know that a lot of the parents, like I said, they have different parenting tactics. So I only want to be my strength by time. I lost my temper with my son once. I was racked with guilt for so long after it's not worth it. I'm raising a really cute, really cool human though. And she is, he is a cool human without spanking him. It is a weird word, isn't it, Thera? Thank you. Raising kids isn't easy. Yeah, it's not at all. And that's why I don't think we should be judging other parents. Uh, now, if we see something, we need to say something. Absolutely. 1,010%. I agree with that. Hands down. But I think we're all just trying to get through this gig of parenting. Survive it. And I'll tell you what the reward is. I figured it out four months ago. Um, all those sleepless nights with your babies and the worrying and the getting them through high school and getting them through college and getting, you know, the first job interviews and the first boyfriends and blah, all the drama of junior high, et cetera. The reward is that very first time you get to hold your little grandbaby in your arms. Oh my God, it's the best reward ever. The best, hands down. Yep, grandbabies. Man, thank God for them. Thank God for them. Whoever said that about losing their temper with their child, I did that when my son was 14. I actually blacked out and never put my hands on him. Oh my gosh, you thought he, he was push, pushing you down a flight of stairs. Oh my goodness. Never underestimate locking up game system for 24. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, my daughter. So she's a little princess. <laughs> she still is. But uh spoiler rotten she's the first girl on both sides of the family first great granddaughter like oh, just amazing and uh girlfriend was is a fashionista and we turned an entire bedroom into her closet and after me warning her for weeks to keep it clean and she was you know i think she's like 10 or 11 like keep it clean keep it clean and she wasn't picking up she'd go in and try on like 10 different outfits and then just toss them on the floor i took every last stitch of clothing out of that room except for two outfits and slowly gave her back more and guess what she never did that room was never messy again Pumpkin is amazing. We do call her pumpkin. But they give, they give you a run for your money sometimes. Absolutely, B fam. Granny was raising her children in a different generation, too. Uh, we have to keep that in mind, too. My grants can do no wrong. Okay, let me see what the poll said here. All right, so we're just going to stay here, which is fine. I will just timestamp those. I sent myself over. I had those notes on my phone. I need to run upstairs and get my um, notebook if we're going to do these. All right. Uh, hang on. Here we go, copy. Okay, so the first interview, and if anybody who has seen all of these sees me get them out of order, let me know and we'll fix them but i think i have them all in chronological order so this is duchess discussions is she still duchess discussions or did she change her name oh she's just duchess now just duchess she dropped the discussions and added a crown i cannot do a crown from my computer so she's just duchess people used to think she was deep one of the first ones blamed for being deep we did consequences with loss of privileges or gain of privilege. Yep. 
I'm raising a kid that lives with grandma until she was 12 and there was no discipline, hardly any at all. Now I got my hands full compared to my son where he was disciplined when he was young. Mm. Definitely a different generation. I had a friend who grounded her kids from electricity for a week. She didn't take their devices, but when the batteries ran out, they weren't able to charge. Okay, I'm like, wait, electricity? Like she turned their power off? No, I gotcha, I gotcha, that's smart. So then they were allowed to use the fridge, but she didn't let them charge their stuff. Sponsored by Mr. Pib, which I'm gonna mute and play a little bit of Duchess and go grab me my notebook and Mr. Pib. Let me skip through here and I'll drop her link throughout because I don't think they come on. There we go. You're welcome. Um, we had a really Okay, so we have Mr. Proudfoot here. I'm going to try to do one and a half on all of these just so we can get through them. If that's too fast for anyone, let me know. But I am going to try to play them at one and a half speed. Really good conversation today, and I appreciate you being willing to talk to me um, about Sebastian going missing. So I guess I will just kind of start out with... Um, Tell me what happened the day that Sebastian went missing. I know that his mom said that he was having a good day. He had had a great weekend. So do you want to walk us through what that looks like again for everybody? Um, he did have a really good weekend, actually. Um, when we come home from having supper that evening, um, he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to bed, when I told him to go to bed, um, he had even he said, I love you, mama. And he said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself went to bed, and uh, when I went to wake him up for school, he wasn't here. And you did tell me that Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's okay. Take your time. Sebastian does not have a history of running. He, he, I mean, the young man doesn't go outside very much. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood knows him. Um, he is very... Um, to himself, so to speak, yeah. um, between the hours of you know twelve and six, he he has basically vanished. Walked out of the house, the door was locked and gone. He didn't take a phone. None of his shoes are missing. Now you told me that night that now Chris, you were at work, you were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch about okay. ten o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at nine p.m. And then you got up off the couch and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight, midnight. And, and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything so seemed okay. There's actually a piece of, so to make something very crystal clear. So that okay. way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 943 or 946 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said, hey, you need to wake up. Put the dog's up. Go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Mm -hmm. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up and get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times. Um, mom has called me at the time and asked me. She was like, I can't find him. I was like, do what? And she goes, yeah, I cannot find him. I said, well, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because that's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the location. And you had told me that there hadn't been any particular situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened. And I also had asked you if there were any friends that Sebastian might have possibly left the house with or if he had any contact with anyone on social media. Do you want to comment about that again? He doesn't have a social media. Um, okay. And the only friends that he had were a couple of kids in school. Okay. Um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We, we as parents. Um... Okay. Okay. Sorry. I had to run upstairs, load up on Mr. Pibbs, and grab my notebook. I got to go back. There was so much right there. Boom. In the beginning. That I got to, like, keep track of and take down. Holy cow. So I can see why people think he is a bit aggressive, obviously, because he's doing most of the speaking. So sorry, basically, we're starting over because now I got my notebook. We're good. 
and my popping pins, which are the best pins in the world. Actually, um, when we come home from having supper that evening, the um, tell me what happened the day that Sebastian went missing. I know that his mom said that he was having a good day. He had had a great weekend. So do you want to walk us through what that looks like again for everybody? Um, he did have a really good weekend, actually. Um, when we come home from having supper that evening, um, he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to bed, when I told him to go to bed, um, he had even, he said, I love you, mama. And he said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself went to bed. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, he wasn't here. Okay, so they were out the evening before. Said goodbye to, or said, not goodbye, sorry, said goodnight to mom. Is that what y'all are hearing too? He says goodnight, and then she wakes up in the morning. He's not there. Okay. And you did tell me that Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's he's okay. Runner. Take your time. Sebastian does not have a history of running. He, he, I mean, the young man doesn't go outside very much. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood knows him. Um, he is very um, to himself, so to speak. Okay. Um, between the hours of you know twelve and six, he he has basically vanished. Walked out of the house, the door was locked and gone. He didn't take a phone. So they said that um, everyone in the neighborhood knows him but he's not a sociable person. Is that what y'all heard as well? So like, he's very well known in his neighborhood. But he's not sociable. I can't remember what word he just used. Um, and basically, so they're vanished between 12 and six. None of his shoes are missing. Now, you told me that night that, now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And, Mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch about 10 o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m. Okay, so here's where I needed to go back and do the notes on. So he says he wasn't there. He was away at work, and we went, we now know it's, it was Memphis is where he worked. So Chris was not there. Let's hear this again. Right. That, now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And, Mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch about okay. 10 o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m., and then you got up off. So, Duchess is saying that Sebastian, you'll be just S in my notebooks, went to bed at 9. Mom fell asleep around 10. And the reason I keep notes like this is so that we can see as these interviews progress, if any of this changes. And if you have it down on paper, it's a lot easier to pull up than it is from your memory. Or some people are, you know, fancy and teching and do it on the computer, which is fine. But I like pen and paper. Off the couch and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight. midnight. And, and nothing was unusual at that point. So she fell asleep at 10 and then got up around midnight. Which is that why they thought he went missing after midnight, but she did, I don't hear anything about checking on him. I got up and went to bed at midnight. Okay. Everything so, seemed okay. There's actually a piece of, so to make something very crystal clear, so that way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police. This is why when I was upstairs, I was like, holy shit, I got to hurry back downstairs. He's like a lot of important, important details here. He's very specific with that time, which means that they've looked at their phone records, right? So they get on the phone. What did he just say? Clear. So that way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. 9.43 or 9.46. So mom, so we'll just put M and C, M and C on the phone. 
9.34 slash, where's Gavel? She better come and join our our solution today. Okay, so Sebastian went to bed at 9, and then Mom and Chris end up on the phone 34 minutes later. Okay. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said, hey, you need to wake up, put the dogs up, go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Yeah. So then mom does go to bed and go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Yeah. So I get off the phone at midnight. Wait, no. Hang on, I heard that wrong. Hang on. She, fought, she said she fell asleep at 10. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said, hey, you need to wake up, put the dogs up, go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight. Okay, so mom said she fell asleep at 10 and then got up at midnight and he's saying they were on the phone and she started slightly falling asleep and then gets up at and he tells her what two hours later to get up and Okay, so there's a little confusion with the What time was falling asleep on the phone? Okay Not a huge deal, but just something that stuck out to me right then midnight or right around midnight yeah. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up, get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times. Um, mom has called me at the time and asked me, she was like, I can't find him. I was like, do what? And she goes, yeah, I cannot find him. I said, well, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because that's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the so if, de if, if stepdad of Chris is in another part of the state, why was he the one that made the phone call would be my, my first question. And, and maybe that's answered as we go on throughout these interviews. So just, you know, take my questions for what they are. They're just me thinking out loud. So he said, mom wakes up and can't find him and starts freaking out like any mother would. Can't find Sebastian, freaks out, calls. Uh, Chris, stepdad, and I'm guessing he answered at checkpoints. And so then he's the one who they hang up, I guess. He hangs up and calls law enforcement. Chris is the 911 caller or dispatch or whatever it is they called. Okay. The location. That's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the location supposed to do and you had told me that there hadn't been any particular situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened and i also had asked you if there were any friends that sebastian might have possibly left the house with or if he had any contact with anyone on social media do you want to comment about that again he doesn't have a social media um okay. No and the only friends media. that he had were a couple of kids in school. Okay. Um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We, we as parents um, know how social media can be right. and seeing how kids can be easily manipulated. Um, he's very young in mind. Yes, he may be. Right. He's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes through with autistic children, as everybody would know. Right. Um, but for the record, we I am a very strict parent. I do. He does not have social media, not in our household. He doesn't uh, online game. He, I mean, I am, I'm pretty strict when it comes to that kind of situation. Well, that's good. That's good, Chris. That that you have control of that because social media can be very dangerous for young kids um, because they don't realize who they. May so I'm just gonna pause right here and throw that out for the ones still listening. We are not going to attack any parents in this situation at all in this chat or on this channel and uh so please be careful with your opinions in the chat you're welcome to have your opinions but but please be careful and let's not make them accusatory at all so what i got from those last few minutes is there's no social media so they claim he does not have many friends 
but the friends that he does have were interviewed. And then, and then I underlined this, Chris is strict. So he's coming out the gate to us that I'm a very strict parent. Um, I don't know if, hey, Trev. Trev knows a lot about the case. He's been covering it since jump. I was sharing it out. He's, he knows all the things pertaining to it. Sebastian Strong, good to see you. We're just gonna go through all the interviews. So this will be old content for you. Um, they did a three-way call. Thank you. Thank you. You guys will know a lot more. It was a three-way call. Mom was hysterical on the phone. Was okay. You guys will know a lot more because I have not listened to them all and feel free to keep throwing that stuff out there. I probably won't document it until we get to it in the interview. So he comes out the gate telling us he's strict and that Sebastian doesn't have many friends, no social media. doesn't mean anything bad it just means that he's honest and upfront with who he is as a parent oh i was gonna ask in the chat does anybody know how long they have been together i don't know if they go through it in an interview but how long chris and katie have been together how long has he been sebastian's stepdad maybe talking to on social media so it's always good to have that awareness and to make sure you're monitoring you know what your kids are doing so i had asked you both you know did you have any idea what would make Sebastian want to suddenly leave the house. And you told me, well, that's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know. All the detectives, they've all asked that same question. What is it that happened that caused him to leave the house? Um, and I know you must be so worried and so concerned. Is there anything, if, if Sebastian were listening to this live stream right now, if you knew that he was out there, what would you want? So that's kind of what I took away from it too, Nanya, that like he's the step parent. And see, so you guys are going to have a different perspective. I um my parents are still married. Um, my husband's parents were unfortunately still married at the time of their death. Luke and I have been married for, it'll be 24 years next month. I don't have any personal firsthand experience with steps. My best friend has been through, I, I know that there's this whole like five wives thing, like, well, my best friends have like four husbands now. She, she would never be capable of, of harming her child. And so I, I don't think... I'm aware of some step situations, but there are definitely some gaps here for me with the step parenting thing. I just thought it was odd him being a strip a strict step parent. But like you say here, Laura, his definition of strict may be different than yours or mine. And that's absolutely true. It could be. Could be. He does come off like he's in charge. Yeah, just from the first five minutes. Seven years, you think he's known him? He's been in his life about half of it, married for less than half of that time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, so hang on, I start it so that I can go back to it when people ask. This is the very first interview with Duchess, and I will drop her link again as we listen further. Oh, I guess I didn't start it. Let's see if I can find my comment real quick. But it's the first interview with Duchess, and it was on March 3rd. So we are starting at the beginning. All right, I'll play a little more. Want to tell him that we love you and to come home. Oh. I mean, it's pretty simple. This boy has a very large family that everybody is asking the question, where are you? We love you and please come home. Yes. Oh. We definitely need to find him as soon as possible. If you live in this area, Please search your property every day. He could be on the move. Just because you've already searched your property one time doesn't mean that you don't need to continue to search your property on a daily basis just to be sure. If you have a lot of land, it needs to be searched, you know, just to be sure because he may be lost. He may be somewhere and he does he can't find his way back. So that's why it's very critical. Can you talk to me about the search and rescue efforts? Are they searching on land, air? There also have dive teams there. What can you tell us about that? So currently, um, they... As of today, the National Guard was also brought in to help with the search, but they have had fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, um, horseback ATV side by side, um, door to door scouring every neighborhood possible. Um, I mean, the outreach from the community and various counties has been extremely welcoming, loved. I mean, it okay. So first, a few things I want to know I, that felt like some genuine emotion from both of them, in my opinion. Even though Chris does seem like a Sorry, as I was scrolling back down, I saw that. that you, I, I highlighted that. That's exactly what he said. He pretty much stays to himself. Um, even though Chris does seem like a very strict, a very 
direct co-parent, uh, that did feel like some genuine emotion of what they would say to their son. And uh, that broke my heart. And I want to remind everybody, we are listening at one and a half speed. So some of the little nuances we might not catch in real time. But then listening to everything that they're pouring into that, you guys, listen to the, the horseback riders, the ATVs. Now they they were bringing in the National Guard is what he said. This was on March 3rd. They were throwing a lot of search and rescue crews and things like that at it. So that's that's big. It, it's We've been told this is probably one of the largest searches that they've conducted with so much input that it, it's – it's a case to be studied for sure. You have a lot of people that are praying and supporting you right now. Was his ask, would he be able to ride a city bus? Um, nothing is off the table as far as abilities. Could the young man get on a bus? I'm sure he could. We've never done it before. We've never rode a city bus, so I don't think he understands the process. Um, he doesn't have any uh, sense of money. He may have, like, let's say, a $20 bill in his hand, but he doesn't truly understand what $20 would get him. He's good right. Money, but he I understand. understand um, money. And single mom says, does he want his real father? Did you guys hear mom there? Okay, so she's very soft in the background. I'll slow it down real quick so you guys can catch that. She says he's good with math, but he doesn't understand time and money. He may have like, let's say a $20 bill in his hand, but he doesn't truly understand what $20 would get him. He's good right. with math, but he doesn't I understand. understand time and money. He doesn't understand time and, and money. Single mom says, does he want his real father? Maybe I'm just asking. Well, it turns out, single mom, that, you know, he sees his real father every other weekend. And uh, the real father, uh, he is heavily involved in this situation and is aware. And he doesn't know where Sebastian is either, correct? Correct. I mean, I can tell you this. His father's very much involved in his life. Yes, very much involved in his life. The relationship between all three of us as parents is not your common one. I mean, me and the father talk on a regular basis. We call each other. We talk, hey, have you heard anything? How's he doing? Is he acting up? Um, you know, I mean, it's it's not, there's no really animosity in between the parents. That's good. So I know, again, this is the very first interview, and I think the opinions and stuff have my, maybe have changed since then, but we're going to go in order, remember? So here we have stepdad saying, we get along. Sebastian can talk to his dad whenever he wants, and the three of them have a good co-parenting relationship. That's what stepdad and bio mom are saying good that's good discovering the truth thank you for being here they say did he have any special interest like trains parks friends maybe a school bus route that he loved my son elopes and loves trains so he heads to the tracks he um, playgrounds yeah he loves playgrounds i mean he he loves to play i'll give him that um friends wise he wants friends sebastian sure. his idea of his friend is right now is what he has two kids that he talks to at school uh -huh. but he is extremely socially awkward and so it's very difficult for him to make friends uh which has been this boy's only lifelong dream. If I mean, he, he, Christmas, what do you want for Christmas? I want friends, birthday, I want friends. Anything that he could do to get a friend, he would love to do it, which is potentially dangerous because that could open up doors if for somebody to say, hey, I'll be your friend and potentially cause harm. I mean, that's, that's huge right there. Like you heard mom at the very beginning of that. Um, he wants friends. And then you hear, hear you know, stepdad saying, birthday wish christmas etc is for friendships and so that that breaks my heart um and he has two friends at the school but that does lead into the potential of like how bad you know if he wants friends that bad is there the possibility that someone could easily persuade him to uh, leave home to maintain a friendship Kim Holmes asked if there's any cameras in the area. And I did see, Kim, that they were asking for people that had any ring doorbell footage or any businesses that had camera footage. Talk to us about that, Chris. We did. You know, Captain Avi, I kind of thought that was weird at first, too, that, that he's referring to her as mom. But it almost seems clinical, right, that he's saying um, mom this and Sebastian that so that you, me and you, the listener, can know who he's referencing. Because her name is Katie. But if we don't know that he's talking about... Um, Katie, like we don't know that Katie's mom. So if it's just a brand new person listening to this interview, they'd be like, "Why was Katie doing that?" I, you know, it could be something like that. It could be the the just the vernacular of this man, the way he speaks or whatnot. But it is um, a little different. I agree, but I'm not looking too much into it. 
speak about that briefly earlier about the people getting all the footage, but they haven't found anything. Um, our entire neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods have voluntarily and with generosity given up any video footage that they have they've they've got. I mean, they have let the the, the apartments come in and view and monitor. Um, so as far as cameras, everybody has turned over everything. There's thousands of hours of stuff that they are combing through to try to find an answer. Well, all the it looks like Tish is local to the area. She said, I go to the grocery store or anywhere and our eyes are peeled looking for him. I work at a local restaurant and I'm checking cars as they come through the drive through every day. Bless you, Tish. I know this family is very grateful. Um, Discovering the Truth says, so he probably knows the route to his father's house. So maybe he was in the process of heading in that direction. Is that that has, yeah, that has not been ruled out. Um, I mean, like I said, the search that they are conducting is extremely widespread and thorough. Mm -hmm. um, so nobody is ruling that out as a possibility. But normally when he wants to go to his dad's, he just says so. And we just call his dad. Yeah, I mean, it's dad will come down here. We meet him halfway. I mean, there's this. He's never wanted to go to his dad's and not been able to go. Let's put it that way. Right. I mean, Archie, thank you for being a member for six months. Um, the, all of this is very, very helpful to help us, you know, better understand the situation that we're dealing with. Um, and I did see a post on Facebook that it looked like everybody was asked to wear green on Friday because green is Sebastian's favorite color. Um, what else can you tell us about Sebastian? Um, this, he's an avid Minecraft fan. Um, loves avid the color green. Um, he's got the goofy, the goofy and quirky smile in the world. Yeah, I'm going to play this down, listen to it at normal speed. I love it when parents, and in this case, that parents tell us about their missing children, like their personalities and things like tell that. Tell us about Sebastian. Um, this, he is an avid Minecraft fan. Um, love and and some people might say here, why is he telling us and and not mom, not Katie? I can hear her crying in the background. Can y'all hear that? Can you imagine how hard this would be to do? Avid Minecraft, like it would be extremely hard. I'm not going to pretend to know or understand how it would be to lose a child and then be missing this long. I don't think I could speak. I think Luke would be doing it all for me as well. And I think with my husband's personality, he, you know, he would want to do that. He would want to speak for me to, to protect me. Like I said, you can hear her crying in the background because she's getting ready to tell, or they're telling us about their son. That's no longer there. Loves the color green. Loves green. Um, it's got the goof, the goofiest and quirky smile in the world. I don't think I don't think anybody could could um, mimic it. To be honest with you, um, he looks like he's such a sweet young man. He um, loves to uh, dance. Looks like you he's hear such mom. Listen, you gotta listen to her in the background. She's so soft. She said he is a sweet young man. He um, loves to dance. That boy can he'll dance his tail off. That's hey, sure. that's there's nothing wrong with that. Dancing is good for you. It's good exercise too. Um, I just really hope they can find some answers. Now, I did ask you guys because, um, you know, I know that sometimes when we're looking for autistic children that go missing, a lot of times people are concerned that they may be attracted to go towards the water. So talk to us about that. Is he is he a good swimmer? Does he like to get in the water? I think you did mention some things about that to me earlier. Um, so he he's a fish in the water. I'm going to tell you right now that. Loves if, to if, swim. If, but here's the distinction. He is not a child that likes to get dirty. He can't stand his hands dirty. He can't stand bugs. He is fearful of flies and things. So if he swims, like he is a pool, pool kid. He's not a, I'm a river and a stream kind of kid. He is swimming pool bound. Discovering the truth. I'm sure that they are probably looking into that. Now, I know that you said there was some misinformation that was going around <clears throat> and you wanted to make a clarification. You did tell me that TBI, uh, you know, was assisting, but that there was some confusion. People thought that FBI was actually assisting in this case. Talk to me about, um, what you spoke about earlier to me on our phone call about how FBI is uh, that they were consulted um, and the card team, um, you know, was they were, I guess there was a discussion going on as to whether he qualifies um, as, you know, for the child abduction response yeah. team. Maybe you set it down further in chat, Trev, but I'm interested to hear like if it was agreed by all parties, was there a reason for that? That's uh, interesting. If they all agreed upon it, then. That wasn't wasn't a negative for many of them, I suppose. So he, the FBI is not physically on the ground. 
Uh, somewhere in, in one of the news clips, I think it was reported that the FBI had made it on the ground. They're not. Um, TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, has reached out to the behavioral analysis team or their CART team. And they are trying to work with them from a distance. Not They're not physically present uh, to help in, in any way, form, shape that they can render their assistance. Okay. Um, like you said, thank you for being here. Have burner phones been looked into? I know some teens sneak phones from their parents or maybe his computer use at school to we see if he has been checked. Evidence of a secret phone? Okay, good. Good. No because digital phone. evidence is really important. They want to make sure that he's not speaking to anybody. This is such an no unusual evidence case. of a secret phone. Um, this case is very extremely uh, unusual. Um, like I said before, we are pretty strict when it comes to certain things. Um, as far as comms, communication, electronic devices, mm -hmm. there was only one phone that he had. It was extremely locked down. He had access to his phone, his text message to only his contact list, uh, a camera, and a calculator. And that is it. He's a pretty happy kid, usually. He seems like it. And I know that you love him very much. I know that I can remember earlier in our conversation, you, you were referring to him as Bubba. And I that's think that's I, what I, I call my son Bubba also. So that really tore my heartstrings because my son, he's 30, but he's still Bubba to me. So um, it just, that name is going to stick forever. It's just how it is. Cindy Caton, thank you for being here. She says, are there any old wheels that maybe he accidentally fell in or any areas or mines that he, he might be at risk of coming in contact with? I know sometimes those things occur out in Tennessee. Um, the divers, have they have they found any possible leads? Um, I know that I heard that there was a possible pond that they were draining. You did tell me they were. What experts analysis Experts analyze, confirm this. Um, is that a channel or are you just saying experts have analyzed these interviews and have confirmed that? Because my question would be, did they look at his baseline of how he was before uh, a child goes missing? Because that's definitely going to change a parent's vernacular there. Yeah, uh, your dad always, see a lot of people have said that, like my grandpa always called my grandma mom, no matter who he was talking to, called her mom. That's true, I hadn't thought of it that way. But I'm just curious, I wonder why, I was wondering why he was moving in with bio dad too, but we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there guys, maybe. Searching all of the pipes? Yes, so when it comes to, uh, to, to address her, her question as far as wells and things, I'm sure there's plenty of those around here. Um, they actually pulled data for all the caves, uh, underground voids, all of that stuff that could be accessible. They brought in teams from all over the state that specialize in either cave explorations, um, water recovery rescues. Uh, we don't know that they have drained a pond. I can say that much, but they okay. have searched. Dived dived, they've dived them all for sure. They've okay. walked. I couldn't tell you how many miles of creeks and waterways, and they've used cameras. They, you know, the sewers. It, it's not really the sewers they're looking in. It was the it's the drainage pipes. Nobody. So that that's it for clarification. Sewer pipes, we're not going to find a child in. Those right. are enclosed and secured. But the runoffs, uh, water runoffs, were all searched by a dive team. Okay. And I know Ginger Snap said his law enforcement looking into the possibility that he met a friend through Minecraft. I hope that they would just go ahead and vet all of that just to make sure. So I see you guys are talking about this in the chat. And my question, uh, Stevie. Is, and I see, I saw Tracy said that too, is that you can turn off the Minecraft, is that how you say it, Minecraft chats? Um, can he turn that back on? Would he be able to turn that back on? Like, is it just as, I know nothing about Minecraft, so I don't know if that's something he's able to turn back on himself or not. Uh, but if someone knows, that'd be great. Um, because you never know. I'm not really sure how all that works because I'm not a gamer, but I know that there are ways that you can communicate like via Xbox because my son is a gamer. So, um, and Gabrielle, I believe that they, you guys were at the Costco on Saturday. That's when you took the picture of him, correct? So oh, Costco on Saturday. So for those just coming in, we are going to go through all of the interviews. We're just doing them in order. So we are going in chronological order. And right now we are on the very first interview um, and it was done on Duchess's channel. So, um, I think I've got them all. Like I said, I got 20 or 21 here, and I think that's every last one of them. Um, but we'll see how it progresses. We're just going with our opinions based on this one at the moment. And accounting for vehicles and work with, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes, but they're not on the ground. That makes sense, Trev. Okay. Yes, my okay. wife was at Costco on Saturday. Yeah, not Saturday. Saturday. Oh, where it says Saturday. Saturday. It was on a Saturday. They were at Good. BJ's on Sunday. Um, okay. And, what and when it comes to restaurant or? No, they are all wholesale uh, 
like a commissary style stores where they sell in bulk. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so Costco so, Saturday, BJ's on Sunday. Yes. He loves to eat all the samples and BJ's is new, so I took him. Loves to eat this. And when it comes to like one mention about Minecraft, uh, like I stated before, he does not have any way to come with anybody on, on any form of online gaming. That is extremely restrictive. We don't allow that because of what can come of it. They combed all of the electronics. Um, I can tell you this without with, with no hesitation. Anything and everything we have given to the police and any other law enforcement to have them completely scan, uh, validate everything, and they are they are currently. I mean, everything is empty. I mean, they, they were like, you guys are pretty good. I said, yes, sir. We don't believe in allowing the kids to communicate uh, through social media or through any type of gaming. It uh, looks like Missing in USA says, why are they wanting camera footage from Sunday afternoon? Because that, we can, that we cannot release right now. Okay, that is not something that has been authorized us to uh, right, put out respect. to the public. And we respect. Okay, so got here because I had I had seen this going around. I saw a community post from Trev, and I did watch the first part of his live where the new information came out. They were just looking for uh, neighbor security cam footage from like midnight on, was it, into the morning, and then they stepped it back and they wanted security footage from Sunday afternoon on. And I know a lot of people was like, "Oh, what? Do, what do they want to know? What the parents are doing?" But Without any of them being named suspects, um, it makes me think they're checking to see if someone was roaming around the neighborhood. Um, that's just my gut instinct there. It could be wrong. I that 100%. Ginger Snap says, I was reading that his favorite song is Eye of the Tiger. That's a great song. <laughs> he, he's got mm -hmm. an eclectic taste of music. He is a, he's a fan of Eddie Vedder. He I likes music. Survivor. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's. Young man has a very eclectic taste in music. And you told me that Taylor he Swift, loves to play chess. Uh, Carrie Underwood. And he loves to play chess, right? He has a crush on Taylor Swift. Ooh, he has a, he oh, has well, a crush uh, on boy, Taylor boy, Swift. Watch out, man. Um, was 911 allowed to be called, Rhonda asks. Uh, on the cell phone, is that what she's referring to? Yes, I believe so. Is that what you're asking, all Rhonda? Device, <clears throat> all devices that have communications um, have the ability to call 911. Believe it or not, most cell phones that are not even connected to service have an ability to actually call 911. Yeah, you could pick one up off the shelf at a store and most will call. Yeah, that it, that's become a federal thing. That's not a, a service provided. That is like a federal thing. Right. Do restrict safety features even if we could. Yeah, safety, safety is not restricted in this house. Okay, I do have one other question before I before I read what was his is saying. Um, it was something I was going to ask you. Um, let's go ahead and do was his question right now. Um, Shackle Island Road and New Shackle Island Road, are they in the same area? New Shackle Island Road um, runs par runs parallel to Long Island. Old Shackle Island Road um, is actually farther directionally. It would actually be south in front of the hospital, the Hendersonville Hospital. That is roughly, I think, four or five miles from our house. Okay. Okay. That single mom, that's your favorite song too? Now, something I do want to ask you is because I've been I've been watching social media because that's what I do. I share missing cases on lots of different social media platforms. And I was very disappointed when you told me that people were harassing you and attacking you. Um, is there anything that you want to put to rest while you're here tonight or make clear to the public about this situation? I know you told me there was a statement that you wanted me to make um, about you and the mom and the dad. So if you want to make any clarification about that, you have free reign to do so. We will not allow you to be disrespected here on this platform. Um. It, I, I I have no malice or ill intent toward anybody. Everybody has an opinion. Of course. Um, but what is factual is that the father, the mother, and myself have been extremely cooperative. We have been vetted. We have been checked out. We have been questioned and everything of that nature. And literally. Yeah, I I, I caught that too. No, yeah, he did say that. He said safety is not restricted in this house. I, I, I don't know. It is weird. There's there's been a lot of weird little sayings here. I won't disagree with you guys. We also have to remember that this is a situation, if they are not guilty of anything, it's a situation that not many people find themselves in. And we don't know how their personalities might be. So I see trouble. You're talking about how, what was it you just said? I just read it. You said, um, I can't remember if this is on an interview, so I think it's important. Trash Man said that an early that an AM early trash pickup was very heavy, took two people to dump and was oddly shaped and that Trev could back you up on that. 
And then you said they check the landfill only one day for a few hours. And that could be because, and I learned this when I was doing research into Quentin Simon's case, um, every truck that comes into any landfill, every landfill, they know exactly where that was distributed. And so if that truck was a small truck that day and they know exactly where it was taken to, it might have been easy for them to get in there and look and see where they needed to go. The reason Quentin's was so long and so intense is because it was mixed. It had went to a separate location. It was mixed with several other trucks. So it became a much broader area to search. Um, so if they know exactly like what truck their trash was taken into the landfill on, the trash workers called in a tip saying that, yes. And so if they knew exactly what truck, then the landfill knows exactly where it was located and it, they might've been able to get through it faster. It's a possibility. Um, but I don't think they were doing like shysty police. Like if they went there on a tip and we, we know that they went there on the tip. Yes, I have all the interviews, Booberry. We're going through them all. Um, if they went there on a tip, it sounds like they took that seriously. So if they were only there for a few hours, then they probably got down to what they needed to do. I think he works in construction, but it does. Was he military? Does anybody know? Was stepdad Pat? Was he military? He sounds military. Not gonna lie. Law enforcement or military in his past or something, because that's what he sounds like. They'll be on Nan Nancy Grace tomorrow. Okay. okay. Right. Have been cleared. There is no wrongdoing. There is no negative input from the parents and whopper is that the father, the mother, and myself have been extremely cooperative. We have been vetted. We have been checked out. We have been questioned and everything of that nature and literally have been cleared. There is no wrongdoing. There is no negative input from the parents or any of the family. You know, um, so the way he's wording some of this stuff is very bizarre. That's why I asked if he has like a military past or a law enforcement past, but it's, it's almost clinical, y'all. And that doesn't mean that someone's guilty just because it's bizarre to us. It just means that it's just a very clinical way of describing it. Um, but we also know from our experience of following cases online that they have not been cleared. Um, now we don't know what law enforcement have told them. And I'm guessing that they have looked into every last little tiny bit about all three parents and probably are continuing to do so. I, I do believe that for sure. And I, it's hard for a lot of folks. I mean, there's, I, I will be honest and say this out loud. I have a custody case that is currently going on in another state, which has been brought to public light because people feel that they want to judge case. and think that they understand what's currently going on and they don't. Because of that, I am being looked at in a very foul, foul way. Um, I, hmm. I don't need to repeat anything that's being said, but right you know, but and people it's perfectly are, okay. there's people that's probably seen it on social media and I want you to be able to have the opportunity to defend yourself. We have 248 people watching right now. And I'm sure that anyone that's watching this on the live stream, um, please respect this family. I mean, you can't have an idea of possibly what they are going through and it's really not any of your business what is going on. And I understand that you do see your other child, which, you know, and. That doesn't have anything to do with Sebastian. And you guys are on good terms with his father. There's not like there's Maybe. any uh, okay. custody battle they between the mother were. and Sebastian's oh, okay. father. I mean, obviously, if he wants to see his father. That makes complete sense then. Thank you. Thank you, Gavel, for dropping that. The mom and stepdad are military. Is bio dad military? The so mom and stepdad were both Navy. That's very important to me. Mom and Chris, maybe. He sounds very um, clinical, I think, because of that. That explains a lot. It explains the speech pattern big time to me, gals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very firm, very firm. Judges did do a great job on this. Just don't, why did someone take a picture with them? That is weird. Okay. How far is too far, right? Jeez. Father, you guys told me that, you know, you, you just plan to meet up and it's, you know, it's no mm -hmm. big deal. So, um, 
I've read a couple of heinous things that people are saying, and it just really upsets me to know that people are just going to that without having all of the information and knowing that law enforcement has interviewed, interrogated everyone in your family. They have looked into you. They have all of your devices and that they basically cleared you guys of any involvement in Sebastian's disappearance. And I just wanted the public to be able to hear you say that because you. Yeah, I think him describing it that he w he's in a messy custody case in another state and it's not even his business. I think we should leave it at that. Like, I don't think that we should be. Um, I don't think we should be digging into that. That's involves a minor child and custody cases are not true crime cases. That's messy. Yeah, Al, he, he had to stay cool headed. He sure did. And a lot of people thought similar things. And then, you know, we get the get to trial and we hear the recordings and learn just what he was doing. So we can't go in high stress situations. They become very calm. Yep. Very true. You do have the right to defend yourself because it's not a, like you said earlier, it's not about you. It's about finding Sebastian. Right. Yes. Um, and I just don't want to have people to be dragging you around on social media. Isn't it already difficult enough that your child is missing? Oh, uh, that's. Um can someone tell heels? I think she's behind in chat. Her, her comment's fine. You don't have to do anything with it, but I think she's behind in chat. <laughs> I mean, that's beyond words. This is a feeling that I'm going to tell you right now. I don't care. Nobody should ever have to endure. It is not something that did. should ever be wished upon for anyone. Now, I do see Miranda. Uh, Miranda has a child uh, that has is special needs as well. And we've covered a case on my channel involving her child in the school system here on my platform. Um, so Miranda is a very strong advocate for kids that have special needs and them getting fair and equal treatment. And she says, how is his skills on walking around on heels or without a trail? Because my son would stumble if he had to step over a one inch rock or any form of incline. So, I mean, does he, is he able to walk good? Does, I mean, how is he able to navigate on his own? I mean, does he, is he able to walk good? Can you hear me? Technical issues. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need to come back, is that smarter than you can back? Oh, here we go. We'll figure it out. We get it back every once in a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. He's, um, he's, he's high functioning. I mean, he's, he's fully able to hold a conversation and he walks and he loves to run. Okay. Well, that's good. And Rhonda wants to know if he has a special button on his phone. Uh, no. On his phone? I don't. Mm -mm. Okay. But he doesn't have his phone. Yeah, and he left his phone at home, so he doesn't have it. Was his says, I'm local and I'm trying to get a direction. Thank you. And says So he is he he left with nothing at all, right? No phone, not even shoes. They describe his autism as high functioning, so he's his walking and all that is fine. Okay. Just check and make sure I got that all wrote down. Something about exit five. Are you guys close to exit five? No, well, that depends. You can access off of what they call uh New Shackle Island Road, which I believe is exit six. Mm, yes, I uh, see. Thank you, Mrs. Clem. Yeah, I believe it's exit six and exit seven will be in Indian Lake. But uh, as far as the special button on his phone, um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, me either. And I know Discovering the Truth said that, you know, her child was able to get around the the security system that they had kind of set up on the phone so they couldn't access the websites uh, to that it was locked. And apparently he got around it and okay. was able to access it. And I guess that's kind of what they were talking about. Um, you know, in a couple of texts in the chat. So that's what I was trying to address because a lot of the people that come to my streams, they have children that are also autistic. So they deal with a lot of situations and they may can understand some of the things that you may be, have, you know, be dealing with at this moment. I can only imagine what you're going through, not knowing where he is. Um, um, we, without publicizing our address, best I can tell you is we are off uh, by the beach area in that kind of area is where mm -hmm. they've predominantly been focusing their searches. Right. Um, when it comes to the special button, no. Um, just so some parents are aware, even if you lock down your child's phone, some children can actually turn their phone into safe mode, which would bypass the parental locks and then allow a child to go on the Internet. There is a way to block that. Um, you would have to look that up. That's too much in, deep, in depth to go into. But no, I mean, when I say we we're strict, we lock it down. We lock it down. OK, well, that's good to know. David Bryant, thank you so much for being here. Three David says, hey, one question. Do you think he would have stuck to roads or do you think he could have went off into the wooded areas? That is exciting. That's hard to say. We don't really have an answer, but all I can say is uh, every avenue is being searched, regardless of woods, roads, anything. Everything that can be searched is currently being searched. 
Reckless Ellis, thank you for being here. Reckless Ellis says, I'm not saying he did this whatsoever, but I did see a screenshot from Facebook where he yelled at the news and told them to get off his property. Is there any truth to that? Well, Reckless, I'll let them speak for themselves. But if the news was on my property, I might yell at them to get off my property too. <laughs> so I have not, I have not spoken to any news crew that have been physically on my property. I have spoken to a news crew that was down the street and just asked them politely, do not film my house. They were filming the police doing something, and that was perfectly okay. They gave me the word. We shook hands and politely moved on. So so he's saying they were fil – okay, so someone said he was yelling at people not to film his house and to get off his property. But he's saying that he told a news crew not to be filming the police while they were doing something. I think that kind of goes back to his military background, um, the control, the order, the organization of it all. Um, but unfortunately, he cannot stop that. Um no matter how hard he tries. And I, maybe that's where some of the tension is coming from now in him wanting to try to keep everything in order or something. And, and he, unfortunately he's not going to be able to, um, thanks for stopping in Trev. Oh, we won't let it. Yeah. I'm going to grab one of his posters so we can put it up from time to time. But, oh my God. But he says he said that to them politely. So, I mean, it's he said, she said situation there. Take it for what it's worth. No, I mean, as far as thank yelling you. at the news, no. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying that. I hope that helps, Reckless Ellis, and thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see. Um, that's right, leave it to Bieber. These are real people. Focus on the missing baby. Exactly. Thank yes. you for being here, Miss Chewy. It's so good to see you. Um, that's right. We all know that the child is in danger and needs to be home where he's safe, and that's all we need to know. I just want to make sure that people understand like this family is really going through it and the yeah. focus needs to be on the child. So, um, and we just appreciate anyone that's able to, to get out there. Now, do they also have search dogs that have been out uh, helping assist in the search? Yes, ma'am. They have brought in dogs from various locations from, uh, I believe from even other States as well as other areas within the state. So it is deeply, deeply being checked. Okay, I'm going back over here. I see David Bryant's left another comment in chat. Okay, gotcha. We'll keep searching, praying for your families. I just posted multiple pictures from what my dog has found searching, and you can feel free to reach out if you would like me to search anywhere. So it sounds like David may have um, some search dogs himself. That's the problem with these cases, Trouble, is that long, especially missing cases, but especially missing person or children's cases. Law enforcement give us so little information, and that is to protect the case, but what it does on the social media side and this is something that i hope they learn how to handle going forward we have seen some departments handle it extremely well by clearing up the the misinformation it causes a lot less stress on on those that are innocent that those that haven't done anything and right now we have this giant empty void and we're not getting any information. So what some people like to do, some creators, some subscribers, just people in general, they like to fill that void with their thoughts and their speculation and twist the narrative. And it's it's very sad when doing so in in all cases, especially these missing kids cases. So David, if you want to send me an email um, or reach out to me with Facebook Messenger, if you have any information that you would like me to pass on to the family, I'll be more than happy to do that. And we appreciate that so very much. Um, Jennifer Jennings, thank you for being here. Jennifer says, how long has he thank been married you. to the mom? Isn't he Seth's son? Who is searching for this boy, mom, dad, or who? Well, it sounds like there's a lot of people involved, including the mother, the father, the stepfather, um, and law enforcement. Um, when you say, how long has he been married to the mom? Are you referring to Chris on panel? Julio, thank you so much for being here. Chris always treated my girls and son with nothing but kindness when we work together. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Julio. I know that probably means a lot to him. That's right, Jennifer. I think everybody is searching. It doesn't sound like there's any animosity um, with anybody that's going on here. So, um, and please be respectful in the chat. Um, if you want to come in here and attack the family, uh, the moderators can show you to the door. There's no need to announce your departure. Light and Sound says, I pray he wasn't being bullied at school. I imagine classmates who knew him have been interviewed. And yes, I do believe Chris said that earlier. And did he typically take his phone places with him, guys, or did he normally leave it at home? Believe it or not, it was actually a struggle to get him to carry his phone. Um, he's not like your typical teenager. He, he's not this kid that, you know, got to stick their head in the phone. He's not. He's not glued to it. He's not, you know, because of his restrictions. Okay, so he, oh, hang on. We're going to hear that again. So he's not glued to his phone. 
So they have no evidence of a secret phone. He's not glued to it. He's not the type of kid who's glued to his phone. And then what was it he just said right there at the end? You know, got to stick their head in the phone. He's not. He's not glued to it. He's not. You know, because of his restrictions, you know, he knows that what it's for. It's a tool. It's not an entertainment device. Um, I mean, it, he had his struggles with doing basic, simple things. And I mean, it was a constant reminder, a constant this. And, and all three parents have been extremely positive and, and constantly trying to get him like, hey, mm. we got to do this, but we got to do that. Take your phone. Take your phone. Teach him to, to, to be responsible and to think about it. So did he play the Minecraft on something different than his phone? If he wasn't glued to it, but he was big into Minecraft, was it um, another gaming device like a Switch or something? Or was it on a computer? I'm curious. You know, and then um, Julio, I can contest. I mean, we work together out in San Diego, so he's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Um. Let me just take care of something here in chat real quick. Um, Jennifer, I appreciate you being here. We welcome sure. all opinions, but we're just, it, how long he's been married to the mother is irrelevant with Sebastian being missing. So I hope that you have a wonderful night, but respectfully, I'm going to have to remove you from chat because it's a distraction. And we are focused on talking about Sebastian and about his case. And I hope you have a wonderful night and please come back again. Okay, let's get back over here to the chat. I try to, to not get distracted <laughs> when we have these situations, but we just don't have time for that. Um, I'm not going to allow disrespect. And uh, my moderators know that. So um, I appreciate my Um Typically, they tell all parents not to search. All parents are always told not to search. Um, they might do like the initial search or then maybe much later, things like that. But typically, straight out of the gate, a lot of the agencies will recommend that parents do not search because they could be the ones to find their missing loved one. And, you know, when you find your missing loved one that way, you are going to instantly contaminate the scene, no matter which way guilt was. So that's typically why they tell them not to search. And I know dad, that Seth has been out there on the searches, but is he actively searching or is he just like, is he out there in the woods searching or is he just standing on the sidelines? Nothing wrong with that. But that would be my question. If he's going there to, well, hang on. I got one of my interviews in my list is him. Uh, JLR did a video on it. So we'll find out, I guess. We'll find out. Ahmad's in here. Uh, Y'all get put some hearts and hands up for the moderators in here. They're doing a fantastic job. We have 363 people in here watching right now. If you haven't already hit the like button, please do that and share this out because it helps to get Sebastian Rogers information circulating on social media. People are going to want to know what the parents mm -hmm. have to say. I think it's very important that people hear the facts straight from Sebastian's family. Eddie says, I'm autistic myself, but as a kid, I used to have restricted internet access and I've managed to bypass it before. That doesn't shock me because I have a cousin that has the same thing has happened. I think it's it's different for every kid because there's such a spectrum. There's such a spectrum. So that's why we have to be on high alert. This is a vigilant, important situation because we really don't know the circumstances of what has actually transpired with Sebastian. And he could be in danger. And I see Burton Staggs here. Burton, thank you so much for coming over. He says there's two similar cases. A Mississippi autistic teen was missing and found nine days later in Tennessee. He walked. In Arizona, an autistic teen walked approximately 200 miles and was found safe. Incredible. Nice. Does he have a lot of energy? Does he like to go on long walks and things like that? Especially off his medicine. Mm. I really would like to get a billboard up for Sebastian. And I think I had mentioned that to you earlier. Do you think that this might be something that would benefit Sebastian to get his face out there if we could get a couple of billboards? Um, guys, give me some feedback in the chat and let me know what you think. I might could, you know, crowdfund. You know, that's what membership is for. When you guys are members of this channel, that's that's actually where your money goes is to these little crowdsourcing things that I do. So um, I have some money already put back that I can put forward to it, but I probably wouldn't be able to keep it up for more than just a few days because it can get expensive. But um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think, Trev, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that having a billboard up for Sebastian might be beneficial? I think so. I mean, it's, you know, we've looked at that in, in plenty of cases and you and I have spoken about, that, spoken about that before, talked with, you know, different families. It's at the very least, it's keeping that face and that story in, in the public eye. It's keeping people reminded of, of what's going on in their community, what's going on locally, what's going on in the next county over, whether they work there, live there, travel through there, they're seeing it. Well, I can certainly design a billboard. We can work together behind the scenes. You can send me a picture and let me know exactly what you would like it to say. And we can get uh, we can get something started on a blip as early as tomorrow. 
<laughs> if you know, if you think that that's going to be something, I will look at the locations and I can let you know where they're at and we can try to get something going. Cold Case Crystal, thank you so much for being here. That's another person that's on my team that covers cases and she's in Kentucky. And uh, Crystal, did you just send me a cash app? <laughs> Cold Case Crystal, thank you so much for sending me that. And I will definitely put it for the billboard. We're still going to put up some billboards for Jaden Carpenter. So you and I need to get together in the next couple of days so we can get these uh, we can get these billboards up as soon as possible because uh, we need to help find Sebastian. Is there anything else that you guys want to share with us that you think that we need to know about the circumstances involving Sebastian going missing? Is there anything that you want to share with us that we have not talked about? I'm going to put this flyer again yeah. here uh, so you guys can take another look at that. Um, I mean, every everything that we've covered so far, I mean, is exactly everything that we've covered. You know, we just met, we miss him and we want him home. Exactly. So be home. Miss him. Mods, thank you for checking um, the chat. Alan, we're definitely not going to tolerate that. So, um, you have a I got rid of Alan. He's thank you. I appreciate that, Trey. And Duchess, if I may, well, we still have the family up. Um, yes. People in cases like this, guys, and this is for anybody listening now, watching later. However, everybody in their mind has an idea of how a family or how um, those who knew know a missing person should react. You know, should they mm -hmm. go and talk to these people this day and say these things this day, or what they don't? The thing is, here is um, law enforcement goes and talks to these people, guys. You know, plenty of families in these situations, unfortunately, but law enforcement goes and talks to these people. They don't owe us answers, no matter how curious we get. There's no timetable of when they should stand in front of a camera, when you should put a microphone in front of them, when they should join this, that, and the other. Preach, now, if, they, Trump, if they bring preach. that to us, then we should sit back and listen and, and let them tell their story. But what matters is answering who they need to answer to. And that's not us. That's not me. That's not Duchess. That's not you guys. Chief, the chief deputy, I believe Chief Deputy Craddock is his name, has been very clear in his press conferences that the family is. Well, um, I don't know that the stepdad's location is part of the investigation. Have law enforcement said that? We can look into that. Um, but I would guess that well, not guess. I know that they start in like instantly they're going to start a search because time is of the essence. They're going to start searching. But while they're searching, other detectives are going to start their investigation. And the investigation always starts right there at home. The people closest to Sebastian, whether it be uh, not just his parents, but grandparents, friends, neighbors, everyone instantly where their location is and what they were doing is going to be a part of that investigation. But I don't know if his timeline is a part of like, like a big part of the investigation is what I'm saying. But yeah, they're going to look into him just like everybody else that was close to Sebastian. Is fully cooperative and there have been zero signs of foul play. Now, if the TBI and the local authorities are saying that there is no sign of foul play, then it is completely irresponsible to make things up on the contrary. There are cases where you have to look at the home and you look at the family this is not one of them you can you know it's we have to look at what's true and what's true is this 15 year old boy is missing from his home he has been missing and he is still missing and what matters is bringing him home safe to his family who was kind enough to join us tonight and answer your questions so while nobody has to believe any certain thing we need to respect what we're told by those who are in charge and so just remember that as we as we go through this case and in any case you listen to and i support this message thank you trev that was very well was said and message. i appreciate you saying that um, we just need to be one. respectful. There's things that the family want to share and there's things that they are, they're not obligated to share any information, but they desperately want to find their child. And I want to give them a safe place to be able to come here and share the information that they want us to know so that we can get it out there on social media, that we know what the facts are, that we've heard it directly from the family. So we know what the misinformation is. Like they told us earlier, the FBI is not on the ground searching for Sebastian. Yes, the card team was contacted and they were um, you know, they were spoken to, but they're not active. And there's people putting that on social media. You know, the facts matter. We're not going to solve the case. It's for law enforcement. We have to let them do their job. So there's no need to come into this live stream and throw accusations around and disrespect this family, period. If you have it just, a problem it doesn't with it, help. It doesn't. Sebastian's still missing and he is without his medication. He is, he is not where he's not in his home. He is missing. He is likely very scared and unsure of his circumstances. And he is endangered at this moment. So I think 100% of the efforts and emotions should be put towards finding him. He deserves to be home. And if you. Amen, Trev. Uh, Nanya, I haven't heard him say anything about that yet. Uh, we'll see as we go along. Remember, for those just coming in or just uh, starting to listen, we are going through these in chronological order. So we are learning the information fresh. This is on March 3rd. So I'm sure most of you already know it, but some of us aren't aware of it. So we're going to get there in order. And taking the time to, to just mislead and say false things and wherever you may go, leave your opinions at the door because it's about bringing this child home.
Thank you, Stacey. We appreciate your prayers. Yes, Mary, that is true. There is an anonymous group of Nashville business owners that have started a reward fund for Sebastian, and that is $3,000. So we want to thank those anonymous business owners for doing that. Um, that's an amazing thing to do. I did ask the family if there was any other reward funds that were going to be activated at this time, and there are not. And that's all they're going to say on that. And the families are entitled to privacy, uh, Ginger Snaps, absolutely. And they are entitled to respect, and they will get it in this house. Now, Janeth, I appreciate you being here. How did they know he took a flashlight? Well, I asked that very same question today, and I was so glad that Sebastian's mother explained it to me, because when I read that news article, I was like, well, how did they know he had a flashlight? Do you want to tell us about that? One of the first things that was asked is um, because he left when it was very dark outside um, was if he might have taken a flashlight. And um, he actually has one that he plays with regularly and I can't find it. So it's likely that he took it. Okay. Jason. Okay. Asked, so uh, being here, Jason, hang on, let me get over to uh, Does he have anything that he holds on to? Anything? Okay. So someone, uh, I think it was, I don't know who said it in the chat. Sorry. Um, also, we have to take everything that these parents, these, the mom, the bio dad, the stepdad, all of it, you have to take with a grain of salt. None of it has been confirmed. Um, there's, you know, obviously parts you will be inclined to believe and whatnot, but it's not a verified fact is what I'm trying to say. Just keep that in mind. It's not a negative or a positive. It's a, it's a neutral thing. Um, and right here, this flashlight, I, I hear a lot of people who are very adamant that he took a flashlight. That's not what she said. She said that he does have a flashlight that he plays with. She cannot find it. So she's inclined to believe he has it, but she doesn't know if he does or not. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. There is the possibility that he took a flashlight because she cannot find it that he has to have with him at all times, something that keeps him calm when he has it. He has various fidgets that he changes out and plays with. Have you noticed any of those are missing as well? Honestly, it'd be impossible to tell. He plays with paper clips and pennies and Legos, things that plays with paper clips several could go missing and it wouldn't be noticeable. He's a fidgeter, it sounds like. Please put some green hearts and prayer hands in the chat for this family because today is seven days and if this is a critical time that oh. we need to come together and stop attacking the family. If you can't do something productive, like just sit on your hands or something, I don't know. And Trev, I do appreciate all that you've done. Trev has been sharing information every day. He has been doing live streams and you guys definitely need to connect. I will put you guys in touch with each other um, because he's local to Tennessee and I know that he will be able to help in any way that he can. And we will definitely connect this week and we will, um, you know, if not tonight, then tomorrow, so we can get those billboards up. I will get with Crystal later and we'll, you know, we'll talk about that and try to get those worked out as soon as possible. Um, is there anything else that you want um, us to share? Is there anything else that you think that we have not covered, Trev? Is there anything that you want to add to this conversation that you feel that we've missed? Well, I just want to encourage people to, to keep going. It's, you know, keep the hope up and keep keep sharing oh, his picture, wow. keep sharing his story, keep sharing his flyer, keep praying that he returns, and keep listening to what we're told by authorities because they're out there looking and they haven't stopped and they won't. We all play our part in different ways. If you're on social media, simply sharing his flyer. If you're here on YouTube, simply interacting with a video that has his information. Whatever it is, do it for Sebastian. Because until he's brought home, that's the mission, that's the goal, and that's the fight. And that's what we'll do, standing beside this family and beside those looking and beside Sebastian until he comes home. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Trev that's the end so if you see this flyer job, on social Trev. media, you guys can share this from my YouTube community wall from Trev's. You can share it from our Facebook pages. I'm sure Arctic Fox also has it on his page. Um, whatever we can do to try to help your family, please reach out to me and let me know. And we have a wonderful group of people in this community um, that will try to do whatever we can. And hopefully I'll hear something from Wings of Hope and they'll let me know if they're going to be able to try to assist. David Bryant, thank you so much for your super chat. He said, we're going to find him. Keep your head up and hug him tight when he gets back. Prayers for y'all. Everyone keep searching and doing what we can. David, I appreciate that. I'm going to take that $50 and I'm going to put it towards that billboard that I'm going to design. We're going to get that up for awesome. Sebastian as soon as we can. I really appreciate you donating. It means so much. Well, guys, I really appreciate you joining us. If you have any updates that you want to share with us, please don't hesitate to reach out. If there's something that you want to share, if you want to me to have another live stream, you know, you may want to have a live stream with Trev. He has a large following on his channel, and some of those people don't necessarily follow my stream. So um, I'm sure they might, you know, want to talk to you. And um, so we can continue to share out Sebastian's information, and you'll be on my prayer list. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'll even share my phone number with you. And if there's anything that you need, you can call me. Thank you. You're very welcome. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. It's just sometimes it's you got to take it a day at a time, but sometimes you can only take it 
an hour at a time or five minutes at a time. And it's you don't have to explain yourself to anybody because you don't know how you're going to feel until you're until you're going through it. And how you process mm-hmm. things is not necessarily going to be how the next person does. But you don't owe anybody an explanation. Just know that our hearts are with you. And you have a lot of people. Look at all of these people. We have 400 people watching this live stream right now. There are so many people that are out here supporting. Don't listen to these naysayers. Mm. We just want to say thank you to everyone who's working with us to try and bring him home. And everybody for all your support and your prayers and your love. You are more than welcome. Okay, I think that's the end. I want to hear that, though, at normal speed. Watching this live stream right now, there are so many people that are out here supporting. Don't listen to these naysayers. We just want to say thank you to everyone who's working with us to try and bring him home. Everybody for all your support and your prayers and your love. You are more than welcome. You are more than welcome. That's what we're here to do. Is we're here to lift each other up. It takes it takes a village. It takes a village. And that's that's what we have to do. We're just here to help each other. Okay, sorry guys, our power went out, which obviously knocked the Wi-Fi out, but don't worry, I'm on the hotspot, so that took a second. Um, What was the last thing y'all heard? Did you hear me go back and listen to it in normal speed? Our power's out, but that's okay. As long as we got a charge, which I was plugged in, so we're fully charged, so hopefully it'll come back on. and. No, I haven't seen one. I haven't seen. There's been a couple of updates, but I haven't seen any uh, conference. Okay, so you heard that. Okay, they haven't. They didn't really say anything. They're just talking. Um, let me share it again. I I was just kind of finishing up. There was a few more things. Hang on a second. My son's asking for me. Yep. Yeah, I'm on the. Why won't it? Hang on, it won't let me mute. Um, yeah, I'm on. He's so cute. He's like, I just wanted to tell you that we lost power and you're talking to nobody. I'm like, no, I'm on my hotspot. We're good. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right, see if there's anything else after that. Little. And you, um, it's just one day at a time. But I, I'm praying that you're going to get answers as soon as possible. You have a lot of people that are working very hard to find your son. Miranda said outside his home, where's his most comfortable environment? Does he have a place like that? His house. <laughs> the only place he likes his to be house. is just at his house. Um, he likes his house. He like he likes both houses, and he likes. I mean, I, I, his favorite thing to do is go play on the playground, and play he's, he likes. To, he loves being around the family. He loves. I mean, just being a kid. He's not very outdoorsy. Well, that's understandable, and that's okay. Everybody has their comfort zone. I'm not a people in person myself, y'all. I kind of like to stay to myself in my own house where I'm most comfortable. Um, loves both so houses. I'm just hoping that somebody's going to see him. Don't forget, if you live in the area of Sumner County or the surrounding counties, if you live in the surrounding counties, Robertson, Davidson, Wilson, even down to Rutherford, Williamson County, Cheatham County, Montgomery County, Dixon, listen, if he's walking, please check your property. He could be hiding out. You know, he might be scared. He's probably going to be hungry and cold. 
What's your temperature? What's your weather there right now in Tennessee? It was better today, but we've had freezing temperatures since he left. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Leslie Leslie says, re says, remember, most people are good. I just hope someone finds it. Me too. Charlie Life says the family's trying to stay strong so they can get this baby found. They really don't have to, time to break down. That's right. You guys just keep praying. Listen, I'm going to let you guys go. And I Okay, so she kicks them off of here respectfully. So I'm glad I did keep listening, though, because we did find out that he, you know, from that, that he likes being outside. He likes going to the playground. Some more likes of Sebastian's as well as the fact that he loves both homes. He loves being in his home. And they included both homes in that. Um, Stevie J says that stepdad and mom left today with the camper in mom's car. And uh duchess says that law enforcement is aware um if people were taking pictures of me just trying to go get a bite to eat while my child is missing i, I might leave too but if law enforcement are aware of it then they might need to be you know they might have to step away it's getting a little crazy out there it's very sad that the family of a missing child will then need to have to hide out because social media can be so cruel they can be so cruel, Carrie, without one freaking shred of evidence. Yep. That's how it goes, and that is frustrating. Uh, let me pull up my handy dandy new book with our timeline of interviews. And hey, it was a fair question of Dylan to come ask me if I was talking to myself, because I always have an earbud to talk to someone, and they think I'm talking to myself at the time. <laughs> All right, so this next one is a, oops, hang on, I hit the wrong thing. It's a Facebook video with, I don't know if it's a video interview, what, do you, what have you. So give me one second. I'm going to pull that up separately so that you don't see my list book. Okay, this was the very next day on oops, I think I made the wrong thing. Oh, it won't let me make it I'm trying to make it bigger. There we go, there we go. This is with Seth, the bio dad. The very next day on March fourth. If you could just first, I mean, as his father, tell me a little bit about your son. He's got a big heart. He's loving. You know, he's inquisitive. He can be stubborn at times. He loves to play video games. Um, oh, hang on, I see Jenny up here. Let me make sure it's Jenny. Oh, is that you, Gavel? Or are you just typing something in the back chat, maybe? Jenny, you're muted if you can hear me. Okay, just you, make it sure. All righty. Yep, so this one is, but next time you're asking if you're talking to yourself, just tell me yes. <laughs> okay, this is the very next day. This is March 3rd with BioDad. He loves animals. I mean, he thoroughly loves animals. He likes plants. He likes to, you know. Plants? grow things. He likes to take care of things. He loves his video games. Boy, the kid loves his video games. What, what has the last week been like for you as a father? My heart is missing somehow, somewhere out here, and I'm just oh. trying to find him. Yeah, I don't know where he's at. I, 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 I can't find you. And when was the last time you got to see Sebastian? Last time he was at my house. So I was supposed to have him last weekend. And it would have been two weekends prior. Okay, so 
This is on March 3rd. Let me pull up my calendar. Or March 4th, sorry. This is March 4th. He said, the la when was the last time you saw him? Which is a great question. Last time Seth saw him. He was supposed to be at his house the weekend before, but he wasn't. I wonder why. So probably something to do with work. It normally is with guys. So it would have been February 17th. I don't know what their custody is. It could have been 16th, 7th. But I, I'm normally weekend dads are what, Friday evening through Sunday afternoon. So probably the 18th anyway was the last time he saw him. Just guessing off of what he is saying there. But he was at my house, and I got to see him. We got to play video games, watch TV. Had a great weekend. And, I mean, obviously, it seems like, what has it been like working with law enforcement? Have they been great, you know, trying to help you with this search? They're definitely doing everything that they can to find my son, and I thoroughly appreciate it. And I hope, I hope that they find him. Every day, I'm waking up and hoping that they find him. And obviously, so he's autistic. Are there any, like, tendencies that he may have? Like, does he like hanging out, like, in the trees or by water that could maybe help people find him? He does like creeks. I mean, he loves to go fishing with me. But if he's in the city limits, he's, you know, video games. He'd probably be, you know, maybe an arcade or something. Okay. And has he ever done something like this before? Just leave the house for a short period of time or anything like that? No. And, I mean, how much sleep have you lost over this last week? Walk me through kind of what that experience has been. I haven't had very much sleep at all. And um, I know you said you were out there searching. Are there any particular places that you're looking that you think he might be at? I'm looking everywhere. I'm not from this area, so uh, I don't know it. So I'm just uh, everywhere. I, you know, I keep telling people, keep your head up and your eyes open. If you see him, call 911. You know, if, if my son hears my voice, buddy, you need to get a, to a phone and call 911, you know. Definitely. And you, you live in Clarksville, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you've been out here in the Hendersonville area just searching for him the last week? Dad lives in Clarksville. I'm just going to pause, and I want to Google map that how far I'm sure somebody here probably knows it off the top of their head how far that is, but this is just kind of how I go through things. Um, not now, Google Maps, we got Clarksville. Through Hendersonville. So it's only about an hour away. Clarksville is right up near the border. Oh, what state is that? Indiana. I didn't know if it was above or Kentucky, sorry. But right there, right Kentucky. And then Yeah, so he's just about an hour away. That's not too fat too far. Every day. And um, I guess, are you in close contact with his mother and stepfather uh, about the situation? Not really. I mean, we're in communication at least once a day, but that's about it. Okay. Um, just I'm looking for him, you know. <laughs> See, that's, that seems like a conflicting statement there to me. So he, he lives an hour away. 
Uh, that's not the conflicting part. I just forgot to write that down. Um, when asked if he is in close contact with them, he's like, not really, but then they speak every day. To me, that would be close contact. So he does speak with them every day. With them daily. Um, I got to think, again, just having some empathy on this case as we're going through these that no matter the situation, no matter how well you're co-parenting, um, you're probably going to have some certain feelings about the parent that he went missing with if you're the other parent, uh, no matter what, because that's your heart, that's your soul, that's your baby. And uh, it's got to be really hard on all three of them. Yeah. And I know, like, obviously with social media, it's tough because as a parent, you just want your kid home. But there's been a lot of, like, speculation, too, about possible, like, criminal investigations. I mean, what's kind of your reaction to all of that chatter on social media? I don't have social media, man. Okay. But just it hearing people kind of speculate media. about that in the community, I guess, how does that make you feel? I think they need to, you know, instead of being keyboard warriors, they need to put feet on the ground and start looking for my son. If Amen. they really want to help, that's what they should be doing instead of coming up with their own opinion. How about I get out there and we, look, and we find my son? And how much does your son Sebastian mean to you? He's my life. Do you have any other kids? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I guess, is there, I guess, anything you want to say? I don't know how well you know the stepfather or the mother, but is there anything you'd like to say about that and that situation and how he just kind of disappeared from the house? I have nothing to say about that. Uh, okay. And if you could say something to Sebastian right now, what would you say? If you are hearing this son, you need to tell people who you are and tell them to call 911 for you. You need to tell people that you are Sebastian Rogers and that you need them to call 911. And anything you'd like to tell him about returning home? I miss you, buddy. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting. I don't hear from you. Okay. All right. Call my one one so we can find you, man. Come on, sons. Go me that way. Uh, oh, I don't know uh, what I went to. Uh, oh, uh, goes to whatever video's next. So who knows what that was playing next? But oh, that just breaks my heart. I can hear the pain in both mom and dad's voice. Absolutely hear the pain in both their voices. Um, this is obviously a lot shorter, but so, so Seth is law enforcement. And mom and Chris are um, ex-military. It just, it makes a lot of sense for the way both of them are talking. Um, there with his short clipped answers well one it's just they seem very manly in nature for one and direct and you know don't be a keyboard warrior get off your butt and come help me find my son that's how i took what he said he's losing sleep he can't eat because he's looking for his kid um he did make a plea for sebastian to to come home or to turn him you know tell people who he is and call 911 that sort of thing he said that Sebastian was his life. He does speak with mom and stepdad daily. The last time he saw Sebastian would have been February 18th. And uh, he talks about Sebastian loving animals, plants, video games, especially though. And that um, he liked being outdoors, but if it, basically if he was in city limits or, you know, outdoors wasn't an option, he's going to be playing video games. So. I just, right now, all I hear, I know people hear something different, but I just hear three hurting and frustrated parents. That's what I hear.
Or maybe others hear something different. Well, let's see. This is the next interview. So this was an interview on, why will it not give me the exact date? Hang on, I wrote it down, don't worry. On 3-5, so it comes the next day after the phone interview with Seth. And this comes from WSNV National News. It's very short. A missing teen in Sumner County described to us exclusively how they feel on day eight of their son's disappearance. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Marius Pate. And I'm Lauren Lowry. Sebastian Rogers is 15. He was last seen by his parents on February 25th in Hendersonville. Sebastian has autism and he's gone without his medication this whole time. And since then, authorities have searched by air, by foot, and on horseback. Helicopters, drones, and dive teams have also been brought in to try to find him. Today, his parents spoke exclusively to our Holly Thompson. She's live tonight in Sumner County. Holly, I imagine it was quite an emotional mm. interview. Uh, certainly was. It is hard for any of us to imagine the emotions that this family is going through right now. But we know one thing is certain. They remain positive. They are holding on to hope that their son Sebastian will return home safely. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. Mom Katie broke down several times in our interview, but says her hope is strong that her son Sebastian will be found safe and return home. He's going to walk through that door and this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug and love him and stepdad chris says it's been an emotional roller coaster that all started sunday night february 25th pretty normal he was playing in his room um when i told him to go to bed he did <laughs> um he said good night mom i love you katie says she went to wake up sebastian around 6 a.m monday for school and he was gone Within minutes, Katie says she was on the phone with Chris, who was working out of town, and they quickly called 911. And he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not. He's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris say Sebastian is not on social media. While he loves to play Minecraft, they tell me he does not have any online capabilities. I asked if there was any reason he might want to leave. We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left, and I don't, I haven't been able to figure it out. He's, um, that morning he was laughing, he was joking. It's as if Sebastian vanished. No sign of him on any video throughout the community. Thousands of miles logged by law enforcement, canines, helicopters, even dive teams, and no sign of him. Chris and Katie tell me they've been harassed, people pointing fingers at them. You're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view, and not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted, we have provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you? Yeah, that's what they said in the first interview to Nicole B, that she went to wake him up the next morning at 6 a.m. and that's when she discovered he was missing. Um, I'm not hearing anything different. So that's what I, I will be keeping notes of. Like if there's something different, if you guys hear something different, let it be known. Another thing too is we have to remember that the very first people that social media, and I'm not saying, I'm not blaming any creators or anyone in particular, but the very first, we see it happen time and time again. The very first people that social media jumps on because it is the statistics is mom and dad. So if you've got people jumping on 
this man's wife and he feels like he's doing what he's doing to protect her that could be why you're seeing a lot of it could it could explain his tone and personality throughout this because he's instantly on the defense instantly protecting his wife while trying to help look for his stuff so he's been in his life you know since for eight years now so that could explain a lot right now we love you so much and we want you to come home and you're not in trouble Now, Katie did tell me that even though Sebastian does have autism, he is a smart teenager. He is highly functional. They say if you see him, say his name, say Sebastian, and he'll respond. He'll at least acknowledge you. And I can tell you, this is my home. This is my community. And the people here are strong. They say they will continue to search. They will continue to hope and continue to pray for Sebastian's safe return. And by the way, you can watch my full exclusive interview with Sebastian's parents on our WSMB4 app. Live here in Hendersonville, Holly Thompson. So it's much longer, but I couldn't get the app function to work. So that's why we're just listening to that portion of it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think, I think our society is getting less and less used to strong men, that's for sure. Well, 10 days have now passed. Okay, this is a really quick one. Let me put it back here for Jenny. She's been dropping them. This is on. Oh, what do we have? This is on 3-5 as well. So that previous interview, I called it the rocking interview where mom is rocking back and forth. That was on March 5th. This is also on March 5th, and Seth does a phone interview that same day. Past, still no sign of Sebastian Rogers. The teen's mother and stepfather say he just walked out of their Sumner County home and vanished. Yesterday, we heard from them for the first time pleading for their boy to come home. Our Nick Barris also interviewed his biological father. Everybody has you, son. Run, you know. Run to the next person you meet. Ask to use their phone. Call 911. Tell them who you are. Let them find you. Authorities announced yesterday their search efforts have been scaled back. The parents have not been named as suspects, and we are told they are cooperating with this investigation. Originally, police told neighbors in the Shackle Island area to check any doorbell or home security footage from late last Sunday night to early Monday morning when Sebastian reportedly disappeared. Now they are asking neighbors to check footage from earlier on Sunday. Here's another look at the photos we have of Sebastian. If you see him, if you know anything about this, you are asked to call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Okay, give me one second. This one's on Facebook again, so I want to bring it up separately. So there's this. This is the this is on March seventh. Uh, Caitlin Miller does another interview with um, mom and stepdad. For both your first and last names in spelling. Katie Proudfoot, K-A-T-I-E, Proudfoot, P-R-O-U-D-F-O-O-T. Chris, C-H-R-I-S, last name's Proudfoot, P-R-O-U-D-F-O-O-T. So, I mean, first, just as parents, tell me what the last now over a week has been like for you two. Horrible beyond words. Um, this was an experience that I would have never dreamed would come, honestly. I just, I can't put words to how hard this has been and how much it hurts not knowing where my son is, where, where he's at, if he's okay. Just horrible is the best thing I can say. What about for you? It's rough. I mean, we are on day 11 
no answers. And the horrible things that people say just keep rolling in, regardless of taking time to consider the facts and, you know, assumptions is what they're going off of. But, you know, for us, it's, we sit here and we wait, we wait and we wait, and hopefully we'll get an answer or hopefully he walks through our door, which would be amazing. I was going to say, how badly do you both want Sebastian to just walk through that front door to get that call? I'd give anything. In a heartbeat, I would give anything. There's not, it's not measurable. Let's put it that way. There's no measurable. Anybody says all it is. You've never sat in these shoes. You've never been in this situation. And I don't ever wish for people to be in this situation. I couldn't imagine being in it. And what, what's Sebastian like? What's his personality like? What does he love to do? He, for the most part, is happy. He likes to laugh and joke and tell you all about everything and then some. Um, he loves games. Uh, he loves video games. Um, he loves to play with his Legos. Um even building things uh, with me. We we build little projects here and there, but um, he's um, he's always a character. Are there any like weird tendencies that he has that might be able to help people find him in this search? I don't know how helpful to finding him, but he fidgets <coughs> constantly. He loves shiny pennies, paper clips. He's always like, uh, whenever we go to the grocery store, um, he always looks on the ground and looks under the register counter, and he's always looking for shiny pennies everywhere. Um, paper clips. He loves to bend them out of shape and play with them, fidget with them. Um, he loves playgrounds. Um, I mean, we've said it before. He likes fishing and, and things like that. But um, cats, boy, he, loves cats. He does. He loves cats. It's his favorite animal. <laughs> um, I don't know. He's just. He's a good kid. There are no leads, nothing caught on video. Your son has been missing for 11 days now. How does that make you feel as parents? <sighs> Sunshine and rainbows, lady. What? I, I mean, I don't have words to describe how I'm feeling right now. I mean, I... Every day is harder than the last. I mean... We're out, we're looking, we're, we're trying to make sure that everyone stays looking and doesn't let his face fall to the bottom of a feed or, or get covered by some other nonsense. I mean, I just, we just want our boy home. When you walked in Monday morning, and didn't see Sebastian in his room, what was your gut reaction? My very first reaction was, oh, he got up and got breakfast. <laughs> um, but when I realized he actually wasn't in the house, I've never experienced sheer panic in the way that I did. And basically for every minute since, that um, not knowing where your child is, is a pain that um, I've never, I've never known pain like this before. And walk me through the events that happen, you know, from Sunday, leading up to Monday when you didn't see him that morning? Sunday, uh, we were out and about. We had a, a really good day. We were out um, 
doing our thing, running around. You know, we had dinner that evening. And when we came home, uh, we had a pretty good evening together as well. Um, he was playing right up until bedtime and then some. I let him stay up a little late. Um, and when I told him to go to bed, you know, he's like, I love you, mom. I love you, puppies. And uh, he went to bed. And um, I went to bed around midnight. Everything seemed fine. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, that's when I, I couldn't find him. He wasn't in his room and he wasn't in the house. And that's when I panicked. And when you panicked, uh, what'd you do? First thing I did was call my husband and um, I said, he's not here. My husband said, what do you mean he's not here? I said, he's not in the house. And he said, you know, immediately just started, you know, did you check here? Did you check there? Did you look here? And uh, I ran through the house. And um, at that point I was hysterical for lack of word. And uh, we called, we, we three-wayed the, um, the police. And um, I'm within minutes, they were here. I couldn't tell you exactly way. how okay. long. I know it was fast. All right. I know people had said it in chat, but I wondered where it came out because they were on the phone together. So he actually three weighed in the police. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and we haven't found him. When I got the phone call that he was missing. Um, like she said, we asked questions like, where is he at? Check this, check that. And then we called the sheriff's department and I called the sheriff's department. I stayed on the phone pretty much most of the time. Um, and then I, while I was at work, I asked for a relief, got a relief, got in my truck from Memphis and made my way to Nashville. And that was. I guess Monday. The morning that he was missing, yes. Okay. And um, so, what was your reaction when you got that call from your wife that Sebastian was missing? Initially, I was like, "Oh, he's he's goofing around again. Here we go. He's like hiding." And then when we talked about the places to check, and he's not there, I was like, "Okay, stop!" Instantly, okay. call the police. Instantly, I'm a black and white kind of guy. I, so, and to your knowledge, he didn't take shoes with him, right? He locked the door on his way out. Or I guess, what are some of the things that you think he did as he left? We checked for all of his shoes and none of them are missing. Um, the door was locked. And what was there some discrepancy the as to locked. what he was wearing when he went to bed or what was he last seen wearing? What? What was he wearing to bed that night? When he went to bed, uh, he was wearing black um, sweatpants with white stripes down the side. And he had on a black, long sleeve black shirt with a print on the front. I'm pretty sure it was one of his. Um, uh, like Star like Wars or Halloween or. Um... Or he, even Minecraft. Yeah. Those yeah, are the three main things. the three things that he's, majority is on his clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, he has his flavors. <laughs> and obviously you guys are going through the unimaginable and then, you know, getting a lot of like the kickback that you've seen on social media. I mean, how much worse has that made it for you two to go through something like this? Honestly, um, we stopped looking at it. There's a lot of terrible people in this world and I don't want to waste energy on any of that. I want the focus on finding our son. The facts are the facts. I mean, the, the police know the facts and all I want, all I ask of anyone 
is if they're able and willing, is to help find him, help spread his flyer, help look for him, call in if you know anything or see anything. But we just ask that people focus on finding Sebastian. And he's never done anything like that before, right? Just kind of walked out of the house. He's not a runner. Um, this is this is not normal for him to run away. Um, if, I mean, I just, he's, no, he's not a runner. And any places, I guess, I know you, you guys have been told to stay in the house, right? Just in case he comes home. We, we are doing what we've been asked to do by the law enforcement agencies and everybody involved. I am not going to divulge anything more than that. Yeah. But if you, what I'm trying to ask, I guess, next is if you were to go out and search right now, if people want to help search, what types of places would you guys look at that he can maybe be at? Anywhere. In so they were saying back on March 7th that they're doing exactly what law enforcement told them to do. Um, maybe law enforcement told Biodad something different, but they're staying, they're not searching, and this would probably be the reason why. If they're going to listen to law enforcement, which is the best thing. That's what we want them to do. Even if we're suspicious of them for something, you want them to listen to law enforcement. Everywhere. At this point, there's... It's been 11 days. He could be anywhere. Yeah. They've searched the woods. They've searched parks. They've searched creeks. They've searched... At this point, it, it anything and everything. Anywhere that he could search. be staying out of the weather or or getting food or i mean honestly at this point he could genuinely be anywhere how hopeful are you too that he will come home i will never give up hope on finding my child optimism is at its highest our, regardless our son is out there we're gonna find him and now just, I mean, publicly, like obviously police are now investigating a landfill. People are speaking out about that. What are your thoughts about that? Everybody has an opinion and their assumptions and they are entitled to those. But as I've stated before, all we've asked people to do is to look at the facts, not what everybody's putting out there. If they have questions, call the law enforcement agencies and they'll give you whatever they can give you. So I would have thought that was a very weird statement if it wasn't for someone coming in here earlier and saying they searched the landfill because because of a, a tip from supposedly from the trash people about trash pickup. So if rumors are being spread because of that and why they went to look there, that I don't know. You guys might disagree with me, and that's cool. You're allowed, you know, everybody's allowed their opinion, but. I feel like I'm just hearing a lot of frustration because of outside involvement, but there's not like wanting to stop outside involvement because we hear over and over, please search anywhere, everywhere, encouragement to do so. So I just hear frustration. But the assumptions are just that they are an assumption, your opinions. We pray for everybody for hopefully this never happens to you. And if it ever does, then you'll understand that I pray it doesn't. And they're doing their job. They're looking everywhere they can for my, for, I mean, their goal is the same. We just want to find him. If you could say something to Sebastian, if he's listening right now, what would you say to him? I would say that we love you and we miss you and we want you to come home and just know that that we all care about you so much you're not in trouble that door's unlocked and waiting for you to come home your puppies miss you your family misses you i miss you just come home mm. Anything else that you two want to add or clear up or anything like that? I 
Anyway, just help us find our son. <laughs> oh. So that one was back on the 7th. I will say, if I had just heard this interview for the first time, that that door's not locked would, would be weird. It would be. But when you take it into context of the fact that um, this is a military man with very strict rules, as he has told us repeatedly himself, he likes order, discipline, etc. cetera. Uh, I think that there might be from them the fear that Sebastian, if Sebastian you know, left with someone or ran off and is still out there, just him knowing, hey, you're not in trouble would be huge for him. Be huge for him to hear. So this one is on March 11th and Seth does an interview. So this is, we are back to Biodad. On Mar They're kind of bouncing back and forth with their interviews, which is great. Honestly, even if there's tension between them now, doing this is going to, by the way, our power's back on. I'm going to try to switch back to Wi-Fi real quick so I don't drain my battery as fast. So give me one second, you know, in case I fall off of here, you know what it was. Yay! Okay, so I knew it would knock me off at one point. There we go. That's all right. At least we're back on Wi-Fi now. All right, so this one is on March 11th on News Channel 5, and it is BioDad's death coming in. Which continues. The case, though, we know is now a criminal investigation. Thanks for being with us at 6, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Kelsey Gibbs. And for Carrie tonight, for the first time, we are getting a look at family video of the missing 15-year-old. Sebastian's biological father gave it to Nick Bears during an exclusive oh, on-camera interview. Seth Rogers shares custody of his son and the deputy with the Davidson County Sheriff's Department spent the past two weeks looking for Sebastian. I'm hoping he's still alive. You know, that that's that's my main hope right now is that he's not deceased. I mean, I keep praying that he's alive. I keep praying that somebody's gonna see him, that somebody's gonna call nine one one. Seth's fifteen year old son disappeared barefoot and with a flashlight from his mother and stepfather's home in Hendersonville either late on Sunday, March third, or early that Monday. Seth knows the key to finding his son may come from a tip. Several photographs have already been made public, and now he's released two video clips of Sebastian. In this first one, you see Sebastian up front on the left in yellow shorts, participating in a tug of war with fellow students. And if you watch, he got swung around at the end like a little rag doll, and it's like, well, he gave it his best. This second <laughs> video shows Sebastian walking at his middle school graduation. That's such a dad. That's such a cute dad right there. Well, he gave it his best. It's so cute. I just want to hear it again. I swung around at the end like a little rag doll, and it's like, well, he gave it his best. This second video shows Sebastian <laughs> walking at his middle school graduation. I was very proud of him. I mean, he, he successfully completed something. Seth says his son, who is autistic, is not a wanderer. He finds it highly unlikely Sebastian would leave in the middle of the night barefoot, based on an experience his son had 
as a child. He decided to, that he wanted to step into a mound of what he thought was dirt, and it was fire ants. And since then, it's always been, he doesn't like to get his feet in the dirt. He likes to have his socks and shoes on. Seth won't rule out the possibility of foul play, that someone is involved in his son's disappearance. And if Sebastian is able, he says he needs to call for help. He needs to call 911. And if somebody has him, you need to give him back. He's my son, and he doesn't belong to nobody, but damn it, he's mine. And anybody has him. Did y'all get goosebumps? I got goosebumps over my whole body. Oh, what a strong dad right there. Listen to that. Damn it, he's mine. Says he needs to call for help. He needs to call 911. And if somebody has him, you need to give him back. He's my son, and he doesn't belong to nobody, but damn it, he's mine. Oh. And he's mine. Nick Barris, News Channel 5. Today, authorities have named no suspects and say that all of Sebastian's parents continue to cooperate with the investigation. So they're all cooperating. Oh. Yeah, you can feel his feelings. You can. You really can. He's mine, damn it. Give him back. I hope so too, Johnson. I really, really do. I, I can see three completely separate personalities in these individuals, in these parents. Three completely separate, but it feels like they all three, I mean, obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, but I think Seth and um, Katie, you know, it's their, it's their biological son. That's their baby that they gave birth to. Those feelings are super strong, but I still feel pain out of uh, Chris as well. Just in the few interviews I've heard so far. Okay, so this one is also on the 11th. Same thing, just a few more, like, slightly different sections. Because, you know, the news has to close. Now been two the weeks news. since Sebastian. All right, here we go. Justin Rogers was reported missing. Crews have searched high and low and followed every lead, but still no signs of the Hendersonville teen. So last night, the community came together for a prayer vigil. Dozens of people showed up wearing green, Sebastian's favorite color. Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers, attended that candlelight vigil and for the first time spoke at length about his son's disappearance. Nick is live from our Five Alert Center this morning. And Nick, this is his first mm -hmm. television interview and it's with you. That's right. You know, he's issued a few brief statements by phone, but uh, the rest of the time he says he's been spent focusing on the search for his son, but now finally speaking out publicly on TV. Two weeks after the teen disappeared, the father says he's not giving up hope i'm hoping he's still alive you know that that's that's my main hope right now that is his focus seth rogers wants to believe his son is still alive somewhere he says he is in contact with law enforcement every single day and like them he says he is completely at a loss to explain exactly what happened to his son it's a mystery the working story of course is that sebastian who has autism walked away from his hendersonville home in the middle of the night barefoot and alone but roger says no he says it makes absolutely no sense that search crews and bloodhounds have found no trace of the boy and he says Sebastian was not the type of child who would just wander away like this on his okay so I know that rumor had been going around about a, a dog hit but here they're saying um search hounds have no hits so there are no hits I don't know if that's changed since no March. I, I I don't know what date I said earlier. March eleventh. No. Hits. Are you talking about the hits that, that um, Olivia said? Somebody mentioned a hit. I've only heard, like I said, I've only heard the rumors here and there, and what I pick up in other chats and stuff. But there was a rumor about a hit at a construction site. But here they're saying oh. no hit. So um, that was yesterday. She said. A dog hit six times or something. Right. Yes, there was yeah. that hit. I just want to make sure that. that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I saw that one, which, I mean, it did look like the dog hit, but 
I think that's kind of been proven to not be true. And Demon Chihuahua, I love the name, by the way, got to say that while I don't think Seth did anything or is involved, but if that was by the stepdad, it would rub people the wrong way. I agree with you. It would. It probably would. People have already um, went off of their gut feelings about these personalities. Like Bendy said up there earlier, I'm not going to scroll back up for it, that these two men are complete opposites in personality, and that might be their baseline. They might be complete opposites in personality in their everyday, day-to-day -day normal life. So it makes sense that they're opposites in personality on this as well. His own. In order for him to actually do something that's out, out of the normal, something would have had to happen that he just felt that he couldn't deal with anymore. What that is and how, no one really knows, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Seth Rogers can't explain that. But I can tell you, he doesn't mm -hmm. like to think that this is a possibility, but he does not rule out uh, the chance that there is foul play involved in what happened to his son. He knows that if his son could he would and is very able he knows how to work a phone and communicate he would reach out to the father for help i can tell you seth went on to uh, share a number of other new details not only about the investigation but personal details about his son which may help in finding him i'll have much more on this later this morning and tonight on news channel five at five and six i think that both hits are false so that's the thing, right? So there was two hits, right? There was a right here what um, Kim was talking about. There was alleged dog hit at a construction site. And then yesterday's hit. Yesterday's was a false hit. I think the first one was as well as what Duchess is saying. Correct me if I'm wrong, Duchess. Uh, I can't find your comment now. Earlier up there, you had said that the mom said that that was false hit. So are, they're both, right? None of those have been accurate. Okay. So no hits by the dogs. Right? It's <laughs> very interesting. Um, the news keeps referring to him as the missing teen. While accurate, it diminishes his situation. But one thing that we have to remember, and people are, I have heard that uh, one of the rumors that I heard going around on these YouTube streets was that bio mom and stepdad were like, downplaying him and saying like basically making it sound like he's completely helpless i haven't heard that from them at all so far so far everything i'm hearing from them is he's high functioning he's capable he can do this or that i mean they didn't know if he could um you know get on a bus but they're like just because he's never done that before so we don't know if he's capable of it or not he's not good with money they said but like they weren't saying he's inept just saying that He's very, you know, he does have high functioning watches, so so keep it he in says mind. He needs to call. So that's kind of where I was getting from, Mom. Okay, this is on March 11th as well. So same day, Seth calls into the Pascal show. So Pascal was reviewing that video we just watched, and then Seth called in. Name, where are you calling from? Oh, so here it is, right here. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. If it's too fast, y'all. Let me know. Call from Clarksville, Tennessee. My name is Seth Rogers. Seth, uh, first sure. off, thank you so much for calling in. Um, let me just say that, first off. Um, thank you so much for calling in. How are you doing? So Seth talks a little fast, so I will slow that down, actually. I just... He is a fast talker. About as fast as I can. My phone's missing. And I wanted to tell you thank you because you're getting this out to more people. We've been passing flyers out. We've got all the way to Chattanooga. We've got billboards all the way up to Memphis. Yeah. We reach out to balls to see if we can get flyers out there to try to find him. And I want to tell you thank you. Everybody who's helped me try to find my son, I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, I mean, well, you know, of course, we're, we are only here to bring your your son back home you know uh, of course home to safety um you have a second okay uh, of course you called in uh, and again i know that you're really busy what, what what have you been up to uh all day today so far can you give us like a little bit of a breakdown of what the day's been been so far for you guys out there i've been out because it's it's me and some of, and some of his extended family that have been doing flyers and stuff so i've been Passing out flyers and everything. Mm -hmm. I've been going to businesses, passing out flyers. Everybody knows, but in, in my town in Clarksville, everybody knows and everybody's seeing it. But 
I just, tomorrow I have a trip planned. Um, I've got seven different locations I'm going to see if I can find anything that can put more flyers up. Right on. Right on. I'm hit. I mean, I'm doing, I'm going to the south side of Nashville tomorrow to put flyers up everywhere. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand that. Um, have there been any leads, any, any leeway, any semblance of any type of hope in finding Sebastian in your search? I always have hope. I always have hope. Um, I just, I always have hope. I got to have hope because I can't believe that he's dead. Yeah. If you, if you mind so me, at, I get up every morning and I hit the road, I yeah. drive around, you know, put flyers out and I hope that I get to see him. I hope yeah. I get to make a left hand turn and he's there or I jump on the interstate. And right. He's walking himself to me. Yeah. No. I'll just keep praying. Of course. And, and we're all praying with you. Trust me, brother. We are all praying with you. Um, if you, if you mind me asking what, what, when, where were you when you got the phone call that he was missing? Well, I just got off of work at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I turned around and I got to my vehicle, got in there and there was a text message from the stepfather. Call me. It's nine one one. Oh God. But I mean, if he was, okay, so he just got off work. See, the, here's some new information. There hadn't been a whole lot for me to write down previously. So Seth had just gotten off work. Whatever he does, I know he's, you guys say he's law enforcement. Uh, I don't know what he does in law enforcement. Uh, he just got off work, hopped into the vehicle to see a text message. So he could have been like, I don't know, maybe he's a beat cop and he was inside the precinct doing paperwork. So like, because I'm wondering like, why wouldn't he have a cell phone on him? But that part's interesting, but whatever. He just got off work and sees a text message at 7 a.m. Could you imagine? Text. At seven from stepdad that it is nine one one. And I called him and he told me that my son was missing. Yeah. And I left from there and drove straight to his mom's house. And oh. I was there all day waiting for something. Some type of information. I saw him bring the dogs in. I was sitting there watching the police come in and out ask questions yeah and they, and they asked those questions of course and they're you know the first thing they did is where were you and i'm like i've been at work yeah. for the last 12 hours you know yeah they turned around they, they took our phones make sure that everything that we stated was verifiable right okay so he was at work uh 12 hour shifts he was working all night and he tells us right there that the first thing they do is they took all their phones and started verifying their information on all three of them. That's what they do, guys, right off the gate. Like, those closest are number one for a while. And he's not known, Sebastian's not known, as you said, as well. He's not known to just go and wander off or, or just to just run off the way he, that he did, correct? Correct. He's never been one to do that sort of stuff. So if you mind me asking this, and this is going to be kind of, I got a, a few tough questions to ask you. I know if you don't want to answer them, then that's totally fine. But when you went into the house, was there anything different or anything off maybe in the house when you were there? No, I walked in the house. It seemed normal. Everything was clean. Everything was pristine like it normally is. Like it normally is. Except for his room. Like it normally gotcha. is. Except for his room. Okay. Okay. Um. Have they been out? Have the parent? Have the has the stepfather's? Has the? Uh, so it sounds like he, his ex wife, and he says that is you know she's a good housekeeper. The house was pristine, like it normally is. Everything was in order except his room. Why would his room not be pristine? Um, I'm guessing because law enforcement were probably tossing through it looking for clues. Remember, he gets the text at seven, and has to drive down, drive straight down there. And so that puts him there at eight. So law enforcement's been there for at least an hour and a half. Um, that would be, it seems pretty normal. Uh, uh, has a stepdad and the mom, have they been out searching at all or have they just stayed home? From my understanding, my talks with Grayson and 
by their kitty. They've been out putting uh, flyers and posters in the ground. Okay. Okay. That too, I do have Mary. another question because um, you did make a statement. It was in an article. Um, it, it wasn't, I don't know if it was in this uh, video that we just watched this interview, which by the way, there's a longer version of this interview, right? I haven't seen the interview. I mean, okay. I was interviewed, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Okay. Um, but there is something that you said in the interview that was actually put into an article, said something about a, there was no scent. Okay. Like the dogs weren't picking up a scent, but one dog followed a scent out into a construction site and then it disappeared. Could you maybe expand on that or explain a little bit more about that? One of the dog handlers told me first day, wow, Monday, that the dog popped to a trail and they followed it and went all the way around and it ended in a construction site, but it just, it ended. It, it's like. It, so here's, I hate this. There's, there's conflicting info. So, so he's the one who said there was no hits. And now he's telling us that a dog handler told him that there was a hit. So it's like, which, which is it? Just basically it's all unverified information. There was nothing there. Right. And that's a little odd, Which right? Leads me to believe that, well, if it ends, normally the scent ends when you stop traveling on foot. From my understanding, that would mean that he got into a car. If he got into a car, it's, it, just so I understand the construction site itself, was did the scent stop in the middle of the construction site, or did it stop they on the side of the road? Me. Ah, okay. They, they didn't tell me. Okay. Because I'm, I'm curious because how close... I'm most, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not... No problem. I'm not part of that sheriff's department, so yeah. they're not going to share information with me. Of and course. On top of that, I'm emotionally attached, right? So they don't want me involved in the investigation. I got you. So everything I do is pretty much on my own. If I go search somewhere, I'm under or uh, I'm under pretty much orders to turn around and call TBI and tell them where I'm going so that they know. Yeah. Because they know I'm searching by myself, and if I come up missing, they want to know where I was left at. No kidding. Because they don't want me coming up missing and my son being missing. Right. So as far as... Well, that would be another reason they tell parents not to search. What if something were to happen? Remy, I would say typically they, they shouldn't, but we have seen it in other cases for one. But also Seth here, him being law enforcement, which he kind of confirms it right there. You know, I'm not a part of that sheriff's department. Um, he probably has his ways of being able to speak with people and get the information out of him, them that he wants out of them. That's just what I'm taking from his personality, my opinion of that. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -mm. Our home is also pristine. Our teenagers also on the spectrum, and that is one battle we don't fight too hard. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe he didn't know and then tried to confirm the hit. Yeah. But we also have to remember too, right? Dog hits are not 100% reliable as well. But it's definitely one to log away that there's still the possibility of the construction site. I don't know. A few things though. Did you? I know you live. I know you live somewhere else, but you were still very tight. You're still very tight with Sebastian. So I'm curious. Did he tell you of any issues at school? Did he have any? You know, did he have any? Was he dealing with any type of bullies, enemies, anything like that at school? Not that I am aware of. Um, I am tight with my son. I moved I moved from California to Tennessee so I could be close enough to go pick up my son. Not good on get you. far enough that when I pick him up, he's no, you know, I don't want to be in her backyard. Right. But she's, she's not my wife. Understandable. You know. Yeah. That's respectful. And I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, and that's good on you, my brother, for wanting to be closer, in closer proximity to your son. I think that's... So that I, I love that. I love that he moved. Uh, what did he say? California to be closer to his son. But he also is keeping his distance. He's an hour away um, because it's not his wife. And I do feel that like if that was said in reverse, like, oh, he's an hour away. Like if the stepdad said he's an hour away because he's not her husband, like people would take that a certain way. But I see both of these men like protecting that relationship in their own ways if that makes sense. That's very endearing, endearing, real talk. Were th was there any online forums or anything of that sort? Did he game a lot? Did he 
could he have been online somewhere games. talking to people? Yeah. He played games at my house. Um, my PlayStation is pretty much locked down for my own sake. In my, cause I don't, if, if, if I don't know you, right. I don't want you popping in to talk to me. So it's like everybody on my PlayStation that are on my friends list. Yeah. I know personally, you know, yeah, so sure. there's no way. Okay, so when he plays video games at dad's, he, do, he does have the possibility of interacting with people. I'm just writing. With people online, but dad is saying they are his, all his personal friends. That he would be in connection with there. Wait, that he would have been talking to somebody without me knowing because they're my friends. They're not his friends. Yeah. Right. It's locked. No, I mean right. they would call me up and be like, "You know, your son's on your account, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." Mm. Sitting next to him. He's in Is his recliner. I'm in my recliner. Right. Yeah, it's me. Okay, just making sure. That's kind of what I'm getting from this, though, that like, okay, but he still has the possibility of being on the internet at dad's. And while it is locked to dad's friends, um, that means it's still online, though. And I mean, you have a teenager, like anybody who's had teenagers know how good I would think that this would apply to those on the spectrum as well as, you know, if they want to do something, they're going to find a will and a way. Yes. And I know, um, I just wanted to say, because he said, uh, Seth said that he does game and that he has let Sebastian, you know, like get on there while he's sitting there with them and talk. Um, but Katie, the mom also said in one of her first interviews that the, he doesn't have online capabilities with his gaming system. And she was like, cause it's a switch. And that made the way she said it made me think like she thinks that switches can't get on the internet, but they absolutely can. Well, that's true. So I don't know. My kids uh, were adults by the time the switch came out, so I don't have any experience with oh, the girl, switch. Oh, I got all. one. Me and mom Is it bought really one. They just like actually, I think Dylan might have one now. I'm just saying. I I mean, I'll, I love fan, my but, switch. Genuinely, is it basically just like a DS on steroids connection to the yeah. internet? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. And like, if me and mom play the same game, like if we become friends on that game, we can chat back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. But anyways, I'm sorry, I didn't want but to interrupt. Well, no, no, no. I, I'm glad to hear that because there are things that I'm just not gonna know. Like I, I don't know. I, I know a switch is red and blue, I think, but that's about all I know about the dang thing. Um, mm -hmm. Mine is gray and mine is gray and black. I get Ooh, gray an and black. old school one. Yeah. They're not gray and blue. But um but but you, can, you can you can get around I mean, like if he he's high functioning, correct? Right. Right. And they have repeated that multiple times. I have it tallied four times so far in these interviews. High functioning, yeah. high functioning. So if he wanted to, he could get around it. So that's what I was wondering, like Tracy's saying, like it's restricted, but it, it, he could get around it if he really wanted to, right? Yeah, I think Tracy was talking about the computer, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe she was talking about the Switch. I think she was talking about the computer. But um, mm -hmm. on the Switch, um, my niece had one too, and I was playing a game with her. And mm -hmm. when she was with me, I saw that she had other people on there, and I knew she wasn't supposed to. Um, it, it's how much that it's checked really i mean were they checking every day in in each game to make sure I, I don't know or was he just playing the one i don't know i'm not saying right. he did just that it, it is no, possible, and, especially if he's high functioning right and that's what we're saying here like it, you know they're they're saying they're they're very conscious of what he's doing they're very strict parents um but like may said here mom could think he's not doing something da stepdad could think he's not doing something bio dad can think he's not doing something I'm sure there's a lot of somethings I thought my kids weren't doing, and they did. You know? <laughs> well, they Think will find it. This, a way. The stepdad is the authoritarian, right? He's the, uh -huh. I mean, I'm sure mom is too, but he's he's the one that has the strict rules, and mom and 
it she kind of just seems like she co-signs them like she agrees with them here's my thing if stepdad's out of mm-hmm. town all the time is mom mm-hmm. gonna constantly be checking the same way stepdad would be i tell you what coming from a household where my husband traveled for work when my kids were sebastian's age and i mean neither one of us were super strict parents but there was obviously just full transparency things that i allowed him to get away with staying up later having his, absolutely you know, friends over that that dad you know like hey no your bedtime's midnight go to bed you know things like that so it happens dad lets you do stuff mom won't mom mm-hmm. lets you do stuff dad won't absolutely. I mean, when, he went, when he went to sess it sounded like it was i mean it's a completely different situation just like any child who goes who has divorced parents and you go to the house has kind of different rules right so um i don't anyone would have a switch there seth only addressed the playstation yeah like yeah. It, it seems like so. he probably plays first player shooter games or something like call of duty or something there's no Ooh. telling but he said he yeah. talks you know he's got friends he plays with seth does um and sebastian would sometimes want to talk to him and he'd let him I think it might have been on this interview, so I'll shut up and let it just play. Okay. All right, we'll get through. We'll go a little further. I just think it's some. I'm not. I like a lot of people are saying, you know, like and especially Tracy, like, no, they're checking the devices, and that's true. They did. I just think it's something that you need to keep. And I bet they did check it pretty pretty quickly. But did they go back to dads and check all those devices? Is the question. I'm just saying, I wouldn't rule it out as a possibility of something happening because we just know how kids are. You know, we just know. Yeah, and I think too. To, it kind of sounds like people think that he's like a child, like a little kid, because he's autistic, and that's not fair. I don't think it is either, but I also don't know. Right, I'm, I, I, I'm pretty I, yeah. inept when it comes to the spectrum. So me too, me too. But him thirst. I, I, I some of the things I have starred right is the desire for friendship. And that was repeated so many times that I started. He he is thirsty for yeah. friends. And then we have the uh, video games being very high priority. And that comes out of bo- all three parents' mouths. That video games are very, very important to Sebastian. So you have this young man who is wanting friends more than anything. In the, like for presence even, they said. And then his connection, you know, this possibility of slipping online to something is just something that's stuck in my brain, but it might not mean nothing. <laughs> so we'll play a little more. Right. You guys are spending time you together. Know, he's playing there, and I'm on my phone playing Call of Duty, and he's on the PlayStation playing Modern Warfare. Right on. You know, I yeah. mean, I know what I know what he's doing because I'm I'm right next to him. Yeah. So it's like any conversations or anything that he was doing, he didn't he didn't have the headphones. Right. So, and it's a PS4, it's not a PS5, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't pick up your stuff to do the remote or anything. Yeah. So it's like, the only way he would have had contact with any of them is if he had had headphones on, and I made him not wear headphones, because you're not going to talk to random people. Right. You don't know who, you know, and I explained to him, you don't know who these people are. They can tell you one thing, and they could be some guy that's like in his 50s or something, looking for some kid. Yeah, no I kidding. Mean, yeah, those internet streets are dangerous, man. Those internet streets are dangerous. Um, so let's talk about outside of the internet. Did he ever express any issues about his home environment at all? Not at his mom. Not not. He never expressed anything about his mom and dad's his stepfather's place. Okay. Uh, he liked the dogs. You know, he was supposed to come live with me at the end of school. Summer break, he was supposed to move in with me full time. Oh, wow. Okay, I know it said in chat, but now I'm actually writing it down. He was supposed to come live with bio dad. And see right there, he said like he's never, he's never complained. And I'll tell you right now, Mm -hmm. when my mama and daddy divorced and my stepdaddy was living in the house and I go to my daddy's house, I talk mad shit. On my mom and stepdad. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you're horrible, Jota, but I believe it. I believe but it. I did. I'd be like, this, this mother trucker, he done said this or he done said that, you know, or I can't stand to listen to him eat. Just stupid shit. So <laughs> I mean, but 
Except well, and I what see, there, he's never complained about it. My brother's had a few wives. I'm not going to mention how many because I've seen you judgy people with the five of <laughs> curses. But anyway, he's, he's got a split family and, and they do that too. They'll come to dad's house and say mm -hmm. stuff and you know they're saying the I actually uh my brother's first wife I still consider my sister-in-law even though she's not but you know they'll go to her house and say stuff and they go back and forth and they play it up too oh my gosh they play it up to get those gifts at Christmas and, and birthdays they're mm -hmm. spoiled freaking rotten and I'm not saying that that makes them bad or horrible kids it's just their kids and that's what they did you know well, manipulation, I think there's a natural level of manipulation with kids anyway. Like you have to learn mm -hmm. not to do that, I think is really the the thing. But I mean, kids, sometimes like my friend's kids, it, it I'm like, can you not see they're manipulating you? <laughs> like I can see right. it, what they're doing, because I see and it I from a kid can. perspective. I don't mm -hmm. see it from a parent. So it's like, I, I, I get it. The kid, kids can be very manipulative and it doesn't make them bad. No, not at all. It just means not they figured out how to all. get what they want. The I successful you, organism Laura. continues to do what the sex, successful organism was doing. Exactly, exactly. And I do agree with what Laura said that I'm not, I'm not seeing red flags from any of these parents. We're only about halfway through. So there's that, but I, I'm just not seeing red flags. He doesn't have friends, but Seth is going to let him give out his phone number to random people. Oh, I'll have to get to that. That opens up the whole possibility of how he could have left home. His phone number, Seth let him give out Sebastian's phone number or he gave out Seth's phone number. I need some clarification on that one. Um, yeah. Because he wasn't allowed on his phone, right? He only had the parents. On yeah, his he only had a few numbers programmed. Yeah, he had said. strong restrictions, super strong restrictions from I what could I feel understand that from the phone. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. Or Demon Chihuahua. I love that name. I can't people just see. like to pick a bad guy. They do demon trial. People just like they have to have a villain. If they don't have a villain, then it's not entertaining for them. But guess what? This isn't entertaining. This is a 15 year old young man on the cusp of adulthood out there missing. It's no entertainment at all. But that's what people do. They need a villain. Didn't they, they say? Didn't they say that um, Sebastian, like, if he wasn't playing? his own games like he was super obsessed with like watching other youtubers play those games i just heard they him haven't say said it he yet played, yeah i okay. just heard him say he played modern warfare uh, mm -hmm. we heard him say that so it's, it, he wasn't yeah. just minecraft it was different at dad's house it, it it's always gonna be yeah, yeah. yep and, and parents can all be on the same page. My husband and I are very in tune to our parenting style. And you just heard me say that they got away with some stuff with me that they didn't get away with that with dad. So even if all three are co-parenting extremely well, there's just going to be different, you know, different, strokes for different folks at different times. It is what you it tell is. Me, you tell me nothing. Caden's on restriction right now. And when his daddy goes to work on the weekends, I let him play his damn game. I... Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of it myself right now in this moment. So, because mom guilt's a real thing. Mom guilt is a real thing, y'all. And they're, you know, they're missing their dad. Like you said, his dad's at work. And so you're like, you know, pacify him that way. When my husband traveled for work and he was gone for an extended period of time, so if it made everybody happy to have friends over on a school night, guess what? Mom gave in and let friends come over on a school night. Like, mom guilt is a real thing. <laughs> so. um, there there's another thing too. So I don't see anything wrong at this point either. But Trouble said earlier that it was the interview with Smiley that was an issue for her, and I don't. I didn't even know there was one. So well, we're getting to that because I it's have heard part disgusting. of that. Jones and yeah, Jones and played part of it. Oh, we're getting God. there. We're we are um, we're on the eleventh. We're about halfway through. So okay, I'll we'll shut up. More of it. You're fine. No, we needed a little bit of a break. I, I know that there's definitely a point here where the tides change for social media. And I'm, I feel it's starting to happen here with some of Pascal's questions. And that's sad for oh, me. He's but... for sure fishing for the step mm -hmm. down. Um, he is. Yeah. He was supposed no, to be hate. Okay. No hate to Pascal. Yeah, I like him. Both me and him have wanted for years. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand that. And now, 
Now you're out looking for him. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking. Let me go back. So I was saying, no hate to Pascal. I, I still watch him, and I I will continue to do so. So he would. So I think Seth said um, it's what him, what Seth and Sebastian have wanted for years. Oh wow. He was supposed to. Oh wow. This is okay. what I. This, this is what both me and him have wanted for years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I understand that, and now. Now you're out looking for him. Yeah. I gotta find it so he can come live with me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I understand. Um, of course, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to point any blame or anything of that sort. Um, but you know, the 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 situation in which he just vanished into thin air is very suspicious in in my personal opinion. What are your Thank thoughts you, as far as him vanishing in the way that he did vanish? I'm missing something. Like I like I've stated since day one, nothing none of this none of this makes sense. Yeah. There's something missing out of this puzzle. And I don't know what it is. And I hope that law enforcement has has figured out the missing piece so that they can bring my son back to me. Right. I totally understand that. Has there been any been has there been any thing that you've heard so far maybe uh, maybe a piece of a clue anything you said i know i understand that there's pieces to this puzzle that are missing but did you, did they happen to give you a, at least something that could be some semblance of a piece no. to a puzzle no they they they're not including me in on they tell me what they do but they're not including me in on what they find i understand i do understand that that is completely normal. We've heard it from uh, Brandy. We've heard it from the Wells. We've heard it from um, Athena's mom. We have heard it. Uh, Athena Brownfield's mom. We've heard it from um, not Athena. Sorry, Athena Strand's mom. We've heard it from uh, that one little missing girl in Indiana who was found murdered by her bio mom and boyfriend. We heard it from her bio dad. Like you, you hear this all the time from parents, and that's why it's. I just roll my eyes when creators out there say, um, law enforcement told me this tip on the down low. No, they didn't. They're not telling parents shit. They're not going to tell you shit. So stop it. Um, especially with your expert, you know, with your experience, of course, being a police officer as well. Um, I can I'm only Deputy imagine Sheriff. Deputy Sheriff, with all due respect, my I'm apologies. Sorry. Well, I take my oath to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Tennessee very very dearly to my heart as a deputy sheriff, you know, yeah. that's, that's what we're sheriff. supposed to do, you know, yeah. make sure people don't infringe upon people's constitutional rights. Yeah. One, I got a few more questions. Uh, what was the last, uh, when was the last time you had a conversation with Sebastian? Uh, how, how Thursday. it was Thursday. Okay. So you Thursday didn't before he left before he disappeared or you mean before he left? Yeah. Okay. So before, before he left, I'm okay. I, okay, that kind of stuck out to me before he left, which it, it's nothing. It could just be a little nuance, but it's just weird. He meant before he left his house, right? I don't know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going to go back. Does he mean like okay. Thursday before he left home, or does he mean the Thursday before he went missing? That's what I, I think want he's some clarification. Correct. Yeah, I think he's correct okay. in it. Okay. All right, let's see here. It was Thursday. Okay, so you Thursday didn't say before he left. Before he disappeared, or you mean before he left? Yeah. Okay. So before before he left. I'm, oh, okay. wow. Because I mean, he he's gone. Right. I mean, he's gone. Right. He's left. So but, you know, but it, how often? either left the house of his own free will, or uh -huh. or he didn't, and you know, if yeah. he went outside, oh. no. I don't know what happened to him. Absolutely. So then, let me let me ask you this then: Do you, did you guys correspond, or at least make phone calls often? Like, was it a, a daily thing or would it be sporadic every once in a while you you get a chance to talk to Sebastian? I'm just curious about the rhythm here because it seems like Thursday and then it's just flatline, no communication whatsoever. So how often were you actually corresponding with your son? I called him Thursday and I'll call him on Friday, Saturday or Sunday because he's with his mom. Right. That way, when I have him Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's just a mutual thing. Yeah. Other than that. I think that's really respectful. Um, giving them the weekends with their child um, without interruption. So he would have, the last time he spoke with Sebastian would be February 22nd for those keeping that. So 
February 22nd, and we learned that he last saw him on, I said February 18th, but it wouldn't have been 18th. It would have been, so he was supposed to have him that weekend, but didn't. So the 17th would have been with mom. So it would have been, I got the date wrong earlier. It would have been the 11th, the last time he saw him, February 11th. Did I write that down? Let me see. Let me see. I did write it down. Okay, so February 11th would have been the last time he saw him in person and then last spoke with him on the 22nd. Um, it, It's just verbiage right there. Before he left, I, I wouldn't read too much into it the same way. Got gone. I don't like how they use got gone, but it's just a... The same, I think. Do you think maybe it's easier for him to talk about it by saying he left rather than something happened to him? Absolutely. One thing I've noticed from all three parents, yeah, all three parents is that they, there's no past tense here at all that I've picked up on. And so I think they're all just looking for their son. Hope. Hope. No, he said in a previous interview, he said in the interview on uh three four that he was supposed to have him that weekend but didn't and he didn't go into the reason as to why and so that the last time he had him was the the last weekend he had him and so if it's every other weekend i'm guessing it's february 11th yeah hope jenny i agree normally i would call him it's every day or every other day at about 3.30 because he would be home from school by then and either be working on his homework or if he didn't have any homework, he was doing chores and his mom had him do it. Gotcha. And I would call him to ask him how school was. Normally, we would talk for maybe two or three minutes. Yeah. You know, and it was just, it was routine. Call him up. How was school? You know, did your mama leave you any chores? <laughs> yeah. You know. So, but this, this was a Monday through, but this was more of a Monday through Thursday, uh, Monday through Friday type of thing. But then the weekends you would leave him, leave him be to spend time with mom. Correct. I would pick him up on Fridays on my weekend. I would pick gotcha. him up. I'd be waiting at their house when he got out of the, off the bus. Ah, I see. But this weekend was not so your weekend this, or this particular weekend was not your weekend. weekend. Right? No, that was his mama's weekend. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know. Okay. Let me let me go back to that interview because I'm like, wait, wait, did I write that down wrong? Was it his mama's weekend or was it his weekend? Because now I see why Crystal said that. But let me pull up the three four phone call because that's where he said it was supposed to be his weekend. Whose weekend was it? Whose weekend was it? Sorry, y'all. You're you're along with me on the process. This is how it is. <laughs> you might not. Yep. Not by, I'd not be normal. here for it, but <laughs> this is how it goes. Let me it's see. It's totally normal. Speed it up a little bit. Okay, so he did. Oh, wait, I were we just muted this whole time? Could you guys not even hear that? I didn't even switch it over. Yeah, we were. You guys just waiting on me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, here, we're keyed up right here. You all just quietly muted. Okay, it was right here, though, so that's good. At least you don't have to wait through that minute and a half. Listen to this. So, I was supposed to have him last weekend, and it would have been two weeks. Last time he was at my house. So I was supposed to have him last weekend. And it would have been two weekends prior. He would have eaten. 
So he went missing on Sunday, Sunday, right? On the 25th is when, or the 26th, when he went missing on the 25th, somewhere time after midnight into the 26th. So uh, last weekend, meaning that weekend. So he was supposed to have him that weekend. And so the last weekend that he was at his house. So, yeah. Uh, again, not a big deal, just a little conflicting of if it was his weekend or not. He's saying it wasn't in the March, what interview? March 4th interview, he's saying the last week and he was supposed to have him. And then in the Pascal interview, he's claiming he was supposed to have him that weekend. So a little weird to me. Um, wow. Okay. I, I, I do have to ask you, you this and maybe, you know, maybe you don't know, uh, but when did Chris go to, to Memphis? Do you, do you have any knowledge of that when he actually left for that job on, on Monday? Well, I don't think he left Monday. I think he'd already been there all week. So he was out there all weekend. For what you no, week. what all week? Oh wow. Okay, that 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 that's interesting. So he was gone all week. I believe so. You believe so? Okay. Normally, I believe so because normally, if I have him, yeah, Sebastian's mom would go to Memphis. If I had Sebastian over the weekend, she would normally go to Memphis. I see. I see. Okay. Interesting. So he might, okay. So he could have been there for a while. Yeah. And then of course, Ma, um, Sebastian's mom is with him. She wakes up Monday, Monday morning, and he's gone. So there's that. So if he was, you know, gone previously, or at least for the whole week, they're going to have that. Um, they're going to have that information. Law enforcement's going to have that information. They'll verify it through through phones, um, they're going to verify it through work, et cetera, where stepdad was. So is the hate towards him truly just, hey, country has a gone left. The hate towards him truly is just his personality. People don't like his personality, which I get it. I'm not a fan of his personality, but I don't see anything pointing towards guilt. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where he could have disappeared. That could have been time somewhere around that time, let's just say. I mean, no. you know. Sebastian disappeared sometime Sunday night, Monday morning. Sunday night, Monday morning. Okay. I, I apologize. She's, she, 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 there's evidence, there's video proof of, Seba of Sebastian with Katie Sunday evening. Are there cameras? So video proof of Sebastian with Katie Sunday evening. That's good to know. Yes, when they got back from mm -hmm. dinner, if I'm not mistaken, Katie sent him out with the garbage can. Okay. So video proof oh, of Sebastian. So, so he, had a, he had a he had chores. Yeah, like a normal Sweet. fifteen year old boy. And trusted to go out put the trash out. Okay, that's wonderful. I think so too. Oh, crud. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I do is pretty much on my own. If I go search somewhere, I'm under. Was, was there any online forums or anything of that sort? Did he game a lot? Did he, could he have been online? <laughs> his mom and dad's his stepfather's place okay uh he liked the dogs the of them is if he had had headphones on and i made him not wear headphones because you're not gonna be and he's on the playstation playing modern warfare right on you know i yeah. mean i know what i know what he's doing because i'm i'm right next to him yeah so it's like any conversations or anything that he was right you don't know who you know and i explained to him you don't know who these people are Streets are dangerous. Um, so let's talk about outside of the internet. Did he ever express any issues about his home environment at all? Not at his mom. Not not. Let's talk I think about I missed the part with the maybe. I thought it, 
I thought it was an old conversation, but I think they're just redoing the conversation there. Because I had heard him mention modern warfare, more than a modern warfare before. Um, but that sounded like a different conversation. Look at Pascal's face. That's a funny spot to stop. Right. You guys are spending time you know, together. He's playing there, and I'm on my phone playing Call of Duty, and he's on the PlayStation playing Modern Warfare. Right on. You know, I, yeah. I know what I know what he's doing because I'm I'm right next to him. Yeah. So it's like any conversations or anything that he was he didn't he didn't have the headphones. Right. So and it's a PS4. It's not a PS5. So it doesn't you know it doesn't pick up your stuff through the remote or anything. Yeah. So it's like only way he would have had contact with any of them is if he had had headphones on and I made him not wear headphones because you're not going to talk to random people. Right. You don't know who, you know, and I explained to him, you don't know who these people are. They could tell you one thing and they could be some guy that's like in his fifties or something looking for some kid. Yeah. No I kidding. Mean, yeah. Those internet streets are dangerous, man. Those internet streets are dangerous. Um, so let's talk about outside of the internet. Did he ever express any issues about, his home environment at all not at his mom not not he never expressed anything about his mom and dad's his stepfather's place okay uh he liked the dogs you know he was supposed to come live with me at the end of school oh yeah okay summer well, break he was supposed to move in with me full time oh wow he was supposed to oh wow this is okay. what i this, this is what both me and him have wanted for years yeah yeah no i understand that and now now you're out looking for him. Yeah. I got to find him so he can come live with me. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, of course, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to point any blame or anything of that sort. Um, but, you know, the, the, the situation in which he just vanished into thin air is very suspicious in, in my personal opinion. What are your thoughts as far as him vanishing in the way that he did vanish i'm missing something like i like i've stated since day one nothing none of this none of this makes sense yeah there's something missing out of this puzzle and i don't know what it is and i hope that law enforcement has has figured out the missing piece so that they can bring my son back to me right i totally understand that has there been any been has there been any thing that you've heard so far maybe uh, maybe a piece of a clue anything you said i know i understand that there's pieces to this puzzle that are missing but did, did they happen to give you a, at least something that could be some semblance of a piece no. to a puzzle no they, they they're not including me in on they tell me what they do but they're not including me in on what they find i understand i do understand um especially with your expert you know with your experience of course, being a police officer as well, um, I can I'm only imagine deputy sheriff. deputy sheriff. With all due respect, my I'm apologies. Sorry. Well, I take my oath to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Tennessee very, very dearly to my heart. As a deputy sheriff, you know, yeah. that's that's what we're supposed to do. You know, yeah. make sure people don't infringe upon people's constitutional rights. Yeah. One, I got a few more questions. Uh, what was the last? Uh, what was the last time you had a conversation? So basically, I, I did go back too far, but that's okay. It's good to rehear some of it. Uh, Deputy Sheriff, for those who aren't aware of law enforcement, he's just so a sheriff. The sheriff in your county is elected. He's elected by the people. So vote because it starts. Don't even get me into politics, but it starts locally. So vote for your sheriff and, and vet your sheriff. But anyway, the deputy sheriff is the very next guy down in, in the chain of command in law enforcement with sebastian um how how thursday it was thursday okay so you thursday didn't say before he left before he disappeared or you mean before he left yeah okay so before before he left i'm okay i, I mean because he, he's gone right i mean he's gone right he left so but, you know but it, how often either left the house of his own free will or uh -huh. or he didn't and you know if yeah. he went outside no. i don't know what happened to him absolutely so then let me let me ask you this then do you, did you guys correspond or at least make phone calls often? Like, was it a, a daily thing or would it be sporadic every once in a while you you get a chance to talk to Sebastian? I'm just curious about the rhythm here because it seems like Thursday and then it's just flatline, no communication whatsoever. So how often were you actually corresponding with your son? 
I called him Thursday. I don't call him on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday because he's with his mom. Right. That way, when I have him Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's just a mutual thing. Yeah. Other than that, normally I would call him if every day or every other day at about 3.30 because he would be home from school by then and either be working on his homework or if he didn't have any homework, he was doing chores that his mom had him do it. Gotcha. And I would call him to ask him how school was. Normally we would talk for maybe two or three minutes. Yeah. You know, and it was just, it was routine. Call him up. How was school? You know, did your mama leave you any chores? <laughs> yeah. You know. So, but this this was a Monday it's through, but this was more of a Monday through Thursday, uh, Monday through Friday type of thing. But then the weekends you would leave him, leave him be to spend time with mom. Correct. I would pick him up on Fridays on my weekend. I would pick gotcha. him up. I'd be waiting at their house when he got out of the, off the bus. Ah, I see. But this weekend was not so your weekend. This, but this particular weekend was not your weekend, weekend. Right. No, that was his mama's weekend. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, uh, wow. Okay, I, I I do have to ask you, you this, and maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Uh, but when did Chris go to to Memphis? Do you do you have any knowledge of that? When he actually left for that job on on Monday? Well, I don't think he left Monday. I think he'd already been there all week. So he was out there all weekend. From what you no, week. what all week? Oh wow. Okay, that 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 that's interesting. So he was gone all week. I believe so. You believe so. Okay. Normally, I believe so. Because normally, if I have him, yeah, Sebastian's mom would go to Memphis. If I had Sebastian over the weekend, she would normally go to Memphis. I see. I see. Okay. Interesting. So he might, okay. So he could have been there for a while. Yeah. And then, of course, Ma, um, Sebastian's mom is with him. She wakes up Monday, Monday morning, and he's gone. So there's that th Friday, Saturday, and Sunday where he could have disappeared. That could have been time somewhere around that time, let's just say. I mean, no. you know. Sebastian disappeared back to video. sometime Sunday night, Monday morning. Sunday night, Monday morning. Okay. I, I apologize. She's, she, 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 there's evidence, there's video proof of, Seba uh, of Sebastian with Katie Sunday evening. Are there cameras in, in the house or around no, the actual house? They, they went to dinner. Gotcha. So they did go to dinner on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there's physical, there's actual video proof of that. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, Seth, do you have anything that you want our listeners to know about the, the search about Sebastian? Anything? That can help in I, finding him? I, I I just ask people, keep your head up and your eyes open. If you see him, please call 911. Yeah. You know, if he's hungry, give him some food. If, if you see him outside your house, do not let him in your house. Call 911. Mm -hmm. Get him something to eat. Get him something to drink. Can I ask? I'm pretty sure he's starving. Right. Can I, do you mind me asking one more question? I know. I know. I was just trying to wrap it up with you, but I got one last question. Um, cause I know that he was on medication as well. Um, was, is, was there any possible medication that he took that could give him some sort of mental break or some sort of psychotic break where he would just wander off without shoes on in the middle of the night? I have no idea. I, I've asked TBI and Sumner County to check to see if that is mm -hmm. and nothing. And he's never done anything like this before. Correct. Cool. Um, I'm a little confused there. So on the medicine, he says he has no idea. He asked TBI in Sumner County to check and see if that's, is he asking them to check his medicine or is he saying he doesn't know what medicines his son takes? I don't know what your thoughts on that are. Yeah, I, it was weird. It was weird the way he said it, Wolfie, wasn't it? All right. We'll just keep. I'm going to jot that down. Hopefully we get some answers later. Yes, sir. Okay. Not out of spite or out of anger, out of protest. He's never done anything like just leave or walk off or anything like that out of just being a teenager with angst, you know? I love my, I love my son. I, I love my son a lot. And I have thoroughly aggravated him at 
at different points in times. Of course. Because I'm his dad. I, I was going to say, you're not a dad and, if you're not doing that. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and he has never once walked out my, out my front door. No matter how mad I've made him. Yeah. You know, he has stormed off to his room. He has sat there, I don't want to talk to you. And I'm like, well, you can get over it. I'm your dad. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you whether you want to talk to me or not. Yeah, absolutely. You giving me an attitude? Go load the dishwasher. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Your Just... attitude ain't going to stop the fact that you live in this house and there's things that need to be done. Yeah. You know, I, I've taught him that don't let people don't let people get get you mad or angry. Yeah. You know, that that's that's you losing control and them having control over you. Yeah. You know, don't be like that. Be better than that. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, you know, because I understand that he's autistic. I love him no matter what. Yeah. But I also understand that kids are cruel, especially in schools. That they you know, are. We all, we all did with that. If you weren't the popular one, you could be made fun of or whatnot. And I, I wanted him to already have an understanding that those people that do that are just insecure. And they're wanting yeah. control or power over you. And you're getting angry, gives them that. But if you look at them and just smile and, and brush it off, yeah, because it ain't worth it. Their opinion is not worth it. Kill them with kindness, right? Or food, school food, either one. I will say, um, Seth, Seth, I do appreciate you calling in and just uh, because this was very impromptu, everybody. Okay, let me just be completely honest. I didn't, this was not planned. Um, but I do appreciate you calling in. Um, you know, we are, I watched your podcast. I, I watched your podcast earlier mm -hmm. and you said you'd be back on at eight o'clock. Yes, sir. And, uh, I watched your podcast a couple days ago oh. because you're keeping my son's face out there. You're keeping his name out there. And the more that we can do that, oh. the less likely it'll become a cold case. Absolutely. I saw it become a cold case. I wasn't found. <sighs> So I love hearing that. Um, but earlier in that interview, uh, it was actually the one that we just flipped back to on three, four. So a week ago, when asked about social media, what's being said on social media, Seth was like, I don't know. I don't have social media. Like, I'm not following it. I don't care. Stop being keyboard warriors. Get out here and look. This just shows you that within, you know, a week, he's, he's desperate. He's like, now I'm looking up all the things on my son because... I want to hear it. I, I, I need to know that people are sharing his face and his name. And so he's watching Pascal's podcast. I think that's, I think it's awesome. We all want him found. I, I'm going to be honest. We, uh, just like Chelsea just said, we, we have an army behind you, sir. Um, people are putting in. It also gives us a little bit of insight of why these parents end up on YouTube. Unfortunately, sometimes they land in the wrong person's chat or on the wrong person's panel. I'm not saying that about Pascal, but like, that gives us just like a little bit of insight into that, that, you know, a week prior, he's like, you know, no to social media. And now he's like, I'll do what, you know, I'll go wherever I can. I'll listen to whatever I can to hear and keep talking about my son. And that shows you why some of these parents turn to, to YouTube. And anybody who takes advantage of that. You're a piece of shit. Just F saying. You. F yeah. You. Like, exploiting them is wrong uh -uh. in the a lot of green heart emojis in the chat right now um you know people are really showing a lot of love discerning just said we in hendersonville are behind you seth we are with you that's what she said um there's a there's a lot of people here that are are praying for his safe and swift return um and yes we will continue to say his name and we will continue to talk about sebastian here until we find out what's going on right until we get him home and that's the most important part and i commend you i give you so much love and healing vibrations and again god bless you for stopping everything that you're doing and just being boots on the ground and going out there trying to find your son that is commendable my brother and uh man if i if i was with you right now we'd be sharing a beer i'm serious and a big old hug but i'm telling you right now we're with you all of us are with you and we're praying with you okay so i appreciate it i really do Absolutely, man. Absolutely, brother. Um, please, I, I, I'm going to try to find a way to keep in touch with you. All right. Because I do want to know what's going on. Um, and again, we are all here. We're all on the same team. We are rooting for you. 
We just care about the truth. We care about transparency and we care about justice and we care about getting him home. So again, Seth, I appreciate you so much for calling in. It means the world to all of us. And a lot of us are showing a lot of love in the chat. All right. Um, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Um, you have this number as well. Please don't be a stranger. Let us know what's going on. If you if you have time to give us updates every once in a while, we'd be more than honored to have you on here to let us know what's going down. Okay. Thank you. Of course. No, thank you. And I appreciate you. Okay. I know you probably need some sleep. It's probably been a long day. Go rest. Go rest those feet. Go get properly hydrated. All right. And hopefully we will talk very very soon with some good news. All right. Mm -hmm. What I'm planning for. Thank you. Thank you again. Anytime, brother. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. All right. Bye. So that was the interview on 311 on Pascal's show. Um, I mean, I said he has chromosomal deletion syndrome, which causes bladder and bowel issues. And he only got diagnosed with autism real recently. We did know that. And he, so he was extremely high functioning. Um, Demon, I, I want to know that too, but they have said in the chat, um, we haven't gotten to it in the interviews, but they have said in the chat that it was, you know, a situation that was agreed upon by all, all parties. So it must have been something mutual. So here. The uh, GoFundMe? No, the, uh, him moving back, him moving in with dad. He was going to oh, move in with dad oh, the whole time. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you're fine. So the next one, I think we go back to Duchess. I think this is where Happy Kid and he, they pop up on Duchess's again. And this was on the 17th. This was just last week. And where you and Katie joined me to talk to me about Sebastian's disappearance. Um, it seems like it's been a rough week. Uh, it's been a rough 21 days and counting. I know it has. And I just appreciate you taking the time to join us to maybe answer some questions. And I know there's some things that you wanted to clear the air about. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to just come over here and do that. You're welcome. Um, uh, so I have Terry Lynn's interview down. That was on my list. I just, did he do an interview with Serafina or did he just call? Uh, like, was that, was the talk on the phone put out there? Or are you just saying it was a mess afterwards? Cause I haven't seen that. I didn't know. Serafina. Donna Serafina, she is. No. Honest. Yeah, who, I don't want to say. Did? I don't know what she is. Like, is she a a seer? Like, I don't know what the proper word for what she's like. No. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know if that was like an actual interview because if it was, I missed that one on my list. I'd be interested in looking it up just to have a reference thing. That actually frustrates me quite a bit. Um, uh, same. Thing. Yeah, I got I some know. stuff I was going to cover on her for Idaho 4 and haven't gotten oh, to it yet, but she's disgusting. That's something. That's something. Muddying this up real quick, aren't they? Just trying to think where I want to start. I know there may be people that are watching or listening to this case. Um, everyone in the chat, if you would please, um, if you do have questions, the, the panel Crystal, Arctic, and I have um, some questions and things that we are going to, um, we're just going to ask Chris. We've seen um, some people asking questions, some uh, just, we want to ask our own questions. We want to just make sure that things that were asked from the very beginning to make sure that we've covered all of those things. Um, and this may be answering the question that you have. And once we have went through some of those questions, we will take some questions from the chat. Um, and I just ask that if your question has already been answered by Chris in the live stream, that we may skip over your question because I don't want to have to make him continue to re-answer the same question, you know, over and over. So um, we're going to start out with some questions from the panel and then we will hop over uh, to the chat and we'll have uh, Chris to see if he'll answer some questions from you guys. So we appreciate everyone um, 
for your patience. And, um, you know, we just ask that you show respect and just, you know, kindness goes a long way and we appreciate that. Um, let me get over here. I'd made myself a couple of notes. So, um, I hope Sebastian's mom is okay. I know this has been very difficult for her. Well, she's right here beside me, so she can hear every single thing. Hey, Katie, I, I appreciate you being here and listening. Um, you are in our thoughts and prayers, and I know this must be so very difficult for you. Um, and I'm just praying for your strength. Thank and you. that's Sebastian will be found soon. Um, we had lots of people donate tonight. Um, so many wonderful amazing people in this chat. Um, we're going to be able to keep the billboards up um, until um, after next Monday. So um, so another we've got a whole another week that we're going to be able to run the billboards, which is amazing. Well, thank you and, to everybody that has contributed and been a part of this from the from the start to current. Y'all are very much appreciated in the chat. You have to know that it means so much to them because these billboards and listen, Chris, also, if there is another location that you and Katie would like to have a billboard, um, you can, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to get another billboard going. If there's a location that you are interested in, you can just reach out to me um, sometime this week and I can look into it. If you think there's another location, that would be good and we can get another one going up. Um, just ma just let me know and we'll make yes, it happen. OK, so. Um, Besides gaming, what are th other things that Sebastian likes to do? Well, he, loves, he likes to fish. He loves to play on playgrounds. Um, we get the little kid crafts from Lowe's and Home Depot, so he likes to build little things with me. That's really cool. And you said that Sebastian didn't really have a lot of friends. He didn't really have any friends. He has a couple of friends at school. Do you think it's possible that and which you told me before you didn't think so, but do you think there's any way possible that he could have met a friend online, either at school or at his father's or at through at your house? It, do you think that's possible in any way? Uh, there's always a possibility that that is that is a question that I can I'll, like. There's always a possibility that a child can do something. Now, mm -hmm. from my oh, best wow. recollection, mom's best recollection, uh, and the father's best. That's but, kind of a, a little sh shift in his attitude, you know, of like, nope, we're strict and it can't happen. And now he's right. He That's what I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like going over these in order. Yeah. This mm -hmm. was, let me get the date again. This one was on the 17th. You know, as, as they get further and further along in these cases, they have to be open to the possibility of, of these things for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she sounded just like uh, Yennefer. When she, she was did. talking, I was like, Yennefer's up here? She sounded just like her. And she's going to yeah. make, she said, don't make me come up there. But <laughs> <laughs> she did sound just like her. Uh, no, oh, mm -hmm. just a reminder not to forget the links. I got Dutchies for this one. Oh, thank you, thank but you. But I don't know some. I've been of dropping ones. the links to. to <laughs> is there any I need to give you, or are you good? No, nope. uh, we're all caught up. Okay, okay. all right. Um, I'll make sure to put them back there. Thank you. Thank you. Best recollection. Not that we know, not that we know of. Um, our okay. house, as we've stated, has been it is strict. It stays locked down with that kind of situation. Um, we use internet time and gaming as like a positive reinforcement rather than a free access. Okay. Um, TBI is. Oh, I think that was really important to hear from mom. Positive reinforcement instead of free access. Okay. Uh, well, excuse me. Let not just TBI, but all law enforcement agencies involved are actually anything and everything which way they can. They are doing their best to investigate, look, search, uh, any little thing. And right now, we're just we got no luck. Um, Katie, can you walk us through, um, for, for anyone that's new to this case that may be just finding out about Sebastian being missing, can you walk us through, uh, what happened on Sunday, like the, before Sebastian, you know, went missing, can you walk everybody through that and what led up to you finding out that Sebastian was missing? Yeah. Um, Sunday morning, I'll just start at the morning. 
Sunday morning we got up and I made um, a fun breakfast for us, uh, spaghetti pancakes. Google it, y'all. Um, we FaceTime family while we were eating so he could brag because that's something he likes to do. And um, we were laughing and joking on FaceTime and having a good time with that. Um, after breakfast, uh, we got a call to go pick up um, our niece and um, go um, take her to meet up. So we, we did that. We went and picked her up. And we met her mom at um, BJ's and uh, we were there with um, family members. Um, we come home and put our groceries away. And then a little bit later we went to the bowling alley, a local bowling alley here and we played games. And then we, and this is just Bubba and I, and we went to dinner, just the two of us uh -huh. and then come home. Um, he took the trash out cause that's his chore. And um, he come in and he was playing in his room until bedtime. And uh, at bedtime, you know, I, I told him, I said, hey, Bubba, it's time to go to bed. And he goes, okay, good night, Mama, I love you. And then he said good night to his puppies. And um, he went to bed. Okay. And walk me through what happened. You said that you were on a phone call. You were on the couch and then you went to bed at midnight. Walk me through exactly what transpired during that time before you went to bed at midnight for you. So, well, my husband, he works out of town a lot. So um, it, we normally sit and talk every evening. And uh, I normally fall asleep on him <laughs> um, and he'll, you know, he'll tell me, wake up, you know, you got to go to bed. And um, so, and that was right around midnight. Um, so I got up and I put the puppies up and I went to bed myself at midnight and, um, you know, I, I went to sleep obviously. And then um, at 6 a.m. I went to wake him up for school and that's when I couldn't find him. Who's putting an essay on Sebastian's name already, Brandy? I know people don't like to what? mention things in others' chats, but who's doing that already? I believe you if that's what they're doing. I also want to point out that what she's saying right here about him telling her to wake up and go, you know, put the dogs up and go to bed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They're tripping about that, too. They're like, who does that? That's so weird. Not really. Not weird. No, that's, that's a normal kid chore. Um, How long have they been married? Do we know? Eight years. Seven or eight years. One, somebody said seven, somebody said eight, or well, they've been together that long. I don't know how long they've been married, married, but they've been together. He has been in Sebastian's life for eight years. So if um, at eight years, my husband and I, if we were apart, which was very, very rare, we were in contact constantly. Oh, I don't find this not, weird not at all. We had to be. Well, yeah, when be. Luke traveled, when Luke traveled for work and was gone yeah. all the time, that's, that's how it goes because... Especially when you have a, a teenager, I had two teenagers. And so the only time I could talk to him was late in the evening and I would fall asleep on him, bless his heart, or he'd fall asleep on me. It's just, you, you get, you get in the conversations when you can get in the conversations. So, okay. Married two years together for eight. Thank you, Crystal. So, you know, you do what you can. Absolutely. Do what you can to talk. So I don't find this weird at all. They, yeah, I guess people were pissed because they had to put up the dogs. BJ with the incontinence essay or abuse of other kids because there's no other explanation. They didn't want to consider what the mom said with the DDS. The panel goes wild with unfounded act. Oh, gracious. What's BJ? Brittany no, you know, I'd say. Guessing. Yeah, I'll say. Oh, it. yeah, I, oh, it's disgusting. Uh, the things I've been hearing over there, disgusting. Oh man, worse. This is a, this is a child, y'all. This is a child. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Find him, and um, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. Tell me, did Sebastian take any type of medication before he went to bed or that would make him sleepy or did any, if he did take medication, it was just in the morning or did he take medication at night before he went to bed? He did take medication nightly and daily. Um, okay. Okay. Just for HIPAA, for HIPAA reasons, we, are, we will not disclose. I understand. What is. I was just trying to think, you know, if there was something that might have made him sleepy. Like okay. So. He <laughs> he would not be breaking HIPAA by telling everybody what his medications are. Only uh, medical providers and medical caregivers would be the ones breaking HIPAA. But 
I agree. It's not smart of them to share out what medicines he were on. He was on law enforcement. Know that I'm sure they've been in contact with his medical providers, so they know everything that Sebastian was taking. Like if he would have woken up, you know, I'm just all these different questions that people so, have asked. So, right. but you don't have to disclose any sp- particular. We, nobody needs to know that, you know, specifically. I just wanted to ask. Um. Do you feel any particular way? Do you do you have any thoughts about about Sebastian's disappearance? Do you feel that he may have walked off? I've seen a lot of people in chat saying that he went out the window versus he went out the door. How did the door get locked? Um, that you found the door locked. Um, mm-hmm. Can you walk me through exactly what that looks like and what you found was the door locked? What do you think may have occurred for him walking off versus? Well, I'll tell you this. With someone? Okay. We, we didn't find any signs of the windows, but, um, I, and without disclosing the details of my door locks, I will say I that Sebastian regularly and consistently went out and locked the door behind himself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So I get what I she's get saying here, there. Other- He's capable of, of locking the door behind himself. So it's not like finding the doors locked would be a weird thing if he decided to walk out of the house. He was capable of locking the door behind him. That's my takeaway. Is that what you're taking away from that? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're in the chat saying, don't go. My husband, but the only, look, I don't like it, which is so weird because I'll talk to you girls on, on a Discord call about true crime for 12 hours, no problem. But I hate it when people call me. Like, I don't even look at a call except my husband's when he was traveling. Mm-hmm. Only one. <laughs> Everybody I else, you better send me a snap if you want my attention. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's okay. how it goes. Yep. Other questions that are coming in. Um, now, I, I will say this much. Let, let them ask questions. I mean, we're not hiding anything. I've heard so much negativity that I refuse to answer questions. Let them fly. I mean, okay. I'll be respectful okay. of my responses. I would hope they would be respectful in their questions, but please let them fly. We're good with it. Okay, um, I'm just going to, uh, Crystal, Arctic, do you have a question that you want to ask before I take a few questions from the chat? I do. I'm gonna, okay, go ahead. Um, we know that that Sebastian was high-functioning, uh, had high-functioning autism. Uh, what would you say was strengths and weaknesses that he had? Because no two kids are the same, is why I'm asking. <laughs> that is, you, you are nowhere far from the truth on that, because that is so correct. Um, Sebastian is extremely high-functioning. He's, his weakness he does not have a sense of personal space. Um, they've always been working with him about like a three foot rule because he likes to be right up in your face. Hey, you know, whoa. He deals with some social and emotional dysregulation issues. Mm-hmm. Simply put, he, he his emotions or responses don't always appropriately match the situation. Um, and, and socially, he can be somewhat awkward interacting with others because he doesn't always match like. I don't know how to say it, right? Like it, someone will want to talk about one conversation, but if that's not the subject he's fixating on, he will just railroad over that and go right back to what he's thinking. Um, but at the same time. So, well, here, let, let me listen a little bit further. Um, for he's also, for the most part, a pretty happy kid and he loves being a helper and he likes. So is it safe to assume that they um, were, they had diagnosed his autism because of his social behaviors? Like maybe it wasn't prevalent until they realized like this isn't normal. And I'm asking that genuinely to those who have experience with autism here, because what I just heard mom describe was that like, and we keep hearing high functioning over and over, extremely high functioning. So it's like these social issues that maybe um, extremely high functioning yet. So basically a normal kid, but didn't quite read the room. Yeah. I think that's all kids in general be fan, but, um, and then the pull up issue, which I know comes later. It sounds like that's because of the situation he had since infanthood. The father said he's right. Well, being in special needs classes doesn't, make you autistic. It's very common, special issues, and being able to read social cues, exhibiting emotions. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it would make more sense that he was more recently diagnosed. 
with high functioning, thank you, Nina Bina, with high functioning ASD, a diagnosis can be later on in the childhood. So like they're hitting all their milestones. They're hitting all their milestones. And so that's possibly why it doesn't get diagnosed sooner. Is that what you're saying? That we watch for on every child, but then, you know, some of the social cues start to come out later. Sometimes even into adulthood. Okay. 30 and recently diagnosed. Thank you guys. That's why I'm asking because I am completely ignorant to the topic. Well, not to the topic, but to the needs. They can be in special needs classes and be high functioning. Thank you, Mimi. Okay. That makes sense. His main diagnosis is also related to intellectual and other issues. Okay. I'm going to have to dig more into that, into the his diagnosis of it all. Oh, wait, I'm getting. All right. You know, he likes animals and he's really smart. Um, he can play in a game of chess and he's beat grown men in chess. He actually likes reading occasionally, but only if it's what he wants to read. Um, so like Minecraft books. Um, he loves to read those, um, albeit his humor is a little different. He's funny. I, I prefer he's silly more than anything. How is he with strangers? Depends on the day, to be honest with you. He goes either he's never met a stranger. Okay, so what was sent to me is that the terminal chromosome 6Q27 deletion, which is what he was diagnosed with at birth, is a rare genomic is that how you say that condition that can result in intellectual disability facial dysmorphism and organ dysfunctions leading to the bladder issues management of these syndrome of this syndrome rests on the symptomatic and supportive therapy it can also cause behavioral and other issues as well so yeah i see now it's, it's a combination of the terminal chromosome 6Q27 deletion and high functioning autism. Thank you. All the way to dependent on his mood, he don't want nothing to do with anybody. So it's kind of difficult to answer that question because it varies depending on where he is in the moment. Okay. Normally, he, he's, he's there's times he's not afraid to talk to people, there's times he is afraid to talk to people. Um, adults, maybe not so much, but children, he, he has no problem approaching children and talking. Um, for the most part, for the most part, like I said, it, it it's it just depends on what mood and what day of the week you catch him. Okay, Artie, do you have a question you'd like to ask? I just wanted to know if maybe thinking back on it, is there anything you can think of that seemed off or out of the ordinary prior to him going missing that during the night before you noticed he was missing? I honestly didn't notice anything that was like, oh my god, that's weird. You know, I mean, we we had a really good day. You know, he wasn't in trouble at all. We went to bed on a good note. And I, I don't know if maybe he just wasn't saying something. But nothing. And I've gone over this so many times. I'm ill, but I didn't see or notice anything that was like red flag, you know? Okay. He didn't have any meltdowns or anything like that that, that seemed off? No, he was actually really well behaved that day. He was even killed for the most part all day. Uh, can I ask the question? Uh, sure. Was was that um, unusual for him uh, no. to be well behaved all day? Not necessarily. And Sebastian goes through phases. He's got streaks where he's great, and then it's like he goes through remission. Yeah, like he, he'll screw up and he'll, <laughs> he'll get in trouble, and then he'll be good again. And he'll screw up. I mean, he's he's like a typical kid, um, in a sense, but he just has autism, and I mean it. It's hit but, or miss. But like he'll be doing really, really great for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden it's like he'll flip a flip a switch. Sorry, and you know, and then we're you know we're working on you know going to the bathroom, and we're working on manners, and we're working on attitude, and then you know, and then we'll go through that phase, and then we'll go through you know, and he'll he'll flip the switch again, and he's you know doing really great. He just goes through. I understand you know, that completely. Like, trust me. <laughs> progress. Back. Okay, he just sounds like a normal teenager to me. There, sorry, but I wanted to like right. That's what I'm thinking. It sounds like typical teen behavior right now. Um, but is there anybody, I don't know if, uh, Tracy or Duchess or anyone else that's been following this or if Trev's still listening, 
Is there any creator out there that has, no, he did not have only autism. We've gone over a little bit of his other condition, but um, that has like covered this in depth with a, with the knowledge of autism behind it to kind of lay out some of this here that I could point people to. And then I, it made sense why you asked it, because I, I would want to know that as well. Like, was it a typical day? Like, you know, they said it was actually a good day. Like, does that mean he doesn't typically have good days? I would ask it like that as well. So thank you for asking them that for clarification. Backpedal progress, backpedal, you know, but. It... No, when I saw on social media, um, okay. some people were Thanks, talking Anna. about um, Seth had spoken on, um, I guess it was, um, maybe it was the Pascal show. That he recently spoke on and he was talking about how um, at the end of the school year Sebastian was supposed to come and live with him um, and can you tell us anything about that was is there anything specific to know about that I think a lot of people have been you know have been saying some very interesting things um, according to some posts that I saw um, apparently it's because Chris you are um, that he's scared of you <laughs> that he's scared of you and he's and that you're bullying him at home and i just I, I hate i don't i don't like to ask these questions but i feel I like prefer, this I actually, I because I, I just want you to um talk to us about why people are saying this and why people are also putting online that you have domestic violence charges and i just wanted you to talk to us about that if you whatever you feel like you can tell us um so we can try to um reel that in <laughs> no no it's, i'm okay to address every bit of this okay. so you mentioned sebastian's afraid of me well, that is a loaded question because somebody who has released some information out there from another show who um, I won't put his name out there uh, allowed somebody to say something. Now, mind you, you, when you have a teenage child or teenage children, all parents know this, your children are not going to like you because you're not there to be their best friend. You're there to be a parent. And Amen. as parents, you have rules they have to follow. If they don't, there's consequences. Um, Sebastian will say... One day he's upset and mad at me for something, and 20 minutes later will run up to me, throw his arms around me, cry, and say, I'm sorry, and I love you. Again, that sounds like a typical teenager and typical parent situation. And we just heard Seth say that exact same thing, that when he's upset with me, and I'll tell him, guess what? You're going to sit there on the couch and, until you're ready to talk. So it just sounds completely yeah. normal. Yeah, it sounds very much like it, it, they're not treating them the same. Uh -oh. Like what you were saying before, like had had that been said, I, I thought of that when uh, Seth was saying it. How do you heard Chris saying it instead of Seth? They would have jumped. Some Probably. of the, the people that are doing this. Mm -hmm. So you just got to be fair. Yeah. And I just... <sighs> So Gemini, you can't you suspect that the stepdad was overbearing? See, I don't get it. I don't. I I think he's strict. I'm I'm not seeing overbearing. I, I see a very strict individual, very organized and orderly individual, but I don't see overbearing. Yeah, he was I mean, rarely I, there, I, right? Yeah, I mean he's gone a lot working, so. Mm. Interesting. That's why I like seeing what everybody thinks, because everybody thinks something different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when you get in trouble, of course you don't like your parents. You know, he said the exact same things about his father, but that's when you set him down and said, look, bud, parents are yeah. parents, and we're going to have to do what we have to do. And unfortunately, you're not going to like it, but down the road, when you get older, and if you decide to have children, someday you're going to look back and say, man, they were right. So, I mean, people have their opinions. They have their thoughts and their assumptions. Thank you, Tracy, because honestly, I didn't know. Like she says, saying high functioning versus low functioning just means he was verbal, able to go to school and could use the bathroom. He likely did not self-harm. I honestly, like I said, I'm completely ignorant when it comes to the spectrum and I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I, I definitely, it's definitely a, a, it's definitely an arena that I need to educate myself more in. Um, but I just have no, no knowledge of it all. So thank you for that tidbit. And I think that a lot of people are forming opinions, not knowing that as well, being ignorant of the, of what the spectrum is like and how it's so vast. And that's fine. I've never once stopped a person from having them. 
that's why we are people. That's how we are. But knowing the facts are one thing. And then assumptions behind what you want to put out there is something totally different. Right. You know, you addressed domestic violence. Okay. There are some folks out there who have decided to go online and go pull some public records, which perfectly okay with. Domestic violence, if I had domestic violence in my background, I wouldn't have certain credentials that I have because you're not legally allowed to. Um, domestic violence, no. I've had a... So it sounds like he was high-ranking in the military, and he is absolutely correct, or at least high enough in the military, that he would not be able to hold the positions that he has if he were to have domestic violence on his background. Temporary protective order, and I had a no contact order placed against me in New Mexico with my ex-wife. Now, mind you, let me back up and I'll play the whole story for you. Me and my ex-wife, we actually lived no in Tennessee for a little bit. We had a daughter, and at the time, my daughter was only maybe six weeks old. An event took place while I was holding my daughter, and when that took place, I filed for an immediate protection order against her. We went to court. The court made their decisions. I gave my daughter back to her mother. And when she received her, she jumped in the truck and flew right back to New Mexico, got to New Mexico. Within two days of being there, she turned around and filed the exact same thing against me in New Mexico. Mm. So everything that people are reading, it's on a court document. But what you don't read is the um, all the things that are happening in the court. You're not reading the transcript. So unfortunately, you don't know the full story. But right. if people want to ask, I'm okay to tell you. You know, um, yes, I still have a current custody case going on in New Mexico. Okay, so he's getting into this stuff, which is, it is important. Um, but I wanted to see it word so freaking, okay, okay, he admits to hitting him with a belt. Sorry, I think hitting an autistic and disabled child with a belt is as abuse. And you're allowed to think that, so I don't want anybody attacking So King for their opinion. Um, I haven't heard him say it yet. So I know I know it's coming up in one of these interviews. So I haven't made my have yeah, I don't have my opinion on that yet. But I have I know spanking is very controversial. So, um, like I said, I just don't have a thought on it yet. That actually has absolutely zero bearing on this case with Sebastian. Um, I do ask people to refrain from bringing that up because it has no bearing. And all you're going to do is put assumptions, and you're going to allow people to have. Uh, there's speculations and, and bring out more false information and it what people don't understand is every time somebody puts something out there or they call into the law enforcement agency and says the stepfather did it you need to check the stepfather well now you've just pulled a body away from the investigation because they are mandated to deal with that right and i have told everybody from the very beginning the tbi put a news link out and in there it does state that all three parents have extremely been cooperative and constantly or continuously working with law enforcement and they have, there's absolutely nothing to show that we are responsible, foul play, any of that nature. People have asked about interrogations and polygraphs. All this stuff has been done. All of it has yeah, been done. And I will say him saying that it's not just coming from him. We heard Seth say it in the, print, the interview prior. So uh, it's coming from all parents saying that they've, they were thoroughly investigated. And prob like I said, they probably still are being investigated. And they probably will be continued to be investigated until Sebastian is found. That was one of the questions that I had up next was, have you both taken a polygraph test? The results are passed. Chris, can I ask something? Because I know that people was going to ask it afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at the event that happened, was that toward you or by you? It was toward me. Okay. So, so to give you, a, I'll go ahead and paint that story very crystal clear. Um, I was holding my daughter in my left arm. Okay, mind you, she was a little baby. She was up against my chest, cuddled up next to my cheek and my shoulder. Um, my ex-wife accused me of having an affair with a coworker um, who was not much into men. I'll let you go that direction wherever you want to go. Just wasn't into men. Um, um, he would have been demoted if he would have got it um, after the fact. He would have been demoted. And that coworker was my boss at the time. And she didn't like, and I was like, you're kidding me, right? And I showed it to her. She And she's she's very hot-headed. She didn't like the answer. Swore up now I was. And she connected and slapped me across the left-hand side of my face where I was holding my daughter. If you can do that while a man is holding a child, or a woman is holding a child for that matter, if you can slap that person while they're holding that child, that says something about you. 
Yeah. And I don't have, I'm not going to be in that situation. I wouldn't expect any person to be in a situation of that. So I had to do what I had to do based on being a parent, which was best for my child. Right. I just knew that in the future that people would be online saying there was an incident and nobody asked what the incident was. Um, you and said sure, the results. I'm, I'm sure they're the going to spin are, it. Yeah, the results of the. All right. I, I got to admit, I kind of tuned out there for a second reading chat. Let me hear his story again because I know it's going to come out. Boss at the time. And she, um, my ex-wife accused me of having an affair with a co-worker. Okay. Accused um, of an affair. Who was not much into men i'll let you go that direction wherever you want to go just wasn't into men um and that co-worker was my boss at the time mm. and she didn't like and i was like you're kidding me right and i showed it to her she and she's she's very hot-headed she didn't like the answer swore up and down i was and she connected and slapped me across the left hand side of my face where i was holding my daughter if you um, can do that while a man is holding a child or a woman is holding a child for that matter, if you can slap that person while they're holding that child, that says uh, something about you. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have, I'm not going to be in that situation. I wouldn't expect any person to be in a situation of that. So I had to do what I had to do based on being a parent, which was best for my child. Right. Oh. I just knew that in the future that people would be online saying there was an incident and nobody asked what the incident was. Um, you and said I'm sure, the results. I'm, I'm sure they're the going to spin it. Yeah. The results of the polygraph was that you passed. Is that both of you passed or can you say? Uh, yes. Okay. I think that, was my, that passed, was my question probably. that was up next was, um, so you've both taken a polygraph test. That was um, some of the questions. I see a couple of people asking that specifically, did you take a polygraph test specifically? Chloe um, and Mo wanted to know specifically, could you elaborate? Did you take one and also pass? I've got a question and a lot of people have been asking, Chris, is there any reason why you don't want Sebastian around your daughter? So uh, I'm going to make this real cr crystal clear for everybody. There are some things that can be just can be spoke of and there's some things that will not be spoke of and personal issues inside my family are strictly that they have nothing no bearing on this investigation um the cops are well aware of everything mm -hmm. involving specifics and that's quite honestly i know this is gonna sound snarky and rude but it's really nobody's business as to that because it has no bearing on this case uh -uh. understood Okay. Um, so and for the record, I, just, I will say this. All three parents have an agreement, and we all understand this. That can be got said. It. Got it. I hate, I, I, I love his answer. I love his answer because he, he, it sounds like he's protecting both children in this situation by keeping this, um, by keeping, you know, whatever situation it is, why Sebastian cannot be around his daughter out there. We don't know if he's protecting Sebastian. We don't know if he's protecting his daughter. It doesn't matter. He's protecting a minor. Whatever the reasoning is, all three parents are in agreement on it. And all, none of those individuals owe us shit, you guys. They don't owe us anything. They don't owe us an explanation for it. The bad side of that, the other side of the sword that sharp is that that has now left all that room for speculation. Yeah, and I hate that for him. I hate it. Well, every time we've seen this happen over and over with anything that's happened in the past or anything that's private, in a parent or someone talk, anyone speaking says, mm -hmm. "Well, it's not a. I mean, it's not an issue. I will just put it out there." you know, whatever. I don't, I don't mind answering that question. It turns into all kinds of crazy crap and crazy speculation. Um, and if you don't, they just make up whatever they want. They do. They make it up. And let me correct this cray cray 420. Cops can lie in an interrogation. They cannot lie outside of that. In fact, they could be fined for it, heavily fined for it if it's pertaining to a case. Um, people throwing out that cops can lie. They can lie during an interrogation. Absolutely. But that's, oh, that's true. I didn't know that. So yes, they can and they can lie during an interrogation of a suspect, but they can't lie outside of that. All right. Okay. So they can't they do like an, a, an interview or something. 
they can't lie and tell and, a lie they're not supposed to i mean they have to uphold their oath and there's there's a lot of things in there so like no they can't just go out and speak to media and tell a flat out lie oh. they're not supposed to that makes me think a little differently about some Ronnie Lawson stuff then. Yeah. Right. But, but seriously, because I was thinking that he, it was to. okay for him yep. to lie publicly like that. Okay. No. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. And someone wanted to ask, Angela said, I would like for Chris to clarify what he meant when he said he hasn't seen Sebastian since early February. Are you able to clarify? And if you're not, just state that. So I cannot give certain details with this investigation, and that's kind of one of those things. Okay. Um, I wish I could eventually down the road. I'm sure that that will allow to come out. Okay. But as it they can say you passed the test, they can say you're not getting arrested, they can say all that during an interrogation. Not that side of an interrogation. The Supreme well. Court. The Supreme uh -huh. Court determined that during an interrogation, they can do whatever they need to do within the confines of the law, of course, but they can say to you whatever they need to say to you if they think that it's going to help them get to the truth. However, outside of that interrogation room, they cannot lie to you. Fact check me on it. Yeah, so um, like with, that means that if they say somebody passed a polygraph test, they oh, passed man. it. Because they can't lie. Now he could be lying to us. Chris could be lying to us about that. But yeah, no, I was, I was thinking of uh, Lawson mm -hmm. again. Of course, yeah. uh, he told us that the parents passed polygraph tests. So then that has to be true, mm -hmm. or he's breaking the law. Yep. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. It stands right now. The answer that I've given is early February. It was the last time that I saw Sebastian. Um, and no, February. I was not home when all of this took place. I actually got back to Nashville. And I believe it was it was later in the afternoon. But uh, I was on the phone with the police for the majority of that day until I physically. So he actually got, it sounds like he got there after um, Seth did. Because of Seth shot right there and got there within an hour chris got later there, yeah, later that if afternoon. i'm not mistaken in another interview he says he got there at like one ish i think okay okay good to know physically got here and a question that i've seen ask uh so i think i wrote it down to ask you uh why was the sheriff's office called and not 911? so i don't li our house is not designated for city limits which jurisdictions for police are inside city limits the sheriff's department is what governs our area because we're outside of that so if you call 911 and you're outside of those areas it goes to a central point but then they will turn around and ask your location and then they redirect you to another dispatcher if you know who the dispatcher who your law enforcement agency is that governs your area i just call them straight there's no point in wasting time going from one to another to get to what I need when I know exactly who to call. And you guys were on a three-way call because you yes. were not, you were, you were coming from out of town. Is that correct? Uh, this, we were on a three-way call. Um, yeah, that law enforcement was called on a three-way call. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, Carrie Dean wants to ask you if Sebastian could have been sneaking out prior without y'all knowing. I, I'm going to, I would like to say no. Okay. Um, and the reason why I say that that is not Sebastian. He he's, he's not a child that just goes outside any, at any point in time without telling somebody something. If somehow that um, zero knowledge. Yeah. If it had happened, we don't know about it. Um, but our neighborhood is a very small subdivision. It's not, it's not huge. Uh, and everybody here looks out for everybody. We all watch to make sure. So we now know that he works in Memphis. So I just looked it up for you, Shambles. It's over three hour drive from town to town. I don't know exact addresses, but or, yeah, three hours and 20 minutes. So 
probably around, you know, you got to stop and pee. I, 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 you, you could drive it straight through, obviously, in an emergency like that, but... Uh, or, but you got to stop and get gas, 227 miles. So I would say probably three and a half to four hour drive for sure. sure. Everything's kosher in the neighborhood and nobody has reported anything uh, of that nature. Okay. Uh, Crazy Linda asked, um, were there any weapons in either homes? And if so, were they all accounted for by law enforcement? Yes. Okay. And um, Wait, I miss that. What's your... uh, Crazy Linda asked, um, were there any weapons in either homes? And if so, were they all accounted for by law enforcement? Yes. Okay. Good. And um, weapons accounted for. Do you all have camera footage in your home? I've heard people saying that too. Uh, that, is, that is some information that we cannot divulge at this time due to the ongoing investigation. Good. Thank you. I wish did we could. Sebastian, can. <laughs> did Sebastian ha have a key to the house? And if he did, did he take that key with him? That is another part of an investigation that's ongoing that we cannot answer. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask the question I've seen? Whose ideal was it for Sebastian to move in with his file dad after school was out? All three parents. And another thing that I've seen, and I mean, I understand if y'all can't answer, but was there also a restraining order on the biological dad? That was posted in a Facebook group yes. um, that someone sent to me. I think, no, that was something else. Let me find it. Someone sent it was, that to me. It was actually underneath uh, JLR's video. It wasn't in the Facebook group. Okay, so here's here's what I will openly say about that. Oh, there uh, it is. That's what somebody posted in the comments. So what I will say on that is this. What is it? I can't. People read go it through anymore. divorces. Okay, so I see. I also see a lot of comments like, "Y'all, I mean it when I say everybody's entitled to have their opinion, and as long as they're not being jerks about it, and their opinion's different than yours, then it's okay. It's absolutely okay." Uh, JLR, while you're busy researching the stepdad, please use as much due diligence and effort to look into biological dad. Mom filed DV charges and restraining orders on him in San Diego in August 2016, six months after she filed for divorce. He's only been a police officer since February 23 in Tennessee. But with, prior to that, he worked at several places in the security industry. Man, they just get into parents so hardcore. And I understand why they do, but like, oh. We're not going to be better than law enforcement at this, when, especially when it comes to missing people and individuals. And, and when you have so many checks and balances, it's not just like one local law enforcement. You also have the TBI over it and a few other supervising, uh, like FBI, it's the FBI supervising. Right. You can turn your light off, Jones, and I see you back there dancing, acting a fool. <laughs> you won't, I'll add you like that. She going nuts <laughs> back here. <laughs> I keep yeeting myself. I was actually coming to unmute to say, like, this just seems like a bunch of YouTubers pitching a fit that stepdad is uh, creating boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's and exactly he, what it, this is. It's, it's smart. He's creating boundaries for his family because you got so a lot of people smart. digging into stuff. And I think it's very smart of him to create mm. those boundaries and hopefully stick to them. You know, he's not he's not falling for their crap. He's yeah. not. Have you have you noticed any like major consistencies? I mean, they actually all seem to be in agreement on things, like as far as like what happened or what the situation is and all that kind of stuff. Have you noticed some big things yet? That's the perplexing thing. Perplex. No, I haven't, Jenny. I haven't noticed anything big. But is that there was a camera, but it's so late at night that, or well, they are assuming it was so late at night that he went missing sometime after midnight. But um, there, there's a video I'll show y'all later where people think there's two flashlights, but I, I don't know. I can't see anything in that video, so I don't know. And as far as I know, law enforcement has said that there's no um, evidentiary value in that video, but I will show it in a in a little bit so 
No, I'm not seeing any red flags, but we're getting along. I hear it gets a lot messier the farther we go. Not this interview per se, but one's coming up. And it is, it is, it is not the best of times. So I was not pervy to that kind of information prior to my relationship with my wife. That was that if anything happened that happened prior to my knowledge. So I cannot and give you an answer of that. But what I can say is if it is out there, it could be a public knowledge. It could be a public record, but I don't have any knowledge of it. Okay. That's what I needed to ask on that one. Okay, going back over here to my questions. Guys, please, oh, I appreciate your patience, and they are sending me the questions. So um, I see that you guys are still posting more questions, and I'm getting to them as fast as I can. Um, so thank you guys for being patient. Um, I do have four or five more um, messages that just popped up that said um, they want to know that you definitely took a polygraph and passed because it got cut off by a different question, and you they feel like you did not answer that. So I'm just asking one more time. This is the last time, guys, I'm going to revisit this question. Okay. For the record. Mo, he said he passed it, according to Amy. Well, hold on. Somebody asked the question, was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes. I didn't specify who or when. But what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself my wife and the biological father took one when law enforcement agency has come out and told everybody even in the tbi news link if you guys hadn't read that please go out and read that that's got a lot of great information in it especially it's probably the most up-to-date information but could you find that for us jenny but he did say earlier we both took a polygraph and passed i will say that but so i can kind of see where some people get some issues with this too but um, I would be interested in seeing that TBI news link. So here is, this comes straight from Child Crime Prevention and Safety Center. Every 40 seconds, a child goes missing or is abducted in the United States. Family abduction. Family kidnappings make up of half of all reported abductions in the United States. Family abduction is typically committed by parents and it involves a significantly higher proportion of female perpetrators when compared to other kidnapping offenses. Children under the age of six are most frequently targeted for family abductions, and these often occur in the midst of bitter divorce or child custody battles between parents. Family abduction poses unique issues for law enforcement as the child may be unwilling to leave his or her abductor and other, other family members may be involved in concealing and aiding the abducted, abducting parent. Non-family abductions include kidnappings committed by acquaintances and strangers. Acquaintance abductions make up to 27% of all child abductions and is committed by a disproportionately high number of juvenile offenders. Acquaintance abductions also have the highest number of female and teenage victims and is often associated with other crimes such as sexual and physical assault. Abductions committed by strangers typically occur in outdoor locations. Stranger abduction is most likely to involve a firearm when compared to the other types of abduction and is associated with sexual assault in female victims and robbery in male victims. Runaway. Children who run away and become homeless is a serious and pervasive issue. One in seven children between the ages of 10 and 18 will run away from home, and young people between the ages of 12 and 17 are at a greater risk to become homeless than adults. 75% of runaways are female, and between 6 and 11% of homeless girls are pregnant. Between 20 and 40% of young people who run away from home identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community. Half of all runaways reported, report escaping physical abuse in the home, while 38% escape emotional abuse and 17% acknowledge being subject to sexual abuse by a family or household member. Children who run away from home face greater risk of anxiety, depression, suicide, poor health, and low self-esteem, and are more likely to be forced into prostitution, drug sales, and other illegal activities. 
in uh, this is under physically and mentally disabled children. In many cases, a child who is missing or has been abducted may have physical or mental disabilities, which can make it more difficult to find and return the child. When a child is developmentally disabled, he or she may have difficulty communicating with others about their needs, identity, or home address. This can place the child in a greater degree of danger. These children are especially susceptible to being abducted and it may be harder to return them to their parents when they are lost. Physical disabilities can also make it more difficult for missing children to be discovered and returned and provide necessary medical care and treatment. Law enforcement agencies receive special training in handling cases involving missing or abducted children who have mental or physical disabilities. So, to answer your question, a large portion, they make up over, make up half of all reported our family abductions, so. If you put that link back here, I'll share it too. Thank you. Go back over here to touches. But they will even tell you. At this point in time, there is no, they have no reason to speculate foul play, anything on the parents. Everybody's been extremely cooperative of anything and everything they've asked us. Okay. And Bobby, why did that happen? Because it's public, it's a public post. And these are questions that people are asking. And that is why it's up there. So um, before we go any further, we'll go back. And this is um, this is another, I have had many questions about this, about supposedly Sebastian's grandmother spoke out last night. And um, he said, uh, Trev apparently quoted her um, uh, from some comments on a YouTube chat. Um, is there anything that that you want to say about this particular comment? Because I have been messaged multiple times about this. Um. Oh, see, now I got these out of order because, and it's hard to tell with YouTube videos because YouTube videos, they post the day. So like if she started it before midnight and it didn't post until the next day, then it'll show the next day's timestamp. So it's good to know that. So the next one that we're going to play, I think is Terry Lynn's and it happened before this panel. So my bad on that. But Trev's Times Post said, Sebastian's grandmother, Seth's mother, spoke out last night. I will quote her below. The comments did not come on a YouTube chat, but I did verify with another family member that it was her. Oh, so maybe I don't have another word. Either way, Robin Rogers stated, I absolutely believe there is foul play. And let me just say that Chris couldn't charm, harm me, charm me. He became verbally abusive towards me in a split second. Okay, Chris couldn't charm me. He became verbally abusive towards me in a split second. She also said he was afraid of his stepdad. As of today, nobody has been named a suspect, and there has been cooperation from all parents. If you want to address it, you don't. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. I just I, wanted to ask I, you. I, I will address it. I have, like I said, I, if somebody's refusing to address something that shows suspicion, I have no problems to address this. The grandmother, which is Seth, at the Robin is the name. She's Seth's biological father's mom. She made her statement on whatever YouTube channel. That's fine. Um, Thank you, Trev. What I can say on that is real simple. Like I said earlier in, the, in this podcast, kids are going to say things. They're going to get upset because you're a parent and they don't like your answers. Um, Sebastian has said, like I said before, the same thing about his biological father. But when you sit your kids down and you explain to them that being a parent, you have to do things that they don't like, you know, unfortunately, it is what it is. We're not, as parents, everybody knows we're not to be our child's best friends. We're there to be parents. As a parent, your job in life is to make sure your offspring grow up to be better than we ever have been or get things better than we ever could get. Mm -hmm. And that's your legacy. That's our job. And kids don't like it. They're not going to understand because they're still young their minds are being molded but eventually they're going to grow up and when they have their own kids they're going to look back and go man our parents were right because everybody that's an adult that has kids right now not one person can say no he's wrong because you know you've all done it we still do it and that's just part of it right and thank you trev for being here i thought this was a very important you know when i saw this it's you know, it, it really kind of shocked me. And I felt like, you know, while you're willing, you know, to answer questions, um, I thought it was an important question to ask. Um, 
I agree. It is an important question to ask, and we got to take these comments into consideration from family members and whatnot. But we do have to remember that we're dealing with a split family. Like I said earlier, there's going to be hurt feelings, and I don't think it's fair for us to amp that up as content creators. I'm not saying Duchess was doing that there. I'm glad she asked it. Well, I, uh, it's weird because right? that that's someone he wouldn't have a lot of contact with, right? Probably not. I, I wouldn't assume so. I don't know how many um, current husbands have contact with their ex, ex, the ex their wife's ex-mother-in-law. Ex yeah, so I would think not. Um, and Clancy says, Gray Hughes was wondering if law enforcement had considered doing the lighter overlay with that dark, dark CCT film because it's unusable the way it's presented. Um, hope maybe someone who's talking to the family could get in contact with those neighbors that had the footage and get a daytime pick from that exact from that camera. A daytime pick from that camera would be the best. Yeah, maybe they could do that. That'd be super cool. Or let law enforcement know of that. Trev said, "She said Chris verbally abused her, and that's very different than parenting." Um, I, I just wanted to ask mm -hmm. because people have a lot of questions. And so that was, um, I just wanted to ask you and it was, you know, no shade to Trev time. He just was posting that that's what happened in the chat and he did verify that it was her. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to bring it well, straight to you. The best way well, to, clarify to, clear, to, ask. to clear up her statement about me being verbally abusive to her. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately she's not going to tell you the full story. But there's always remember three sides to the truth hers mine and the truth in itself so you can put figure it out me and the grandmother had a conversation and this all goes stems back to um, an incident that a family member did that as the parents we had consulted with law enforcement about something they recommended not doing it lo and behold something happened and something was done against what we decided uh, i reached out to the mom and asked for her help during that conversation, some accusations got flung uh, in my direction and toward my wife, which the mother or the grandmother actually doesn't have the whole story. She has never once sat down with me, my wife, her son, and gotten the full truth on everything. She's only heard one side of the story. And I can promise you, I've got text messages, I got, and I'm not afraid to show them. I'm not afraid to screenshot them and let the public see it. Now, I will mm -hmm. say, unfortunately, none of this has to do with the investigation of our son. But yes, we had a heated discussion. Yes, I sent her an apology for the heated discussion. And I've never received anything back from the grandmother, which I have always left that door open. In fact, the day when they got into town, I invited them to my house and welcomed them in. They stayed for a couple hours and they left. I helped them guide them to the direction where they were putting their RV and have always made it abundantly clear that Regardless, people are going to have their disputes. Doors always open. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Cluminati has asked this several times in chat, so I want to go ahead and address that. Where can locals be looking for Sebastian? Um, Cluminati is local to your area, and um, she would like to know where you would like for people to be looking for Sebastian so they can be looking there. Is there any areas that you and Katie want to have people that are out there searching uh, where you want them to be hanging flyers? What can you tell us about that? Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I it, for me to give you a designated area would suspect that we think he's in, in an area. Well, we don't know. So anywhere and everywhere, people be very vigilant. Please be vigilant. You'd be surprised at how complacent we as society get when we're not focused on things. We're so driven on our day-to-day -day functions that we forget about things that are going on around us. We're right. all guilty, myself included. You know, anywhere and everywhere you can look. If there's if there's not a flyer and you can print one off and post it up where you don't see a flyer, please do. We, I'm speaking for all three parents and the, all the families. We would greatly appreciate that. We send prayers, our thoughts, and our love out to everyone. I promise you, if there was a way we could make it felt and we could show it, we would. We appreciate that, and we're happy. We're happy to help. See, and I agree with you, Gavel. She says that that was such a smart answer. He gave the grandmother feels how she feels and is upset. Her opinion doesn't mean that is how things actually occur to the intent, and he's not discrediting her feelings either. I think that people are lost in his tone. 
and the way he speaks i think that's a big part of the issue and i i can tell he's on the defense 110 percent so it makes sense Nope. in any way that we can to find Sebastian. Ginger Snaps has a question. Can any of Sebastian's school friends drive? Um, so his, okay. So oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think there's a misconception about what he calls friends. He's in, he's not in normal classes. He's in uh, like what they call it, why we try a program. So any kids with IEPs and et cetera, things of that nature are put into this class where they have three or four teachers or assistants in the room with a teacher at one given time. And while that goes on, there's not many kids in the class. So if Sebastian says they're a friend and they talk to him, he considers them a friend. Okay. But he doesn't he doesn't have friends like most kids that would go and, hey, I'm going over to Johnny and Susie's house to hang out because of his so his social awkwardness. It's very difficult for him to make friends. And he's actually asked for Christmas. You know, we asked, what do you want for, for Christmas? He's, I just want friends. Right. That's, I mean, we're at that level, but no, unfortunately, he does not associate with kids that can drive. Um, okay. So I wish, <laughs> I wish he had a lot of friends, but I think after this and when he comes home, this boy's going to have more friends than he knows what to do. <laughs> oh, okay. And Doodlebug. Be still my heart after this and when he comes home. And I hope that they keep holding on to that hope and not just him. He's just the one saying it now. That's what I have heard from all three of the these parents is that they are holding out hope that Sebastian is coming home. And just to say that, you know, he's going to have more friends than he knows what to do with. I love that. Bart says, I wonder if Sebastian knows how to connect his switch to Wi-Fi. Like, had he ever done that before? No, ma'am. He does not have the ability. We One, we have the Wi-Fi locked down, so you have to request to join it, and then that request has to be approved by us. Uh, but his switch actually has parental controls on it set forth by his mom. Okay. And uh, Vet Girl, RWB. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, does he have the same rules at his dad's house? Uh, no, ma'am. I don't believe so. Um, we... We respect like what he does at his dad's house is under his dad's roof. Um, we do stay in communications as far as like his behavior. Hey, this is what's going on. This is the punishment he's received. Uh, it's up to you if you want to continue with that at your house. See, I, I think that um, so, so fucking, so fucking crazy. I still want to say it, the cuss word, but um, I think it's because they're holding, they, in their minds, there's not, there's not a pos that possibility is not there in their minds. In their minds, he's out there, and they're they're gonna find him, and they're gonna bring him home alive, and that's where they are with it. And there's also this thing that happens on social media where people are like, "You can't smile and laugh when you're going through something traumatic," and that's that's not the case. I saw people do that to Brandy Neal during, when Michael went missing um, in the very beginning, and and throughout, and that's just not the case. Um, we can't dictate our emotions. If we find something funny, we might chuckle at it. Um, it's okay to smile and laugh at things too, even when we're in the most traumatic of situations. And everybody responds to situations differently as well. And there are there are some people who, you know, through an extremely traumatic experience, might not at all. They might be completely stoic and retreat into themselves. And others will be like, "Oh, that's proof of this, this, and this." And Unfortunately, and you have, you know, all these behavior analysis and stuff, and I just don't think it's fair to do that because we're not cookie cutter people. And this isn't me ranting it so fucking crazy. This is just my little rant for the day. We're not cookie cutter people. We we don't all exhibit and express the same way. So it doesn't mean this or that. It doesn't always mean this or that. This is Jenny, not Dutchy. I'll talk like this. <laughs> no difference. You guys uh, do sound a lot alike. People, people forget too that you have to have that baseline that Dee's talked about mm -hmm. way earlier in this. Yeah. And what she's alluding to here. If you don't know what a person is like normally, there's mm -hmm. no possible way that you can uh, say, oh, they're doing this. They blinked and they, you know, are looking to this direction. So they're lying or you, you can't do that. And I wish people would stop doing that. 
Yeah, it's, it's just it's not, not fair. fair to do it. Um, I hope none of us are ever in this situation being scrutinized like this for breathing. I, I bet you, based on what I've witnessed so far, I bet you all three of them would would trade places in a second to have Sebastian home. Would be oh god, yeah, wherever he is, so he could be home. Absolutely. I might not like their tactics or tones or this or that about them, but. I don't know. The vibe I'm just getting off of them is they want their son home. Vice versa. It, it's like I said, there's three of us and we are extremely respectful toward one another when it comes to Sebastian. It, you'd be surprised. It's not like it's a, a tug of war game. It's very, very cooperative among all three parents. Okay. Um, Did that girl... Sebastian want to live with his dad? Say again, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, did Miss Sebastian excited about living with his biological dad <laughs> well that depends on what day you ask him to be honest with you there's days he was and days he wasn't um i mean like i said when a kid gets in trouble i don't want you know i don't like you well i'm sorry you know and then an hour later he like nothing happened so it like i said it, it's up or down okay and i'm saying like this in chat, so i'm just going to go ahead and ask is there a particular reason that you laugh before you answer a question <laughs> I've got my thoughts on it, but I think it would be better if you just took um, That's fine. There are some questions that when people ask, I have heard these questions so many times. Um, as much as people are on social media and they read the responses, I still get the same questions. So it, it's tiresome, but you know what? I told everybody I would answer the questions. So, yeah, in a way, it's kind of funny that I keep getting the same mm -hmm. questions over and over and over. But like I've told everybody, I respect them. I will answer them. But trust me, by any means, is this fun? No. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy at all. Artie, do you have a question before I read Vet Girls? Nick? Shay, that's so true, too. Sometimes we laugh and smile just so we can feel fucking normal in that traumatic experience. That's, that's one I completely forgot about, but you're so right. When you're going through it, sometimes even just for a split second, it makes you feel normal because inside you don't feel normal at all. Next question. I think he's muted. <laughs> okay. Um, go Bulldogs. Katie is, a, is there with Chris, but if she wants to speak, she will speak. But yeah, she you. is. Um, vet girl, I, do did we, oh, I think we have a delay, Crystal. Sorry. Because it's okay. <laughs> I think we let do. Me, let me ask this question real How quick. How many did Sebastian have? Say it one more time. How many pairs of shoes did Sebastian have? Oh, uh, well. I'm not going to do how many shoes he has, but I will say that all of the shoes he has are accounted for. Did y'all did y'all catch mom? And I didn't quite hear a little her. bit for me. Did you hear? Okay. She said that she would not divulge how many pairs of shoes he has, but law enforcement and has accounted for every pair of shoes. I have accounted for all the mm -hmm. shoes. Okay. Um, can Vet Girl says, can you ask what Sebastian's normal school night routine is? Like some kids like to have their shower or a favorite blanket, their favorite pajamas, please and thanks. Sure. Sebastian comes home, gets off the school bus, comes in the house, um, does his chores, completes his homework, um, eats dinner. Uh, that time kind of varies. I don't have a set time on that. Bedtime, we normally have it right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Sebastian gets a shower most of the time before he goes to bed, um, around 7 o'clock-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, he's, he's in the bed by 9 o'clock. And Sebastian didn't have anyone that lived in the area that he hung out with at all that lives near you. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Alicia P., for that question. And then Allen Tank says, um, what's Sebastian like with people outside the family that he doesn't know? Is he shy with strangers? Is he outgoing? So uh, that, that question you asked earlier in the podcast, it depends. It Each day it kind of varies. Um, he can be shy. He can be talkative. Uh, with most kids, he don't hold back when it comes to kids. He is like, you know, he's but he's got a up close and in your face kind of thing. 
that he's got to work on. So it kind of makes it difficult. Uh, with adults, it depends. Uh, there are some days he doesn't even want to talk to family members. And some days he may. Um, it just kind of depends. Okay. And hang on one second. I'm just getting to the next one. Artie, did you or Crystal have a question that you wanted to ask? No, I just, I, I really want to make sure that the audience has a chance to get all their questions in. Yeah, I'm going through each one of them right now. Um, some of them have already been asked, so I'm not asking those. Um, let's see. Uh, Alan Tank says, does Katie look in on him if she gets up to use the bathroom or anything in the night usually? Not normally. I've never really had a whole reason to. I mean, now that he's older, at least. Um he gets up in the middle of the night and he comes in and gets snacks and, you know, and uh, the dogs don't even bark at him because he shushes them and they know him. But um, no, I've never since he's gotten older. I don't really have a reason to like peek in on him and wake him up. And does he get up and down normally throughout the night on a regular basis? True Crime Cafe with Dago ask. Um, it Honestly, yeah. he gets up and down at different times, different nights. I mean, not always. Um, I mean, he goes in the kitchen and he'll sneak snacks and sweets and things he knows he's not supposed to be having, like typically kids do. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, that may be about it. And then he goes right back to his bedroom. Okay. Uh, Bobby James asks, can Chris comment on why you are threatening lawyers about the bio dad's GoFundMe? So the conversation of that is not threatening mm. the bio father with attorneys. That conversation that flew out between me, the father was in the house, his sister was on the phone. We asked them to take that down. That goes back to one of the questions as far as one of the things we all agreed not to do, mm -hmm. because even with law enforcement, it says it could betray a bad look. So we all agreed not to do it. She did it anyways. And then we asked her politely to take it down first time. She got nasty with us on the phone. And then I retaliated and I told her, I said, if this causes harm to our son, you can bet I will call an attorney. Is that, okay. hang on, let me get over Thank here. You for is that the attorney reference everyone was talking about where he was threatening a attorney? Because to me, it just sounds like that he's trying, he's trying to listen to and follow direct orders from law enforcement. Like if you do that, it, it could make y'all look bad, blah, blah, blah. So he's just not wanting to harm, harm Sebastian's case. So I don't know if there was another situation of threatening to sue or if that's the only one fine uh that let's see um was sebastian playing with one of his devices online um or on his switch before he went to bed annabelle roma asked none of his devices are connected to online okay all right and kiko asked was he having trouble at school with anyone or was he being bullied that you're aware of? Not that we know of. The administrators okay. that work with him are honestly pretty great. And they try to pay attention and be aware, not only for Sebastian, but all of those kids. So they do their best to to make sure that everyone's treating them respectfully and vice versa. Not bullied that they know of. Not to say that, you know, kids are kids. But for the most part, they feel pretty confident that they, they do a pretty good job at taking care of the kids. Okay. And Ginger Snaps wants to know, how long did it take him to take out the trash? Could he have met someone when he was taken out the trash? Only a couple minutes. Our driveway is not very long. I think our driveway might be 50 feet, maybe 75 feet long, and that's from front to back. Okay, and guys, we're, we're approaching midnight, so I'm not going to be able to take very many more questions because I still have a few that I need to get to get to. Um, so I may not be able to get to all of your questions, but the ones that I've already been submitted from this point on, I'm going to try to to get to. I see um, there's a, a lot of questions that we've already answered. So um, Chris had torn this uh, device has been took. Say again, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Uh, the devices in the home, have they all been uh, looked at by law enforcement? Yes, ma'am, they have. Uh, and I believe um, if they go and look in that TBI news link uh, that I was talking about, uh, it may be listed as uh, Amber Amber Alert updates or something of that nature. There's a section in that news article that does talk about technology 
and that should be able to answer those questions. But I'm going to pull that up yesterday after this. has been thoroughly looked at in our house as well as the father's house. Excuse me. Okay, and where's Summer One Eight Hundred TBI Find ask? Did Sebastian have bad meltdowns with any anger? Um, with the meltdowns that they've had, that he had had recently, being this age now. Um, I mean, I don't know what you call a bad meltdown. I mean, what, is it, was he a violent kid? No. Um, no. Did he cry? Did he have a tantrum tantrum? Yes. Okay. And he did take his eyeglasses with him. They were not found, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. And True That's Crime new. Cafe with Dago said, with all due respect, was he anxious one way or the other to be moving in with his bio dad? Like I said before, yes. I mean, there's he was ups and downs about it. There was days he was happy, days he's not. Um, one of the things I can, I'll, I'll tell you right now that he doesn't like, his dad's a smoker. You know, he doesn't like that his dad smokes. So, I mean, that's, he's like, no, I don't want to go because my dad smokes. But after you talk with him, you know, that's not a valid reason not to be moving in with his father. Uh, someone asked Happy Hemp Creations, how do you redirect any meltdowns that he has? Depends on who he's with. Um, every parent handles him very much differently. Um, Sometimes you can just give him a, a pressure hug with light squeezing and talk to him calmly and calm him down. Mm -hmm. And other times you can send him, tell him to go to his room because that's his space and tell him to take five. I mean, there's times where me and him go outside and we'll have a discussion. Like, tell me what's on your mind, dude. I'll give you free reign. Talk to me. Let it out. I don't care what it is. Just say it. If that's what helps you, say it. Because he doesn't want to say a curse in front of mama. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> that's one thing he's been good about. I was like, look, don't ever do it in front of your mama. That's all I'm asking. But if you and I go out somewhere and you want to do it, I'll give you the no no consequences i'll give you some time to do your thing and he does it he'll cry he'll get all of his 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 thoughts and his feelings out and he'll cry and then he'll give me a big old hug and say i'm sorry and i love you we hug it out i'm like it's all right buddy trust me everybody's got to have an outlet what we tell him like if you need to yell and scream or be angry just say i need a minute to do that and then you know whatever you say during that time frame you don't get in trouble for it and if you got a curse you got a curse but only when you're doing the free time that way it sets a limitation so that he's not just you know free balling all the time with curse words when uh when he's with his father that i know of that we've all discussed um they'll go fishing they like to do a lot of fishing and uh that's where he has his moments with his dad and they have their discussions so i mean like i said it, it varies with each parent Okay. Um, David Bryant sent a super chat and he has a question and I'm not sure why this even applies. I feel like I, I agree with you, Elizabeth Landers. Like I don't have a problem with the GoFundMe for Seth either. I don't have a problem. Either one of them did it, but it seems like what, um, what he was conveying is that law enforcement have suggested they don't. And we have heard that in other cases, they don't suggest a GoFundMe because, um, even though you're okay with it and I'm okay with it, a lot of people aren't. And they start to form very strong opinions and hateful, they become hateful towards that. So, and shove it around in their faces or whatnot. So I think it's smart not to. Uh, I'm with you, I don't see anything wrong with it. But I'm gonna ask it. Um, David Bryant says, CP said, let questions fly. So Katie, did you have an active dating profile at the time Sebastian went missing? Any sort of dating profile? I don't I'm not sure. Have, I don't actually have a problem answering that. I've never had a dating profile. I hope that helps, David. So, that's um, a weird question. And then True Crime Cafe with Dago says, how often does your daughter get to visit Chris respectfully? I've seen um, a lot of comments in this chat tonight. Um, saying that you did not want your daughter and Sebastian to be around each other. And I'm just not sure where that, uh, where that's coming from. Can you talk to me about that? Sure. I got no okay. problem. So okay. I have a parenting plan with my ex-wife. Um, I get her every other year on spring breaks. So I get her in the summers. Um, and I get her, like we split the Christmas time frame. Okay. The, our parent, my parenting plan um, is very much like the moms with her ex-husbands the only difference between the two is he lives here so and we have a great relationship with each other so it's easy to be like you know hey 
can I have them this weekend, this weekend? Sure, man, whatever. You know, it, it's not like it's turmoil between everybody. Okay, because I was noticing that there were comments saying that the reason Sebastian was going to live with Seth is because your daughter is coming to move in with you and that you don't want your daughter around Sebastian. And I just wanted to get clarification on that. Uh, whoever feels or believes if you've got proof of that, please show it to me. I'll be, I'll be happy to address it, but I'll tell you right now, I don't have custody of my daughter like that. I wish I did. Um <coughs> Sebastian going to his father's has nothing to do with my daughter at all. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. Um, I will say, like, everybody out there, thank you for the questions. Uh, I'm glad that we can help clear some of this out. Um, I've told everybody on online, like, look, I'm, I'm respectful, I'm direct, and I'm brash, but Ask a question, I'll get to them, and I'll answer them the best of my, best of my ability. Um, there are thousands and millions of people, but there's only three of us, and we are doing our best to be able to address people as we can. Okay. And the reason I was asking, because Alicia P. had made the comment, you know, the problem is you're seeking custody of your daughter, and if you don't want Sebastian around your daughter, just how was that going to work, Chris? Because now Sebastian is missing. That's why people want to know. So that, uh, that was why I asked. No, I understand. And I, I can see where people's correlations are trying to put one and two together. Unfortunately, right. it's two different puzzles. Um, okay. <laughs> my case with my ex-wife, that is a whole totally different situation. Um, at some point, eventually, I can let that out right now. That's still in an ongoing court battle. Um, and to be honest with y'all, because of all of this with Sebastian, it is actually cause some issues in that court case mm. which unfortunately it is what it is um and hopefully i'll have some good news and i'll let you guys know hopefully something here soon okay chris can it be verified that you were in memphis yes very much very much verified he was in memphis um what is law enforcement allowing you all to do to look for sebastian Anything we can, as long as it does not hinder the investigation. So if people want more specifics, we've got flyers that are going out anywhere and everywhere we can put them out. We actually were able to get some like um, yard signs, kind of like like the signs that go in the yard for kind of like a, a real estate agents. We got some yeah. of those missing. Uh, we got those. We got those put out spread all out the state, some in different states itself, Alabama, Mississippi, a few in Kentucky, all the way up to Louisville. Uh, I believe we even got some down in Georgia. Um, flyers that we put out. Flyers, we yeah, we got flyers that travel throughout various states, uh, billboards throughout the entire state of Tennessee. I I can, can tell you that I've seen seven from Nashville to Memphis that I could confirm. But we're also out and about. But we do have, yeah, we are like feet on the ground looking. We're constantly trying to think of different ways. We're reaching out in various positions, and people might be able to bring something to the table that we don't know about. Um, you know, there are some companies in, out there that are amazing. There are foundations that work with missing children. We've been reaching out to them as well. Yeah, I know that you've been working with the Aware Foundation. I do a lot of work with them. So, Well, them and EquiSearch, the National Center, the Class Foundation, just to name a couple. Yeah, wow. the, the Class Foundation is a great foundation. I did want to let you know that if you reach out to Lamar Media, they're a billboard company. And sometimes they will provide free billboards for children that are missing, too, if you reach yes. out to them. Thank you. That's thank you. We'll definitely get that looked into. And I did send you that link, Katie, but I will send it again to you after the live stream to make sure that you have it. Um, good to know. Individually, when, uh, what do you all think should happen is to the person if somebody abducted Sebastian? That is not for us to determine. That is, if somebody has Sebastian, all I'm going to say is that that is that is nothing that we want to be a part of until that is legal. That is law enforcement agency. That has nothing to do with us. We just they go to jail, so I don't. Mom's the same thing. You better hope they go to jail. <laughs> well, I will. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard that because she's so quiet in the background, but she said they better hope they go to jail so I don't get to them. I love that. And what I think should happen, I think that their ass needs to be passed around the jail like a goddamn honey bun. Well, I, I mean, I, trust me, I, I have my own personal opinions, but... Say is they better pray they go to jail before I get my hands on them if I find out someone's hurting my baby. 
All I'm going to say is we have a ju- we have a legal system, and let them go through that aspect of it. And in the end, karma has a name. It will come around and show its face, and eventually they will have to answer for what they've done. True Crime Cafe with Jago said, are there any abandoned or empty homes in your area close to you? There's a construction, uh, another subdivision that's building right next door to our subdivision. Um, all of those houses and everything over there have been thoroughly searched. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times over our entire subdivision has been scoured. Um, our neighbors, everybody around us has opened their homes willingly um, and worked with law enforcement. So, I mean, barns, everything got checked. I, 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 I did have one. I, I did have one question. Um, I saw where a dog had tracked Sebastian sent to a construction site. Have they dug that side up to see if there was any sign of Sebastian there? Um, the law enforcement and every search agency and everybody that's been involved has scoured that place up and down, in and out. Um, there was a pond that was mentioned, a retention pond. Uh, it was only knee deep. They did drain it, and they have found nothing. Uh, that reminds me of another question. Um, sorry. No, you're fine. No, I know you've already answered that they took your devices. Um, the computer and stuff that Sebastian used at his biological dad's, did they take that as well? Yes, ma'am. Everything has been completely between both households. Everything has been extremely thoroughly scanned, reviewed, everything. Okay, well, that's good to know. They took the devices from his bio dad's house, too. And if they, um, if they, want, if they want to come back and get more devices, we like I said, we've opened this house up. To everything. If they want it, they come and get it. There is no hesitations, and they off they go. Okay. And um, you and Katie have out been out to do some searches yourself and hang up flyers. Is that is that true? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we have. We've gone out uh, numerous places and hung up flyers. We've gotten with uh, motorcycle uh, chapters and groups and gotten them on board to help us. We've gone from various cities to cities. Um, I personally have gone from Nashville to Memphis and into Mississippi and back. And did they also take the devices from the school as well that Sebastian may have used when they, you said they took all the devices from your house and from the bio dads. Did they also take the school devices as well to look at? Sebastian didn't have devices um, that he was, that he had at school, Um, Mm -hmm. but anything and everything, if he had something has already been scanned and thoroughly searched. Um, and like I said, if you refer back to that TBI news link and the technology proportion, I believe all of that will answer all those questions. Okay. All right. And um, Karen S. said, your dogs barked during your first TV interview. Wouldn't they have barked when Sebastian walked out the door? No, because they know Sebastian. When they barked in the first interview, a stranger was in the, house. Stranger was in the house. They've been sitting right here the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and um, you said there was, uh, they had asked you if there was any flashlights that were missing, and that prompted you to go look. Tell me about that. There was some questions about the flashlight, so I just wanted you guys to reiterate that. Right, so Sebastian had a little, it's about a little three inch, if you think about the little keychain flashlights that you used to find at vendor tables they give out for free, cheapies. Uh, It was something that he picked up at one of the local festivals, and... To, so right now, we still this day cannot find it. So we are assuming that he took it with him because it cannot be found. Okay. And how often does law enforcement update you guys? Very regularly. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, Chris Black says, what about the initial press release where it was said that Sebastian liked to stay up late? He's a 15-year-old boy. But I don't either, he but I just <laughs> wanted to put that out there because I thought maybe I missed something. <laughs> well, I mean, he if he, you know, like I said, we said earlier, he's a typical teenager, so he will get up in the middle of the night. He, you know, it, it's hard to say. I, I personally don't remember that being said in the interview, and I'm sorry, um, and I'm not doubting it, but, I mean, he's a typical teenager. He'd get up, go get snacks, and go back to his room, so. He did regularly get up at night. Mom's saying he regularly got up at night. Where Summer wanted to know, what's Sebastian's favorite food, drink? Is it ice cream, chips? <laughs> he is anything a, with sugar in it. Anything <laughs> with sugar. 
favorite drink is probably a Yoo-Hoo. No, he takes chocolate milk over Yoo-Hoo. Oh, well, okay. Well, chocolate drink, chocolate milk. As yeah. long as it's not the fat-free chocolate milk that the school switched to, because he's really upset that the school switched the chocolate milk to fat-free, and now he doesn't like it. <laughs> I love these little stories about him. That reminds me of my son, Marshall. He will he will take a Yoo-Hoo and a chocolate milk. We call it chalky milk over anything all day long, even now. At 24, he'll do that. Um, but I didn't learn until like last year, Yoohoo's not even chocolate milk. It's chocolate drink. No, it's chocolate drink. We call it chalky milk too. How sad yeah. is it that the the YouTubers that are trying to defame this family, like they keep saying, oh, you never hear them say anything funny or positive about Sebastian. I've heard a lot so far. I have a whole almost three fourths of a page, yeah, from all parents, but three fourths of a page, and most of it's from these two about him. So That's yeah, crazy. a lot of are y'all list are, are are we using our listening ears, guys? Yeah, like, like, like listen, listen to their are. listen to their voices and what like they they laugh because like and he doesn't like you know that they change it then to low fat chocolate milk and it it's mm -hmm. real, guys. This is yeah. real. Then what's chocolate drink? I don't know what it is, Remy. It's just not chalky milk. I didn't know that. I thought it chocolate dry. I don't, I don't drink. like. I don't like you anyway. But I didn't learn until recently that it's chalky milk or that it's blasphemy. chocolate drink. It is. Yeah. It's blasphemy. It's like, dang, what is it? We don't know. It's just on the moon. So are you talking about like Yuhu or chocolate soldiers? Yeah, Yuhu is chocolate. I can't drink, drink myself. Can't bring myself uh, that drink. Like, I fucking love you. And Mine loves it. My husband loves it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loves it. I don't think it should be it used solely to determine a person's. Yeah, I agree, Bendy. But I, I found his. I don't know. I like what they said. It's just a tool. I'm going to take a potty break. So I'm going to let this play. So if it plays a little bit longer, I got to run to the potty. Have fun. All right. Um, who did Sebastian love the most out of everyone? Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, that's a dumb question. Come on. That, but... I had to come back and I say mean, that. I mean, he may not have had. Asked. Five minutes later. I mean, it just depends on when you ask him. I mean, if I let him do what I, if, if I take him and go do something cool, oh, I'm the hero. You know, but when I'm getting on to him, mom's the hero. You know, when the dad takes him fishing, dad's the hero. So, I mean, it's. You know, he's got three parents that love him equally. He's loved and loves all his parents. I mean, but, I mean, we all have our moments when we're not his favorite, too. I mean, he's he's a kid. <laughs> and True Crime Cafe with Dago says, has anyone else in the family ever threatened to have Sebastian removed or anything like that? No. Okay. Um... And does loud noises or certain smells bother him? Just curious, if law enforcement approached him with sirens, will he run or melt down? He doesn't like loud noises, but they've known about that from the beginning. So, like, if it's a song he likes, he can turn the volume up. But, like, fireworks, he can't stand that kind of noise. So, he does have a sensitivity to, to sudden and loud noises, mostly. Okay. And it said that he likes to hide in small places. Small places, can you give me an example of like what, where, like how small? Can you elaborate on that for us? Um, so he has, a, he has a, a closet in his bedroom. And I mean, it's not a small closet. It's, it's a good sized closet. He will get over and tuck into a corner in his closet and play with his toys. when he's playing with his toys or he's doing something he knows he's not supposed to. Um, it's always a pile of Legos in the corner. Yeah. I mean, it's not like this boy was going into a two by two by two space and and hiding. I mean, he just he liked to be in a secluded area. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Beautiful sunflower says he said earlier he had his reason, and they all agreed it was best that Sebastian not be around his daughter. And now he says that wasn't the issue. Um, I'm confused by this statement. I guess I must have missed. A part of that. Um, well, to clarify what he said, he said that he didn't have custody of his daughter, so that wasn't going to be an issue in regards to Sebastian going to live with his dad. That's not the reason why Sebastian was going to live with his dad was so that his daughter could come and live with them. 
Thank right. You. I just, I guess I'm confused by some of these questions because I feel like it's, you know, been answered. Um, let me see here. Some of these questions we have already discussed. So, so I, uh, I can, I can say this much. There are some screen names that I, that I'm going to say sound familiar. And I'm going to swear on it. They sound very familiar of people mm -hmm. I would trust on Facebook. Um, okay. The sunflower one, I'm not going to say, I'm not swearing a thousand percent on this, but I believe I've chatted with her. And okay. She asked why I will not go and talk to JLR. Um, first off, if this is the same lady that okay. I addressed, I am not going to people um, to go to a YouTube channel for somebody to make some money on, or I'm not seeking them out. If they want to talk to me, they know how to get in touch with me, just like everybody else. Here she is, right our, here. Our ultimate goal in the end is to bring our son home. Thank you for clarifying that beautiful sunflower. She said, I'm speaking of prior to his second time answering that question. He changed the answer, but it's okay. How did he change the answer? Did anybody catch that? I didn't see, I didn't see a change in the answer. I didn't, this but I wasn't part was close a enough. Up. Yeah. I'll look back through my notes, but I didn't hear a change in it. It's like they don't want to give out their all their family information on why they decided to or why they're not allowed allowing the daughter around Sebastian and they're reiterating that they're all three in agreement on it, what they're going to do. So that's their business. Yeah. Like, yeah. why does that matter? I don't know. That's why I'm curious. Like, uh, maybe we'll get into it as we go further around. Yeah. See, I didn't hear a change either. He didn't. Okay. Just making sure I didn't miss something there. Cause I didn't hear a change in it. Does but anybody know what they're referring to? I don't, yeah. We'll see. Maybe we'll get to it. Hey, I appreciate you explaining that to me. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to mess that up. Uh, whatever, the, however you were wording that question, I wanted to make sure I was being clear about what I was asking. And by the way, guys, at midnight, I cut the questions off because I don't want to keep them here all night. So, but the questions that were submitted before that, you know, we're going to wrap those up. And if, you know, if Chris is willing, we can always come back and do a part two if there's other questions that you feel like Deji. didn't get answered. Deji. Yes, uh, ma'am. You got drugged through the mud for this question, so I'm going to ask it. Um, okay. <laughs> how long have you and Katie known each other? So my question to whoever's asking that is, what does that have to do with the investigation of our son? Yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they've already answered it, but I, 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 I get was, yeah, frustrated. I did get, people came for me because I didn't allow somebody to um, ask that question because I didn't think it was pertinent to Sebastian being missing. But um, well, I mean, it, here's it, it really has no pertinent to the investigation or the fact that our son is missing. But like I said, I'm respectful, I'm brash, and I'm direct to the point to answer that person's question. I've been in uh, Sebastian's life, half of his life. Sebastian's 15. Right. I just appreciate you being willing to um, to talk with us and answer these questions. Um, now, the you know, we've, we've talked about the video. I just have to ask, did you guys happen to see the interview on the behavioral panel uh, where they took a look at your and Katie's interview on the news? Uh, I have not. Uh, I believe the mom okay. has made some views views of it. I personally have not. Watched okay. I haven't been online very much. I understand. I think, I think since that has been out there, we really haven't done a lot of viewing of kind of that stuff. We've been out there busy doing flyers, posters, um, signs. Can I say things. something real quick? Wow. All of these creators. Mm -hmm are more than willing to share and put out the behavior pa behavioral panels. Um, I guess I don't know what you would call it. Their opinions, right? Analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Their analysis. They're so quick to put it out when it works for them. Like let's really? use Madeline Soto as an example. Like they came out and they pretty much made it known. They feel like mom knows more than what she's saying. Right. They were, Everybody was sharing that. Well, the behavioral yeah. panel on this one said they feel like they have nothing to do with it. I haven't seen anybody share that. <laughs> no, nope. besides uh, Duchess here. <laughs> That's well, too funny. 
that happened with Don Wells as well. That's they so they said they didn't think he had anything to do with it, and people were like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, I, I mean, I, I don't people. know. You know, I don't know that they do, but it, if, if you're going to say they know what they're talking about when it fits your um, theory or your opinion, then why, why, do, why are they, they don't know what they're talking about when it doesn't? Right. I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, commercial interruption break. The True Fruit Nature Strawberries Hyper Dried Fresh and Cream Covered in White Chocolate is the most amazing treat you could ever buy at Costco. Just in a plan. What's it called? True <laughs> Fruit. Okay. Like True Fruit, but T R U F R U. So good. There's freeze dried strawberries covered in white chocolate. It's like a little <gasps> heavenly treat in your mouth. That's what Sorry, said. I had to grab a. I had, <laughs> I had to grab a snack while I was upstairs, and that's what I grabbed. They're amazing. I'm eating too. <laughs> no, you that's know, what like said. that's what she said. That's she. What she said. The one and only Modine. Okay, all right. We're almost done with this one, and then we got Chronicles, and then the Terry Lynn. I was wrong on that. Oh, okay. Order. Chronicles is before Terry. Okay. Yep. I'll reorder okay. them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you said that he couldn't have gone out a window, that all of that was checked, and it did not appear that he had gone out a window. And do you guys have a lock on your refrigerator? I just wanted to put that to rest. What? A lock on the refrigerator? Yep. That's a question. Okay. No. I mean, there's an alarm on the refrigerator when you leave the door open. <laughs> yeah, I have one of those, too. That, that dings when you don't shut it all the way. Yeah. Sorry. Remember, we're at one and a half speed here, but just the way he's like, what? No, there's an alarm. (laughs) A lot of the way he's answering these questions, he's just answering them the way a guy would, I I think. I don't know. I'm just like, no, there's not a lock. That's weird. Yeah. So um, that is, uh, it looks like, you know, there's a couple more questions. Some of the questions that are being asked are actually questions that we answered. Previously in the live stream, you know, we did ask Christian, uh, Chris, a whole set of questions, and I just invite people to please be kind and rewind um, to listen to the questions that Chris and Katie were asked. Um, and we just appreciate you guys taking the time to be here uh, to talk about your son's disappearance and what you think may have happened, because this is this is a very scary situation. And you know, this we're 21 days into this. Now we're 22 days. Um, this is. I just can't imagine in my mind where this young man could be. Um, And you said to me, I think we had talked um, on a phone conversation and we had talked about that construction site. Um, And I did hear Seth on a interview state that the scent uh, that the dogs picked up actually led to the outside of that construction site, which backs up to your neighborhood. What can you tell us? Can you tell us anything about the, the scent dogs and where they might have tracked to and, or anything of that nature? Is there any information that you need us to know about that? Um, yes, there were tracking dogs. They did pick up a scent. Uh, and I couldn't tell you how many number of dogs because day one, I knew of five dogs. By day eight, mm. we had dogs from across the country coming in from North and South Carolina, Kentucky, all over the place. So I don't know how many dogs, but the scent was picked up. It does go into the construction site um, and then it disappears. So they don't actually know what happens they just disappears okay so he's confirming the same as as dad as seth that a dog did track a scent there um which kind of goes against what seth said initially but maybe they just weren't aware of it in the earlier interview um but it is really interesting and nice to hear how many dogs they brought in from across the country we've heard that before in other cases but just you know, more confirmation on it. And thank you, Scott H. I appreciate that. Um, Deez, you're going to have, you may not know this, but um, Scott H is a Dr. Pepper man. I know. He Just letting me you know. Time, I, I'm <laughs> telling him, I oh, keep telling him, Mr. Pibb is where it's at. No, Mr. Pibb is nothing compared to Dr. Pepper. Mr. I, Pibb has I the cherry. With Jones and 
No, Mr. Pip has the cherry, but I will. Dr. Pepper is definitely a close second. Close <laughs> second. The zeros are good too if you like the diet or the non sugar ones. I do zeros all yeah. the time. I like the cherry, Dr. Pepper. It's pretty good. Mm. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay. We're almost through this one. If there was anything that you could say to Sebastian, or if there is someone out there who is with Sebastian, is there anything that you would want to say to them right now? You mean if someone has my son? Keep it PG. I would say that this boy is loved and that he has a caring and loving home and that he belongs with us, with his family, with his parents. I just want to hear that at normal speed. I just felt like I could just hear the mama bear in her right voice. Now. Thank you. You may know if someone has my son. Mm. Keep it PG. I would say that this boy is loved and that he has a caring and loving home and that he belongs with us, with his family, with his parents. Mm. And that I'm never going to stop looking for him and I'm never going to stop until we're able to bring him home. She sounds so exhausted. She does. So defeated. On myself. Sebastian, we miss you. All three of your parents do. We all want you back home. As soon as you can, come home. If somebody has him, please return him. Um, don't hurt him. But we do want our son back. Please. Where Summer said maybe someone's seen him playing outside. If he played outside, that's why I want to know. If he played outside, maybe someone's seen him. Uh, Sebastian wasn't very much, like, he didn't go outside very much. Um, most of the time, all the neighbors will tell you that if they saw him, he was taking the trash out. Um, you may have cut the grass. Last summer, you cut the grass every so often. But we were always home. Um, but he's not. he's not really the... I'm going to go outside just to go outside kind of kid. He prefers to play, he prefers to play inside. Well, he prefers inside and, and playgrounds. Yeah, he does love playgrounds. Catherine, I don't see any comments being deleted. Um, we're just not taking any more questions after midnight. I don't really see anyone that's been blocked or anything. But if you have a problem, you can always send me an email at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com and let me know. Uh, I've um, got to address this. I have not heard this family one time say that he was put outside in the dark as a punishment. <laughs> Wait, somebody is saying that we would put our son outside in the dark. What? And you can always send me an email up. at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com and let me know. What? Uh, um, I've got to address this. I have not heard this family one time say that he was put outside in the dark as a punishment. Oh, God, no, <laughs> Wait, somebody is saying that we would put our son outside in the dark as punishment? Yeah, it was saying, so why put him outside in the dark as punishment? Uh, I've not heard that said. Uh, sometimes when things are said like that, that's how it, speculation and rumors get started online. Yes, Crystal. Uh, so it was either Smiley or Jay, F Justin for all. That well, that we have listened to all of these interviews in order. I haven't heard one single parent say he was put outside for punishment. This wow. is, um, this is crazy. Like, why do people mm -hmm. do this? Just like what we were talking about, Lady CG. What? Wh why? Mm -hmm. Who would do I that? Right. All of the. I, I don't understand any of this. I don't. I don't understand. It's not helping at all. And not even. It, it, it's not just case. People do this. Across the board, it's just, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they, they said this or this happened or whatever. And then it gets into the universe as a fact. 
when it never happened. I, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I, I just the, the, the parents are in Facebook groups, Nana. My suggestion to them if they ever if they ever hear this is to get out of the Facebook groups. Turn off YouTube. Get out. Get Seriously. Out. You know what? I'm that sure they're it it might have been BJ where that rumor started from. I it was one of the three. I have no idea. I haven't heard it. Mm. Yeah. I, right, Mindy? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, flip back through my notes. I'm like, no, no, they never said that. That's just wild, 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 wild. Outside is over yet. It just didn't happen. It wasn't stated. Not in any of these interviews. Wow. That is very interesting. Hey, Josh, with the lab, thank you for being here. Um, If there was a comment deleted, it may be because we asked for people not to discuss other creators in the chat. Um, so if someone has mentioned another creator, we ask people not to discuss other creators um, in the live stream. So that comment may have been removed, but no one um, has been blocked. Well, I um, believe that I can tell. So, well, I um, believe looking at a comment here, um, Michelle Macklin and Beautiful Sunflower have got some comments up here saying that I brought up another group comment, which I did something that was in Trevor's and something about JLR. I did bring those up. So if, if I violated those rules, then I apologize. That was not, you know, what I was just stating. No, I've seen that's and, out there and what has been brought to and my you're fine. And listen, if you want to talk to JLR, that is your prerogative. And if you don't want to talk, don't to him, do you're it. Not required to, you, you don't have to be pressured into doing anything that you don't want to. Um, if he reached out to you and you didn't respond to him, I mean, that's, a personal decision for you to make. And I don't really have any um, particular stance on it. You know, you're free to discuss with anybody that you feel like is going to help get the information out about your son. And that's why we're here is to talk about Sebastian and to help get his information out there. We want to stick to the factual information um, because I don't think discussing things about your previous relationship or, you know, making false accusations or just making assumptions that there aren't any facts to stand behind is helping to find Sebastian. When law enforcement tells me that somebody is a suspect or they give us more evidence to go on, then that's what I'm waiting for to happen. Um, it, it, everybody it, it, has the right to their own opinion and everyone's welcome to share their opinion as long as they're respectful. And that's all that I ask here on my channel. And the mods have their explicit rules and they know what to do and, you know, and that's it. So, um, if you, if you don't mind, if, if I could just say something. Sure. Um, everybody out there, you know, they, they've they all got their assumptions and their accusations and things of that nature. Um, if you have proof, bring it to my attention. Show it to me. You know, um, please. I mean, and like I said, I'm, I'll, I'm direct, I'm brash, but I'm respectful at the same time. Um, it's not about biting people's heads off. You know, what I, what I will say that I don't appreciate is how folks out there want to drag in personal family business amongst all three parents, their side of the family, my side of the family, it, it has no bearing on our son. You know, we're, we're a family. It's big. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have some dislikes. Every family out there has got the same, you know, working through them and becoming stronger as a family. That's what makes a family a family, you know, I don't mind people have their opinions. I don't mind their assumptions. You know, respectful. I'm going to give you the respect. You know, in the end, the end result for every bit of this is the exact same. To bring our son home safe and sound. And that's all we're asking. We love y'all. We pray for y'all. We got thoughts. Even if you don't like us, trust me. We still got love for you. And sometimes your questions may sound far-fetched. But believe it or not, it might be something that we could look at and say, hey, what about this? But it's not going on deaf ears. I promise y'all. Um, I did see a question. So I just was thinking, could you imagine what it must be like? Um, he does seem too relaxed, Modine, to be hiding something. Um, but could you imagine what it was like on the 24th he went to bed or they all went to bed normal parents 25th whatever day sorry what, next day they wake up and now you know you you might be a casual 
person that hops on Facebook and cruises social media, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And then in an instant, not only is your son missing, but you have hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people having an opinion on you. And I think for the type of person that I've learned Chris to be through these past several interviews, I think that that is hard on him to not be able to disprove or discredit a lot of the stuff that's being thrown at him. And it's coming across as very rash, very brass when he's trying to do, you know, he's on the defense. That's all I'm seeing, you know, hearing defense, defense, defense. And I I understand it to a, a certain extent, but I can't imagine what it would be like. I can't imagine at all what it would be like to have all those people coming at you. We just had earlier in the stream where we were talking about trauma, you know, you know, maybe a couple thousand people in this community, but could you imagine across the country, across the world coming at you and accusing you of something? And if you had no part in it whatsoever, you had nothing to do with it. What would you do with that? I think some parents handle it with grace and some don't. I mean, just look at, look at what we've seen happen to other parents. So it's wild. Listen, look at these interviews next to Madeline Soto interviews. Mm-hmm. Bruh. That's it speaks yeah. for itself. It sees volumes. You're right. You're right, Jensen. It does. Yeah, and that that's the thing uh, I saw. I just went up and saw Laura's question. That's because um on Duchess's channel she she doesn't allow room for speculation or strong opinion, you know, like and no drama whatsoever. And I think that that's fine. That's, you know, she respects other people's chats when she goes into them. And so others should respect hers when they go into hers. And so everybody runs their channel differently. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that happened maybe, that's a fact. I just couldn't imagine. I, I just couldn't. You wake up, your child's missing, and then you have the social media storm that comes with it. And I'm wondering if in the packets that like CARD and law enforcement are giving these parents, if they're equipping them for this onslaught that's coming no matter what. I oh, I hope feeling. so. I hope so. It I is something so, that but... should be, uh, if not, it should be added to the it should. Absolutely. Yeah. They do, sure they, they do. latch on, and they pick, they pick, they make someone the villain, they make someone the hero, and they go hard for that, hard in the paint mm-hmm. for it, no matter what, and it's, it's sad. Just now that I was actually on my list to ask you, and it was when I had asked about what Sebastian was wearing, because people were saying, why are you just now saying that it's a long sleeve black t-shirt and not a black sweatshirt? And you guys had oh explained God. to me how that transpired and it didn't get changed. You had explained to them, this is what he was wearing. But when they made the flyer, they put out the incorrect information and that you had asked them to update it, but they didn't immediately. And a lot of people were saying, well, they didn't even know what he was wearing. Tell me about that. So we we gave the description to all the law enforcement agencies out there they took it and and listed it now keep in mind let's think about the telephone game you tell somebody something they tell somebody something that goes back and by the time it comes back around to you it is not what you initially started with that is basically what happened we told them verbatim was sebastian went to bed wearing long black pants with white stripes down the side um a long sleeve shirt that had an image on the front could have been of one of three things minecraft star wars or of halloween depiction his favorite three things now somewhere along the way that got changed and somebody said it was a sweatshirt somebody said it was a hoodie um somebody has said it's a t-shirt the initial description said sweatshirt and i clarified that it was a long sleeve shirt Hi, Seth. Thank you so much for joining the chat. It's good to see you. I appreciate you being here. Um, If you'd like to join us on panel, you're more than welcome to. 
Yeah, both parents saying like, we've asked them to change it and they still have yet to change it. I think that happened, I, that happened in Michael's case as well. Um, I think the, it happens in all the cases. Yeah. The, the <laughs> shirt was described wrong and oh my gosh, they drug the parents for Phil's over that and she, they're like, you know, look, we asked them to change it, but kind of like how Chris just described it. It's uh, It was a game of telephone, I'm sure. We really just want to find answers and we really just want to find Sebastian. And yep. this channel is just a place for family members to be able to share any information to clear up misinformation and to get out the information to help bring their missing child or their missing loved one home. And I appreciate you being here. We you have so many people that are praying for Sebastian and we do have those billboards up and we're going to hopefully maybe get another billboard up, maybe a third billboard. We've had so many wonderful people in this chat to support us keeping those billboards going for another week. Um, and we're praying for all of you. Because this can't be easy and it's got to be very stressful. And all of these extra things that are going on. Sorry, I'm interrupting Dutchie here to address this. Um, Elizabeth, that breaks my heart. I did not see that, that people were attacking Dutchie for being the first creator to interview them. I'm going oh, over man. the Tuesday deets. It's like they, she showed her whole ass. Are you well, kidding me? Like, I think Maybe everybody in them. that side had a problem with Duchess doing the interview first. Like the lab was sour, really? Justin for all was sour. Smiley literally pitched a tantrum. I'm gonna show all that mm. to you, sir. Why? Why? Jonesen's gonna drop the chroma on Tuesday if someone I wants damn to sure I am. Tuesday morning, ten thirty. But oh why? Goodness. Why were they mad? I don't know. Well, Smiley well, was I mad we'll that Dutchess stole Tuesday. a question. Oh. <laughs> she did what to a question? Sorry. Uh, Smiley was upset because she felt like Duchess stole one of her questions. How do you steal um, a question? <laughs> and Duchess thinks she's high and mighty because she got that interview. Y'all, it's bad. It's bad. Look, Duchess is acting the same in this interview that I have seen her acting since the moment I followed her channel, which is at the very beginning of being Deets, back when she was accused of being Deets. So I don't see... Okay, so Jonesy knows what's up. All right, she's going to cover it. Like, this is wild. She showed her ass. She showed her ass. Wow. I would let, yeah. Duchess is, there's not many creators that I would let cover a case about me or my, or I can't let any of them do anything, but that I would want to. But Duchess, absolutely. Absolutely. Hands, yeah, that's, I'm sorry you went through that. I had no idea. People can be messy. Um, can't really be helping. Um, and Angela, you can express your opinions, but we will not allow people to just be harassing or to show blatant disrespect, doxing. We don't want people to um, talk badly about other creators. Um, those are just the general chat rules that are the rules that ha are on every live stream. And we just ask people to be respectful of that. And uh, we appreciate you being here. So um, if it goes against any of those rules, the moderators are uh, there to help you answer any questions and to keep the chat a safe and friendly place to be able to discuss this case. So I appreciate you understanding. Yes, there is too many missing in Tennessee, and it's, it's very difficult for these families. It's got to be very difficult. Um, I see Angel has a question. Why did Sebastian not go to his bio dad's house the weekend he went missing? Wasn't it his bio dad's weekend? No. Do you guys Thanks. want to comment? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we're okay to comment. I mean, if Seth is listening, he also can, can uh, confirm this. that So they have it every other weekend. Um, and the weekend that he went missing, he was not, that was not his weekend to be at his dad's house. He was actually supposed to be at mom's house. Okay, so that's confusing on where he was supposed to be that weekend, but this is the second confirmation of it. So I'm going to just say that, so sorry, I jumped on your crystal. I just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, for now. I'm going to say on the fourth, Seth just misspoke. 
yeah I would, um, yeah especially if they he's confirmed it since that that was not supposed to be his weekend and now they're confirming it i would say that's definitely just a misspeak like that happens y'all people misspeak on things so it wasn't it was mom's weekend it kind of seemed like they had like a weekend they had to trade off or something like it was a trade so week, you know what i mean yeah or something. that that was the impression i had before Which, thank this. you crystal for not getting like snotty back like no wait it's coming blah 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 i just gotta get through my process of listening to it in order but i must say definitely just a misspeak on that one can i say something real quick yep hang on okay go ahead oh this fool this fool what fool justin has are these hands innocent or guilty talking about their interview where it showed their hands that's his that's his title and his thumbnail because if we can start me. telling guilt from some hands now Bruh. holy moly let me tell you <laughs> something I, I didn't even think about this till, oh my god <clears throat> till johnson brought this up but um i saw because i haven't watched anything about this but i saw something and the t the title made me click on it like what the heck it was somebody that had done a close-up of Chris's arm and said Sebastian's face was in his arm. Oh, my God. I'm not even kidding. I can't. Where was that? I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't say. I'll, I'll put it in the back. I don't wanna... or, yeah, either put it in the back or tell DC because I'll add that to my so call here, the Here's the thing, and I know that this bugs my friend. Like, I don't have an issue with these creators at all. I don't have an issue with with them covering those things that way but it's like i have an issue with some of the actions like i can still like you as a person and and see that and be like absolutely Dude, come on yeah. you're going too far 100 percent. i mean I, I that's why i don't want to say they're not i don't mm -hmm. want to i'm not bashing them but that is a lot and can I say this too, though? Bindi says, I want Duchess to cover me if something happens. Make sure you tell people I didn't light up a room. I was sarcastic as fuck, and I had like four friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Bindi. Thank you for making us laugh, Bindi. She's like, yeah, she can co cover me, but you got to cover the facts. I had four friends. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The hands. These hands line. Okay. I just appreciate you coming and speaking with us to, you know, tell us if there's, you know, to clear up things because I, I've seen all kinds of things on social media and, you know, and Trev time, I appreciate you and the lab being here. I just wanted to go through the questions, ha let the chat be able to ask their questions. Um, and of course, Crystal and Arctic Fox had questions that they wanted to ask. And um, I just appreciate Chris and Katie being willing to try to answer some of those questions, although some of them I'm not sure have a direct impact on what's happening with Sebastian going missing. Um, but I hope that it helps to clear up some of the questions that people have. Um, I did also see that um, another creator had asked a question. Um, and I think they said they actually sent you a message, Chris, um, because they wanted to know when you first heard that Sebastian had gone missing, did it ever cross your mind that um, that Katie might have been involved? Absolutely. And I wanted, you to, I wanted no. you to speak to that. No, and that's fine. Absolutely not. I would not for I there's nothing in me, nothing I would ever think that she the mother had, had anything to do with this or the father for that matter. None of his parents, none any of us would have ever done anything to Sebastian to to do this remotely conjure up in no way. No. This boy has got so much love. It uh, that I mean that right there kind of kind of hurts me a little bit to think that somebody would think that I would suspect my wife of having ill intent and that's no. Hang on. First of all, I need to take this comment down, but I want to go back so you can see what Seth just wrote up here. And I feel like people need to take this to freaking heart. Look at these parents that are all working together to get these answers. And he pops in, he's in the chat and he says, Chris has already asked. I'm not joining on the phone call. I just think some of these questions 
are not about finding Sebastian. It wasn't my week. It, like you can just hear the frustration. They're just like, stop it. But all of them are like, stop it with the nonsense, y'all. Help find our kid. You've got stepdad and bio dad both saying, you know, he's saying like, look, I didn't. Sus- of course, I didn't suspect my wife. I didn't. Even, I didn't suspect the, you know, bio dad. Like, how we dare all love you not this suspect young man. her? Yeah, we love this young man and we want him found. I think, you know, maybe what it is for the internet is it's wild seeing uh, positive co-parenting, but maybe I should shut up because I hear that changes in a few interviews. But still, I honestly wonder how much of that is from the internet getting in these people's minds versus what was actually happening in reality. That's my question. suspect my wife of having ill intent and that's no no and i i respect that i respect that sis i understand and yeah i think some of these questions are not about finding sebastian either um but these are the questions that people are here and asking so we just wanted to get through those and hopefully be able to put that aside so that we can focus on bringing sebastian home terry dean said had sebastian ever played or been interested at the construction site before no he's never he's never gone to that construction site uh we have drove around the construction site in a car but no he's never been on foot he's never wandered over there um I mean, I I understand where they're going with that, but no, unfortunately, there's not any chance that he would have that kind of interest. But then again, at the same time, dog scents were found in the construction zone, um, and then they disappear. You know, I mean, it's it's hit or miss. You know. Okay, and um, you had told me that you both had uh, when when you're able to, you get out there and try to to do searches. You have been putting up flyers. Um, are you planning to continue to search in the future? Are you going to organize any type of search yourself to help find him? Because there's people in the chat that are wanting to come and help. So will you be letting people know if there's going to be any other organized searches for the community? Uh, yes. I mean, we're not opposed to that. Um, okay. You know, the father, Seth, he does that all the time. We go out and do – we. We don't organize big groups. Um, to give you an example, like this weekend, you know, somebody's like, well, you guys were in your motorcycles. Well, yeah, we went to a motorcycle rally, a group, a spring opener, passed out flyers. You'd be surprised on how, how far and wide the, the motorcycle community can pull together and spread that word. Um, Dad. That is very true that they, they can. Seth said here in the comments, and I want to highlight it, that he does like heavy equipment, meaning that uh, Sebastian likes heavy equipment. So that's something really good to know. I'll typically read the, the chat, but I thought, oh, well, if Seth, Seth's in there talking, I want to stop and see if I catch anything. I'm sure that just pops it up or whatnot, but anyway. You know, Seth has worked on it in his end up in Clarksville. He's got guys that he's working with. Excuse me. We have folks down here that we work with. Um, I mean, we help people want to help. I mean, we and we ask them, they're like, hey, I'm going out this far. Do you have flyers? Sure do. We'll hand them a stack of flyers and you know, they're outgoing. Seth to his his part of it. And trust me, it's I mean, it's an ongoing thing. If somebody wants to like try to put together an organized group, we're not opposed to it. Um Trev, I just saw your comment and I wanted to say thank you. And we have some if you need them. And Seth says he does like heavy equipment too. It, it, yeah. So a little quick story. Uh, we I rented a mini excavator and uh, needed to use it to do a project around the house. We were doing some landscaping. And uh, I actually put Sebastian on the equipment, explained to him how you know this works and whatnot like this. And he actually was able to take the bucket and put it within inches of the foundation of the house and help pull out some of the root balls without ripping out the irrigation lines in the, in the landscaping. So, I mean, he, he's good at it. He's, he's real good. Y'all that is impressive. We had to rent a mini excavator to do some yard work once. I could barely make the bucket go up and down. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but I'm loving all these little stories about their son from all of them. 
all of them. There's so many here. I don't know why people say they don't talk like so many. I appreciate that, Trev. Time to be for you to go out there and put up flyers. It it really takes a team effort, and I appreciate everyone that is covering Sebastian. Um, and thought criminal, I did see your post of asking about the X, but I don't really think the X has this doesn't really pertain to Sebastian missing. So that is the only reason why I haven't addressed that. Kinky Ad said, why not ask Katie if she suspected Chris? It's her bio son. And I think they just clarified that, that all of the parents agree. And of course, we do have Seth in chat. And you, you did say, Chris, all three of you agree that none of the parents are involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. Um, Seth, if you want to comment in the chat, you certainly um, are free to, to, to speak and say, whatever you feel. Katie, did you, I mean, obviously you said you weren't even in town, but Katie, did you have anything that you suspected when this happened? Did you immediately say, well, um, I think so-and-so might have something to do with it? Honestly, no. I mean, my husband was out of town and had been for a while. And even if he wasn't, I don't think for a second he would ever hurt him. And if his dad wanted him, he wouldn't have to take him. He'd just call and say, hey, I want to pick my son up. And I'd say, okay, what time? And, you know, the only stipulation is that we, you know, we don't miss school. So, I mean, I wouldn't have thought anything about that either because we have, you know, our own differences, but that doesn't matter when it comes to Sebastian. We're pretty good about, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to have him this weekend or I've got this thing going on. And like we juggle and, and change weekends sometimes if we've got something that we want to do or vice versa. So, no, no. Kinky Ed said, how did Katie not notice him? Before she gets that one, which which I think that's great. Now they're saying no to all three remember this is on what 317 thank you thank you jenny um but i did notice i don't know if duchess gets to it she probably will but someone had a question that i thought was really good and one i hadn't thought of okay the five canes cane says since seth is in law enforcement could this be retaliation towards him of some kind it's a not one I had thought of, but it is a good question. In the kitchen when she didn't find him in bed and then said she thought maybe he was making breakfast, that your room is by the kitchen. Yes, but he liked to dip around walls and he did his little sneaky thing. I understand. The lab said, did they say why they didn't go to the vigil? Yes. So somebody asked me that before and I responded on Facebook and that's okay. So the very first vigil that was going on, um, and actually I think I said there was three and when that actually was four, they did a vigil down here at the stop sign inside of our subdivision. It was inside our neighborhood did a small one at the time we were still dealing with law enforcement and we didn't go. Then the long Hall Baptist church down here on long Hall Pike, they held one at the time we were still with law enforcement answering questions. All three parents were, uh, we did have a representative go and speak on our behalf. Uh, the third one, which a young lady organized, and originally they were going to try to do something here in the community without discussing it with us, without talking with anybody. Uh, and all the neighbors had a concern because, like I said, it's a small community. There's no parking. There was no parking, so we addressed it to go to the high school, which they gladly moved it. But there were some security issues we got with law enforcement. So the dad did show up. Uh, we did not. Um, and then on this last one was up in Clarksville. Um, and that's up in the Clarksville area. You know, that's where dad lives. So, I mean, I think that was put on more for the dad and everything in his community up there, which supports him. Um, but, I mean, that answers that question. True Crime Cafe with Dago says, could there be anyone out there at all that has ill will toward either side of the family? Um, and then I did see someone right up above that say, well, Seth is at, works, you know, in law enforcement. Could mm -hmm. this uh, be something like a, you know, that's coming back because he works in law enforcement? Do you have any thoughts on that? That's a good no. point, Mamie. No. Mm, I think he's got thoughts on it. <laughs> he's being respectful with that. No, no. Um, Meme said, I think that's why Ellie makes Seth specifically check in with him where, where, when he goes anywhere in case this is work related. That's a possibility. It is a possibility, purely speculation on our parts, but possible. Terry Dean says, parents in this situation are damned if they do and damned if they don't. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I have said fair enough. Thanks for answering me. You're welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for dropping by. I appreciate it. I've kept you guys long enough, and I really appreciate you coming over on this live stream and being willing to have a conversation with us and being willing to answer these questions. Um, so if you decide that you want to come back and answer some more questions or, um, you know, please let, please let me know. And we're going to continue to keep these billboards up as long as we can. And I'll continue to share information about Sebastian. And if there's anything that we can do, you have lots of people in this community that just want to help bring your son home safely. Um, please let us know how we can best support to uh, your family. And that goes for you too, Seth, if you're out there listening. Um, I can't imagine what you're going through, but just know that you have a lot of people out here that are praying for you um, and praying for Sebastian to come home safe. And I just want to thank you for your time. And I want to thank all of the members and the subscribers that donated. Um, you really mean so much um, for being here. Okay, I'm going to... Is there anything else, Duchess, after that that I need to keep listening to? I happily will, but if you're just doing, you know, your device and stuff, I'll stop there. Um, that girl said Equisearch was able to speak. They did say with permission by the TBI, search areas will never be disclosed due to moving to investigation process. Um, I don't know if you misunderstood or I, I wasn't saying like he had involvement of it, but maybe his connection to in law, law enforcement made him a target, his son a target is what I was saying. Um, due to the fact that he was on GPS with his work and man down monitoring system at his sheriff's department. But no, I wasn't saying he did something. I was just saying, like, could Sebastian have been a target because of his law enforcement connection? I'm going to read here real quick before we go to the next interview. The TBI newsroom, and I know that Jenny's been dropping it in the chat. This was updated two days ago. Um, should I go, hang on, let me go to the first one. So I'm going to read the 315 one, and then I'll go back and read the 322, and then we'll read all the questions, because they do it pretty much the same way. Okay. So on February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Sumner County home, leading to a large-scale ground search that resulted in first responders covering about 2,000 total miles in the effort to find him. And then there is his missing flyer, um, and you can grab that, read through all of that yourself on the TBI newsroom. We continue to work with Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to be both proactively, to both proactively pursue information that may be relevant to the search for Sebastian and to pursue any tips or pieces of information that come in. We have not forgotten about Sebastian. Much of the work currently being done to bring Sebastian home may not necessarily be public or visible, but agents, detectives, and intelligence and nano intelligence analysts continue to work around the clock to review every bit of information available. Sebastian's family has remained cooperative since the search began and have done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. At this stage in the investigation, there are few clues to indicate what happened to Sebastian or where he may be. There is no proof at this time that there is any criminal element involved in the, his disappearance, but also there is not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. So agents and investigators are reviewing any possibility at all that may indicate where Sebastian is. In order to preserve the integrity of the investigation, we cannot discuss many of the specifics surrounding the case but we know how many people care about Sebastian and what has been done and is still being done to bring him home. Also, we want to caution the public about putting too much stock into information being presented in various media forms that is inaccurate or incomplete and could be damaging to the investigation. Uh, we ask the public to help us by refraining from sharing speculation posted by or discussed by non-official sources and reporting only credible tips or information to 1-800-TBI-FIND. Information that has been released by TBI and or Sumner County Sheriff's Office throughout the investigation, including a list of frequently asked questions, can be re reviewed below. I'll hop to those in a second. I'm going to come back up and read the most recent update. 
Special agents and intelligence analysts continue to go over and review information that has been collected since the search for Sebastian began. They also continue to follow up on tips and leads as they come in. To date, more than 240 tips have been provided through the tips to TBI at tbi.tn.gov email and the 1-800-TBI-FIND tip line. We still encourage residents who live within the search area to check their property, their outbuildings, under decks, inside boats or cars, anywhere a teen may be able to hide. If residents have property that has terrain that may include ledges, holes, or unstable footing and don't feel comfortable assessing it themselves, we can have someone with law enforcement do that for them. Much of the work being done to track down information about where Sebastian may have gone is not something you will necessarily see in the public, but we want you to know that every day work is being done to find Sebastian. Any information you may have about Sebastian, what he likes to do, where he likes to go, people he may know, if it can help us find Sebastian, please let us know. So I'm gonna take a drink and then I'll do the questions. Mmm, my cold pop. Okay. Um, what areas have been searched? Within the first several days of the search, more than 2,000 miles were searched on foot. 2,000 miles on foot? They mean like square miles? Um, many of these areas were initially searched and searched again. Law enforcement officers have searched the neighborhood, surrounding neighborhoods, schools, and many other areas of the county by foot. Bloodhounds and handlers have searched the same areas. There have been aerial searches with helicopter, drones, and a fixed wing plane. These aerial searches have been conducted on multiple days and multiple nights using thermal imaging technology. Sebastian's residence, the yard, the house, the vehicles have all been searched multiple times. The neighborhood where Sebastian lives has been canvassed. Neighbors' houses have been searched. Sebastian is autistic and his family says he is drawn to water. Pools in the neighborhood were searched. Dive teams were brought in and bodies of water around the neighborhood and beyond that area were searched, including caves. What about the technology aspect? Have you collected security video from area homes and businesses? Have cell phones been checked? Many neighbors and businesses have provided video from home and business surveillance systems. We are grateful for that cooperation. The video has been collected and from the beginning of the investigation has been analyzed and enhanced where possible by tech experts with the TBI, FBI, and Secret Service. Dang, and the Secret, oh, they were trying to get that one more, the, I'll show you guys that real quick before we do the next interview because it's short. I bet that's why I went to Secret Service. To date, nothing gathered from these video systems has been determined to be significant. We do caution that some surveillance video being shared in the public may have been misinterpreted or misidentified or not shown in its entirety. It has been determined that it does not hold any evidentiary significance to the investigation. Numerous search warrants have been executed, cell phone data has been analyzed, and any other available digital evidence has been collected, searched, and documented. Information was collected from Sebastian's gaming system and has been analyzed. With help from the FBI, vehicles that were placed in the area at or around the time of Sebastian's disappearance have been... A with the help from the FBI, vehicles that were placed in the area at or around the time of Sebastian's disappearance have been accounted for. Dang. These videos and all the electronic evidence that has already been reviewed is often also being reinvestigated. So they are pouring through it and then pouring through it again. What's going on now in the investigation and what's next? The search for Sebastian has not stopped. Every day, tips and leads are investigated. People are being interviewed and re-interviewed. Evidence that has been reviewed once already is being gone over again. We continue to ask residents in the area of the search to keep an eye on your property to see if anything may have been moved or displaced. Is this a place where a child could have hidden? If you have property that has ledges or holes that a teenager might find interesting and you can't search it yourself, please, Contact the tip line and we can have someone check it out for you. They got a typo right there. Just let you know, TBI. That's a T there. Anyway. 
if you know Sebastian and have information about him, what he likes, how he acts that you think could be relevant, let us know. We know we know how many people are so very invested in getting Sebastian home. We will update this information as there may be any developments. Please use the tip line at 1-800-TBI-FINE to provide any relevant information you might have, or you can send it to tips to TBI at tbi.tn.gov. Please do not send tips to our social media pages. Finally, we are extremely grateful to so many members of the Sumner County community for the time attention, and prayers being offered to help find Sebastian. The members of multiple law enforcement communities, emergency management personnel, wildlife organizations, so many other groups, along with the very generous businesses and individuals who have provided well wishes for Sebastian, along with water, food, and other comforts to searchers. All these contributions are so greatly appreciated. Thank you. Look at this handsome young man. Oh, so cute with the doggies and the okay. I'm, I, he's still cute with the snake. Still cute. Oh goodness, he's such a good looking fella. Please keep sharing his flyer. Absolutely, absolutely. She did do a great job with that interview. So uh, Jenny's been dropping that. We have that. Let me pull up before we go. Chronicles of the of Olivia. I keep wanting to say Chronicles of the Olivia because I'm used to saying Chronicles of the Shady. But let me show you the video. It came out on the 14th and chronologically we're on the 17th. So I did kind of skim over it because it's not really an interview. But hang on, I hit the wrong tab. We begin with a surprising development. Okay, it's normal speed. All right. Element in the search for 15 year old Sebastian Rogers, who's been missing for 18 days. An exclusive look at new video evidence. Thanks for joining us here at UA 26, around 3 10 a.m. Now, there are no street lights in the Stafford Court neighborhood, so it is at night, pitch black. What you will see here are these two points of light believed to be people with flashlights in the area around Sebastian Rogers' Hendersonville home. It is believed Sebastian left his home barefoot and with a flashlight sometime overnight. Since his disappearance, authorities have reviewed security video from homes in the neighborhood looking for clues. We have had several clips that have come in. And this one is getting the most attention, showing signs of activity around Sebastian's home the night he disappeared. You see, two light sources, which we've circled to help you follow. For point of reference, the security camera was pointed toward the back of Sebastian's home in a common area. In the video, you see subject one with a light source in the lower right-hand corner. Then you see subject two briefly appear and move toward the first before that light source is covered or obscured by bushes. Subject one, a few seconds later, then moves out of frame. Then subject two reappears and follows subject one off screen. It's a short time later and it's very vague, but then you see one of the subjects moving quickly back through the common area and that is it. I know there's not much to see here. You certainly cannot identify anyone, but those close to the investigation tell me the mere fact that there is now evidence that someone is in the area around Sebastian's home is significant. This video shows suspicious activity in the immediate area the night Sebastian disappeared. Could one of these subjects have been Sebastian? Did he meet and leave with someone? Sebastian's father says his son would not go with a stranger. It's up in the air for me because I don't think he would get into a vehicle with somebody unless he knew them. So what exactly are we seeing here? I know investigators are doing what they can to try enhancing the video for any more clues. For now, this video is now part of the Sebastian Rogers missing person file. And I'm told it could become more significant depending on where the ongoing investigation leads. We'll be following. I don't know. I feel like we see two orbs and we just read the TBI newsroom. There's nothing of 
evidentiary value in that. What do you guys think about that video? It's just two little dots on the screen. I lose my oh no, I'm, I'm like wait I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like did I disconnect no I you're fine to, I was trying to get over to my mute button um I I mean I feel like I honestly feel like could it not be like a reflection I don't know kind like of? you can kind of see like it could be trees blown I just feel like we could there's nothing to really see there at all I don't know but some people say they see all kinds of shit. Some people say a ponytail. Like, they were saying all kinds of stuff like that on Pascal. And he was like, I just don't see it. Alien abduction. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it's just... That's... Th that the it's Secret the Service didn't grain that them. for release? The same... With CIA saw terrorists in their homes and the, mm, I don't know. I feel like I get. I think I get what you're saying. Like, I need to see it without their circles. That would be nice. If there is something there, I, I think I get what that girl's saying. Like, if there is something over there, I don't think law enforcement would. But I don't know. Let it be floating around out there. No pun intended. I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot, so. We are going to move on to. I just don't think it's enough. Somebody. Like, yeah, that's it. It's like, just, just not enough to say anything. Sorry, so I'm, I'm told that. Man. No, you're fine. I'm told this was recorded on the 17th. I think it's posted on the 18th, but I am told it is recorded on the 17th. So let's see. Here we go. In today's video, I interview the mother and stepfather of Sebastian Rogers, a 15-year-old who vanished from Hendersonville, Tennessee. On February 26, 2024, he vanished and hasn't been seen since. Although he doesn't like to be dirty, it's kind of funny because he also doesn't have awareness because if you look, he's got chocolate milk on his face because he didn't like it all the breakfast. It's funny like that. Can you recap the overall story of Sebastian's disappearance, kind of walk through that day. Um, Sunday, the day before he went missing. Um, we got up and, fun fact, I made breakfast that morning. <laughs> um, we had a good time. We were laughing, we were joking. Um, he talked to family on the phone during breakfast to brag. Um, we went and picked up our niece. Yes, uh, yeah, I got a call. And um, asked if I could go and pick her up, and I did. And so um, we went to that, we went to BJ's, um, had a good time there. He ate a colossal popcorn. Um, came home to put groceries away because we bought snacks because, you know, he's 15, he needs snacks. Um, we went to the ball. I agree with that, Mo. Like, that is one thing it does show us right it's extremely dark there though like i mean i mean that's kind of weird to say oh it's dark at night there well like yeah we know it's dark but like we are go um i think jenny had the number number nine number nine thank you thank you oh and ellie and then from there we went to dinner came home um he took out the trash that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. Um, about nine o'clock, told him to go to bed. He's come out of his room where he was playing. He said, All right, good night, Mama. Good night, puppies. Love you. He went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. And um, Six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning, and that's when he went in here. What was going through your mind at that point? Like, what were the feelings that you were feeling? To censor myself, holy freaking crap, this can't be happening. Where is my kid? Choice words were used. Um, like, you know, where the F is he? You know, um, 
I had called my, I had looked through the house for him because it was typical for him to get up and come and rummage for snacks and things like that. And he likes to dip behind the, you know, walls and watch, you know, and, um, and then he comes out after I come back and he likes to scare me. <laughs> but, um, after I looked and I mean, mind you, all of this took place in like one minute flat, but, um, I didn't see him in his room. I looked all over. I ran through the whole house. I looked out all the doors and windows and I was like hollering his name and, um, I picked up the phone and I called my husband and I said, um, I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in his effing house. I can't find our son. And, um, I like, I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school and he's already like, I, at this point I was like hysterical and I was crying, I was screaming. And, um, <coughs> he was like, um, uh, three wave, he three wave law enforcement. And um, was telling them like our son is missing and we don't know what's going on. And he like he was like go back to the house. We're on our way. And I ran back, well, drove back to the house. And um... to be fair, I, if I'm not mistaken, because we do want to call out like things that mm -hmm. are different as well, right? We want to. Yep. Um, Did you catch something? Yeah, uh, I think this is the first interview she mentions. I think it might be the first and only interview she's mentioned driving around the neighborhood. Good catch. So. Yeah, previously she said. Previously she woke she up saying he wasn't there. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and then called Chris. Um, she okay. said that I know in two of the interviews I've seen. So this yep. for me was the first one I heard where she said Drove she added the driving around. around, which isn't a bad thing. She probably no. did get in the car and drive around the neighborhood and talk to Chris on the phone while they called 911. Absolutely. But people are Good pointing catch. that out. So great catch. No, I love it. That's what we have to look into. Um and yes, self aware this is on full blast. The volume is. Twenty days later, we even found him. God. Yeah, I can't even imagine how stressful that is. And also, um, like when we were driving up here, like this neighborhood is so pretty and nice. And um, do you think has he ever like walked away before? Or, like has that ever happened? It's just. No, um, first time. He's not a child that wonders. He's not one that is prone. Like, he doesn't have a history of being no. an eloper, which is common. And I have friends with children on the spectrum who do struggle with elopement with their children. But no, Sebastian, that's one thing. He's always been a blessing. He's not been an eloper or a runner. Um, his his primary areas are like social and emotional dysregulation issues and things like that. Um, but he's very smart. He's functional. Um, Overall, he's a pretty happy kid. I mean, he's he's a teenager. He's coming into his hormones. He's angry that he's growing a mustache, but um, for the most part, he's a happy kid. And um, what are your theories? Like, I'm sure your mind just thought of every possible thing that could have happened. But is there any theory that you can talk about that you think? What I can tell you is, with all law enforcement, with everybody that's involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Everything is being looked at from every possible aspect. Um, Everything from he got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching to the worst. Yeah. And and that's currently where we're at. I mean, it's... Yeah. We're just trying not to go down that road because well, we're going to find him. Speculating causes problems. Assumptions cause issues. And based on facts of what everybody knows, right now, there's nothing, and everything is still on the table to be looked at. I just know he's out there somewhere. One other question I have is, recently, Channel 5 in Nashville, they had security footage that showed two flashlights um, the night he disappeared. Is there anything um, that you think about this video? or? Sure. So... There's a lot of speculations about that video that are floating on the internet. Okay. And that is exactly what it is. It's speculations. Now, what I can give you an official statement on is TBI Newslink has released a statement from law enforcement between local law enforcement, state law enforcement, some federal law enforcement, and they have analyzed that video so many times over that everything that everybody is trying to assume is a flashlight. I'm, I hate to say this. 
it's not. As much as we would love it to be one, it's not. Um, I'm not going to go into details as far as where that video is shot from, but I can tell you, as the parents, we have seen the video firsthand from law enforcement. We know exactly where it was taken from, and nothing that is being assumed right now is actually true about that video, unfortunately. Okay. And anything about other, any other videos or anything like that, please refer to the TBI news link that they have out there, the Am updated Amber Alert stuff. And it will give you the most up-to-date information that all info, uh, law enforcement has. And they will give you current as far as what's what and how they're looking at things. And if there's any new video for it, I do them. Please. Yeah. Um, security footage is really like a game changer. Um, we're working on Riley's strain and trying to find like if someone missed one on a corner or something. So that's uh, Around this neighborhood um, and this, well, this whole community. I mean, I can tell you that much here. When it comes to the cameras, there has not been one person that has said no. And trust me, it is greatly felt that everybody has been so open, so helpful in pushing out any which way they can. I mean, there's been some families that have actually been on vacation that yes. weren't home Don't and they got information, they got permission from that family to take a look at their cameras and go in their houses without them even being present, uh, which has been amazing. So. Oh, I was muted. That's awesome. But even people, it's such a tight knit neighborhood that even people who are at home are like, yeah, go get our camera, go look, go search. Shambles, um, what he's talking about from Ellie is what I just read off from the TBI newsroom and Jenny has been dropping it in there. Mm -hmm. but yeah. That's good. Um, if there was something that you could say to Sebastian, if he was listening, what would you say? Oh, brother. Um, that if you can see this or hear this, that we just want you home, baby, and we love you. And um, there ain't nothing that will stop us from coming and getting you and bringing you home. I can't speak for his father, but I'm pretty sure we all have the same opinion that we love you, miss you, we want you home. If you can, call us, get wherever you can, let us know, and we will come get you. Call 911, run out into the street, go in public, anything. The signs that we've been blessed to have family, friends, and even some in the community that have been helping us, but we've been out spreading those as far as we can, even over state lines, um, trying to get awareness because, you know, not everybody knows that he's missing and there's a chance that if someone could see him and not even realize who he is. So we want to get his face out there because we want him home. Surprisingly, even locally, there are some folks that don't kind even know hurt. what's going on and it's kind of like a shocker like how do you not know you know it, it's it is amazing because in the past couple of weeks you've got two cases a 15 year old boy that has vanished without a trace you've got a 22 year old six foot four or seven uh, college kid from missouri who has vanished without a trace like that that's a huge significance here that it's like wow how <laughs> so that's scary yeah. So, of course, he's speaking about Riley, and Riley has been found now. He, unfortunately, uh, was found in the river. Uh, thank you, Vet Girl. 1 800 TBI. Find any information pertaining to Sebastian Rogers missing February 26, 2024, from Hendersonville, Tennessee. Thank you. You did not have to send that. Why do people call in with their, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I saw something. I see Modine. I, you know, I think a lot of people speculated that, that, you know, could he have been groomed? Someone have groomed him. They've been very adamant that, you know, he, they were very strict online. Um, parents seem to be pretty on top of things. Dad, a law enforcement officer, these two ex military. I don't know. I mean, obviously anything is possible. Someone did ask earlier about his niece or, well, it would have been cousin. And that's a possibility of something to think of. Yeah. And unfortunately, the, the college kid is from Missouri, I think. Yeah, Missouri. I can only imagine what his family is going through. It's like your worst nightmare. Come on. Gotcha. Do you guys receive 
hate that, on the internet. Yes, and it's ongoing. It's every single day. Um, people are people, and they have their opinions. Um, everybody is a formulating their idea of what's going on and who's guilty and who's not guilty because they want to know or they feel they need to know. There's a difference. Unfortunately, what I will tell you is that when you're the family in this position and you're working with law enforcement and everything's going the way it goes, people automatically assume this parent or that parent. And in this situation, I can promise you every single parent has been vetted. I can't go into details, but I can tell you we have been vetted and we have been cleared um, of all possibility of wrongdoing, foul play. There's nothing to that. Um, so thank you for that reminder, Bob. Good to see you, by the way, Will. Um, Olivia encourages pausing. So we'll make sure we're going to do that. So this is the second time I've heard him say that. And we have not heard a clearing from law enforcement. That doesn't mean, obviously, that they have. I don't. I get what he's saying, though. They've been vetted. They've been dug into. But we also just know oh. they don't clear people quickly, or at all. They don't clear them until. Yeah, I don't know why he said cleared. It could have just been a, mm -hmm. you know, a moment of like misspeaking. Maybe, maybe he feels like they've cleared them. You know what I'm he saying? He might feel that way. He might feel that way, and that's how it came out. It's very possible. Yeah, he could have been. He could have been. Um, I think we all want to know that, Sebastian. Like, people don't just go missing. They don't just go missing. <laughs> We've heard all kinds of stories. I pretty much don't even go online anymore at this point. I, on the other hand, I do go on. And I do talk to these folks. And I want them to understand they have this formulated opinion on who we are not who we truly are. They've never met us. We've never been, we've never crossed paths with some of these folks. But I have told them all online, if you want to know, just ask me. I'll answer your questions to the best of what I can. There are some things that I cannot give you because law enforcement has dictated that we are not to provide certain information. But I will try. I am direct, I am brash, but I am very respectful. So if you have questions, ask i'll give you what i can just be respectful please and keep in mind there's three parents and there's thousands and millions of people out there that may have a question i am we are trying to get to them i promise you how has your guys's life been what was that ben my dogs were barking i'm sorry yeah. i had to mute you're fine you're fine um laundry you're right you know we thought we had everything locked down and every time the kids found a way around it or kids gave them cheaper phone tablets etc we taught ours how to handle things but and that's the thing like we don't know if he did find a a way to connect with someone online or something yeah I, it doesn't matter if they are guilty or not the fact remains that sebastian's missing and, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. Obviously, it matters if they're guilty, but guilt or not aside, this young man's missing and he needs to be found. And yeah, Tr Ozzy, Trisha, you're absolutely right. They don't owe YouTubers, social media, Facebook, or not, they don't owe them anything at all. But they're still giving quite a bit. That's why I'm like leaning towards no involvement from any of them because they're just maybe they're pulling the wool over my eyes i just feel i find all three of them extremely credible in what they're saying i might not like some of the things i've heard that they've said but i find a, to believe that they care about sebastian and they want him home more than anything affected by the like i know it's a broad question but what's like when you wake up in the morning what's it just like miserable to be honest with you oh just hear that mama you hear that mama? Or 
guys' life been affected by this? Like, I know that's a broad question, but what's, like, when you wake up in the morning, what's it just like? Miserable, to be honest with you. Think of it like this. You wake up every morning and your routine is what it is and you know it, right? Now wake up when this happens and you can't figure out what to do. You struggle every single day on trying to get out of the bed to deal and face everybody's negativity, you know, and you try to make it a positive thing. Or the fact that my son's still not home. You know, we mm. have a bedroom that's empty that is never normally ever empty, except for when he's with his dad every other weekend. So now we have a child that's missing. So there's no words to, to describe it, but I can just tell you, it's like you get up and now you don't know what to do. Sebastian's parents also talked about how his actions and behaviors could be different or how he would respond in a new environment. Well, that's, that's kind of tricky because <laughs> Sebastian hasn't been on his medication in 20 days. So he is rambunctious. He, he's going to be hungry. He will, he, he turns to the bottom of his pit. I mean, he, he's your teenage boy, you know, always hungry. Um, on the spectrum, yes, but not one autistic child in this world is like another one. What we can tell you is he's, he's smart. He can be goofy. Um, he kind of has issues with personal space. He hasn't mastered. He can be. A, <laughs> a, a, so you're, um, you're the second person that has mentioned that, that girl, but so far, in our interviews and we're going in chronological order but that's not what i have noted but so far i have a full page of the positive traits that they have spoken on on sebastian and only a fourth of the page of the of the discipline stuff and and yeah, including that is then strictly monitoring his um social media account so i just mm -hmm. guess i'm just not seeing that me either. Um, uh, maybe we are, maybe we're just not there in the interviews, but so far I've seen I have a lot more about the positivity mm -hmm. of their son. Mm. Being on video calling him names and the bad names neighbors. Okay, well, let's see what happens here. Being your face kind of kid. He's <laughs> he can be aggressive if he's upset. Yeah. He's emotional. He's a teenager. He's got he doesn't like punch and hit and throw, but he no. gets really like aggressive stance or like clipped where he just won't talk to you or, um, you know, if he's really upset, he like growls. Yeah. He... Yeah. Uh, mm. Sure. Look. He's vigilant. You know, we don't expect everybody to stop what they do and spend every waking minute, but you would be surprised on how easily people are complacent and not realize certain things. We're all guilty because we're all human. We all live a daily life, but sometimes just being a little bit extra vigilant. Aware of your surroundings in case there's something suspicious. You never know, but don't ever stop is all we ask. Please keep looking, keep searching, um, anything, reach out, you know, doesn't matter. Yeah, we're gonna definitely, um, you know, keep his story in the spotlight. And all it takes is for one person to see something or know something and so that's just one that one clue the old saying see something say something and a few others but we're working with everyone we can and take in like some people have been kind and reached out with resources that i didn't know were out there and i've reached out to all of them um truckers against trafficking we reached out to them just in case biker world that's one thing everybody has in common is their love for a child and they can't stand to see children missing hurt and it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter what group it is. That's one commonality between every group. And that's why as a, as a part of being in that world, we go and we utilize our brothers and sisters to help spread that word. You'd be surprised on how easy it is to spot somebody. This, this, the bike, so. Um, how can people help? Every, I mean, this community, I'm gonna tell you right now, far and wide, multiple communities, uh, counties, various people, some people in other states, uh, reach out either through social media, uh, in person, but everybody is searching. They've looked, uh, they're constantly looking, they're constantly 
giving us ideas. Hey, check this. What about this? All of that is great. Um, Support anything that could potentially, even if it's little. It doesn't matter what it is. See, I just, the encouragement to report. Um, where some of uh, you guys said Trev had an interview. I, I skimmed through his stuff and I didn't, I didn't see Trev interviewing um, anyone. But if he did, let me know because I want to make sure I get that in here. I thought I had all of the interviews, but it might not have been labeled as an interview. You're already nine hours in. I know, but here we are. I know. I, bet you <laughs> no. I know. But but to be fair, I mean, the first two and a half hours was chroma stuff. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So here we go. I might only go live once a week, but we make it a doozy. Is, however, yeah, every time. What we can <laughs> ask is that instead of people assuming and trying to put negative out there, just try to stay with the facts and report all the things that are positive. Um, any ideas that may help. Trust me, all law enforcement are available and they are looking at everything. Sebastian Rogers is still missing. If you know something, say something. Chronicles of Olivia. Okay. Yeah, I know Trev was on Duchess. We went over that one. Um, and then he was on Josh's. There was an interview on Josh's. Uh, I, I, have, I, seen I haven't seen that one. I haven't huh. seen that one. Who was it, Seth or Chris? Um, I don't know. That's what I'm trying. Hang on. Laura's back here. Let me make sure. This is her fault, by the way. You there? Is that you, Laura? Yeah. What up, me. Shawty? Okay. So you, up, the reason you? we're nine hours in going through these in chronological order pops up to say hey. Dude, I've been listening <laughs> to you for nine straight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I cannot oh, believe you know, I haven't left yet. But I mm -hmm. just. I have a couple questions. I know it's kind of going back a little, but I thought I heard, uh, again, it's been nine hours, but I thought that I heard that the stepfather wasn't around when he went missing, mm -mm. like he was out of state or something. Well, he was three hours away in Memphis. He was, he was three hours away working in Memphis. He hadn't okay. been home for... Uh, since like the beginning of the month. Okay, yeah, yeah, since the beginning of February. So then mm -hmm. how come when later on in a different interview, the mom said we all went to sleep? Yep. And then I mean, it's just, up. it could just be like the way you think, speak, like, you know? Yeah, they went to sleep in their wherever they were because they were on the phone together. Yeah. Um, and he told her to go to bed and put the dogs up or whatever. So he, she probably meant they went to sleep. The dogs could be her and the dog, or the yeah. we yeah. could be her and the dogs too. You know, like, yeah. But I that's thought, how I refer to my person dog. <laughs> I write it down, but I thought I heard him say when they got up in the morning that she ran to him and said he's not here. She called him. She called him right away and was running around frantically searching for him. Listen, Laura, if you going if you're gonna hear these things, we're gonna need you to clip these things. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. She both times I wrote it down, both times that he said it so far is she called him right away. And, but there was the third thing that just happened that Jones and picked up on and previous so they've talked about it three times and previously was call, she panicked, she called her husband, um, and she was searching for him everywhere. On the last interview here on, on the Olivia that we just had, she did add that she drove around looking for him. That was new information. Yeah, it should have been woke up to get him up, seen he wasn't there, freaked mm -hmm. out, looked around, like run around looking around, called husband, and then it was she called husband while she was in the car driving around looking mm -hmm. for him. So supposedly right after she checked the house, when she was on the phone, when she called Chris, uh, she was getting in the car then and driving around the neighborhood while Chris called 911, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
there was another um i should have wrote it down but i was like doing 10 things um yeah it was something else that i caught that just didn't seem right and let me also state that i don't believe they're involved in anything mm -hmm. i really don't i think she seems pretty credible but a kid that doesn't normally disappear mm -hmm. All of a sudden, just gets up in the middle of the night and walks out. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, he's not a runner. I know. There's, I know. There's also a first time for everything. Like she never went off the hill. Well, if it was the first time, <laughs> you don't yeah, but not that. in the not in the middle of the night. I mean, I also right. he's also a teenager. She was talking about his hormones, how he was upset that he was growing a mustache. There's a lot of changes that are occurring. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Yeah, but there's one thing, and Dietz, I don't mean to interrupt, but the other thing I couldn't yeah. I was in the middle of something earlier, so I couldn't jump up. But I have an autistic kid. He's not, he's truly the highest functioning, you would never know it, other than uh, his social, which has even improved like dramatically, you know, the tenfold. But mm -hmm. some of the things she was saying was very true that, or he said it about, you know, they'll tell you they have friends because their idea of a friend is different than let's say you or I ideal as a friend. And when he said that, I'm like, oh, I can, I can relate to that. So, because they don't really understand social cues the same, but right. that same kid, like, I don't think theirs is as high functioning as they're saying. And a lot of people, I've, so there's all different levels of autism, Asperger's, yeah. autism, everyone's on the same spectrum, but there are different levels. And a lot of people don't want to say it from, what I've seen, they don't want to say, yeah, my kid is autistic. So everybody's high functioning, but you know, that's what they say. But like, well, to be he, fair, they didn't know until the end of last year, he wasn't diagnosed. Yeah, he was then. just recently diagnosed. But he had a learning disability because they were saying that he was in like special classes. Now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know when that started. We don't know when the special classes started. He had, um, Duchess, I can't remember what it's called, if you could drop it. He was diagnosed with this chromosome thing. Uh, there it is, chromosome deletion um, at birth as an infant. And I, I, I agree with just for you here. I'd say that the autism is minimal compared to that uh, chromosome deletion, which I need to research more myself. But it causes... You're right. So it did cause, hang on, let me pull up. This was sent to me about the chromosome deletion. Um, the terminal chromosome 6Q27 deletion is a rare genomic condition that can result in intellectual disability, facial dysphoria, and organ dysfunction. So that could go with the intellectual disability, like you said. Okay. Management of the syndrome rests on the symptomatic and supportive therapy. It can cause behavioral and other issues as well. So I think that comes more from that condition than the autism, yeah. Okay, and that Thank makes you. more sense. Okay, that makes totally mm -hmm. more sense. But I wonder why they would even diagnose him with autism if he had everything going on with the other thing. It sounded like it would kind of mimic each other. You know what I mean? Uh, I kind of wondered if I had speculated out loud. And like I said, I have no, I'm ignorant when it comes to autism but if he was diagnosed recently and they talked about him being you know his autism having a lot of issues with um social cues and things like that so maybe just as he got older that's how it got diagnosed but i don't know how that works so. yeah like did did something happen or did they see something getting worse or become to be concerned about that took them for him to be diagnosed we don't know because that's pretty late though at 15 to, they oh, just well, that people that were in here earlier saying that some have been diagnosed later in their 30s and um, definitely older. So, I, like I said, I don't know about that. Hmm. 
Um, they didn't give like a specific age self aware, but they said that, you know, he's 15 in body, but mentally he is younger. So I don't, but they didn't give a specific like example. Did they say if he was on medication? Yes. And they, they are not sharing. Thank goodness. But he is on, on, on some medications. I don't know how many or what, but he is on something. And like in the Olivia interview, they stated that, um, you know, 20 days without his meds, he's going to be hyper. So I'm thinking something for, for that and who knows what else. And what do you think the reason is that they won't, they wouldn't give information if he was on body cam anywhere, which I don't really understand that. Like that's not, I understand a lot of stuff shouldn't have been asked or shouldn't have been answered, but that mm -hmm. to me isn't anything that should be private. Like that's something that public should know, you know? Yeah. We, he was seen walking South at, you know, 10 o'clock on the neighbor's body cam. So then they know, okay, he went in the direction of South. If he didn't come back North, then we know not to look that way. I, I don't know. I just found that odd that they didn't want to reveal that. Well, I didn't take it that way. So here on the TBI newsroom, and I think what Chris was referencing when it comes to that video is, oh, let me see where, if I could find it, was it up here at the top? Hmm. They're, they talk about a specific video, and I think it's that one with the lights that we see. And I thought that's what he was referencing in that little portion. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Okay. Um, we do caution that some surveillance video being shared in the public may have been misinterpreted or misidentified or not show in it, shown in its entirety. It has been determined that it does not hold any evidentiary significance to the investigation. So I think this is what they're saying. It's like, if people are reading into it that um, Sebastian is on there, this is coming straight from TBI saying like, it doesn't hold any evidentiary significance to the investigation. So when you're just speculating out there about it, it's not helping the case. So the theory is unfounded. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't understand how, if he was walking, if he walked away into the field that the investigators, you know, allegedly the dog scent went to, the construction field or whatever. The construction, yeah. Somebody has ring cams. Like somebody, mm -hmm. there's no way that not one person caught him on video if he walked away. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, but so dogs, they can track scent that's howled. Uh, Eve, I don't know if true crime with Eve's in here. She did a, a portion on this for Michael's case about like how long a dog can track a scent. So we don't, so the dog can find the scent and the dog can track the scent, but what the dog can't do is, is, is tell us when the scent was put there. So there's yeah. that, you know, we don't know. But the dog was pretty specific mm -hmm. about tracking it to the construction field and then lost it. The construction site, yeah, lost it. Yeah. Um, the uh, Seth, bio dad, said that it was lost. Like He didn't say it was lost on the road. He just said the way it was lost was indicative of him being picked up in a car. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It was a very bizarre case, that's for sure very bizarre because kids don't just go missing and you would think that you'd be picked up on ring camera if any of those things happen but then you also have the fact that he was picked up on camera um going home the that evening with mom so it's like what happened what happened see i don't know my last thought and then i'll let you get back to it is i yes i don't believe that they're guilty of something of murder or anything at least not yet but I think they're hiding something. I just don't know what. I don't think it's anything like super nefarious. But mm -hmm. I there's there's a piece of this that they're not telling. They're holding back. They're holding back. And and they've said that, you know, like there's, you know, there's some things that we have to hold in to protect the integrity of the investigation. 
and that's I appreciate that, but they are out there speaking the whole time. And um, and he almost sounds too, not too. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He almost sounds like he has every answer right, and that's kind of a red flag. I can see why people you are think? sketchy with him because it's like he answers everything right, and I, I don't know. It's just like got an answer for everything, and that's just not normal. Usually, they're more yeah. like her, like the mom is. I don't know. Yeah, I think you know that's probably why he's the one talking. You know, I don't think mom would do such a good job speaking right now. We've only heard a couple little snippets from De from Seth bio dad, and we're getting ready to hear him now on this uh, interview. He, him, and his mom actually speak on this inter interview at great length. I'm told. So we'll see where this one takes us because so far. Pascal interview with him was the longest and it was only like 10 minutes of him up there. So we'll see. Did you play Serafini yet? I didn't, I wasn't. No, like, not yet. I haven't <laughs> yet. I got to look and see where it goes. Like, she said like that the uh, but that was just Who two was days ago. This one? Who was this one? I can't read this that. This is a creator called Terry Lynn. Uh huh. It says, uh, grandmother Robin Seth and dad didn't. speak out. Yeah, I guess they came up on, on her page. Uh, yeah, because she's got a lot of nice things to say about Chris. Come on, man. Oh, I'm so sure it'd be interesting. All these creators reached out to them. Like, what are they like 20 mm -hmm. different creators? Yeah, it's a lot so far. Well, um, not, he went up on Pascal's without on his own. prompting yeah he that did. was just, yeah he did and i he think and dutchie's first one too i don't think was planned i don't know dutchie could probably tell you better but i don't dutchie said it. they contacted her yeah they contacted the uh or a friend got it connected them somehow she said she doesn't reach out to family members so someone uh yeah they wanted them. they want to get his name and face out mm -hmm. oh. yeah that was one of the things seth said was like because honestly, I that was one of the things I caught in his 3-4 interview. He was asked about social media. He's like, I don't know. I'm not on social media. I don't care. Yeah. Quit being keyboard warriors and get out there and look for my son. And then a week later, he's hopping up on Pascal and he said, look, I watched the last couple of your shows and I thank you for putting my son's info out there. And I think he's just like, I got to keep him at the top of the algorithm is basically what he was getting at. Okay. I don't know Terry Lynn, so be kind. I see some comments in chat. I don't, I don't know the creator, but we definitely appreciate showing the interview. So, any other questions, Laura? No. You're welcome to stay up here, but I'm gonna start playing this one. Can you put the link back there when you get a chance? Hey, yep. hey, hey! I do got a question to clarify for people. Um, who mm -hmm. may catch this on a replay. Like, you're going to put the timestamps of each one? Is that what you're doing? Yes, I will timestamp it. Okay, okay, just checking. As soon as I figure out, because I've never timestamped my video before, but we will do that. Me either, good luck. <laughs> Google to the rescue. <laughs> okay, so this is Terry Lynn. I'm told around the 35-minute mark, a little after, so we will see. He was working. 12 hours. He got a call in between the Calling a text message at about 6.20 in the morning. I'd been there since 6 p.m. Okay, hang on. I didn't, I went, I didn't go back for now. We will continue to do so until, until um, Sebastian is found. I appreciate it. All right. Nice to meet you and Terry Lynn. Great job. I'm going to draw some blood. We got connected. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for helping. Thank you. All right, Seth, you got this. And I know that you're going to think I'm crazy here, but come on, come on. Um, this cat is, is a part of everything. And I don't know if it's a sign. I don't know. Come on. So they have some questions for you. Come on, buddy. This is Kevin, of course. He's the mascot. Come on, buddy. And maybe he's got some, he's going to talk to us. So anybody have us any, any questions? Let's see. Um, they're thanking you for joining. 
let's see. Y'all had some questions earlier. Um, I'm trying to remember what that question was. We got a little disconnected. Uh, as long as it's not concerning anything during, that the that they're investigating, which they correct. have not let me really know much to begin with. Correct. Well, answer everything to my best ability. Correct. So, can I ask you? Have you had well, a when I walked? No, I haven't. I volunteered for a polygraph, and I was not given one. Okay. Was do you okay? So that's kind of what uh, Chris was referencing earlier about. I don't think he wanted to out that uh, Dad hadn't taken a poly, but here, okay. So this is. Let me start anew. This is all. This is on the eighteenth, uh, three eighteen. So Seth is saying he volunteered for a poly, but they did not give him one. Do you know of anybody that has been given one? That's been a big question. Everybody's asking. I'm just. I'm asking the questions, the hard ones that they've asked. I bet it for Seth. Y'all, y'all heard me. I said, I bet him. He was working 12 hours. He got a call in between that. Calling a text message at about 6.20 in the morning. I'd been there since 6 p.m. Because I would like to beat traffic. Because on 24, you never know how traffic is. Mm -hmm. I was there about 6 o'clock Monday evening at work. And then when I got the message at 7.20 Monday morning to call Chris, that it was a 911. And when I called, that's when I found out my son was missing. Okay, and they have another question here. They want to know how often do you feel? Okay, oh, I don't know if you can answer if the bed was slept in that morning. I don't know. I know that when I was when I got to the house and I walked in, I saw the room was a mess. Uh, blanket wasn't. I mean, his room, his bed wasn't made, stuff like that. But they had already, at least, had already been in the house to search. Okay. Okay. They want to know what the f is up with the step story. It's all over the place. I'll I'll answer that in my opinion. That way he doesn't have to. If that helps. It's it's fine because I mean I, I don't know. He's his own person. He's going to say whatever he wants to say. Mm -hmm. Is he one of your good friends? Who? Um. This stepfather. Talk every once in a while. Okay. Text. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll read some of his own answers if you want. Uh, when he left for Memphis, out of his, um, he has given. I've read the three. I think it was two or three answers that he's given. That's what I can say. I I don't know officially. See, I, can, I, can, I see. You did. You can answer that one. I don't know when Chris left for Memphis. From my understanding, he was there. He had been there. That's just my understanding. Is he was there? I know he was there the weekend before because when I had Sebastian. Sebastian's mom went to go see him. I don't believe he had been back, but they got him. I don't ask another man what he's doing, really. Okay, so the question up here on the screen was, do we know when Chris left for Memphis? And Seth said um, he had been there from his understanding because the weekend before, you know, Katie went to see him when he had. See, and that doesn't make sense either. So he's he's messing me up with this weekend stuff, but maybe he's just off on it because he wouldn't have had, or yeah, he he would have had the weekend before, but he said earlier, did he not say on Pascal that he didn't have him the weekend before when he was supposed to have him? That's what that's what I was saying. I think they may have like switched weekends or something, and I think there might be some confusion about. Like, because normally maybe it would have been his weekend, but because they switched, it wasn't his weekend. I, I don't know. Yeah, but I have to go back and hear him. Yeah, he was working, right? They both were, to the best of them. Yeah. yeah. Seth and Chris were both at work. Um, I mean, that should be messing me up proof. with the weekend. He's definitely messing me up with the weekend. Do y'all find okay. it alarming that... Um, stepdad was the one that had to like Seth had to find out from stepdad instead of Sebastian's mother no mm. not at all I don't either Kimberly Wells found it alarming I was just trying to gauge oh, like okay. is it alarming is I is would be that, a wreck I would be absolute wreck I, that's what I feel like I feel like she's doing everything she can to hold it together it's good to have that because I mean regard that's not his blood child it's mm -hmm. you know he and did was, marry into this and it's just it's a different kind of love like his mom's a yeah. wreck of course stepdad can handle it 
Well, and take into consideration, stepdad is away. He's at work and his wife is home alone dealing with now law enforcement, talking to them about the situation, et cetera. So to me, it kind of makes sense that Chris was the one to text because he was free to do so. Because they Mm -hmm. wanted him to know as soon as possible, probably. I mean, I would imagine it's like, okay, we're going to hang up. You talk to the police, I'll message you know, Seth and the grandmother and whoever else might know something, you know, or that needs right. to be. that that's how it would work for us. I did that for my husband. I think right? I would With be a basket family. case and I'd be like, I cannot call him, you know, I cannot I cannot tell him his son is missing. Like I don't know. See, but that just shows how everybody's so different in the way they would handle yeah. things. And it was a text too, right? That uh, Seth it got was, when he got off work. It was a text to call me nine one one. But it, if they know his schedule, they know maybe they knew he was at work and when I don't know. Yeah. But also, like you work in if he works in law enforcement, like um, I, you know, when I had to tell my husband, I I called through off, you know, through the office, like, hey, patch me through, like to his desk. Like you have to sometimes you have to go around those things. And I would think with your child missing. Um, the other side would go around those things. But again, that's just us speculating. Yeah. And and that's that goes back to it. That could be why Chris did the three-way call with 911. Because mm-hmm. he needed Katie on the other line for clarification if need be. But she was probably too much of a wreck to even, like, she was probably <laughs> freaking the fuck out, y'all. Look how much of a wreck she is right now, like, in these interviews. Like, yeah. like days later. She, yeah, she's no. like rocking in the chair. She she's crying like every time she talks about him. It's you, you can't. I, I mean, you mm-hmm. can you can do whatever you want, but to me, you just have to consider people where they are and not mm-hmm. where your expectation of them is. Mm. Yeah. Right. I'll okay. just remind in the chat people asking if they were cleared. Um, they've all basically said they're cleared. However, Ali has not cleared anyone officially. Um, and I don't suspect they will until Sebastian is found. I don't think they should until he's This right here is. No, I don't either. Sebastian Rogers' father said that he's speaking out on his son that has been missing for three weeks. Chad, you know what's looking at? I don't believe my son would go on an adventure with a friend. If he were to want to go on an adventure, I believe he would go on an adventure with me. Miss Gracie, um, I have not seen the video of Sebastian and his mother out there on Sunday night. Um, I've asked to see some of these videos and I have not been given access to see them. And he won't be. That's the thing. Um, no, nah. he should know that he should know that too. Um, but, uh, Reese, 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 I said that because of what he had initially said that it would have been like the 11th or 12th based on his very first interview. But, it would actually be man and that's why this man's getting me with the bouncing around is he hadn't seen him since the last time he had him so if mom's weekend was the that weekend the let me go back sorry I'm wrong no mom. i think she's talking about you're talking about chris oh stepdad yeah, yeah so stepdad I think that didn't was give us earlier than date. that right i thought said, it was yeah, like he said the beginning of the month you're right sorry. yeah so um but I think that he mentions that on Smiley, so he okay. answers the question about that. I think it's at the beginning. Um, so if if Ma, if it was was Mom's weekend, I'm still. All right, I'm gonna shut up. We're gonna go on. I'll figure out the weekend situation later. I may be law enforcement, but I'm with a different county than Sumner County, and I'm not part of the investigation. Therefore, they won't break protocol by allowing me to see some of these things that I've requested. Good. They shouldn't. Mm-mm-mm. And I'm going to just, I'm keeping my, I, yeah, I, I'll say it. Um, I don't think they did the best job, but that's just my opinion. I, I'm, I'm from here. He doesn't look. You don't think they did? Look, we don't want them to break cr- protocol for Seth. We don't want them to break it for Chris. We don't want them to break it for anyone. They have a protocol for a reason. and. Let's what, they didn't do the best job of what? We don't know what they did or didn't mm-hmm. do yet, right? I mean, we know what they've got on the site, but how, 
how do we know what kind of job they did here? Mm -hmm. Did I miss it? I mean, maybe we do, but I haven't seen that. If they, if mom goes to Memphis when dad has him, then where is mom and stepdad when he is with mom? Well, she goes to Memphis to see stepdad. So I'm guessing when, um, when he's with mom, if, you know, Chris isn't at work, he's probably there with them. That would be my guess. See, in all these interviews, though, the one thing that I have not heard, which I've been waiting for, mm -hmm. is court ordered. Why all of a sudden does dad get custody? Because if you could say, like, they're making it out like it didn't go through the courts. However, the way they talk about mom's weekend, dad's weekend, it, it was definitely court ordered. Their weekends well, that were I don't think that they, they're, I didn't think they were making it out that they didn't go through the courts. They just said that it was agreed upon on by all parties that he would get cut, he would take full custody. Why, and it's, why do we see, think it was court ordered? Because of the way they're talking about this is mom's weekend, this is dad's weekend, but if dad, you know, came in, we would give him extra time. Just their verbiage is court ordered. Okay. Mm. I just say that, yeah, they mutually agreed upon it. But maybe they do. Maybe it is court ordered and they have a plan. Let see. Yeah, no, even if it's court ordered, still you can him, still mutually uh, agree four upon four hours and 14 minutes the first call. Yeah, you can still de de deviate from that. Absolutely. But I just want to know why dad all of a sudden got custody. Um, they kind of mentioned that briefly earlier, and I'm told they go into it later in other another interview, but it is to do with um, Chris hopefully getting his daughter, I think, was the situation. But I'm not for sure entirely. And I think the second time, uh, I don't know how long it was that we spoke for a long time. It was over four hours. Mm -hmm. My Bluetooth died twice. Oh my God. <laughs> Seven, three, two, thousand. Um, Miss uh, Jennifer, negativity is back. He's never eloped in the past. Miss mm -hmm. Gracie, you have done the magical thing of confusing my name with my son's name. Okay, let me go here. They are, he's answering questions directly that she doesn't have up there. So I don't know who he's talking like what he's answering, you know? I know. Mm, he said something to a Tracy. Oh, see it. Yeah. Oh, that I was not out to dinner. Mm -hmm. But I was informed that Sebastian was out to dinner with his mother. Was he or was he abusive ever to your ex-wife? Oh Lord. Uh, uh, I I can't answer that. They did have dogs out. Yeah, they had a total of the last time I was informed, they had at least twelve dogs out. Twelve dogs. Ninety and blast. Your mother laughed at that question, but 90 days home blast I asked him. I'm just going to highlight it there. Is or was he abusive ever to your ex-wife? Well, no. Don't take this personally. Don't care. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah. he was asked, was he ever abusive to his ex-wife? And he said, no, don't take it personally. I didn't care. So, okay. I don't think that was us say that. Everyone has cameras. They would know if he drove back or not. Yeah, not everybody has cameras. They say, trust me. They say not everybody has cameras, even if you're on a six hundred some odd thousand dollar home. Not everybody. Do you have to go through him, Chris, or could you also communicate with Sebastian's mom? Like, was he the controlling type? I communicated with Chris more than I can communicate with Katie, mom, with, with Katie, basically because I could get a contact more with Chris than I could with Katie. 
He keeps breaking up. So he communicated with Chris more than Katie, but I'm trying to. That's what he said. He said yeah, but w he said why, and I didn't catch it. So I'm going to play that again. I didn't either. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, here, I'll slow it down to normal. It kind of like breaks up there for a split second. It's hard to hear. With Katie, basically because I could get a contact more with Chris than I could with Katie. I didn't get it. What? Basically because I could get a contact more with Chris than I could with Katie. Like, Chris is the one that called me and sent me the text message telling me my son was missing. Not his name. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. I could get in contact. Yeah, early February. Okay. He said the reason he talked with Chris more, so dad, so dad speaks with Chris more than Katie because he could get in contact with Chris more than he can Katie. That makes sense too, if they, you know, they don't get along very well, mm -hmm. but they recognize they want to need to do the best for Sebastian. That would mm -hmm. make sense. Sorry, I'm just writing it down. Okay. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I call his that. phone to communicate with him. When I communicated with Chris about Sebastian, it was to find out about school and things like that. But I would call and speak to Sebastian on his phone. Okay, talk to Sebastian on his phone. Why the stepdad says he hasn't seen him since early February? Good question. Oh, it, he was working on that St. Jude project in Memphis. From my understanding, he has a trailer and he normally takes it down there and just stays down there because it's cheaper. I know what it's like to work 15 minutes every day to get to work and fight with traffic. So I wouldn't want to drive three and a half hours. To get to track better. I mean, sometimes I feel I don't get enough sleep as it is. Okay, so basically he was asked, you know, why does he stay there? Uh, and he just responds that it's, I don't know if anybody else is having a hard time hearing like I am, but the transcript is really helping and it's cheap. He, he just responds that it's cr cheaper for Chris to stay there in his camper on the job site. Um, instead of driving three and a half hours, three and a half hours, one way to work is just not feasible anyway. So that makes well, sense. Well, I mean, where are they getting that Seth was kind of like pointing fingers at Chris? Because I haven't gotten that yet. Not yet, but we're getting, we're barely into okay. it. So we'll, okay, we'll okay, okay. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, he's not up there the whole time. I'm like, wow, she's like me. She got an 11 hour live, but he's not up there the whole time. If you hear snoring, it's not Apollo. It's totally me. <laughs> It's totally you. Yes. <laughs> she just not talk to me. I'm falling behind, but you know. No, you're good. Is Chris a control freak? Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean to answer that? From my perspective, I will. Uh, in my opinion, um, uh, he seems to take over everything, and that's what it looks like to me. He's the one speaking in an interview. If I, I mean, I'm, if I were the mother, I'm screaming, bring my baby back. That's me. I'm going to be screaming. I agree, Jennifer. Unfortunately, protocol is protocol. What? Um, so that was her opinion. Okay, Jennifer says, see, that's what I find odd. If he's never eloped in the past, it had to have been someone he trusted in order for him to leave. Okay, that makes sense. Eloped? What the I, hell? Why I would that matter? Know. I, I don't think he. What is it? Why did they say eloped? Yeah, I think they mean. I thought she meant like run off. But maybe they're talking about their marriage. I don't know. I maybe mean, I, I was thinking they're talking about the marriage. He said protocol is protocol. Yeah. Was he? I, I bet he was answering a different question, guys. Let me go back. Maybe there's. 
as okay here we go as the father you should have complete access regarding this case um and see that's where his, his law enforcement side versus his father's side of course you should but he also knows that protocol is protocol got it this yeah. one might be a tough one okay uh love in the laundry said a lot means to run away I, I think I yeah it could be but damn I we're think dumb I was just looking at we're the dumb <laughs> it is what it is we're ten hours in we're dumb back in my day <laughs> you're like back in my day we called it running away running away again <laughs> <laughs> <You're right there. laughs> and he should have all that stuff let's see yes he was going to be with his father. Yes, Jennifer, I, I truly believe that in order for him to get in the vehicle with somebody, he was either forced or he, he knew the person well enough to get into the vehicle. He wasn't, okay, that was that the was, he never was a bolter. He didn't bolt. He never wandered off like that. He was not a bolter. He loped. Is that what that was? Or did I, am I mispronouncing that? Where are we at here? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so laundry was right. So a load with the running off. And then I thought she said vaulter because my son is a pole vaulter. And I'm like, wait, why are they talking about him being a vaulter? But she says bolter. Got it. Bolter. Um, did you notice too that the grandma is in there in the chat too? Mm hmm. And oh, she says she's she doesn't talk to me. I can't see it. It's kind of like she's kind of stirring stuff. Of course, it's she's the second, second comment that, that I've seen from her, and the first one was about Chris, and this one was about Katie saying she doesn't speak to her or something. I, and see, and people are taking, they are not taking into consideration. This is the ex husband, this is the right. ex mother in law. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and, and I, I do feel Katie like says, Seth and Katie have been pretty good about saying, you know, like they like have been. Earlier, but it's Katie, not my wife. It's not my problem. You know, not my. Katie issue. said that she right. that he likes to make people think that she cheated on him, but that is not true. So there is some kind of toxicity there in the background. So of course, ex mother in law is going to be an asshole. You know, like come on, man. I had a good or had a good mother-in-law, so I don't know. It it doesn't. None of that means that you know the problems that they had have as adults no. in their relationship has nothing to do, <clears throat> as far as we know, with Sebastian being yeah. missing. Not at all. Has he ever eloped? Like, uh, has he ever ran off? No. He already answered. I thought I answered that one. My apologies. Okay. If you didn't, but no, he's never done anything like that before. Okay, she talked about her going to pick up another kid on Sunday. Then when did she take her home? I think they're talking about um, what's that lady's name? Um, I think it was is it the sister in law or the sister? I believe so, Miss Grayson. Okay. Hello, free side. Welcome. Ninety days on blast. My son has a is that an iron deficiency. I've watched him brush against the ball and have a bruise. So. Look at that comment. I've seen signs of abuse. I've never actually seen like fingerprints or anything of that sort. The one. Look at that comment. Who was Can you it? Answer us to why this. Um, they talking about, about what? The one yeah. on screen comment. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they they talked about that earlier. What is no, I, he he's responding to the ninety days on blast though, because he said that. And so I'm trying to find her comment. And okay, so ninety days on so she's not girl, this would totally be me. This is why I don't give interviews. So she's got a different comment up and he's just responding to the chat. So I think the one he's responding oh, to mercy. here is has Sebastian ever shown any signs of abuse? So let me go back. Okay. And so I'm trying to keep up with the chat and the transcript because he's answering directly, which is fine, but it's making it a little hard to track. <laughs> Meme all being messy in the chat. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Okay. Oh, oh, this makes sense to what you're saying. Uh, what uh, I think it was Batgirl saying about bruising easily. So let's hear that. Okay. She talked about her going to pick up another kid on Sunday, but when did she take her home? I think That's not what he about, answers. Um, what's that lady's name? Um, I think it was, is it the sister-in-law or the sister? I believe so, Miss Grayson. Hello, Freestyle. Welcome. 90 days on blast. My son has a sudden iron deficiency. I've watched him push against the ball, have a bruise. So, seeing signs of abuse, I've never actually seen like fingerprints or anything of that sort on him. As for bruises, I've seen the, I've seen my son get out of the shower. And it's like, where did this bruise come from? And he's like, I don't know. I've taken pictures of bruises and I've sent him to his mom. I just know that he bruises really easy being iron deficient that he is. He, it's one of the it's one of the things he's supposed to be taking twice a twice a day, though, morning and at night. Okay, so we've learned that's new information that Sebastian has an iron deficiency and bruises easily. And so he's talking about how easily like he's taken a picture at his house of him getting out of the shower and sent it to his mom. That's how easily he bruises. So I don't know if we can answer that question right there. I guess I called the probably for him. Okay, let's see. Well, it turned into criminal. Like I said, well, he is on the spectrum, yes. Is on the two spectrum. years. I'll answer it. Two years. They've been married for two years. And no cameras. Yeah. His phone was at the house. The police took it. The stepfather answered you all had a great co parenting. Whose phone was at the house? I think he's talking about Sebastian's. Yes. Oh my God, this is so Chris hard. Him, to... Yes, Chris is the one that told him that his child was missing. What is this? Are they just when like, he went missing? Was the only child? Yeah. Okay. So the phone, Sebastian's phone, was at his house. Now it's at the police station. I don't even know who asked that question. I don't see it, but that's what he's answering. Okay. There's a new question he's answering. I mean, they're just both when he went missing. Was the only child. They're, they're both randomly answering questions that we don't know what the question is. I know, I'm trying to keep up with it. They're just throwing answers out. It's like mix and match. But there's stuff in here because like, yeah, you know, learning that he has an iron deficiency and yeah. this is easily, that's, that's big info. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, let's see here. Chris started, the, yes, Chris is the one that told him that his child was missing. When he went missing, yes, he was the only child. When he went missing, yes, he was the only child. Was he the only child in the house? Okay, there we go. Yes, he was the only child in the house when he went missing. Fuller Adventures, yeah. Um, he was diagnosed. He was diagnosed at uh, uh, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt Hospital diagnosed him. Vanderbilt diagnosed him with autism. Yeah, I would think they would give him one. I don't know. Close to anemia, ninety days. Um, uh, not about those shoes. Will you want to answer why about the shoes, sweetie? Well, I'm sorry. What was that? I was reading the shoes. Uh, why he would not go out without his shoes? That's because well, he learned at a young age in South Georgia. We have fire ants down there, and one little mound of dirt, his little bitty feet. He learned really quick because they swarmed, and he was barefoot, and the fire ants swarmed up his legs. Oh, that was he was he adults. Um, actually, I'll go to the one above that. Allegedly, did he ever go anywhere anywhere without his phone? When he was here at my house, he had his wallet, his house key, and his phone. Three things that I always make sure he grabbed before he goes. Trying to teach him to be a proper proper adult. You know, don't go anywhere without your wallet, your phone, your key. Need all three of these things. Lord Marie, was he trusting of adults? Okay, so he's saying that someone asked if he would go anywhere without his uh phone and he says when he was here at my house he had his wallet his house keys and his phone those are the th three things that i always make sure he grabs so that also tells me he has to make sure sebastian takes them so it's something yeah. he's still trying to teach him but that doesn't mean it's something he's always following through with so so here so here's my question is it possible the little keychain flashlight was on his house keys i wondered that because then that uh, would mean he took his house keys with him when he left, if he yeah. left. Ah, 
Deets, look at Duchess's comment. In here? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hang on. I'm I'm fully paying attention over there. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, no, no. The grandmother. I think this is important, though. Said, oh, my God. Oh, that's. Well, listen. That, this I, is what's getting trying, people stirred up. It this, is. This. But I'm trying to be objective, I hmm, give the grandma some grace because her grandbaby is missing. And so, of course. And that's what sucks for Katie is, you know, if he goes missing on her watch, that's instantly where people are going to go instantly. Yeah. But man, that, that would, oh, that would hurt. That would hurt. Yikes on bikes. Yep. Bendy nailed it with that one. This happened after the, this interview. Thank you Did guys you for her, watching the chat. Did you call her Bendy? Yeah, we call, we call her Bendy. <laughs> that's her street I thought, name. I thought somebody just had me blocked. Uh, you, you, people kept talking to me. I was like, I don't see this person. Oh, well. <laughs> That's Bindi. That's Chinley's screen name. <laughs> I did not know that. How are you taking your head off the screen? It's not four by four. Okay. So sorry I'm not watching the... I, I get what you're saying, though. Act like an adult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Let me get back over here. Where got your wallet, your phone, your feet. You need all three of these things. Lord Marine, was he trusting of adults? It it kind of depends. Um, but most of the time, he pretty shy. He would sit there, shy. he would watch. We have communication, meetings, and most of the time, he would judge off my language, off of my body language, and so he could even approach. Welcome, Lord Marine. Oh, yeah. He was. It took forever when she was in the military. We were trying to get him in to be for a diagnostics, and literally, we couldn't. We couldn't get him. Uh, San Diego was pretty horrible. Uh, it was six months after he was born that we finally got him into Children's Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida. And they did a DNA test on him, and he came back with a chromosomal deletion syndrome. Um, he was missing one instead of, you know, he was, he was missing the end of 26, 1626 or 1627 chromosomal deletion syndrome. Okay, so he's talking there about the missing chromosome syndrome they diagnosed that at six months in jacksonville florida and vanderbilt's diagnosis was the same over last year i couldn't catch that sometime last year thank you kendall he has his mom and stepdad ever gone searching for sebastian you want to answer that or you want to answer that one no. No. <laughs> no. They've never went searching. Not, not searching with me. Not searching so with me. I, I can't. I can't. I can't tell you what I don't know. I, I'll say it. they were at the house. Was he trusting of adults? Okay. Now see. Yeah. Well, see, we don't know that because they've already told us repeatedly. They put signs from here to the state line. Like, well, on one of on one of Seth's interviews, it might have been. Pascal, he was saying that they were out handing out flyers and yep, he sure did. And that came so, from him. Mm -hmm, <sighs> from his mouth. Yep. Right. Well, think about this too. His if his mother feels this way, she's in his ear twenty four seven, most likely. And and may have made him question things. So I don't I don't know. I don't there's know. Um, oh, I don't either. These it's, these parents are hurting, but yeah, I mean, like you said. We, we heard him on the previous interview saying that they're out giving out flyers and doing this and that. We've heard the things they're doing. They're not just sitting at the house. Come on. I think he was. To you, probably, more so. Thank you, Apple. Yes, we do. Let's see. That's weird. Sorry, that is awfully weird. The, the, the three-way phone call is weird. Yeah, I haven't heard it. So... So do you find him trusting of adults, though? You do? I, like, no, well, I stated earlier know. that he would sit there and he would watch the interaction between me and the adult. And it would depend on what was going on. I have seen him step in between me and another adult to tell an adult to, to back away from his dad. And that was when he was even younger. And as he gets older, I watched him. He, he said, 
Why would he need to tell another adult to step like too much too close to him? Or why would he need to tell another adult? Were they arguing? Like, bro, you out younger, there fighting and shit? Older. Like, what's going on? <laughs> you at a pool hall and somebody's approaching you and Sebastian jumps I, in front of you? Like, bro. Yeah, I don't think it's that. I'm wondering if it's some of those social cues that he's missing. Or uh, not it missing, could be, like, yeah. Flat. Mm-hmm. And so, like, hey, you're getting... But then the uh katie talked about how he or maybe it was chris talks about how he likes to get close to people so maybe that was it maybe he, he sits there and watches the body language between them between me and whoever I'm, I'm speaking to you know and most of the time if i know the individual i'll be like i'll tell Sebastian, Sebastian introduce yourself either he would or he wouldn't and that would just depend on his attitude for the day or right then and there. I mean, <clears throat> try to be as lean as I did, I did at Waffle House getting to give a girl his phone number. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is. I'm trying to be his link. I did at Waffle House get him to give a girl his phone number. Um, so that's what they were talking about earlier. So he did encourage Sebastian to give a, a girl his phone number. Um, I wonder, I'm not saying like he did that with dad, but like, I wonder if he gave his phone number to other people. Um, I I don't see anything abnormal about anything that Seth is saying here though. Like it sounds a lot like what they were saying, like here, we, like he was talking about some days it he would be some days, you know, it just depended on his mood. And that's exactly what they had said earlier as well. So I feel like they're confirming each other that, you know, he, Sebastian, it just, it just depends on which, you know, mood you're going to get from him that day or whatnot, depending on if he was shy or not shy. That's kind of what I'm reading here from Seth. Dates, did you see the comment from Kat in the U.S. Navy in Terry Lynn's chat? I thought that you know, was we would still do very much for our military friends. Are they checking to make sure he hasn't been hit? Oh my goodness. Okay. That's okay. It's pretty, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty. You know, I mean, we were halfway back home and I was like, did you want to give him a phone number? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, why didn't you? And he was like, uh, oh. I didn't know. if I should, I was like, Slim, I'm going to turn around. Here's pen, here, paper, right on your phone number. I'll take it and I took it back. <laughs> and he got her phone number. <laughs> Oh, and he got her. Like no, see, see, I find that as a really cute story. You know, he's a fifteen-year-old boy, and his dad's like, too. "Yeah, you liked her. Go give her, her your phone number." That's what dads cute. do. Yeah, encourage their sons to be. You know, yeah. I think that's wonderful. These are one of those questions that I'd have to say I, I can fifth on. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I I thought my son had good taste in music. And then I found out he was a slippy. Oh, oh no, you're not going to say that. <laughs> he said he had to plead the fifth on if he had a crush on Taylor Swift. He said, I thought my son had good taste in music. And then I found out he was a Swifty. <laughs> That's so cute. You're in a room for a lot of women. Wrong thing to say. I don't know if he can say if he showed fear or not. Uh, show fear? My son is fearless. Uh, well, I think he's fearless. son is fearless. Fear Stepfather. That would probably be something. Yeah. yeah, no. Um, was the custody change agreeable for his mom? Is, okay, I guess they're saying with him coming to stay with you. Was that uh, was that agreed on about all parties? From my understanding, it was agreeable. It took some convincing on his mom's end. Uh, we weren't going back to court to change anything. It was just going to be. We were just going to switch it because we have the we have it in the writing that we could switch things. As long as we all agreed upon it. There you go, Laura. I don't know if she's still up here. But it definitely was a court agreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his dad was being his wingman, that's for sure. Um, Wait, what was that again? I was reading some. What happened? So, here, I'll play it again real quick. He talks about the... He said that the custody agreement was agreeable. It took some convincing on his mom's part. Um, but they weren't going to go back to court and change it, basically. Um, 
he said, uh, we weren't going back to court to change anything. It's just to be, we were just going to switch it because we have, we have it in the writing that we could switch things as long as we all agreed upon it. Yeah. So yeah, they do have a custody agreement. Welcome, my Bridget. Let's see. Yes, he was. Thank you, Marjean. Okay, yes, Kate. Yes, she was in the Navy. Thank you, my Bridget. And for whomever won those, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Bridget. Let's see. Okay. I don't know any type of medical medications. Now, when he was younger, the doctors, the doctors were like, it, it was weird because he'd go to sleep and he'd wake up, and it's just like. You could just tell that something something was off. I mean, I potty trained him. He took care of his sister's child. He took very. So I don't see Bridget's question. I don't know if that person has me blocked or something. I don't see. Oh wait, she says you're welcome. He's answering something about him potty training him, but I don't see the question. Let me refresh that. Sometimes you can go back from top to live. It'll refresh it. In the care of his son. That's his son. That it's like something was off. And uh, the doctors did say that they actually think that he was having seizures in his sleep. But we haven't had any of those issues for, I want to say, eight years now. Hmm. Was... Uh, so he was having it. He was having issues in his sleep or seizures and things like that. But he had, they haven't had those issues in eight years now. I don't that's know if anybody else is struggling like me. That's why I'm repeating it. <laughs> I was no, just it's that, thank you for doing that because it's was, it, it's it's very difficult. I was just going to ask you about the seizures because that's one of the things I'm reading is that mm -hmm. um, in the chromosome thing that he yeah. has. Seizures happen in like 50% of the people, and I hadn't heard them talk about seizures at all because I was thinking maybe he had a seizure and mom freaked out. I don't know. So. Well, he's been not an issue for the past eight years. As long as the stepdad's been there, it hasn't been an issue. Right. That's not, that they're the, they're, not that they, it's you know. It's just the time frame, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that was weird, eight years. Oh, I don't know if you can answer this. Yeah. Uh, that was a supplier. I was answering. Okay, I don't know if you can answer that one uh, about the violence towards you ever. I don't know if you can answer that. Sebastian. Let's see. What are your best moments with your son? Any more best moments with your baby? That's so weird. Like she asked the question, then says, "I don't know if you can answer that," and he asks. Sebastian for clarification and then they move on. So there's no answer to that one. That's yes. funny for clarification. And I'm hoping for yeah. plenty more. I mean, every weekend that I have with him is a good moment. Every day it's a good moment. Every day I get to watch him grow up is a good moment. Every day I get to teach him something. You know, every time I get to go to play Dungeons and Dragons and I take my son to go play Dungeons and Dragons is a good moment. You know, I was teaching my son how to cook. You know, he was cleaning vegetables, he was using the most to cut vegetables up. He was up anywhere, he was cooking brats, stuff, teaching how to do himself. He was teaching my kid. So he's explaining all the things that he was teaching to Sebastian. It's, it's sounds like a really good dad when he's there. He was, you know, he said every moment basically that he gets with Sebastian is a good moment. He was taking him to go play Dungeons and Dragons, and that was good. And he was teaching him how to cook vegetables, and he was teaching him how to cook broth. And um, I was teaching my kid how to grow up and actually have a conversation. He's just talking about how it's normal parenting stuff. He's happy and excited to be teaching him things. Actually, I had a conversation with Seth, and, and he had a fishing license. He had an ID. He was teaching him how to be responsible. Hello, sweet Gina. He was. Um, let's see sportsman license at that. For hunting and fishing. Welcome, Alec. Um, he had a sportsman's license for hunting and fishing. Uh, I think he's a great father. A very great father. 
as he has threat been made to you all, to your family. Nobody has threatened me. Nobody's threatened him. My grandson is the same way. Autistic children are blessed and I love babies. Amen, my heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jean. Let's see. It says, how tech savvy are Chris and Katie? I don't know if we can answer that. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, amen. Okay, we got another one here. I will ask the question. What was the mother like of your son while you were still together? Was she a loving and caring mother to him? The next one, was she ever violent toward you? There have been a few times that she had hit me. There's been a few times that she hit me. So he says here that he was asked if um, Katie had ever been violent towards him. And he said there's been a few times that she has hit him. So Kate. Uh, and that there's been a few times that police were called um he says that not every marriage is hunky dory every marriage is hunky dory all the time true facts what rate was mom and dad and step in i think they mean right i don't know if he, he might my dad was divorced before she got out of the military he looks so happy in the pictures with you has law enforcement checked the rivers and ponds in Hendersonville or Memphis? I know some in Hendersonville, but I can't say for Memphis. I don't know if we can. can you? Did you know that they checked some of the ones in Nashville because they were checking for that 20 year? That's why they found that the body that the body of that dead female for what they think is a dead female. They were just the question was: Had they checked you know bodies of water in Hendersonville and Memphis? And he said that he knows they checked some in Nashville because they were looking for Riley and they found a, another person. Welcome, Chloe. Okay. Yes, he, I mean, yeah, all around, he seems to be a great dad. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. He's not pompous. He's not a butthead. I mean, he carries on jokes. He's not fake. He's not a fraud. He's real, authentic. He's himself. He's not here to make you like him. He is. He is. That's what I got from him. Can they hear me? Yes. Uh, the Chloe underscore DXM. You were at the vigil last night, weren't you? I think she was. Yes. She was. And the threat was made towards Seth's sister over the GoFundMe. And it will not interfere with the search for Sebastian. A GoFundMe will not interfere with the search, period. Let's see. I didn't understand it either. I thought it was ignorant to make a threat like that. Thank you for the reminder, pick me. Why would my phone be on her account? Twenty two days. Uh oh, he didn't want that reminder. The question he said, Why would my phone be on her account? Someone had asked if his phone was still on Katie's account. Why did they threaten? Um, apparently they felt like that it would interfere with um, the investigation. The GoFundMe would somehow interfere with this investigation. No, it will not. No, it will not. That's how I feel. It won't. They're talking about the threat of legal action towards yes. the ants. No. Fuller Adventures, not while I was around. They want to know what the actual threat was. Um, I was not there for the threat, so um, 
don't know if you want to tell them the threat or not. Well, Apple Crescent's got it right there. Hello, Jesse. Uh -huh. Let's see. Welcome, Vanessa. I'm going to come here. Okay, so here's the, sorry, it took me a second to find it. So the threat was the stepfather didn't want the GoFundMe shared. We don't succumb to threats. We will continue to share all info for Seth Rogers and Robin Rogers. Um, and the way stepdad explained it, it was law enforcement encouraged us not to, and we don't want it to interfere. So this is a inside issue that gets, makes things messy. Seth, do you want me to share your YouTube channel? I don't know if he does or not. Oh, I, you won't find anything on my my YouTube channel except for some weird comments and shorts every once in a while. <laughs> I heard on one of the interviews where they were saying Sebastian was making it part of a relationship. What was up with that? They said. I did read that myself. I don't know how that he would make anything. We have just went through all the interviews. I have not heard that from anyone. Have you guys? that Sebastian is making it hard on the relationship? Or did I miss it? I don't know. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, no, I haven't heard that. Okay, I didn't think so. But it could be something on Facebook because they you know, talked about how they're on Facebook too. Being hard on the relationship, but yeah, if he is privy to that and wants to answer that or can't answer that, that's up to him. I'm not aware of that. I don't know how that- An autistic child with two separate people that were raised differently and don't know how to assess the situation would make any relationship difficult. At the same point in time, some people can, can see the situation for what it is. There are some people that live off a routine, such as I, I live off a routine. When I'm at work, it's the same thing. I do the same thing every day, whether I work or not. I work nights, so even on my days off, I sleep during the day. My alarms still go off at the same time. I get up, I still make coffee. You know, when I had my son, I would change. I'd get I'd get home from work and I would come home, I would take a shower, I'd get a couple hours of sleep and then I would drive back down to his mom's house to pick him up for the weekends that I would have him. And then I would literally come back home and I would make sure I stayed up until it was bedtime for him. And then I would get him to go to sleep. I would go to sleep sleep a couple hours and then wake up because my natural body rhythm is already night shift and i would just i deal with it because i want to spend time with my son and my question is this do you think that there was a better routine with um do you feel like you had a better routine uh at your home that he had a better routine than he had in the in, in their home I don't know what their routine was in the house. I know that when me and Katie were together and she would be on deployments, my routine at the house was better for Sebastian in school because it guaranteed that he would lay down and he would get a full, you know, a full night's rest. I don't really know their routine for how they do things. I mean, to me, a school night bedtime's at eight. You know. I'm, I'm pretty adamant about that, unless you're still working on homework or something. Because him being autistic, he'd lay down at eight o'clock and the whole thing was to lay down, calm down, relax, and be asleep by nine o'clock. Thank you, Devil I Elvis. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's see if Mom and Stepdad were a small specialty like the CT field. I feel some would be willing to hide him if they were told a lie. Uh, a story, but I don't know. Hey, Vanessa, can you hear me? If so, I need you to give me a call later. Who made the threat? Uh, I'll say it. Chris, stepfather. He, for, that one did. No, Sebastian didn't have a school iPad. I don't know where you're at, but I'm down here at Fuller Adventures. Miss Jennifer, negativity is back. <laughs> that name, every time you say it, let me say it. Nothing. Nothing was mentioned to me about his behavior changing. Oh, I, love that I don't know if you can answer that. Uh, Martin Gun Kelly 420. 
Uh, he never used those words around me, but I have heard him use particular words when speaking to my mom. Cat, click on the Navy, set him up for Robin to even know if Steph or him home. What? Uh, Think of what they did in the Navy. Seth didn't, I mean, he offered to take one. Uh, he offered. I know Katie was a red phone person. Are there private searches going on? Do you have any, are there private searches that you know of that are going on? I'm doing private searches almost every day. That's what I was going to say. But I'll let you do that. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen any, I personally, if you want to, I haven't seen any searches. I've been Dude. talking. Uh, Kat, do, did they have old military friends? I don't know about uh, Chris, but most of the friends that me and Katie had while we were I messaged Marshall I'm like, what's a red phone person? She was in communications, y'all. Yeah, that's all that means. Because <laughs> I was like, red phone is that like? Um, it's like the bat phone. <laughs> yeah, she was just like, she was in communications. Okay. Married. Um, most of them don't even talk to her anymore. A lot of them talk to me. Some of them don't talk to me, but. You know, that's that old, we take the shipmate side before we take the spouse's side. Okay, so talking about old friends from the military, they're really kind of pushing that friends in the military, my hiding thing. And he's saying she, I don't know, she doesn't even talk to the friends from the military anymore because they still talk to him, not her. So I think that kind of clears that out there. You see the grandma right in the chat yeah yeah tell me i was afraid of chris on multiple occasions it had nothing to do with appropriate parenting skills as chris has said hmm. yes uh, i think when he was obsessed he had a very good routine uh that's an uh, opinion of mine that's my opinion. did she know him i don't know she said when he was this obsessed he had a good routine I this I'm is just, kind of I'm, yucky. Well, I'm just curious. Does she have like a personal relationship with him? If anybody knows, if you see that in chat, because oh, no. that would that would make a difference if she knows it personally. But yeah, um, it would. No problem, Fuller Adventures. Yeah, she's usually Jennifer Positivity. Brenda Lange, that he told me that he was afraid of Chris on multiple occasions. It had nothing to do with appropriate parenting skills, as Chris has said. I'll agree with that. Well, Apple Crescent, the thing is, is that every case is different. No case is the same. They might have similarities. They might have, you know, key differences. So each case is handled, not to mention, is it not only handled, you don't have the same individual working one case that you had working another case. So I wouldn't know if Sergeant Carter has worked a case like this before or not. The same thing with Agent Simmons. So there's really no definite answer on that. The only answer I can say is hopefully the sooner the better. I agree. I don't know what kind of medication, if any, Katie was on prescribed. Thank you, Vanessa. Vacant properties in Portland. That's a bit. Uh, that is about an hour away. And uh, I have no idea. If you have, are you in that area of Fuller Adventures? Yes, that's a bit away. That's about an hour. Depending on where, oh gosh. See, what can I do to help you more aside from sharing your story and donating? I say prayer, but I'm going to let him answer. 
Benny, I t- I'll tell you right now. I'll tell everybody. If you go to the TBI website, you can print out my son's picture. You can print out his flyer. If you want to go put those at every gas station, at every mall, you know, the police don't even know. I called Lebanon PD, find out because there was a tip that came through Facebook and they weren't even aware of the situation. Not everybody is aware of this. I need everybody in the United States to be on the lookout for my son because I'm just hoping somebody has him. And one person having their head up and their eyes open to see it. It only takes one tip to bring my son back to me. Oh. We've got plans, Jennifer. We got plans. I just won't talk about I hear the desperation in his voice. He did he did dodge that right there. He did dodge that question. That's weird. He dodged a lot of questions. Uh, have you heard of it? driving around hmm. prior to or during the phone call to the police? Fuller Adventures, if you want to print out the flyer and take it everywhere, stick them up everywhere. Great. Okay. Her, I, anything that I've heard about what Katie was doing before or during the phone call would be interesting for me to say because I don't know. We're on the third week, actually, Jesse. Uh, no, they're not missing. They're just not doing anything. This is his father here on panel. He said he did. I mean, I've got, I have, I have what he said, um, and he said he passed it. And then he made another statement, and he said that all three took them. But then he said he wasn't going to say uh, actually which one. It didn't make any sense. How often do you get an update from TBI? This is a joke. I haven't heard from TBI since what Friday, Friday or Saturday. Welcome, hey buddy. Welcome, welcome. Fuller Adventures. My apologies. I, I'm not from Tennessee. I figured it was like an hour. Different parts. So I did it. I, I will probably spent 20 minutes stuck in traffic on that two lane road out there going to Portland. What? See, I wonder what's in Portland. What's creepy about if he was insinuating anything creepy, that's yeah, that's disgusting. But that's on him. Gracie, I would I would thoroughly appreciate it if you did. She will. She'll do it. These women do this thing. So let's see. Um, and I don't know where Sea Star Swim School is. Thank y'all. Thank you, Lauren. Yep, be strong. She said, "Be strong." It is heartbreaking. They'll share it in San Francisco Bay area. Yeah, he has. That's real pain. You can tell the difference between the pain and the the not and, and the fake. No, I don't think any of them are being fake. Yeah, three Whoa. sides. Which the truth. That I'm sorry that I did laugh at that. Not being. Real. That's a very common saying that there's three sides to the truth. That's a very common saying. But there's well, a, it's not even three sides to the truth. It's three sides to a story, and the truth mm-hmm. is one of those sides, right? Yep. Her name is Lane. Terry. Terry. Terry Lane. Terry Lynn. T E R. Terry Lynn. Seems like mm-hmm. Terry Lynn's just being a messy heifer. I, well, I think it's, it's just very clear that she, you know, absolutely supports Seth, and that's fine. But I feel like they're. You can support all of them. You don't yeah. have to pick a side. Mm-hmm. But I keep having to remind myself that it's Terry Lynn is this person because she sounds very much like Nana's Angels. It does sound a lot like Nana's Angels. Mm-hmm. I have to keep going. Um, oh, wait a minute. This is, yeah. That makes me sad. Yeah, me too. Rude. I did laugh at that. That was kind of comical. I'm thinking three sides to the to the truth. No, it's three sides to every story. Yours, there's right. the truth. God. He was up all night answering things. It didn't make a lick of sense. Just saying. Thank you, Napa. Thank you, Fuller Adventures. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. The garbage man. I don't know anything about that. I, I'm. Are you aware of this here? Because I'm not. Why are the parents now trying to tie Sebastian to the garbage he put out well, that night? This is his, this is his father, the stepfather. If that's the, if that's what they're putting out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. I take it, cats from Napa, Florida. No, no, that would be Napa Valley. That's California. Yeah, she's. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Napa Valley. She's in California. Yeah, and then cats in California. Uh, yeah, I knew that, that somebody said something. 
what they said at the end of the day. I knew that they had said somebody looking in a trash can. I don't know. Uh, no, I they just said. Uh, they said no. uh, I wrote it down. They just said that he took out the trash. That was all they said so far. That he took out the trash. Probably a lot of stuff today. I, I don't know. Cause they're focusing on all the wrong things and not doing the right thing. And that's actually looking for this young man that is supposed to be her son. His son right here. You know, they should say his name is Sebastian. It is heartbreaking. What? Thank you, it's my son here at my house. What was that? He's, that? That comment said they're trying to tie him to the garbage he took out. The, how are they trying to tie him to that? I don't know. That's what I said. All they said about it so far in these interviews that we just listened to was that he took out the trash that night. And That's it. Yeah, I don't see. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. <sighs> That's close to hiding when he would be under his bed with a flashlight and a book. Which the way his bedroom was set up, you know, I could be at the door and see him. He's just underneath his bed reading the book or playing on the switch under the bed. But he never hid. He never tried to hide from me. I'll answer that. You don't have to. I, from his own, from what I read, and I did read this, um, he wrote it out. He said he did take one and he passed. He said that to someone. I think the person was Fifi or something. And he said, and I passed. And then he recanted on that later on down the road. And he changed this. He changed the whole story all together, all over again. So he, he can't. The story's not consistent. And if you, if you, so the story is consistent. What it was, and and through the interviews that we just listened to, the first time he tells us, it, like we took a polygraph and we passed. Then I think he realized seth hasn't taken one as seth has mentioned early in this interview and so the next time he tells it i was like well I, I can't say who because i don't think he wanted to throw seth under the bus um but like here seth said i volunteered and they said no i didn't need to so i i don't feel like that was a change in story but maybe i'm reading it wrong i just felt like he was trying not to throw seth under the bus because he clear what social media does you are telling the truth, your story never changes. If you're not telling the truth, your story's all over the board. The story's everywhere. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, he Jennifer, did. positivity. I'm, I'm hoping that they're just not sharing and they're building a case and they're, and they're doing something to find my son. Amen. Sebastian like to hide. It, that wasn't uh, that right there that he was a runner actually in the beginning as well that was said in the beginning hello sweet jody that was also stated in the beginning they never mentioned if he was verbal or not in the beginning a lot of things they did not tell us in the beginning what from the very first interview the very first interview they talk about him being high functioning and in school what do you mean they didn't tell us he just because they didn't come out and say he was verbal i'm starting to get a little frustrated y'all um and the yeah. very first thing the very first thing in my note not a runner they said not a runner why um, why is she doing this i don't know i'm really confused by that because that's the very first interview second sentence of my notes is that he he does have an odd temp zone but is extremely high functioning that's his very second line <laughs> what are they saying I don't know what like this did, is, man. Did we listen to the wrong or the like different interviews or something? I don't know, but it's almost like Seth isn't even connected. He's just reading the chat and answering questions. It's got to be hard for him for sure. It's yeah. Just, you know, being thrown into this platform and um, not understanding it. Yeah. But he, that's why I'm trying to, that's why I'm, I'm not even looking at my chat. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm over here trying to figure out which questions he's answering so I can jot it down. Um, so I'm sorry if anything needs addressed, no. let me know, guys. But yeah. But no, this, what, what was just said there um, that he, he, uh, that they were said he was a runner and that he, they didn't mention him. Or said he was nonverbal. That's just not true. Just flat out not true. We listened to it six hours ago. And we had to dig for ourselves. I don't know, Miss Lady McGillicuddy. Normally doesn't speak much about them. When he comes with me on the weekend, 
we have things we're going to do. We play magic together and we play Dungeons and Dragons and we like to go out to go fishing. We like to go out to eat. You know, the weekends go by so fast. Magic, Dungeons and Dragons, and fishing. Dropping the ball, yes. And I'm gonna say that's that's what that's a TBI thing, in my opinion. And the color version, space for this. Thank you, Chloe. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you. If we feel this help us, I can only imagine what you were going through. Oh my God. Thank you, Kay. Two years that I know that they've been married. I don't know how long they've been together. Maybe you can answer that. They've been together since before me and the divorced. He answered it. I was on them. Ooh. That's got a sting. Oh, that makes some sense now. They've been together since before they were divorced. Ouch. Maybe okay. It before helps they us understand divorced. it. Maybe not yeah. before they split up. We don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Ugh. This is like made to look a particular. I don't. I don't like this. Mm. And involving I, I just don't the, understand involving the dad. I just don't understand some of it. He he. I don't think his answers are uh, rude or swayed one way. Mm -hmm. He's just being very clear cut as to what he knows, and he's not going to answer what he doesn't know. So, like my notes from him aren't aren't anything weird. Mm -mm. No, not no. It's just the environment. Yeah. The chat. We are and failing. All of mm -hmm. it. I'm sorry. All of it. No, no, no. You're fine. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I said that myself. I did say that. Crazy cat mom. Yes. Thank you again, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cosmic. Thank you. Thank you. Kentucky's great. Thank you. Let's see. They said it today. Oh my God. So he took the garbage out. Yeah. We'll talk to you all tomorrow. Thank you, Seth. I don't see if there's any more at all. Thank you, Miss Robin. And thank you, Seth. And I appreciate it. And we'll get what we talked about. We'll get together on that and uh, get it planned out. You should be able, well, Shane Dowling, you should be able to go to the TBI website and download the poster for him. Mm -hmm. You can copy it from the, yes, I, I'll give you, I'll go get the link and I'll get the link. Hello, my sweet Joey. I'll get the link. I'll get that link and I'll make sure. Thank you, Miss Robin. And if you need anything, you've got my number. Call me anytime. Seth, you know you have my number. You can call me anytime. I don't care what time it is. Uh, wait, hold on. Just, you know, just one quick second, Seth. I think uh, he yeah. stays up there. Uh, I'm looking to see if I can get your questions. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking to see. Quite David, uh, Seth, this is praying for you as well as the safe return of Sebastian. Did you only communicate any, any way other than by telephone? Did you use any other technology to communicate with your son? No, just phone. Okay, just the phone. Let me find out. I'm looking for one more question. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't see another one. Fred, I can answer that. I was homeless in California when she filed and stated and it accused me of child abuse during our divorce. And my son literally made the comment that he'd rather live with me in a car than his mom. My son has been uh, waiting to move in with me ever since I left California. Okay. So there we're getting messy. It's shifting. We're good. I, I see where people are like, just wait, just wait. Let me get a new page, y'all. So he's homeless in Cali when he lived in Cali. And he why, said, why, why is he saying that? Um, I, I'm trying uh. to see like what the answer was to or what the question was. Um, basically, though, he's just saying he would, his son would have rather lived with him than his mom. Rather lived with, been homeless with him than live with his mama. California and got here. Amen. A comment that he'd rather live with me in a car than his mom. My son has been waiting to move in with me ever since I left California and got here. Amen. I agree, kitty cat. Hello, sweet Michelle. Yep. Hello, Claudia. Yeah, David, I don't see another one, but if you any question you have, I'll send it to I'll send it to him. I'm catching up to where you were just at. Yeah, I'm looking to see where I'm like I'm looking, but David, I only seen the one. 
yeah, he knows it. He has my number, and I told him at any point he can call me anytime. Y'all hear my cat? I, I know he's, he's <laughs> sorry, but he gets involved into everything. He, this is part of his show too. He said that's why he jumps right here. Hello, Rebel. He jumps right up here and gets in the business. Yeah, and everything and emotion that he's showing right here. This is not fake. It's not out me. I wish it could be. I wish this was. Polar Adventures. I don't know if Chris has family in Portland or not. I believe I have your information, Chloe. I will probably reach out to you tomorrow. Yes, just keep them in your prayers. Um, I, like he said, Fred, I don't know if he knows that, if there have been any searches there uh, in, uh, oh gosh, in Portland. Uh, when was the last time that you spoke to Sebastian on the phone? Do you recall? I spoke to him Thursday before he disappeared. Thursday, we knew that already. That's the same. That would be the thing. Can I ask if you did he sound? Oh, let's go. Did he sound in any way? Did he sound different? Uh, was he? Was he himself? Um, was he happy? Was he sad? Was he? He sounded like a typical teenager that had homework and chores to do after school. Good. Like he wasn't happy that he had to do homework. And I completely understand. That sounds I mean, normal. I never liked having to do homework, so I can relate. I can, I, mean, I can agree to that. Was it a lengthy conversation, Seth, or was it just like a short conversation and I'll see you soon? It was, well, it was the Thursday before that weekend his mama had him. So I don't call on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mm -hmm. because I don't like to interrupt their weekend together. But it was, it was about three minutes, maybe two and a half minutes, somewhere in between there. It was a normal, it was my normal conversations with him. Call him up. Hey, how was school? It was okay. Okay. Did you have, did you have, were you in trouble or anything? Did you get in trouble? Did you have a good day? You know, what did you do? Learn anything? No. You know, most of the time I get them. No. Like, that's what you asked me yesterday, dad. And it's like, I oh, know, I'm dad. I don't do this. <laughs> gotcha. You know? Let yeah, me, he, said he didn't have any homework. I, I think he said he had no homework and that he had chores to do that his mom wanted him to do. Wait, where his comp? Wait, <laughs> first he says he sounds like a, a typical teenager who was mad that he had to do homework, and then he said, then he says he didn't have homework to do, but he had chores to do. Either way, it doesn't matter. He just sounded like a typical teenager, is what his dad's saying, and that's yeah. cool. Um, the feedback's coming from her mic or something. That's what's. Making it hard to hear. Conversations usually short, or did he try to stay on long? It would depend, um, because at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when he gets home, and I call him at 3.30, normally he's got homework that he's got to do, or his chores before his mom gets home. Mm -hmm. Now, later on in the evening, if I called him, we might talk for a little bit longer than that. You know, it depends on if he was doing something. If, if he was doing something, he didn't want to be bothered. It's like, yeah. but I, and I understood that. I wonder when mom gets home. Like, how long is he I, home I, alone? I, I do. I get it. I get it. No, Fred, not that I know of. Portland is, I think, a couple counties away. No, it, it's from um, where they where they reside. I mean, I'm in Montgomery County, so in order oh, for me to get yeah, from you, yes. Yeah. Did he have any bedwetting issues? Not at my house. Not at his home. No bad wedding no, is um, Let's see what else we got here. Real quick. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God. It's up to you to answer that one if you feel like it. Uh, if you love. I mean, yeah. oh, it, it's a little weird. Oh, gosh. When you were with her, his mother, did you ever speak for three hours at a time on the phone straight? Not after we were together. When we were dating, I would talk to her on my way to work if she was up, or I would talk to her on my way home. And I would say that's probably why they're not still together. That question is irrelevant. <laughs> uh, two hours with mom and uh, so he's alone. He's home alone. He has left home alone for two hours. Interesting. Interesting. I gotta take a quick body break, so I'm gonna let this play. Um, I'll be fast. But we're coming on 11 hours. Body break number two. For an hour away, so. Is 
that was done. No, David. Yeah, and here's the uh, right there. There is to get that poster right there. Anybody that would like to get that, there's there it is right there. Nobody likes homework. There's the link right there. Do you ask David Bryant where is he, where is he at in Georgia? Uh, David uh, Bryant, where are you at uh, in Georgia? If you don't mind me asking. Let's see. Uh, they have. I think they did speak to some classmates, and they also spoke to teachers. Um, there was an interview that was put out on that one. I've spoken with the SRO. The SRO said that he had like five friends that came from middle school that were there too, and I mean. He said, that from my understanding, they spoke with all, all of his teachers and some that weren't his teachers. And they, they can't speak to all the children, but they can ask the children if they have any information, because in order to do that, you have to get permission from parents. Parents have to be there when you're speaking to a minor. That's weird. Thank you, my Jody. You want to do this, Dad? What's you're that? right. You make it it's not just the cutest, but it's the honest, it's a very honest smile. Yeah. I agree with that. Yes, Portland is in Summer County. Well, Taylor Swift, okay, she does live in Hendersonville or has a home here. What about the number that you were talking about? Reach out. So I don't have to reach out to these people. No, I would like, there's Jelly Roll, there's Kid Rock, there's uh, Taylor Swift. I mean, there's a lot that live here in Nashville. You're correct. We have a lot. Do y'all see Ambulance good. Girl? Why can I not see Ambulance Girl? Um, that's weird. I can see you now. I can see you now. So um, I don't know if anybody in chat questioned what an SRO is, the security relations officer at the school. And it's not weird that they can't just speak to all the minors. Thank God they can't just go in and speak to all the minors without the parents' permission. Why did she think that was weird? I don't know. I caught that as I was coming down the stairs. I'm like, that's not weird. I'm glad. Like, I don't want my kids in school just being questioned by uh, anybody and everybody without reaching out. So that's good. That's good that they can't. No, it, it's ironic. You're right. It's not. Now, what about the Uber that I did? Okay, the Uber that was driving or the neighbor was talking about? Around that area, I don't know nothing about the Uber. I can answer that in a second. Um, I did not know that Portland is Sumner County. Yes. Um, Duchess or anyone else in chat that has been following this from Jump, what is the what is the uh, focus on Portland? Is there a focus on Portland? Portland, like why? So much questions to him about Portland. I'm just curious if anyone knows. If anybody knows Taylor Swift, please reach out to her because that would help get my son's pictures and stuff. We'll get. We're going to work on that one. Well, that'd be good. Let's see. Uh, Apple Crescent. Yeah, I think a three-way phone call to 911 is strange. Very. I odd. agree. I agree. I agree with that. that one. Very odd. It doesn't even make any sense. I mean. No, I wouldn't even bother to make that three-way call. Uh, Fuller Adventures. I mean, if he hadn't been home for weeks and they hadn't had a good talk, I mean, I would talk to Katie when she was when she was on deployment. Our phone calls were very short because she was on a ship. So, you know, I I don't know the ins and outs. Okay, Vanessa, what type of classes? He was in the Why We Fly program. Which is pretty much, it's, it's like it's everybody in the in the general class would get you know, thirty questions. He would get like twenty. They would have forty five minutes to answer it. He would have an hour. So they gave him less questions and more time to solve it out. Butterfly girl. Um, from my understanding that they actually did track down the Uber and talk to both of the people that got in the vehicle and the Uber driver. I gave up on trying to match the question, so I'm just listening to his responses and seeing what to pick from them. Right there's one that they did track down the Uber and talk to both of the people that got in the vehicle in the Uber. So I think that's like one kind of rumor that was floating around out there. And that was TBI that did that. TBI tracked him down. Let's see. Okay, let's see. What else we got here? The Red Wings. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, we got Alex reaching out. 
So he had that three-way phone call. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Gracie, it is what it is. I mean, I'm a dad, yep. and I take any information that I can get about my son. He hasn't stopped. No. So, we'll keep reaching out. Definitely don't go have a beer too or go out to eat. So, you know. No. We're not going on a motorcycle ride or anything like that. Trust me. I said we, that. I go out to eat with my friends. You know, my friends normally will go fishing with me. So, you know, yeah. I heard the sheriff's department. Uh, I don't want to play that call with them up here. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that to this man. But it's not them. It's, it's the call that they, went, that they put out, the dispatch put out. So I, I don't know. I was like, I don't want to do that to him. I feel horrible. And he's been put through hell. He's going through hell. I mean, he is going through hell. This is the worst hell any parent could ever go through. I mean, I'm not even going through it. But I've seen parents going through it. It's hell. It is hell. And it's a club that he has to be in. But I, yes, I have his GoFundMe. That, uh, and it's not coming. I will not remove that from my community wall. Um, that will help him along the way as he's off of work right now. Um, while he is searching for his child and continues to search for his child. It doesn't stop. That's his child. I know that it's Portland, Tennessee, but like, why? Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer has a lot of horses. And see, once Sebastian comes home, oh. you've got a destination to go. She has a ton of horses and baby horses, and he loves animals. I think I'm behind him on the on the chat still. I think I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to get you there. Let's see. She's going to the horses. Let's see. Was there a recording of from them calling the sheriff's department? Um, I don't know if there was a recording of them calling the sheriff's department or not. I don't know. I just know what the call that was put out. I uh, let that one. Um, I'm just now getting them. So she's talking about the dispatch call. We will we will not hear the 911 call. She's talking about when dispatch puts out to law enforcement about the call that they made in. The margin gun Kelly 420. Um, I don't know. I know they took all of her phones. They had mine for 12 hours. So they did take all their phones. And had his for 12 hours. Good information. The light, there's a, there is a full video of that light. Um, it said that the date is wrong on there. Um, that has been said, one. And it does have a time mark on it at three something in the morning. Was he known to, did he have a fascination with flashlights that you're aware of? He had his own flashlight here, I make sure. Was he fascinated with flashlights? I don't know if he would be fascinated. I mean, like I said, I mean, he had. It's a hard one. I'm in law enforcement, and and I grew up in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, you be prepared or suffer. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I you had know, choice. I got you. Knew if you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night with a tornado coming, I grew up in Kansas, so you know, it's Sebastian knows where the flashlights are, the big flashlights, and then he knows where the small flashlights are, and he has one in his room. He always has one in his room that I switch the batteries out on. Right, on every month to make awesome. sure that it stays because he would use it i mean he would turn the lights off and be underneath his bed with his flashlight on reading the book i remember being a kid having the blanket in the dark over my knees and my head reading the book by flashlight i can remember doing that i remember doing that you know my, my son has i like to think that i have an old soul and my son has an old soul as well see that like he was just raised by somebody with an old soul i don't know no, Fred didn't come back immediately. He came back and they started asking questions. I don't know if his ex has been. I don't know, Butterfly Girl. Um, that stuff was was really spotty, and TBI really hasn't given me an answer on that stuff. Okay, so Fred asked after the non nine one one call, did Chris come back immediately? And that's where he just answered no. He did not come back immediately. He came back when they started asking questions. So I don't know if it's part of the investigation or not. That's true. Consensus says that most kids have a flashlight. Let's see. Yes, uh, Angel. I 
mean, he stayed at my house by himself. And I would go to work and come home. So he works 12 hour shifts at night. And so he's yours. So he's left home alone all night for 12 hours, which is, I mean, he's 15. That's fine. Um, but this whole, like him not being able to get on the internet, that's, I mean, he's, I'm hearing lots of time frames to be able to hop online. Thank you, David. Yes, I put that all on there and I'll keep it on there. I've got the GoFundMe on there. If anybody wants to help out on that, you're more than welcome to. I know that Seth would appreciate it, as we all know that he is in law enforcement himself. And right now, his main focus and goal is his son. And that's bringing his son home. Hello, Lynn. Welcome. Let's see. Hello from Kansas. Prayers. Were you and Sebastian? It's missing and endangered. was also shooting out Sebastian's flyers. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think like that. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abel. Thank you. So thank you. I don't want to ask because I feel like, do you know how far he can see without his glasses, um, Seth? And what technically he has what they call a lazy eye. Has a lazy eye. Can you all hear me? A lazy eye? Yeah. Okay, so the glasses. You correct the lazy eye, so he would have to have surgery, and uh, and then, from my understanding, he was as he got older, his vision was becoming more like his dad's. Okay. Hello, Lynn. C spelled the fun way. Hello from Kansas. <laughs> yes. Yep, I was born in Kansas. Whoop, whoop. Go Rams. Okay. Let's see Dogs, okay, they said dogs picked up scent and it dropped in the construction area, but Chris Proudfoot will tell you dogs are unreliable. Oh my God, because he's the smartest man on the planet. No, because it's That's the truth. They, well, I mean, it's not the that they're, Welcome. it's not that dogs are unreliable, but they're, it's just like a polygraph. It's just like so many other things. It's an investigative tool and dogs are fallible. They're not 100% right all the time. Do we know if those were scent dogs or cadaver? I have no clue. I have no clue. Okay. Um, I just know that, you know, yeah, I'm hearing plenty of un unsupervised time to be able to access the internet. And, and I'm not judging about it either. I agree with you, Bindi. Like, his parents made it out to seem like it was completely locked down. They could have parental yeah. control, self-aware. That's true. But he's, he's 15 years old. He can figure out a way around that. Yep. I mean, I, I do feel like, um, not necessarily the, the parents, but people do make it seem like he's a lot younger. So even if he is operating, you know, like 12 or 13, even a 12 or 13 year old could figure out a way around that. Can I just say that the idea that something was planned or something like that, um, that he was going to move in with his dad, why, why would they, why would that need to? occur you know yeah. I don't if everybody really was in a... agreement on it yeah i don't think it would be yeah. it would be planned from either direction yeah. in my opinion i don't either no no oh certainly not no i was just thinking like that that, that wouldn't make any sense at all you're right if it's coded i'm not seeing I, if mom was in communications maybe she, they had a lot tighter lock on it but I yeah it just seemed he seems like a normal dad. He just seems like a normal dad, y'all. And I doubt that he. Uh, I just think there's a opportunity to be able to they hop online. They all still seem normal to me. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I think as as time has gone on, I'm sure, like in hearing all these different ideas and theories and stuff, it gets in your head. And so, all of the issues that they had in their marriage are apparently coming out here mm -hmm. and uh I, I i think that's i think it's unfair i think it's important do. for us as creators to remember not to pit them against each other because if, if yeah. the goal is what is best for sebastian um not pitting his parents against each other 
would be high priority right in that absolutely they need to be able to communicate they need to be and, a united front yep Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Can you talk about the stance at all? Do you know what you mean by stance? I did not treat my son like he had a disability. I knew that once he was an adult, people weren't going to treat him like he had a disability. So why would I treat him like he had a disability? Thank you. Agreed for you. Has he ever left with the phone without telling anyone? No. He's done that. No. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Margin? I sure hope so. Me too. Let's see. T. Cherry F. I have no idea. Uh, Amy and Angel. Agree. Thank you for the hard work. Here. No place like home, that's for sure. Uh, Toto said he took my slippers. <laughs> Continue prayers. Let's see. I, I, Lady Miguel, I wear Coke bottle ones. It's been done. It's technology. They don't weigh that much. Murphy's girl. I would say, like, well, he puts on his glasses every time he gets up out of bed. What's the best way we can support you, sir? The flyers out to find this one. Okay. We're on that. I'll just be honest. I'm so pissed over this precious boy situation. I can't even keep a train of thought most of the time. Justice for Sebastian. I agree on that. Seth, did you say Chris didn't come back from Memphis until law enforcement started asking questions? Yes. The dog barked when the stepdad did an interview. Yes, it did do that. I heard that myself. Yet no dog was barking. That not. Okay. So my question is, is so my Morgan went, she didn't, well, she did go missing and it was for all of 10 minutes and I thought the world stood still for those 10 minutes. It was insane, but um, she wanted to go to school with her brother and decided she was going to do that on her own while I was changing the laundry. Anyway, uh, could it be as simple, I put it in my notes of when he came back, but could it be as simple as um you know he's uh, three and a half what hours away at work and they say okay they're gonna find him quick we're just gonna hold out here and then later find out that it's not him deciding to wander off and they did not find him quickly and so they that's when he decides to come back it doesn't have doesn't have to mean something nefarious i know that's what's being pointed at but i just feel like i don't want to do that to any of these parents it's just like everything's being made out to be nefarious. I know. It, it it's not. I mean, even the idea that they dated, or they were dating before the divorce was final. I mean, that's kind of weird to me. Yeah, because we don't know if that means that she cheated on him, or if it just means that they had split up and they were already split up, and they just hadn't finalized their divorce. Like we just and, don't know what that means. And even if she did cheat on him. Does that matter in this case? Like about where Sebastian is? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, right. And that's what I'm saying, Nicole. It's not like he was a 10 minutes away, not even an hour away, three and a half hours away. So maybe he thought, let me just wait here a minute and then see how it goes. I don't know. It's just some things I'm thinking of. I hate the negativity being put on any of them. I don't like it being put I on know. Seth. I don't like it being put on. Chris and Katie, uh, with how I feel, they've been very 
upfront and honest, I might not like the things that some of them are saying, and I don't, and I got those red flagged, but it's, it's, a lot. it's, it's so shady to me that none of these people are perfect. That's sus. <laughs> right. They're humans and they've they got a whole human life. I mean, they're, they're not perfect in my opinion of perfection either. So, you know. The stepfather also had to get somebody to replace him before he could get off a crib. No. Well, see, and that's pretty shitty of his business that that's how it was. But I, w- I want to say that most parents are going to think that. I don't think most parents in this situation would think this is going to be days and days long, you know, weeks, months, et cetera. They probably think, oh, well, especially a, a dad, you know, like, oh, they'll find him quickly. Get did, him right, did, right as rain. Did we hear know. the belt thing yet? No, I have not heard that yet. I'm still listening for it. Okay. I think that came, comes on Smiley's panel, though. Oh, okay. I think that's where that comes into play. Mike has any concerns which I'm going to miss. I pray for a miracle and ask for Sebastian Rogers to be returned to his death. Amen. Yes, I've got that on my community wall on my channel. It'll take you directly to it and you can donate right to that and he would appreciate support, any support that you can give. Hi, Miss Karen. Um, I don't know if you want to comment on that right there. Which one? The lots on the phone. Okay. Time that I've been there, the door's never been shut. These people are there. Hmm, that makes sense. Okay. And about what time did he come back? You were there all day, I think you said. I really don't remember. I mean, I was there. I, I was so exhausted. I know that I fell asleep in my truck in front of the driveway and I, I vaguely remember him coming in with his hazards on and rolled into the thing. I, I really don't remember. Oh. Do you know William Daly? He goes by Billy. Sounds familiar. I agree, Angel. <laughs> Completely agree. So the doors don't automatically lock. That's not what he said. No, that's not what he said. He said he doesn't know because when he's been there, it's been during the day while people while people are there. Nobody ever said it. They locked automatically, did they? Not yet. And I keep thinking, well, we haven't heard that yet. We haven't heard that. But I have to remember they're also talking on Facebook, and we didn't look into any of that. So, I oh, know. yeah. They say it's a keypad lock, a house key to both. I know that his house key for here was in the front drawer on his dresser. Mm. You know, the bus stop, the bus stop might have been right outside the subdivision. I don't know. Uh, bus stop was right in front of their house. Oh gosh, he got a better ride. <laughs> uh, does he have any particular mannerisms or stems that may stand out with, uh, that uh, stand out with possibly helping to spot him? My son has Asperger's and has some distinct uh, stems. He likes that. Well, when he runs, you know, Ruto runs. And can we correct his weight? He's not 120 pounds. No, he's like 106, maybe 108. I mean, I don't know what it is now. He's 160. Uh, the phone was at home, and they already asked if he had a uh, burner phone, and I don't believe that he had one. I don't know where. Let's see. Oh gosh, they keep asking the same question. I don't know why they would not want him around the Chris's daughter. I have no idea, and I don't know if he does either. And I don't Chris know. Drives. Huh? Uh, Chris drives a truck. He drives a truck. They're asking about, let's see, if you want to elaborate on why uh, they don't want him or Sebastian around Chris's daughter, which I'm not aware of this. Hello, Claudia. Um, yeah, I don't know if that even pertains to anything, to be honest. I don't know. When Sebastian's here, he's been, he FaceTimes Faith for 
a long time. I mean, I don't even know. Does he? I don't know. I'm gonna say what I was about to say. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. I mean, can he be around her? I mean, not Sebastian, but I'm saying, does he even see his own daughter? There you go. They're in a, a court battle here. I don't even know if he sees his own child. So I don't know why there's anybody worried about that. No, you're fine, Angel. You're fine. Let's see. Uh... So he he FaceTimes the daughter for long periods. Uh, okay. Oh, it does. It, it does, especially when somebody's a control freak in my opinion. Yeah, he is the respondent. Uh, she's the petitioner, and he's the respondent. Uh, I have no idea, so I I'll answer it. I'm answering it. I answered it. Any more questions? This poor man has probably slept two hours. And he's doing a damn good job. And plus, he's been looking for his child. Plus, he's been cleaning. Been cleaning. And that side by side, next time they better offer it. It did change, actually. There's a different date on that. Because I don't want to keep him all night. I don't. But when you tell me when you're ready, let's see. What kind of truck? I, I don't know. Was it a Chevy truck? What? I think what that he a Chevy truck. I don't know exactly. One big enough to tell if, uh, uh, that this guy that he's got. I don't know what's it's bigger than my truck. I don't have anything to prove. Dang. Now, this is just a dad. Listen, he's just a dad that wants his baby back. That's what's all it is. He's the dad that wants his baby back. That's it. We're here to try to figure out what we can. And at least we have somebody that's honest. Thank you, Fish, because it is, it's odd. And that's I appreciate it. Thank you, Fish. I really appreciate that. Fish, you're showing you have a heart, man. You're coming around with that heart. Because that was one of my questions I did ask, you know, but when you're locking down a phone, why would a, why would a teenager want a phone that's locked down? I wouldn't want nothing to do with that phone. Yes, Fuller. What? True. No. It's a fact. Yeah. Well, my whole point is, why would you get a smartphone if you're just going to lock down the internet anyway? Yeah. I was going to get him a flip phone. If she went and got him a smartphone, I was going to get him a phone he could call, take pictures, you know, and he could play Snake. Let's see. I'm going to read you some of these things. Let's see. Thank you, Gigi. <clears throat> Well, it, they treat him like that he's not allowed um, to actually do anything, to be honest. Um, let me, like he's stuck in a home. What? Uh, let me just grab some of these real quick and I'll run through what I do have. Um, let's see. He says that he knew about three vigils. Um, one, that they didn't attend was because of law enforcement agencies. They were doing the second one because of the security reasons. The third <laughs> one because they did not know about it. They weren't informed. Um, and it was where the bio father lives. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't know what you Yeah, I'm just reading some answers that were given by a stepdad. Just That's like, right. I mean. Uh, Typically, TBI doesn't clear anybody until they uh until the investigation is done yes Correct. that is true the investigation will be done after sebastian is found let's see what else do we have here and see like i not. don't i don't find that weird we've heard both of them say we heard you know seth say that or we've heard chris say that like yeah they looked into us and were cleared but then now they're saying they technically don't clear anyone so that's why i didn't i don't put a whole lot of weight into them saying that they're cleared any of them at all because we know the truth we know that law enforcement does not clear anyone until the child's found not officially clear them answer anything about the door locks he said his dogs were trained they were on a schedule and that they had potty pads and trays in their pens let me see what else we have here <laughs> Um, he 
did say that he had been away, and the last time that he had seen Sebastian was in the beginning, first part of February. How true that is, I don't know. I don't, I don't believe it. What? Uh, anything else? That's not that much struck out. Um, not, not a lot. Um, Couldn't elaborate on the security of the home because he actually was acting like he had security at the home. Let's see, we got here, brought flowers. Hello, dear Boston. I got the polygraph art. And that's probably about it right there. Oh, she hates Chris, man. Yeah, she does. And then, of course, he's been arguing with people. <laughs> I don't know if he felt that. And that's what he has spent his time doing. Actually, is arguing with people. He is so ignorant that when asked if Sebastian was on any nighttime medication that would cause him to be sleepy, they can't answer that because of HIPAA. Wow. Well, yeah, that's not true. Maybe they just don't want people to know. Right, do you know what methods they've used to search her home? I know the dogs, but any other methods? Um, dogs, officers, they've been in the house like 10 to 12 times. So they've, searched, they've heavily searched the home, thoroughly searched the home. Any forensic searches that you're aware of? No, not that I'm aware. But anything else? Do you find this statement here odd? The idea that someone hurt Sebastian and threw him into a wet, fresh paved driveway is funny. To bury a body in concrete, it would need to be at least 12 inches thick. Secondly, you have to smooth out the concrete and finish it before it's dried. All of that is done while the concrete is poured and being set. I have no idea, Fuller. Uh, that was said by CP. No, no, I was answering Fuller's question. Yeah, I've never heard. Yeah, I agree. agree. Um, stepfather did. Did Donna give you any insight? No. No. <laughs> she hasn't reached back out to me either. Just like the way they're talking about Donna Sarafita. I just like the way he said that. Did Donna give you any insight? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Just listen to her. <laughs> oh. No, no, I was answering Fuller's question. Yeah, I've never heard. Yeah, I agree. agree. Um, stepfather did. Did Donna give you any insight? No. 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 <laughs> she hasn't reached back out to me either. Hello, Juju. Let's see. Um, and here it is. Chris takes he took and passed the polygraph. It says, have you both taken polygraph test? And if so, what were the results? Thank you. Foo foo. This is Chris responding. Yes. And the results are passed. His words. Welcome, Susie. Let's see. What do I find odd? He says, uh, Sebastian did not have any friends because of his situation with autism. He wasn't ever alone in school for kids to do the things mentioned below, meaning bullying him and such. Oh, he has, he thinks a lot of things are funny, which I don't find anything that he says funny and he's smug. And that's just, yeah. Let's see. Anything else I see on here? I mean, I agree. He can be smug at times, but that doesn't nothing more than point to guilt on a person. CP said on an interview they've been cleared. No, they have not. They've not been cleared. Not been cleared. How would she know? Uh, mm. But I mean, I mean, I would say Seth's more clear. To be fair, no, she's very tell us that Seth's more clear. Than Seth's him, more clear. To be, to be fair, Seth has also said that, and we know that they are. He has got cleared as well. So like. Oh, great. Seth is more clear, she said. Yeah, more clear. clear. I mean, I would say Seth's more clear than anybody. That's my opinion. <laughs> He's not more clear than me. <laughs> right. TBI hasn't cleared anybody. Thank you. No. And you are in law enforcement, correct? 
<clears throat> yes, ma'am. There you go. See, I have transcripts of last night. Okay, for the record, somebody asked the question, was the polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes, I didn't specify who or when. See, that's two different things in the same. Mm. Agree, Sarah. Agree. Yeah, major deflection. There's a lot of deflection. Is there any reason the number of shoes Sebastian owns is so secretive, according to Katie? Yeah, I mean, that is odd. I have no idea. With the shoes. I agree, Liz. We're going to keep talking. What was the deal with the shoes? She wouldn't tell him how many shoes he had? Yeah, she said we're not answering that on how many shoes he had. I did find that odd. Yeah. I have no idea, nor do I know why it's so important that you're not in trouble. Um, the doors are locked. Uh, he was making breakfast. You would have passed him if that were the case. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Seth, have you taken a poly? Not that you need to, just trying to narrow down. Well, he was offered. He said earlier he was offered and, uh, or he offered and they didn't, they didn't need it, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. Also, how do they know the number of shoes? But insist he wasn't wearing a sweatshirt, possibly two. He's only three different shirts. Let's see. He did state that. Let's see. Had the dogs ever got out at night? He didn't live in the home. I spoke in past. Yes, he did speak in past tense in that video. He did. And I have played that. I hope they have more than we think. I pray they have more than we think. If not, then we're screwed. I pray they do. I do. Let's see. I think some of the hand, let's talk about the holding hand one where they're doing the tapping. Are you good, Seth? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had to use the bathroom. Tired? I was making sure you're good. If you're getting tired, you let me know. I don't. I don't. I know. I've, been, I've been tired for weeks. Um, I'm just reading these. No, you Angel. I have not there. taken a public graph. Volunteered. Yeah, he also. <laughs> that I didn't need to. Well, that was my question, Angel, but I didn't get to ask it. I agree with Fish. Interviews are weird. Did Sebastian ever, I mean, I don't know if I can ask you this, but did Sebastian ever tell you that he was being mistreated? No, he never did. Okay. So he's never mis mentioned being mistreated. Seth, I came in late. Have you talked about Sebastian's favorite songs? I haven't. Because the list is, it literally, I have four lists that are mixes on my YouTube for all of his favorite songs. Everything from country music, and when I say country music, I'm talking about Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Hank Williams Sr., Hank Williams Jr., um, all the way to hip-hop. I mean, I try to stay away from letting him listen to certain songs that have bad things in them, things that children shouldn't be doing. <laughs> She did speak in the past tense. I do have that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to play the? Uh, let me see. Let's see. I would like to believe that he would, Fuller. I mean, my son liked Meatloaf. He liked Queen. I mean, he liked ACDC. But he also liked he liked Clave de Monte, which they they do. I mean, they did all the songs for Lord of the Rings. All that's been done, Juju. I was told that they have pulled records. They did ping everyone. And that's I talk to them every day or every other day. So they've pulled the records. They've pinged everyone. And he's in communication with them every day or every other day. I don't see like a big issue between these parents. Well, I mean, hold on. I'll just, this doesn't bother you, I'll do it. Hold on. You tell me if it bothers you. Does that video that I, that I told you I did do? Wow. You do. Okay, Fuller Adventures. Uh, that's that. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> Katie could be a swinger. I've 
I've known Katie since she was 12 years old. Started dating when she was 18. I'm 10 oh. years older than her, and I never knew her to be a swinger. Thank you for clearing that up. Where did that oh. question come from? Now, guarantee I don't know her now. I'm not involved in her private life. You know. He said he's known Katie since he was 12. Uh, married her or started dating her at 18 or married her? Uh, started dating when she was 18. He's 10 years older and he's never known her to be a swinger. <laughs> uh, that was the question that he Well, that would asked. mean he would, he would be a swinger too, right? Right. <laughs> if that were the case. Um, did, so what did uh, Nicole ask? What did she say about past tense? Somebody said something in past tense. What is going on? Apparently, Katie said something in past tense at one point. She's made reference to it twice, and she she keeps saying, "I got that. I got that." So I, I don't think I've done any past past tense talking in the interviews that we have listened to, unless it was something quick, like he he loved you know this or that. I don't know, but I didn't pick up on any. I'm not saying she doesn't have it because she claims she's got it. So, okay, I, I gotta believe that she's not a swinger. <laughs> <laughs> not a swing. Good to know. There's a lot of deets coming out on this one. I don't know that we need them all, but there's a lot of them. People love those personal in the bedroom details. Yes, they love it's them. So bizarre. She does seem like an angry ex. And I didn't even know there was a ring Wi-Fi jammer, Fred, so I couldn't tell you if Katie would own one or not. Oh, my God. <laughs> People are thinking that uh, Terry Lynn sounds like an angry ex. <laughs> oh, uh, she's just, she's very staunch. To be honest she's with you, ring Wi-Fi jammer sounds like mm -hmm. some new type of rock band. band. I'm with it. I'm with Seth on this ring Wi-Fi jammer. <laughs> Sounds like a rock band. Right, here we go. I'm gonna present this. That way, you all can see this. Uh, uh, okay. So someone comments in here. EGR says the page that page that Chris Probfoot liked on Facebook, re swingers. Is for a West Coast swing, which is a type of dance. <laughs> so oh my gosh. Thinking they're in the swing because he liked a swingers page about. I was gonna things. say. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! This is wild. Mm. People with the Facebook stuff, man. Uh -huh. Oh, she's showing their home. All right, Fred. I mean, I figured that's what it does, but I, I didn't. I mean, it's a beautiful home. What's up with you? Explain that to me. Seth is his name on Tampa. He just now realizes you're the dad. This is the home. Well, this is when it was on the market. Oh my God. Oh, Susie. That's up to you, Diane, too. That I'm I don't know, Lady McGillicuddy. I do. I have a truck. So, Lady McGillicuddy asked, Does CP or Katie have sleep apnea? He doesn't know, but he has it. What? what? Like, I don't know. Maybe if there was a machine going, they wouldn't be able to hear him or something. That, maybe that's the thought. Um, okay. I sleep with a CPAP machine. He does. Would you say she's a heavy sleeper? No comment to that, I guess. Maybe right. he didn't hear us. He's not listening to her. 
I mean, he's, reading he's, reading he's literally just he's reading chat to answer questions. His bed wasn't made, and from my understanding, the the sheriffs had already been in there going through stuff. I will agree, Vanessa. I will agree. No offense, I'm not laughing, but I agree. I agree. I do. Um, so Vanessa types that Chris is in some bizarre kink groups on Facebook, and that's what she's agreeing to. I, I don't know. What's it mean? No. Allie? I've never seen him sleepwalk. Never sleepwalked. Correct, Gracie. That's why I just showed that. Because that kitchen is right there. You'd have to get past that. Not happen. Uh, yes, he has. If I had social media, I'd probably be pasting my son's picture on every Facebook page that would let me join. Amen. I mean, and he's answered some of the questions that I mean, I would think that might be hard at times, but he's answering them and he's hanging in here answering these questions. I mean, he's not running. He's not avoiding. He's answering them. He's not saying contact law enforcement. He's answering the questions. He's hanging in there. Well, to be fair, I would say that 80% of these questions have been about Chris and Katie. <laughs> but yeah, he is. I appreciate all of y'all. If every one of y'all is looking for my son, then you're more eyes than I am by myself. Amen. I agree with that. And we will continue. Are they talking about the sleep apnea machine? I think they're talking about is it the home security. What is it? Uh, ring doorbell jammers. Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on. We do have an, an, like a Google map that we're using for our flyers. If you distribute flyers, um, make sure you join the Facebook page. Find Sebastian. It's got exclamation points at the beginning and two at the end. We're using a Google map system to log every place that we put flyers. That way we're not going back over the same places twice. That's a great idea. So use the Facebook and Chloe, page. Is, yeah, early on, we were told not to actually speak to the media. That's why I didn't. That and I mean, I was busy. I, I mean, they wanted to face the face. I really don't have time for that sort of stuff. Because well, he I'm didn't in, have time. I'm looking for you right now. He did not have time because they were asking for us side by side for this man to go out and holler for his child. He was the one out there. I know who was out there. He was. But I don't think he got the side by side. I didn't. I, I drove my truck. You know, when they weren't letting when they weren't letting civilians get there is some like feelings about a side by side. I don't know the whole story. I'm not judging, but this side by side has been brought up multiple times and somebody is very ticked off about it. But on the media situation, uh the Proudfoots did their interview with media uh, or with not, it wasn't with media. It was with Duchess first on three, three. And then on three, four, Seth does the phone call with media. So it's like, they, you know, they did it back to back. I don't see where a big issue is there. Yeah. Well, cutie pie, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not judging her for it. Cause she's got some strong feelings and I don't know why she has those strong feelings, but uh, yeah, she absolutely does. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe there's a good reason. Uh, yeah, there, there might be. There might be. But man, she's get that man a damn side by side. Ooh, I was a then. So I was driving around hollering for my son. So 11, 12 o'clock at night, letting when they weren't letting civilians get out and walk, I was a clip then. Mm -hmm. So I was driving around hollering for my son. So 11, 12 o'clock at night. Then I would drive oh. back home, get some type of sleep, get up, take a shower, and go back and do it again. That breaks your heart. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna 
All right, if David's here, let me see. He might still be here. Um, I don't think that he has seen the video security footage, though. I was. I have not seen anything. They won't show it to me. Yeah, I don't think that he has seen that. Um, let's see. He's here. Um, okay. I was going to see if they no, no, no. uh, This you don't it's, think they pinged the phones, right? Is that what you're? Is that what you feel? Is that they have not pinged the phones? He just said they did. From my understanding, they've taken our phones, they downloaded them, and they, they traced everything. A little bit ago, he I'll said, I wrote it down. Especially. David, is there any way? Like a few minutes ago, he, he said that they pulled record, ping phones, and got all the information. Is there any way that any of that stuff could have been removed if they didn't get the phones right away? No. I don't know, Chloe. Why, why, why is she asking him? Okay. Mm -hmm. He's not even listening to her. At I all. Know, I, he did have it. I think he has your phone memorized, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That's good. Got dad's phone number memorized. Let me see. Let me go back to my things here. Um, does everybody have iPhones? That was one question. I have a droid. Do they have iPhones or do you know? I don't know. I know Sebastian had an iPhone. Probably no. Sebastian had an iPhone. Let me see what else. Looking at my very first kind of notes that I have. Uh, okay. And that he did mention and say that, that he had not had any, he was not able to be on his devices. And then he says he, that they're locked down. So he really can't even use the damn things. So why would he have these devices really? So that he can answer the phone when they call. So what mom said a few hours ago, although it was days before this, she said that they used uh, electronics and technology as positive reinforcement instead of free access. Said that the day before this. So that's what they did with the their technology for him. David, anything you want to throw in here about some of the things that these that can be done with these GPSs and these phones and routers and things these gps's and routers would just i would think my son would call me if you get to a phone i think my son would call me i, I would pray and i, I do pray that, that that does happen you know? had no internet access and no and they had uh the apps were shut down so he had he could text he could answer and, and make phone calls and he could use his calculator and he could take pictures oh my gosh. <clears throat> what is she it's like I'm sorry. Oh I'm not laughing at it, but like, like it's 2024. So like restricting, uh, uh, like it's you know some form of corporal punishment, restricting it to the text and the phone, the calculator and the photos. Like, yeah, I, I don't think it's a good idea. When I was 15, of course they didn't have them, but you know, <laughs> thank you. <It's> just, <laughs> I just don't think it's, it doesn't seem like it's a good idea to have teenagers just being able to go wherever they want to on the internet. I'm not saying anybody's bad for allowing that, but it just, it seems like it's a responsible thing to monitor them, especially. I mean, I mean, I, it's different. Even, even back, you know, when my kids were 15, I, they had all the apps and stuff on their phone, but it is a different world every year. It's getting crazier and crazier. So um i understand i might not agree with it but i understand right. what they were trying to do i suppose i don't know well, to I, me, I, know I worry that it would push a, a kid in the complete opposite direction of what you're intending well i know 
uh, our friend, well, D Tracy does too, but our friend that has a, a um, daughter with uh, learning disabilities, she has things like that on her phone so she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And I know my sister had learning disabilities and um, she did things we never thought yeah. right yeah, <laughs> that that she would do because she is still she still has hormones she's still a human being with thoughts and feelings and curiosity and urges and you, you can't it, yeah. it doesn't always process the right way mm -hmm. so you have to be careful you do you do thank you bosa so she might know well, he's not local, but she might know them. That's a very good possibility. Very good possibility. Okay. And you don't, but and you don't want to say what you think might have happened at all. I don't know what happened. It doesn't. Matter. And I was told not to think by the police department by the sheriff. Okay. I just got a message that's a, that was asking me, and I wanted to see it. And I that's a good. I was asking. Good thing. Don't think gotcha. about it. Do you have any other reason they were so? Yeah, is there a reason they were so strict on him and they weren't? Seeming you, you gave him more. Um, Free. Yes, to be a you know a fifteen year old kid. I don't know. I gave him more freedom because he he you got to make mistakes in order to learn from him, but okay. you got to have freedom in order to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree. Agree. So they just want him to be perfect and, and captive. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out. I mean, he's 15. A lot. <clears throat> this is wild that we're getting to, to the point in, in the world that in 2024, that being strict and having parental controls on your 15 year old devices that somehow negate to being held captive. <laughs> like, it's like, to there, she's acting like it's abuse. <laughs> I know. Like, uh, come on. I mean, like, do I think that they were super strict parents, like over the top strict? Yeah. yeah. But not like, I don't think he's being held captive on their, because of how strict they were. It's a bit, I, I agree with dad in that aspect. Like if you don't give them, if you don't give teenagers or young adults the, the safety right. net in which to fall so that you can catch them while they're still at home, there's an issue. But right. I'm not here to judge anybody's parenting style at all. So to like say, uh -uh. oh, these super strict helicopter parents were holding him captive. No, come on. Sebastian yeah. is in no way is a perfect child, but he was my perfect child. Oh, I love that answer. He was fun. He was inquisitive. Uh, you can get a line on the Switch, even use a hidden browser on them. I know that on my Switch, I never bought him a Nintendo profile. He could have got a Wi-Fi. Literally, all he would do was update his games. Disagree. My son was perfect to me. <laughs> he was going to say that. Listen, and I said, if that's the case, I've got three perfect kids, too. Mm -hmm. We've already been over that part. He's going to disagree. He's perfect. Do you know who set those games up? What? Yes, my son had a my PlayStation. He did. I was the only one with uh I had mine and then he had his profile, but he played on my profile. But most of the time on my profile, he was playing like Spider-Man, which is a solo game. He let's see, he played Devil May Wine. I mean Devil May Cry. You know, that's also a solo game. He played a lot of solo games. And when he wasn't playing solo games, solo games, I was there. Do you think Chris caught him slacking off and playing his switch instead of doing his chores? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you can answer that one. Let's see. Yes, he has called him names, and I won't repeat those names because those are things I don't like. Um, I don't. I don't use those, and I won't use those. Uh, period because it's just no it's a big no and he's aware of that very aware of it seth does sebastian have a pectus chest because causing him to wear a chest plate is it at the house to your knowledge 
It's not at my house. And he has a brace, but he stopped wearing it. Hmm. I did have a brace, but he stopped wearing it. It's a hard one, too. Um, yeah, David's, David is good at what he does. And that's at their house, I have no idea. At my house, it would it probably showed that he logged that it was on when the police turned it on. Because when he leaves my house, he has to turn it off and put it on the charger so that it's charged when he comes back. Thank you, seclusions. I'm, I'm literally, he has to make his bed, clean up his room, put everything away so that he knows where it's at when he comes back. Not to mention, there's not stuff on the floor so I can vacuum. So he he's describing doing all the same things that I hear like Katie and Chris describing, except for they were more strict with technology. But he's got to keep it clean. He needs to have his wallet, his keys, and his uh, phone with him. Like he's 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 very orderly, organized, straightforward parent. How come that's not being held captive? Like, I, mean, I don't know. Only, <laughs> only difference is you know some. I'm seeing as a little more freedom with technology than they allow and, you know, encouraging things like handing out the phone number and hitting on girl, you know, that sort of stuff, which is normal dad stuff. So I just, I'm not seeing a huge difference between these parents. Because he, he leaves and then I don't get to see him for two weeks. I don't know about that either. Because your family's, uh, your family's in Texas, and we're all. You did hear your mom's message, correct? Um, Blueberry. He is alone at least two hours a day at mom's house, and up to twelve hours a night at dad's house. So yes, he does have a lot of alone time. No, because I wasn't. I was trying to log in. Would you like to hear your mom's message? I wouldn't know, sir. I wouldn't know, Mr. David Gray. Oh, man. That would be awesome to know. Would you like to hear your mom's message? My mom already told me briefly what her message was. Yeah, making sure. Yeah, she had a message, and I did play that. Um, can you discuss? What the, okay, I don't know. If that, no. They didn't discuss that with me. Yeah, I think he said the last communication that he has had with um, TBI was it, uh, what did you say? It was either Friday or Saturday, but they didn't tell me anything about the garbage. I find out a lot of it through news feeds. That would have been like the... Yeah, I will play it. Once he's finished answering questions, I will replay it. I don't want to put him through that because his mom will see. His mom said what she meant. She meant what she said. And she don't play. Yeah, I could tell. Uh, she, we had a nice conversation as well. Very nice conversation. Uh, we'll replay that. Um, yeah, I've never been in the garage. All I know is they have a three car garage. That's it. Have any neighbors come forward with anything that you know of? I don't. Nothing from the neighbors. Does he go you, have to... you mean like on a jungle gym, on a ladder, up a slide? I have spoken to Katie <clears throat> twice with Chris on the phone. Fred, he said that they had a good relationship. They FaceTimed. Yeah, even when he was here, Faith was there. <clears throat> then Faith would sit there and FaceTime Sebastian on his phone. And Sebastian would literally lay in there on his bed and talk to her for, I don't know, I think the last time was like an hour and a half. Wow. Let's see anything else. Yeah, there's only so many, there's only certain things he can answer. He can't answer anything that's, and I know for a fact he cannot answer anything that points towards certain legal things. He can't answer those things. He's answered quite a bit that points towards certain legal what? things. What? <laughs> I'm confused by that. 
I guess it's not for us to know. This is I'm biased. Such I would marry to her. Odd interview. Oh, it's not an interview at all. It's oh, okay. So fish asks. It's what always a possibility, you're... Phoenix. Because there's a ladder. Normally there. So fish asked, "What was your feeling towards Katie? You know her well. Anything bother you about what she said?" And he said, "See, and I love his answers. See, my issue isn't with him at all. It's not with that. It's the, oh no, uh -uh. people surrounding it. He, his answer was, I'm biased. I was married to her. So like, it's short. It's sassy, a little underhanded jab, but I like what he did there. Like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And um, he's answering Phoenix, who said, asked, well, if he's hiding, would he climb into places, clubhouse trees, et cetera, things like that? So that's what he's answering now. It's always a possibility, Phoenix, because there's a ladder. Normally, there's a you know a slide or a swing. When I was looking, I have flashlights in my truck, so I was looking at any type of playground equipment, slides, any how uh, any little tree houses or anything I I saw, I would shine my flashlight in there and holler for him. Nearby, Mr. Sam. Understands the math. He really liked math. I would say it was one of his best subjects, maybe two years ago. But he started giving people at school a hard time with his math. <laughs> math was one of his best subjects uh, growing up in middle school and grade school. Math was one of his favorite subjects. I don't know, Mr. Fred. Interesting on that one. I agree. I don't know, Mr. Dean. Thank you, Florida. Please hand out flyers out there, Mr. Fred. Have a good night, Fuller, and thank you very much. Thank you, Fuller. So, so the question was, have they checked all homes and properties of extended family? That's what Fred asked. He said he didn't know. And uh, Dean said, do you think it's possible that Sebastian could have been sneaking out prior without anyone knowing? He said, I don't know. Interesting. Let's see what else we have here. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I do agree with that. I've said that from the beginning. That's not, and it's my right to have that opinion. I don't have a good feel or opinion about the man, and I'm not, I'm not going to change that. There's nothing he could ever say to make me change that. He wouldn't give me five minutes just asking one question. I, and I'm glad because he wouldn't give me the right answer. Thank you again, Fuller. Oh, who said who said earlier, but like, sounds like a jaded egg life. Right there. He wouldn't give her five minutes to answer one question. I think she's a little salty from that. Not like he had a lot going on or anything, but okay. I agree. That was all that was all I wanted to know. That right there. Mr. Dean, no. For Christmas, I, I, I asked my son for like because his birthday's in December too. And it's like I asked him for a month, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? And he didn't want anything. The only thing he wanted me to do was to take him to see his me and Pap Pap in Texas. And I told him I couldn't do it this year because I didn't have the vacation time saved up and my truck needed a new uh, torque converter on my transmission. Mm. 